Welcome to Echoed Rebirth Novels. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe Patreon in the description for exclusives audio. Enjoy your novel. The Dark King. Chapter 397. The Dark King. Arrest warrants? Mark's eyes swept through the black letters on the papers. The servants around the hall were shocked as they heard the general's words. They couldn't help but turn around to look over. General Keith? George used the crutches to slowly come behind Mark's body. Because of his old age, his body was lost behind the sturdy body of Mark. However, Mark quickly went sideways and all the attention was gathered on George. It seems I have to talk about rituals and history to the general. George indifferently looked at General Keith, entering an aristocrat's manner with weapons is a very rude thing. Although Mellon family is wise and forgiving but we can't forgive and let it through. Although don't forget, garden battle which happened 160 years ago. After that arresting any nobility whether they are in decline or not is inconceivable. George hit the crutches onto the floor as he uttered the last words. Although his expression was calm but his sharp words were showing his anger. General Keith indifferently looked at both of them. At one point knights of light, deacons, generals of the military, and even the members of the dark church had to bow in front of them. Keith said in a cold tone, Sorry, but I was ordered to act. The warrant states to arrest both of you on rebellion charges. In addition, your granddaughter Miss Sarah Mel will also go back with us. I hope you will follow the aristocratic etiquette and don't embarrass us. Where do you get the courage to talk to us like that? Mark said in an angry tone. Keith looked back at him. Mr. Mark, are you going to resist? You. Mark was angered. George raised his hand and held Mark's arm. He shook his head and deeply looked at Keith. George slowly said, I hope military will be responsible for their reckless behavior. Let's go. He patted Mark's back and used crutches to leave the lobby. If you looked at his back you would see a dragon-like majestic momentum. Mark coldly looked at Keith and then said to the butler who was next to him, We will go now. You must immediately notify the magistrate to investigate the matter. Don't give chance to the military to abuse their authority. The butler understood the meaning behind his words. He nodded in confirmation but his face was gloomy as he looked at Keith. Keith glanced back at Butler but he didn't care much about his existence. Although they were arrested but the carriage used to transfer them was very high-end and luxury one. It seems like the soldiers were escorting some distinguished figure rather than arresting them. Lisa, I'm leaving for now so you will be responsible for everything. Sarah looked back at Lisa as she was before the carriage. Although she was much mature than most at the same age as her but at this moment she couldn't help as her eyes become flushed. Sarah bit her lips as she sat into the carriage. She had vaguely guessed the reason why they had encountered such a thing. It should be related to the teenager. Although Melon Consortium had lots of enemies but the most susceptible was that teenager. It was her intuition telling her. Her heart was full of guilt and self-blame. If she could have killed the teenager outside the giant wall then they wouldn't be facing such things at this point. Miss, I know my responsibilities. Lisa respectfully said as she stood behind her. She was like a handsome knight. People would mistake her for a young boy if not for her bulging chest. The author is fixed on her chests. Sarah's fingers clutched her skirt as she stepped into the carriage. The remorse and grievances in her heart gradually turned into hatred. She never thought that one day she would be involved in such an embarrassing situation. Although she was sitting in a very beautiful and luxurious carriage that was in no way inferior to her own one but she felt the hatred infiltrate deep into her marrows. The butler went back to the hall after George, Mark, and Sarah left. He looked at the attendant, passed the message to the master Melk, the knight of light Melk, Sarah's elder bro. Let him ask the bishop to come forward and bail out house masters. Yes, the attendant replied and left. Call Mr. Myers and Mr. Mutton. Tell them we have something to discuss. Yes. Inform General Williams and let him send someone to take care of house masters while they are held by the military. Nothing unannounced can happen to them. Yes. The butler commanded the attendants and the orders were passed out. The entire castle was like a large machine that rapidly operated. Did you write it? Dedian asked Crone. Crone gently picked up the letter from the desk and gave it to Dedian. Yes, master. Please check it. Dedian glanced and nodded. Send it to Patriarch Fooling. Yes. Crone replied as he put the letter into the envelope and went out. Dedian got up from the bed. He felt like he was frozen deep into his bones. He knew that there was something wrong with his body. But he couldn't diagnose himself as the information in the superchip was related to the modern medical knowledge. Therefore it was futile and useless to him at this point. 
Unless he went to ask for help from top doctors, he wouldn't be able to know the root of the problem. However, all of those top doctors were related to big forces and could leak his physical condition. He had to wait to diagnose himself by someone trustworthy. Dedian came to the hall. Jake, Sander, and others were sent back to the Ryan Castle so the hall was empty and quiet. However, Dedian was accustomed to the silence. He looked up at the distant sky. He slowly recovered his eyes as he looked at Nicholas. The rain has stopped. Get some pastry and tea ready. Nicholas was surprised but didn't say anything. He went to the kitchen. Dedian sat on the sofa in the hall. He quietly read a book. It didn't take long for hoofs of the horses to echo from the outside of the castle. Reed and remnants of the escorts quickly stopped the carriage. A man pulled out a medal and Reed allowed them to enter after checking it. Master, people from the Knights Hall have come to see you. Nicholas quickly came to report. Dedian didn't lift his head. Let them come. Yes. After moments, Nicholas came into the hall as a young man followed after him. The young man saw Dedian sitting on the sofa. He came forward and greeted Dedian according to the ceremony of the knights. Greetings, master. I'm Bolt, a silver knight from the knights' hall. Sit down. Dedian put away the book and smiled at Bolt. He glanced at Nicholas. Nicholas ordered a servant to prepare pastry and tea. He was feeling curious as how Dedian predicted that someone would come for a visit. Bolt sat in front of Dedian. He handed out an envelope and respectfully said, Master, I'm here to give this to you. Please check it. Dedian nodded and opened the envelope. He skimmed through the content and looked at Bolt. Please go back and tell that there is a barbarian invasion. The civilians in residential district and aristocrats in residence of the commercial district face the risk of death at this point. I will go to the battlefield soon and I don't have time to accept the knighthood ceremony at the moment. Please forgive me for this. If I can survive then we will go through the ceremony after the war. There was a trace of respect in Bolt's eyes as he looked at Dedian. I had heard that Master had risked his own life and personally rushed to the battlefield. He didn't only guard the Scarlet Valley but fought for bitter sixteen hours and killed hundreds of barbarians. Moreover you were able to help people of the South from the mutilation. In addition you have also captured a barbarian from the royal family. It's admirable. I was ashamed compared to you. As a silver knight I had to follow orders and stay in the commercial district. It's humiliating as knight not to be personally involved in the war. Bolt sighed. Dadian smiled. Justice, obeying orders, following the law is also part of the spirit of the knighthood. You may be considered a knight and doesn't need to fight the enemy personally. Bolt nodded as he heard Dadian. Master, as you can't attend the ceremony, then I'll go back to inform. Goodbye. The Dark King. Chapter 398. Nicholas sent away the knight and turned back to the hall. He looked at the letter in Duduin's hands which had the badge of the knight's hall engraved on it. He was envious and curious. He didn't know which knight position the knight's hall had granted Dedian. Could he become a silver knight from the beginning? Dedian glanced at Nicholas and threw the envelope onto the table. Take it to my study room. Yes. Nicholas replied with a smile but his heart was cold. He held onto the envelope as went upstairs. Although he was curious but he didn't want to open the envelope on his own. This was not something a butler could do and he had lost all the opportunities for a pardon. They directly gave me the identity of a golden knight. I think alone by my accomplishments it would be difficult to get this glory. It should be related to my identity as a master of the temple. Power is really a good thing. Duduen's mouth curled up into a smile. We should pressure the other nobles? Old Fulin's face slightly changed as he checked the letter. It's time to take out the net. I hope it's strong and large enough to catch those big fish. We won't have a second chance. Sander, who was next to him, was perplexed as he couldn't help but say, Father, the young master. Master Dean wants us to deal with Melon Consortium. Yes. Old Fulin slowly opened the oil lamp and put the letter into it. The flame engulfed and burned the letter. The identity of the master is enough to encourage people against the Melon Consortium. There has to be many families who have applied to withdraw from Melon Consortium by now. Their foundation is shaky at this point and it will eventually collapse. Sander frowned. Father, although the Melon Consortium seems to be finished but the dying tiger still can kill the wolf. It is not so easy to eat such a big piece of pie. He wants you to pressure the other aristocrats. In case of danger he can wait away while we won't have a chance. Old Fulin slowly shook his head. He won't do that. Sander heard his confident tone. However, the emotions that were filled in his heart for a long time had turned him angry. He whispered, 
Father, I can't understand the reason why you believe him without a question. He was a prisoner and a ferocious hunter. After so much time, we have seen that he isn't as simple as we have imagined him to be. The amazing talent is just a coat covering him. Under that coat, a cold, ruthless heart is hidden. Old Feline slowly turned around and looked at him, but he didn't say anything. Sander felt that he couldn't stop, so he continued to pour out everything he felt as his father's gaze was focused on him. Father, I know that he has an affection to our Ryan family, but he is just using us. He coerced you to bail him out. Although he promised to bring us back to the heyday of the Ryan family, but how can we believe just his words? He made the new textile machine which helped to improve the life of Ryan family. But all over again his purpose was to use us. He had no background so he had to rely on nobles such as us for protection. Melon Consortium would be able to throw him into the prison by moving few strings. That's why he had to support us so that we can shelter him. At the final analysis it's just he has been using us. I thought that he was just a talented teenager but now it seems that he is simply a devil. He is more terrifying than we have imagined. Melon Consortium has gone through decades of suffering and attacks but were able to survive. It took only a short year for this devil to put the Melon Consortium into a desperate situation. Just a year. Now he has become a master. He is almost in part with an aristocrat. There are countless nobles willing to become feather on his wings. We are just a declining nobility. He is so cold-blooded towards others. Why would he care about us? For him we are just loyal dogs. You are mistaken. Old Fulin shook his head as he interrupted Sander's speech. Sander slightly bit his lips as he looked at Old Fulin. He didn't fear his father, but he had to follow the etiquette in front of the old patriarch. Old Fulin slowly said, I knew that our family was harboring a devil since the time he murdered Deacon Huey. Naturally, I don't believe in anything that he says and I don't believe that he may be a loyal person. But I'm convinced of one thing which is pretty important. What? Sander was startled. The devil is described as cruel, greedy, and violent, but he is different. In addition to those he has pride. Old Fuling continued, He may not necessarily be part of our family, but because of his pride he will never treat us as pawns. It will trample his own self-esteem. Sander was startled as he listened in silence. Old Fuling stared at him, You don't have to fear him. Although he is cold-blooded and ruthless, but this is how you survive. That's the only way to end the Melon Consortium and that's the only way that will take him to the apex. Do you remember something called Pyramid from the Book of Golden Desert? It's the same thing. We live a life which seems similar to a pyramid. How can you step onto the top row and overlook the world if you don't want to step over others? Sander bowed his head as he bit his lips. Follow his instructions and put pressure on different families. It would be inconvenient for him to come forward. It will be suspicious. Old Fuline softly said. I know, father. Sander sighed. In the afternoon, Dedian was eating lunch when Gwyneth and Sergei came back. There were holes and scratches all over their armors. They looked like beggars. Fortunately, they had washed clean their armors and there were no blood stains. However, it was easy to see how fierce the battle had been. Moreover, Sergei's hair was trimmed and was shaved bald. Gwyneth's armor was tattered and there were few wounds on her neck. Her hair was much shorter too. However, the wounds on her neck were too shocking. Young master. Young master. Both of them greeted Dadian. Dadian glanced at them. What's with the shabby look? Didn't military give you a new armor? Sergei suddenly went crazy. Master, the military is just a gang of stingy bastards. We helped them kill those enemies and at the end we did get nothing but fart. We even cleaned our own armors. They sent a military doctor but that man seemed very reluctant to do anything. I was being discriminated against. I really wanted to smash his head. Gwyneth, who was silent most of the time, said, Yes. Dedian smiled, From your tone I assume you didn't get any serious injuries. Are you hungry? Join me for lunch. If you were offended by anyone then find them and I'll help you kill them. What do you say? The Dark King Chapter 399 The Dark King Is it alright if we kill military men? Sergei suspiciously looked at Dedian as he picked up his eyebrows. Dedian smiled, They are humans too. Why couldn't we kill them? Sergei stared back at him. Forget it, my anger is gone. However, can I kill them if I meet such people in the future? Dedian replied, Anyone below general is alright. But make sure that I don't have to clean up a lot after you. Gwyneth and Sergei were surprised at his words. Killing soldiers or officers of the military wouldn't end with just light charges. However, according to Duduen's tone, he would be able to get right of such a case if it happened. Alright. 
Sergey grinned, in the future I won't bear such worthless people. Dudian nodded, tell me about war. Both of them sat by the table while a servant brought the meal. Sergey ate and spoke, the situation is not good. Moreover the military used hunters as a cannon fodder. They directly threw us over the golden wall to fight with barbarians. If I didn't cooperate with Gwyneth then I won't come back alive. As much as I know all the primary hunters sent by the other consortia are dead. There were only one or two intermediate hunters who were lucky to survive. There were about 15 senior hunters including both of us. More than half of that are either dead or wounded. Although Dudian had heard about recent news from newspapers but not in details. It seems military was successful in weakening the private forces of all six consortia. All the noble families were eligible to have private military forces according to the size of their territory. They could have corresponding number of guards which was identified as private army. The official aim was to protect the territory but in fact those forces were used for self-protection and in case of confrontation with the military. The number of private guards under the command of the aristocrats were in extremely alarming numbers so that the military, magistrate and even the holy church didn't dare to provoke them. The hunters were undoubtedly the trump card of these private guards. But in Duduen's perspective the hunters were only small part of the consortia's top private military force. After all, the wealth that had to be protected outside the giant wall wasn't substantial in comparison to the wealth inside the giant wall. So the number of private troops within the giant wall were much more in number and quality-wise. The hunter team has to be prepared before renting a passage through the giant wall. Moreover, there were a number of restrictions related to the wealth to be made through the passage. So the best option was to form territorial guards and knights to protect the wealth inside the giant wall. As a result, the knights were the most loved private forces out of all. They were used as private guards and to stop any kind of embezzlement from the other nobles. Master, why did you call us back? What's the matter? Gwyneth asked as she picked up a small piece of steak to eat. Dadian looked at her. The first is to confirm your state. The second reason is that I'm going to set off and I need both of you on my side. Sergei glanced at Duduin's left arm which was bandaged. Did someone attack you? Yes. Sergei nodded and didn't ask questions anymore. He bowed his head to eat. Pound pound. The sounds of horses came from the outside the castle. Duduin's eyes lit up as he looked up. He saw red heats gallop towards the castle from the distance. He was able to figure out that it was actually a team of soldiers. Reed who was in duty at the gates of the castle was surprised to see troops coming towards the castle. His eyes narrowed as he saw three figures leading the troops. He quickly stood up in a straight posture. That the army came to the castle before the stop, led by a few road figure turned over and jumped horse. Greetings General Darren. Reed saluted as he was extremely surprised. General Darren was the oldest of the three Mouse brothers. The two men next to him were General Stale and Dustin who were the most trust people of the five-star General Lorenzo. Moreover, they were his personal attendants meant to protect his safety. General Lorenzo had survived more than dozens of assassinations because of three Mouse brothers. General Dale looked at Reed's arm and smiled, Is Master at home? We are here to protect his safety. Master is inside the castle. Please come over. Reed respectfully replied. Darren, Dale and Dustin followed after Reed into the castle. Darren was very surprised as they entered the castle. It was a very simply place with basic decorations. It was difficult to imagine a master of the temple living in such an ordinary castle. The servants were wearing ordinary uniforms too. It seems as if they have joined castle of a declining aristocratic family. Master, the three R. Reed came to stop in front of Dudian and introduce generals one by one. After the introduction, Darren directly said, Master, we were ordered to protect your safety. I hope you wouldn't mind if we live here for a while. Dudian's heart was full of surprises as he looked at the three. All of them emitted heat which was on par with senior hunters. They were in no way inferior to Sergei. I'll be troubling generals. Dudian politely replied. It seems the last assassination attempt had frightened the top level of the military. Gwyneth and Sergei didn't move as they sat by the table. However, both of them looked at the three generals as they could sense the dangerous aura emitted from them. Prison within the territory of the military HQ. The defensive efforts put into the protection of the prison was much more harsher than Thornflower Prison as hundreds of soldiers patrolled around the prison. Although Thornflower Prison was known as the best prison within the outer wall area but only civilians, some aristocrats, knights and similar people were jailed there. The prison of the military was used to imprison very few people. But they supervised the big, characters of business world, aristocracy, 
top-level people from magistrate or even bishops from the Holy Church. The forces behind the prisoners would not be able to invade into the prison in case of an attack. After all, the prison was within the territory of the military headquarters. At the moment, two teams of troops escorted a carriage which came to stop in front TOF the prison. Two figures stepped down from the carriage. One of them was a middle-aged maid with a mustache. He was carrying a folder with himself. The other was about 50 years old and was wearing a suit. His skin was smooth and delicate. However, his hair was white in color. Please. A colonel showed them way. Both of them followed the colonel into the prison. The guard checked their documents and looked at their eyes. The visit is limited to 10 minutes according to the general's order. The colonel's face sank. Stop being long-winded. Open the door. The guard opened the door. The guard told to them, the males are in the fourth section. Both of them walked through the corridor of the prison. It was totally different place in comparison to an ordinary prison. There were no steel windows or iron doors. It looked like a basement of a castle. The colonel came to stop in front of the fourth section. He presented their documents to the officer at duty. The officer checked their documents and opened the door into the section. Ten minutes. The colonel looked at both of the visitors. I won't be going in. Only you two. Thanks. The middle-aged man nodded and went into the section. The place was very bright. There was soft red carpet all over the ground. There was a comfortable sofa while portrait of a famous actress was hang on the wall. Next to it there were bookshelves. By the bookshelves there was a bar for wines. At the moment a person was sitting in the room. It was George Mel. The Dark King. Chapter 400. Old Patriarch. The middle-aged man wearing suit came forward. George, who was sitting on the sofa, slowly raised his head as he looked at the man. His eyes swept of the middle-aged man's body and saw the other figure behind him. His gloomy face turned into a smile. Bishop Parker, I didn't think that you would personally come to visit me. I thank you for that. I'm ashamed to meet you in such a shabby place. Should we get something to drink? The old man lifted the hood covering his head. He slightly shook his head. Old patriarch, it's me that's a shame not being able to get you out of here. I'm really sorry. Sorry. George was startled as he listened to the man's words. He felt a hunch that something bad had happened. He looked at the middle-aged man. Bladder, what's happening? The middle-aged man's face turned ugly. Old patriarch, I'm sorry, but you will have to stay here for a few more days. Mr. Mark and your granddaughter Miss Sarah have been bailed out thou. George was perplexed as he frowned. What do you mean? Bladder responded. Old patriarch, we are all friends in the top tier, but this situation is a bit too special. We can't bail you out because of no parole. No parole. George looked at him in anger. Bastard. What do you mean? Will I continue to stay here? Do you even understand who am I? Do you expect me to stay here? Are you gone crazy? Bladder bitterly replied. Old patriarch, I have investigated the details. Master Dean had captured a barbarian from the royal family and she has confessed your name while under the investigation of the military. The military has arrested you under charges of rebellion and collusion with enemies. These are big sins. Moreover, as the war continues, the military orders the shots. Don't expect to get bailed out. George shouted in anger. I don't care about the charges. This is between the military and you to solve. I only know that I want to go out now. Old Patriarch. Parker Bishop stepped forward as he sighed. We are really helpless at this point. I have used my connections in the Holy Church to act as a guarantee for you, but many people have heard about the contradictions between Mel family and the new master who has invented two legendary inventions. So most of the people who originally wanted to help you has stepped back. Alone I'm powerless. George's lips twitched as he heard the bishop's words. He grabbed the bottle of red wine on the table and fiercely smashed it to the ground. That little devil. It must be him who had colluded with the barbarians. He was the one who had captured the barbarian from the royal family. Damn it. He used the crutches to balance himself and sit back on the sofa. George's eyes were gloomy. Bladder continued. I will go to investigate this matter, but I hope that old patriarch can be patient for a while. I know that the living conditions aren't good in here, so I'll try everything to get you out as soon as possible. George looked at him. You don't understand. It's not just about my reputation, but the honor of Mel family and the whole Melon Consortium. You are telling me to live here for a few more days. It's a prison, damn it. This place a prison. Does it look like a place to live? But, but. A day. George took a deep breath and continued in a cold tone. I will give you only one day. 
If you can't resolve this problem in one day, then inform Mr. Myers and Mutton to negotiate with the military. Bladder and Bishop Parker's face changed. Bishop Parker said, Old Patriarch, you have to think twice about the situation. It's not just you but the Patriarch of Rostov family who were arrested too. You can't engage in negotiations at this point or you will completely anger the military. The military should have some evidence in their hands or they wouldn't arrest you just because of the words of a barbarian. George was slightly startled. How did the Scott Consortium react? Is Chai still in here? Blatter's face turned ugly. I just heard that Mr. Chai Rostov seems to be bailed out. What? George stared at him as he thought he had heard it wrong. Both of us were arrested, but he was bailed out. Why is it that he can be bailed out, but I have to continue to stay in here? Bishop Parker intervened. Old Patriarch Scott Consortium was in the same shoes as Mellon Consortium. However, they seemed to have close connection with Master Dean. The military let him out to give face to the master. The reason why you are still kept in here was mostly because of your relations with Master Dean. Moreover, fooling from the Ryan family also testified that Mellon Consortium had secretly tried to frame Master Dean. George suddenly coughed up as he stared at both of them. He reached out his hand to cover his mouth, but there was blood between his fingers. Old Patriarch! Bishop Parker and Bladder rushed out. George raised his other hand to stop them. He used the back of his hand to wipe the blood off his mouth. He whispered, I have ruled over commercial district for decades. I would never imagine in my wildest dreams that I would be toyed around by a 16-year-old boy at the age of 72. A master, a genius, ha ha. He turned towards Bishop Parker. I don't care about anything. Get the soldiers ready and go to war with the military if they don't want to negotiate. I don't think that they will be that tough after the action is taken. Bishop Parker anxiously replied, Old Patriarch, in that case the future of the consortium will be bleak. George stared back at him, If I don't get out now then there is no future for the consortium. There are bloodthirsty tigers out there. Do you think the other consortia are sheep? Dedian put on his hunter armor and looked at the mirror to check himself. Gwyneth and Sergei followed after him. Master, are you going out? Crone asked in haste. Dedian commanded, Prepare the horses. I'm going to the military's HQ. Yes. After moments the horse was ready outside the castle. Dedian went out and saw hundreds of figures hidden behind the bushes. They were the elite troops sent to protect him. If they were used perfectly in the battlefield then they would have played a great effect. However at this point they were acting as his bodyguards. It showed how afraid the military was because of his safety. He looked up at the clear blue sky. The dark clouds had retreated and the sun shined down the earth. Dedian smiled as he hoped onto the horse. The sky was vast. However, he saw a giant black shadow passing through the sky. He had seen such a thing many times before but never have thought about it. He looked at Reed who was next to him. Colonel, what kind of bird is that? Reed looked up and smiled. Master, that's not a bird. It is a dragon. Normally we can see them only in the black snow season. Dragon? Dedian looked at the shadow. How come I have never heard of dragons attacking the people of the outer wall? Reed laughed. Master, the dragons don't hurt humans but bless us. The Dark King Chapter 401 The Dark King Dragons don't feed on humans? Dedian looked at the giant black shadow in the sky. Do you mean to say that that big guy is a vegetarian? Reed replied, Master, you don't know about it, but the dragons are used as mounts by the Holy Church. They eat monsters from outside the giant wall. Dedian quietly looked at the giant black shadow as it disappeared in the horizon. He took back his eyes. Let's go. Dedian commanded. Gwyneth and Sergei were by Duduen's side. The three generals followed after them. The three hundred soldiers were riding behind those three. They passed through neighborhoods as they went to the north of the commercial district. The elite troops caught the attention of the ordinary residents. Although the rain had stopped but the ground was still wet. They passed along the main streets of the commercial district. Soon the people recognized Dedian. They cheered him along the way. In about one hour Dedian reached the military headquarters in the north of the commercial district. General Lorenzo and others generals were aware of their arrival because of the messenger crows. They suspended their discussions as Dedian and others arrived. Master, are you planning to go to the battlefield? Lorenzo was feeling helpless as he asked the question to learn purpose of Dujen's visit. Dedian was the most active master he had ever seen. Dedian nodded. Let's not delay time as general is aware of my intention. This time I hope that you will give me troops because of my knight identity. I hope to personally get involved in the battle. Lorenzo looked back at him. Master, I know what's passing through your mind. 
But let me remind you that Battlefield is totally different from the other places. There is just too much of a risk. Everyone will blame us if an accident happens. Dedian shook his head. I've written a letter which has my last words. I knew that General would be worried about that so I decided to act this way. I've written that everything that I do is voluntary and the military doesn't hold any responsibilities in case something happens to me. Lorenzo was silent as many ideas passed through his mind. What good a letter is if you died in the battlefield? How much credibility did it hold? If Dark Church or another force took the opportunity to guide the public opinion to attack the military. Lorenzo couldn't understand if Dadian didn't really understand these or the boy deliberately pretended not to understand. However, he was inclined towards the latter option. After all, the boy was 16 years old. Although he was an excellent architect, but the kid didn't have life experience. The inventions were related to his superb skills, but it didn't mean that he had rich life experience and was mature to understand these points. Lorenzo deeply looked at him. Master, I'll allow your request since you insist on it. However, I have one condition. Dedian stared back. Yes, dot. Please obey the military arrangement since you insist joining the battlefield. The war is about whole not the individual performance. I hope you will listen to our way of solving problems and won't rush the troops casually into the battle. Lorenzo looked at Dedian with a serious gaze. No problem. I will obey the rules. However, I hope that I wouldn't be sent into some office work because I am a master. I think I have the ability to fight the enemy on the battlefield. Dedian replied. Lorenzo nodded. Naturally, you will be on the front line. Master, please come over and check this. Dedian went to the sand table. The barbarians have occupied the golden wall. They have three options right now. The first one is to attack the silver wall protecting the residential district. The second option is to try to attack commercial district from the Red River. Their main forces are gathered over there, but I suspect they are trying to fool us. Their real purpose is to occupy the residential district. Lorenzo pointed towards the sand table as he explained to Dedian, We are protecting the silver wall, but there is scarcity in terms of staff members. Moreover, there is forest which is kind of a gap at the boundaries of the silver wall. They can detour the forest and enter the commercial district. Moreover, your steam rifle is unfavorable in the forest because of the terrain disadvantage. So it must be guarded by the elite forces. Lorenzo looked at Dedian, I will give you 2,000 soldiers and colonels to protect that area. Dedian checked the entire commercial district and the points of the battle on the table. It was obvious that indeed the forest led to the commercial district, but a large-scale war couldn't happen within the forest. By giving him 2,000 soldiers to protect the forest was an easy task. It would be very safe. All right. Dedian looked at Lorenzo. I promised to complete the task. I hope that General would punish me according to the military law if I fail. Lorenzo was relieved as he looked at the teenager. He immediately responded, I'll leave this grim task to you. I hope you won't let us down. Dedian nodded in confirmation. There was a trace of excitement in his face. Lorenzo smiled, Master, you should immediately depart to complete the task. Yes. Dedian bent to salute the general the way a soldier would do. He turned and left afterwards. The other generals shook their heads and wryly smiled as they looked at Dedian leaving the hall. I haven't seen such a master. You should rephrase it. You haven't seen such a young master. He is too young and youth tend to refuse the comfort. Unlike some consortia who try to take advantage of the war to make wealth out of it, it's way too hard to control him. Dedian left to the front of the forest with the small army. The rain had stopped and the sky was clear. The previous useless artillery once again appeared in the battlefield. The barbarians tasted the bombs as they attacked the silver wall of the residential district. The military was an advantageous situation because of the weapons. The giant frogs were useless in front of the artillery. They just became huge targets. A day passed. Barbarians paid a heavy price but were unable to occupy the silver wall. They changed their strategy and scattered into small teams. Their aim was to get into the commercial district through various regions. However, it was too late. The military had long calculated their move and have made new strategies according to such a situation. Moreover, the steam rifle was introduced at this point. The emergence of the steam rifle destroyed the plans of barbarians to do guerrilla warfare. In just three days, they retreated suffering heavy casualties. At the same time, by the forest, Dedian led 2,000 elite soldiers as well as 300 purple feather troops. Their troops were stationed by the edge of the forest. On daily basis, they caught wild animals and barbecued them. It was very comfortable. 
Several barbarian teams tried to pass by the forest however all of them were killed by the troops sent by Dedian. In reality he didn't even have to go to battlefield. The colonels were enough to solve the problem. In addition they relied on the advantage of the terrain to completely massacre the attacking barbarian teams. It was like picking credit from the air. Sergei picked the grilled rabbit leg and sat by Dedian who was holding a book, Master, it's too boring in here. When are going back? The mosquitoes at night. Dedian took the rabbit leg and retracted his eyes from the book. He spoke while ate, let's go back after eating. The colonels are enough to lead the forces stationed in here. Really? Sergei was stunned as he was casually complaining. The Dark King. Chapter 402. Apparently Dedian wasn't joking with Sergei as he called the colonel after eating the rabbit leg. There hasn't been any barbarian attacks since morning. I think all of them are killed. I'll go back to the military HQ to see if there is a need for me in the front line while you will control the troops stationed in here. Colonel was surprised as he looked at Dedian, Master, according to the orders from above we are stationed here. I? I believe that you can manage the situation. Dedian patted his shoulders and passed by the colonel. He took Gwyneth, Sergei, the Mouse Brothers and 300-hundred elite Purple Feather troops and left the forest area. He didn't return back to his castle but directly went to the military HQ. Master, are we really going to the front line? Sergei carefully asked. I was just casually chatting. You don't have to take my words too seriously. If the military blames us then we. Why they should blame us? Dedian indifferently replied. Has there been any barbarians who were able to pass into the commercial district while we were guarding the area? Ah, uh, that's... No. Dedian patted the horse to speed up the marching speed. He had not seen the newspapers because they were stationed by the forest for the last three days. However, he estimated that the barbarians were hit hard and retreated. The main reason for his thinking was that the weather was dry and the temperature was about three or four degrees. But it didn't prevent the use of the artillery. In addition to the artillery, his steam rifle should be mass-produced by now and introduced into the battlefield. In this era of the cold weapons, the emergence of the steam rifles was same as bullying the weak. The results were decided even before the begging of the battle. Military HQ, north of the commercial district. Lorenzo and several generals were standing in front of the sand table and discussing the situation. Previously, the area was covered in red flags, but now the only places where you could see those red flags were the place close to the Red River. Moreover, there were several red flags inserted behind the Golden Wall which referred to the reinforcement teams of the barbarians. Send a battalion with 200 steam rifle to annihilate these ones. Lorenzo stretched out his arm and pulled out few red flags and threw them aside. His tone was indifferent. The adjutant standing by him issued down the command. Everyone, it's almost time to recapture the Golden Wall. Lorenzo looked at the wall's design on the sand table, move the artillery from the silver wall towards the Golden Wall. Moreover, send a division of steam rifle soldiers. I want to hear the news of the recapture by tonight. Yes. General, we will be unable to station troops over the Golden Wall even if we get back the Golden Wall. The production speed of the steam rifles is good, but the most of the soldiers are sick and they haven't recovered yet. Should we go for a new conscription? Another general spoke up his opinion. Lorenzo narrowed his eyes as he slowly said, Since the beginning our aim and ultimate goal is to get back the golden wall. For time being we can't do something like that unless all our trump cards are exposed. The Holy Church and the Dark Church will infiltrate the military in such a case. In that case the sharp edges of the blade will begin to rust. I think so too. It wouldn't be difficult to capture the rest of the golden wall as long as we get a section of it back. We are able to produce 8,000 steam rifles a day and the efficiency is gradually increasing. In a day or two we will be able to mass-produce 10,000 steam rifles a day. In that case we will be able to take back the Golden Wall sooner or later, a general added. If it doesn't go like our plans then we will use the fire's bombs. Lorenzo faintly smiled. Bombs should be used as the last possible card. So far we don't need to play that one. Moreover, the damage to the Golden Wall was too serious before the barbarians snatched it. They won't be too focused on protecting it as it's relatively easy to defend from the Red Maple Mountains rather than the Broken Golden Wall. The others nodded in confirmation. The thing is that the barbarians didn't send reinforcements. Is it that they expected it? Or was there another reason? I hope that we won't be crossed, Lorenzo whispered as he narrowed his eyes. The others frowned as they looked at each other. They felt unusual about the situation too. On the way back to the military HQ, Sergei borrowed a pot of wine and newspaper from a bistro. 
He drank the wine while Dudian checked the newspapers. There was a trace of smile revealed on his face as the horses trotted forward. Dudian went to see General Lorenzo after they reached the headquarters. Lorenzo felt his head ache the moment he saw the active master. However, he had a coping method because of his last experience with Dudian. He planned to send him to stay behind the siege troops in a larger battlefield. It was a very low-risk place. Dudian gladly agreed without any objections. Master, wasn't it written in the newspaper that the most intense battles aren't happening near the Golden Wall but on other locations? How come the other areas are more important than getting back the Golden Wall? Sergei asked in a curious tone as he rode the horse. Dedian replied in a serious tone, Nonsense. The general must have his reasons to order us so. We are now soldiers and must follow his orders. Sergei uttered a cry as he weirdly looked back at Dedian. How come he wasn't aware that Dedian was such an obedient boy? He turned his head and looked at Gwyneth. Gwyneth winked at Sergei. He turned back his head and looked at the Mouse Brothers. The three General Brothers looked back at him. Sergei smiled and threw the wine bottle. General Dale, would you like a drink? Dale smiled, I never drink when I'm marching. It's just wrong. He threw back the bottle to Sergei. No wonder you are a general while I'm a soldier. Sergei reached out to grab the bottle and turned his head. He slowly drank the wine. A messenger riding on a horse began to loudly shout in the streets of the commercial district before the sunset. Golden Wall is recaptured. The residents were surprised as they heard the news. They warmly cheered as they heard the messenger. Some who were packing their things to move close to the inner wall stopped doing so. In the last three days that the rain stopped the situation was completely reversed. The news of military winning back was heard more and more. The residents of the commercial and residential districts were relieved as they heard the news of Golden Wall being seized back. It stabilized the population. Moreover, the news of the military's counterattack didn't stop there. The news regarding the military winning back the different regions came one after another. Moreover, the information about Dedian being stationed in the forest and wiping out barbarians was widely spread too. Although Dedian didn't even made a step out through the battles but his name was hang in every news reported. He was described as brave, fearless, matchless, wise, and so on. All the credit was attributed to him. The Dark King Chapter 403 In the blink of an eye another two days passed. The Golden Wall once again became the barrier to be used by the military. The barbarians were defeated and expelled behind the Golden Wall. However, they weren't planning to easily abandon the Red Maple Mountains. Although the Red Maple Mountains belonged to the outer edge of the commercial district, but at the end of the day it was within the king's fort. Its lands were blessed with rich resources. Moreover, once they evacuated from the Red Maple Mountains, then they will be exiled for a long time. However, military wasn't anxious to attack the Red Maple Mountains but focused on soldiers to recover. Their main plan was to consolidate the defense of the Golden Wall. At the same time, they were increasing the inventory of weapons and other resources. Gradually, statistics about the casualties and other information was published by the military newspaper and the other newspapers that belonged to the consortia. They identified few generals, colonels who died in the war as heroes. Moreover, several outstanding commanders and generals were praised in those reports. Du Duen's name was also included. Dedian knew that the military feared to be ambushed by the barbarians, so they preferred not to chase after the barbarians at the first chance. After all, the Red Maple Mountains had fallen into the hands of the barbarians, and it would be much easier to ambush them in case the military was tempted to give them a chase. In addition, the military waited for the regular soldiers to be cured before making a move. After all, the more they dragged the time, the more chance they had to produce steam rifles. We should also go back. Dedian called to Sergei and Gwyneth. He declined the escort of the Mouse Brothers and the rest of the soldiers. The Mouse Brothers didn't force Dedian as they evaluated the situation. Moreover, they had personally seen Du Duen's extraordinary strength. He was no less inferior to them. In addition, there were two senior hunters who were by his side. In the end, trying to hurt Dedian was a difficult thing at this point. As the war by the Golden Wall had ended even if Dedian was injured, there wouldn't be any relations to the military. The war is finally over. We can go back and take a good rest. Sergei's heart was racing as he shouted out. Dedian faintly smiled, the war is just beginning. Do you want to be lazy? Sergei was startled, beginning. The previous one was the war between the military and the barbarians. Now it's time for our war. Dedian continued, both of you will be busy after we return. Sergei woke up. I had almost forgotten about the damn melon consortium. By the way, none of the two senior hunters that they had sent into the war died. 
especially the woman. It seems that she had the magic marks from the Black Weaver. The abilities she had are terrifying if she would use them for assassination. In the previous battle, she just went down the soil until the end of the war. She was unharmed. That is a cheat. Dedian remembered Glenn's appearance as he heard Sergei's words. If she didn't die, then we will hire her. Afterwards, she will become one of us. Do you want to recruit her? Sergei shook his head. It's not so easy to recruit a senior hunter because of the contract she has signed with the consortium. There are two options. First is for her to die and the second is for the Melon Consortium to collapse. Dedian smiled but kept his silence. Gwyneth, who was riding the horse parallel to Dedian, suddenly asked, Master, yesterday we had a very good opportunity to attack, but you seemed reluctant to fight for the military. Why? Oh. Dedian looked at her with interest. What do you think? Gwyneth frowned. I can't figure out. Young master, please enlighten me. Dedian smiled. It's better to leave some space while acting. Moreover, it's not my own fight, so why should I be so desperate? There was a trace of doubt in Gwyneth's eyes. She seemed not able to grasp what he meant. Think about it from the perspective of interests and results, Dedian smiled. Sergei whispered to himself as he looked at Dedian. Something bad is going to happen as I see him act too honest these days. The residents of the commercial district recognized Dedian as they passed through the streets. They saw hundreds of people holding flowers and waiting by both sides of the river by the castle as they came close to Duduin's castle. Are they here to welcome us? Sergei was surprised and felt excitement as he saw the crowd. Dedian nodded as he slowly rode the horse. In an instant the crowd screamed out loud as they saw Dedian. They gathered close to Dedian and others. Some of them fell to the ground and were trampled by the other excited people. Dedian naturally noted that some of the fell down within the crowd. He only took a glance. There was a gentle smile on his face while he was wearing a knight armor. He was like a bright knight which caused the woman to scream out loud and throw flowers at him. Dedian rode the horse while the crowd followed after him. Gwyneth also saw the women who accidentally fell to the ground and knew what they were after. However, she didn't care much as the tsunami-like cheers drowned their voices. Sergei was grinning as his mouth curved from one ear to the other. Although he knew that the cheers and applause weren't mean for him, but he was still pretty excited to be in such an environment. Dedian came to stop before the castle. He dismounted and looked at the people by the gate. He raised his hand and waved. The crow cheered once again. He didn't say anything but went into the castle. Crone and Noyce also quickly came out. Noyce pulled the horses while Crone said to Dedian, Master, finally you are back. Incredible things have happened these last few days. Dedian looked calm. Send someone outside to tell the crowd that I will rest so I need a silent environment. Crone nodded, yes. Dedian was sitting in the hall when Crone returned. He had taken off the night armor and put on comfortable white clothing. He was drinking coffee. Tell me. The Dark King. Chapter 404. Crone quickly approached. Master, George, Mark, and Sarah from the Mel family were secretly arrested by the military and the news had spread within a small range. However, when old Patriarch Fooling got the gist of the news, he spread them all over the commercial district. The aristocratic circles were boiling about the news while the stocks of the Mellon Consortium plummeted. There are problems in all of their industrial chains. What happened afterwards? Dedian calmly asked as he took a sip of coffee. The Mellon Consortium tried to rebel when they were aware that military wasn't open for the negotiations. They wanted all three of them to be released, however the military didn't agree. Crone whispered. Did they rebel? No. We have to be a little bit patient. Dedian asked. Are they still held by the military? Crone nodded, yes. The others who saw that they were still being detained by the military began to withdraw from the Mellon Consortium. As much as I know it's only a name only at this moment. I've heard Old Fulin say that he had spread the news of Mellon Consortium colluding with barbarians and also trying to frame you. The major families have broken their ties with the Mellon Consortium and most of them joining our New World Consortium. Dedian nodded, the war is over no the old dogs are going to bite each other. Crone was surprised to see Dudian's calm face as if he had expected everything. He thought Dudian would have endless joy but he had a dull reaction instead. He bowed, Master, the Melon Consortium is almost defeated. Shouldn't we celebrate? There's nothing to celebrate. Dudian said, you can't put the arrows away after the first shot. The results have yet to come out. Not to mention it's just the first step and there is nothing gratifying yet. Crone whispered, Master, you had sent me to arrange people into the residential district. I've arranged them to stay in the hotel. The situation is chaotic. 
I'm worried that they will mix with us and it will end as a disadvantage for you so. Dudian slowly said, asked Noyce to take them away and give them opportunity to pick a house in the commercial district. Buy them whatever they want. The war has just ended and the property prices are cheap. Let Patriarch fooling to buy large quantities of low-cost real estate using the resources of the consortium. The population will rise in some time and the prices of the housing will increase too. Crone nodded, yes. The war had temporarily came to an end. The commercial and the residential districts were devastated. The outer edge of the Golden Wall was the most affected by the barbarian invasion. Even the households of the residents had heavy losses by the Golden Wall. The manors were burned. Everything had to be rebuilt. The rain had affected the war too. Most of the regular soldiers had fallen ill because of the continuous rain which stopped after several days. Fortunately the legendary steam rifle was invented and even the reserve troops were able to use it to force back the barbarians. Ten days of continuous war had destroyed countless families. There were numerous victims but also large number of people who had made wealth. There were consortia who took the opportunity to gain wealth because of the war. They raised the prices for military supplies and everything else. In just ten days they had made as much as wealth they had acquired in the last ten years. Of course there were some wealthy people who had gone bankrupt and become ordinary people. The other consortia received the news that Dudian was back. They sent messengers with gifts. At the same time the reporters from different newspapers came over to interview Dudian but all of them were declined. Dudian wrote to Patriarch Fulin to set up a newspaper agency. He was going to give all his future interviews to their own newspaper. It would greatly enhance the sales of their own newspaper. In addition, the best way to shape the public opinion was to rely on media. The newspapers were the only means of the propaganda in this era. Old Fulin had excellent ability as he registered the newspaper by the afternoon. Moreover, he was able to recruit staff from other non-consortium newspaper by giving high salaries. The name of the newspaper was very simple. It was called New World News. Old Fulin temporarily left the newspaper under Sanders' management. He made sure to contact and talk with printing factories to be able to make the first sale of the New World News by the next morning. Because of Old Fulin's noble identity and Duduin's identity as a master the most of their problems were solved easily. Sander let the interview to come and have a chat with Dedian after the dinner. Dedian sat in the hall next to Sander after the dinner. There was a woman holding a notebook in front of him. There were two young assistants by her side. Sidney Hart was excited and nervous as it was her first time to see a legendary figure. The palm which she used to hold the quill kept sweating. She smiled as he looked at Dedian. Master, can we start now? Yes. Dedian put down the cup of tea and indicated her to begin to interview. Of course, the questions had been revised before. Sydney took a deep breath. Master Dean, what was your childhood dream? My dream was to become a master and change the lives of the people with my invention. I want to see a world without poverty and suffering. Dudian smiled. Sydney complimented him. The master's dream are different from the ordinary people such as us. They are so great and extraordinary. Dudian corrected her. Man isn't great because of his dreams, but because he can realize that dream. Sydney was startled. There was a trace of admiration in her eyes, Master, as far as I know your background is a civilian. The talent and effort are inseparable when we think about your achievements. Which one do you think is more important? Talent or diligence? Three points account for talent while seven account for diligence in terms of success. Dedian calmly replied. In his mind, try as hard as you want trying to catch up with the pace of others and you will know how important talent is. Sydney nodded, Master, I have seen a lot of people try very hard but still fail. Is it because they don't have talent? Dadian responded, Many people try to deceive themselves. They put effort but it's to show off in front of others. Sydney quickly recorded his answers and asked, Master, according to your argument, will the gold will always shine? Yes, as long as it is gold. Unfortunately, most of you are just stones. How will you shine? Sydney nodded, Most of us are eager to achieve our dreams that you did. We are willing to work hard too. Do you have any good suggestions? First learn to get up early. Or sleep more. That way your dreams may come true. Sydney chuckled. Master, you are humorous. Right now you have both fame and fortune. What do you think of wealth? Wealth doesn't make people happy. Dedian said in a serious tone. Peasants like to hear rich people say so. Sydney continued with a question. Master, which one do you think is more important? Morality or wealth? Without a doubt the morality. Dedian continue. 
a person with good morality will make the others love and respect them from heart. After his death, he would become an immortal. The money makes people decadent. Unfortunately, most of them are working under those decadent wealth men. Sidney was stunned by his reply, Master is indeed a noble knight. I hope that after today's interview everyone will follow Master's path and be good people. Thank you for your compliments. Dedian said, we will naturally treat it kindly by others if we treat others with kindness. Don't we? How can these people bully you if you aren't kind? Sidney nodded, Master, the military spread rumors that you have colluded with the barbarians at the beginning of the war. Although later it was proved that you were being framed but it certainly had affected you. How was your mood at the time? Dadian smiled, there is a good saying that a body won't be afraid of its shadow. As an upright person I don't fear the slanders of others. I didn't care about these rumors and continued with my research. How could I ignore those three tigers? Sidney said, Master is really indifferent to the fame and fortune. You are indeed the youngest master of the temple. The war was won because of your new invention. Do you want to say anything? That was my responsibility. Dadian replied, I want you all to thank me. Sidney said, After the war there are many who think that the outer wall are is not peaceful and the conditions aren't good. Do you have any advice to appease them? It's meaningless to complain. They have to build and guard their homes by their own hands. Dadian responded, Unfortunately you can't go to the inner wall. You can't leave the giant wall either. You are all screwed. Sidney nodded, I believe that many people will respond to your encouragement. Many homes were destroyed and many happy families were broken because of the war. Do you have anything to say to them? Dadian pondered a bit. Don't give up. Each of you is the hope of this world. The real constructors of this world are not those extravagant singers or politicians or the wealth businessmen but the honest and good people like you. So don't give up the hope and create the world that you want to live in. You are the most important people in the world. What would government and businessmen do without you? Sydney's eyes lit up. Master, do you really think so? Do you think I'm kidding? Dadian laughed. Sydney immediately reacted. No, no, master. I was just excited. Forgive me. I hope you don't mind. No, let's continue, Dadian added. Sydney nodded like the chicken pecked the rice and continued the interview. All right, I have decided on a novel after reading first two chaps. It has everything what TDK has but better. I'm in love with the new novel and hopefully we will publish the translation by the end of this month. I would like to thank Scalinark for pledging $3 at our Patreon page. The Dark King Chapter 405 Interview gradually came to an end as the time passed. Master, I have heard that the Knights Hall authorized your knighthood during the war but you didn't went to the ceremony but instead joined the battlefield. Don't you want to be an official knight? Sidney checked the script and asked. The main purpose of the questions was to give more opportunities to Dedian to express his thoughts. Dedian smiled, the sole reason that I choose to rush into the battlefield was because I felt myself as a knight. The duties of the knight has to be fulfilled. That's what real knighthood is. Good. Sidney continued. Master, thanks to the invention of the legendary weapon, Steam Rifle, we were able to defeat the barbarians and expel them out of the Golden Wall. Will you be able to invent another legendary item in the future? Dedian smiled, it's impossible to guarantee such an invention, but I'll do my best to continue to research in the area. The results can be known only in the future. Moreover, the credit is not only the Steam Rifles, but also due to the soldiers of the military. They exchanged their blood and life to the victory. In addition, I would like to thank the consortia who actively provided the facilities and supplies to the military. It was because of their selfless dedicated that we were able to unite as the people of the Outer Wall. Unfortunately, there was a single consortium whose performance has disappointed me. Sidney knew what Dedian wanted to say but still asked, Would Master please name that consortium? I would prefer to keep silent as not refer to the consortium's name. It would have bad effect on their business but I believe that the reader will be able to guess which consortium I'm talking about. My purpose to talk about them was to persuade them not to repeat the mistakes once again in the future. Dadian calmly replied. Sidney quickly recorded and said, Master, thanks for the interview. I'm sorry to disturb your valuable time. It's late and you should pay attention to your safety on your way back. Dadian responded with a smile. The next day, morning, the weather was sunny, north of the commercial district. Prison? Military HQ. Two teams of knights wearing dark exquisite armors were standing outside the prison. Everyone in the commercial district were aware which family the knights served. On the chests of the armor dark red flowers were engraved which were banner of the Mel family. 
The soldiers had surrounded the entire prison. Their faces were cold as they looked at the knights. The door of the prison slowly opened. Bladder helped George Mel to walk out. Mark and Sarah silently followed them from the back. The warm rays of the sun shined upon their faces. George raised his hand to cover the sun. His eyes narrowed because of the sun rays as he had spent last few days in the dark room. Mark looked at the carriage waiting for them and checked the knights serving their family. Although he had been in prison for the last few days but the news were conveyed to them. He already knew about the changes in the outside world. He slowly moved behind George. Sarah bit her lips as her slender hands hold onto her skirt. She knew that the root of problems was her. She was ready to exchange her own life for God to pity her and give another chance to go back in time. Master, you get on. Miss, be careful. The carriage slowly left the prison and entered the commercial district. The knights were protecting the carriage as they rode on horses besides it. However, as soon as they entered the commercial district, George and others heard the curses aimed at them. All three of them frowned. What is it? Sarah's face was cold and her mood was gloomy as she heard people cussing at them. She moved the curtain and saw that the pedestrians were all over the roads. They were pointing at their carriage and cursing very loudly. The Mel family was attached to many dirty words that were poured out of the dirty mouths of those. Damn peasants! Sarah was bewildered. She was about to ask the coachman to stop so that the knights could find the people who cursed at them. But Mark whispered, Sarah, don't do anything unreasonable. Sarah turned around to look at her father. She suddenly thought of something and bit her lips. It's that damn good-for-nothing Dean. It is certainly him who have cooperated with the other consortia to damage the reputation of the Mel family. George, who was sitting opposite to her, slowly closed his eyes. Use your brain instead of getting angered by things like these. Think about how to fight back. Anger can't solve a problem. Sarah bowed her head. The carriage passed through the streets. Despite the protection of the knights, the angry civilians cursed out loud. However, they weren't able to keep up with the carriage. Sarah's face was red because of anger as she got off the carriage. Even if she ordered the knights to change the direction, the cursing wouldn't be stopped. Their family castle was located in the most prosperous lot and to go there they had to pass from the main streets. She heard all kinds of harsh and dirty abuses aimed at them. She had never heard so many dirty words since birth. Her hatred of Dudian had reached an unprecedented level. Master, Miss. Butler quickly led the servants. George got off the carriage and moved to the castle. What has happened today? Yesterday, Bladder told me that in addition to the withdrawal of some shareholders, there were no other troubles. Why it is so today? The butler whispered, Master, you are not aware, but yesterday New World Consortium established a newspaper. They had interviewed Master Dean and it was published this morning. Master Dudian had told in the interview that he was disappointed in a consortium in this war. George Mel stopped. The butler looked at George. His heart was trembling as he served Mel family for many years but had never seen George expose such an angry expression. He was disappointed? Just because he was disappointed. George's arm which was grabbing onto the crutch shook. His chest was thumping up and down. He was an all-powerful man when he was young. He had lived his life in comfort. But now he was scolded nonstop for a few streets of ride just because a 16-year-old boy said that he was disappointed. Sarah's face was full of anger. He was disappointed by a consortium. Everyone would know that he was talking about us as even the fool knows that we were in prison for the last few days. Bastard. Damn cheap bastard. She wanted to curse to push out the anger, but she didn't know too many words that could be used to cuss. Mar's face was gloomy as he clenched his fists. The Dark King Chapter 406 Master, they were released from prison. Crone respectfully said. Dedian put down the newspaper and smiled. What happened on the road? Nothing. Crone whispered. According to your orders, old Fulin hired some people and they abused them along the way. However, they didn't respond. Dedian faintly smiled. They are decent as they can hold back. Master, what do we do now? Crone whispered. We will see their performance. Dedian indifferently said. I'll write a letter and call Noyce to personally take it to the temple. Ten days later I will make open to public conference where I will explain the principles of the steam faction. Moreover, I'll take eight students. Crone replied, yes. The second thing. Inform old Fulin to buy a knight from Mel family. He should use as much as money he can. Afterwards, let the knight to come and meet me. Remember to say to him to choose the strongest one from their family. Dedian quietly said, In addition, tell the old fooling to inform the shareholders from the Melon Consortium that I want to have students. If those shareholders wants to go back to Melon, then tell him not to insist and let them go. 
Chrome was startled, yes. Master Skagen received the letter from the family servant of Dudian. He was overjoyed as he read the content. He put away the letter and sent a servant to notify his own students, immediately notify the temple and publicize it in headlines of the newspaper that Master Dean will explain the details of STEAM. Concept in 10 days in a lecture and will choose eight potential students. The students were very surprised. They turned and left in excitement. These last days the most discussed topic in the temple was the new concept and its role. However, the architects still had little knowledge even though few masters had come out to explain. It would be much more easier to understand if the creator of the concept himself explained everything in a lecture. The message spread like wildfire. The nobles of the commercial district were thrown into an uproar even though the news weren't published yet. They sent people to inquire about the arrangements of the public lecture and the conditions for Dudian to accept students. Only the bottom-level aristocrats and the ordinary civilians weren't aware of the news. They were still immersed in the grief because of relatives and friends who had died in the homes and properties that they had lost. Father, Ram, Bethel, and Kuhn families are willing to return to the consortium. Mark was tired, but they want three times more share in comparison to their previous standing. Each would have 8% of the shares. The rest of the families haven't responded yet, but the Milan family wants 30% of the shares to join back. In addition, Rudolph's butler sent message that Rudolph wants to completely quit the consortium. George was sitting on a large chair. His eyes were as frosty as an ice block, a group of idiots. If they want it, then give it to them. After we pass this hardship, we will marginalize them out. Milan family and Rudolph are being way too stubborn. 30%. Inform Milan family that we will give them 20% of the shares. The number of shares in our hands must not be less than 51% or we'll be ruined by that kid. Mark frowned. Father, what about Rudolph? You should talk to him personally. George's face was gloomy. His father co-founded the Mellon Consortium with me. If his father had heard that he wants to quit. Mark sighed. I know but Rudolph has a stubborn character. He had withdrawn a lot of funds earlier on so I think it would be hard to persuade him with words. In my opinion we have to think of a way to deal with the kid first and pressure others afterwards. We are in an unfavorable situation because of the kid. It's a very sensitive time right now. The little devil will be prepared for outmove. We have to think of another way. George continued. Tell Rudolph that if he does invest, then both our families will rule the Mellon Consortium in the future. Mark nodded. All right. He was about to leave when a crow with golden feathers flew through the window into the room. It was the crow used by the temple. It was believed that it descended from a noble crow. George stretched out his arm and the crow landed on it. He took the envelope. He shook it and opened. His face turned ugly as he skimmed through the content. He shredded the letter into pieces. The crow flied in surprise because of George's instant action. Two golden feathers fell off as the crow flew away. Mark's heart sank. Father, what has happened? The little devil. George clenched his fists in anger. He will hold a public lecture in ten days. Moreover, he will accept students. Damn bastard. He has announced the news at this time to scare off the other nobles. The little beast. Mark's face turned gloomy. The more potential an architect was the more aristocrats tried to have relations with them. Dudien's move was like throwing a seductive fruit. There would be many people who would be willing to be the student of the youngest master in the history of the temple. Moreover, the others will try to clear off their relationship with Melon Consortium. They were bound to get isolated this way. Mark clenched his fists. There was a trace of remorse in his heart. If he was aware that the kid was so dangerous, then he wouldn't have let his daughter to deal with him, but he would personally act it to get rid of him. The room was silent. Only the rough breathing of the two echoed. George gradually restrained his anger. Suddenly the door was knocked. He said in a hoarse but low tone, Come in. The doorknob twisted and the butler stepped in. A middle-aged man wearing a black armor followed after the butler. Mark recognized the middle-aged man. Ron, what's the problem? Ron nodded. Master, sire. New World Consortium has sent people to contact me. Oh, George's eyes were cold. What did you say? The butler was shocked as he subconsciously took two steps back. Ron calmly said, Master, the New World Consortium has sent a person to contact me. They are ready to give me 500,000 gold coins to sell Mel family. They want me to go and find Master Dean and listen to his orders. George narrowed his eyes. 500,000 gold coins. Did you come over to inform us? Yes, I will never sell off Mel family. Ron replied. How can I believe you? George asked. Ron looked at George then at Mark. 
Sire, I swore to serve and defend Mel family for life when you saved my life. Don't you believe me? Mark nodded as he looked at George. Father, I believe in him. Ron would never betray us. They have chosen and picked the wrong person. Do you think I would pick an untrustworthy person as the head of our knights? The Dark King Chapter 407 George stared at Mark. Since you put it in words in such a way, then I'll hand over it to you. Yes. Mark looked at Ron. Did you respond to their request? Ron shook his head. I haven't responded yet. Good. Mark nodded. The kid uses his identity as a master to isolate Melon Consortium. Now he wants to use the people around us to check us. H.M. Let's play with him. Agree to his request. Ron nodded. Master, so I will pretend to be bought by them and send intelligence back to you. Yes. Mark, continue. But you have to act so that they couldn't detect it. I will. Ron nodded. Mark replied, All right, leave now. Yes. Ron left the room. George slowly said, Trusting him. Would he exchange our trust? It would out. Mark slightly shook his head. Father, I wouldn't believe others, but he is like this shadow. He is my most trusted man. He wouldn't sell us out if there were five million gold coins involved in the transaction. He is a man who doesn't care about money. George stared at him. We can't afford to lose at the key moment. Mistakes are not allowed. Don't worry. Mark said in a serious tone. Even if it happens as father says, then there is nothing much to do now. I believe that we can play out that kid. George nodded. I would like to see if the kid will want to secretly assassinate me. It's better to know in advance if that's the case. Mark continued, but this matter woke us up. I don't know if the others have been bought in addition to Ron. It seems it's the time to reorganize. Yeah. George nodded. Young master. Crone joined Dudin's study room. The news from the Ryan family came that they had bought off the commander of the Mel family's knights. What should they do? Dudian slowly put down the book. They shouldn't do anything. Let him come and meet me first. I have some stuff to talk to him in person. All right. Crone left the room. Sire, I have communicated with the other side. I'll see Master Dean directly. Ron handed out the note to Mark. The note was taken out from a bread and it had the fragrance of a fresh bread. Mark narrowed his eyes. It seems that he is afraid to leave evidence so he wants to visit him. He must be thinking about talking important things with you. Maybe he even will tempt your loyalty. Mark pondered for a little and said, All right, visit him. But if you find a suitable opportunity, then directly kill him. That will be the end. Yes. Ron decisively answered. He knew that what would be the consequences if he killed Dudian. But he promised without a hesitation or second thought. Mark patted his shoulder, he will be a guard at the first visit. So try to gain his trust. There will be opportunities in the future. Yes, Ron replied. All right, go now. Dadian made sure that Crone and Nicholas ate first. He ate after them. After the dinner he asked Crone to call Sergei. He threw a stack of gold notes in front of Sergei. Go to Moulin Rouge and play around the night. You are not allowed to come back unless you finish all of the money. Sergei was yawning but the moment he heard Duduen's words his eyes went wide, Master, why are you giving me the money? I'm compassionate towards my subordinates. Dadian indifferently said. Sergei thought that the sun rose out from the west. He quickly poached the gold notes and directly put them in the back pocket of his pants. He rubbed his pocket as he smiled. If that's the case then I have to complete the task. Remember, go to Moulin Rouge. Dadian indifferently said, Your foundation will be wasted if you don't play around. Sergei felt coldness around his crotch. Master, I will. I'm a practical man. Leave. Dudian waved. Sergei helplessly replied. I'm off to play around then. Crone whispered after Sergei left. Master, are you worried that Sergei isn't trustworthy? Is it because of tonight the Mel family night would come over? Dudian replied, he is trustworthy. Prepare for the meeting. Crone left, but he was full of doubts. Ron was disguised using an ordinary clothing. He had hired an ordinary horse and came to Duden's castle. Ron stopped in front of the gates and removed his hood. Who is it? Noyce shouted as he was standing behind the gates. However, when he saw the posture of the man, he predicated the man's identity. Ron said the prearranged code, full moon. Noyce pushed open the gates, come in. Ron often heard the legend of the genius teenager while in the Mel family, but it was his first time visiting the teenager's castle. The hall was shabby and dimly lit. His eyes fell on the figure sitting on the sofa. The teenager was handsome and tall as it was said in the rumors. He had an elegant temperament. Ron Cohen. 
Dedian looked at the knight. Ron put off his hood. That is me. Are you Master Dean? Yes. Dedian said, it's the first time we are meeting so I can't trust you. Your body will be checked. I don't allow people to carry weapons in my castle. Ron nodded and took out his dagger. I use this weapon for self-protection. He bent down and put the dagger on the ground. There was a trace of smile on Dudian's face. Good. Ron, you are very honest as knight. You are truly worthy of the golden knight title given to you by the knight's hall. But we will have to check your body. I hope you won't mind it. Ron nodded. No harm. Dedian waved his hand. A girl standing by Dedian approached Ron. Her hands touched his shoulders and other places where a weapon could be hidden. Ron saw that the girl wasn't simply a maid. He frowned as there were traces of doubts in his heart, but he preferred to stay silent. He raised his arm to let the girl check his chest. Puff. A pain burst in his chest. Ron's pupils shrank as he shook his hands and tried to punch the girl. However, the girl was able to increase the distance between them with a few simple steps. She was like a soft breeze. Ron looked down to see a small needle pierce through his chest. His face turned ugly as he looked at Dedian who was sitting on sofa. He bit his lips as he knew that the needle had poison. He asked, Master, why? Dedian slowly blew the cup of coffee in his hand. You may not be aware, but your only use is dying in here. Ron stared at him in anger. He growled, you villain. I'll kill you. He picked up the dagger from the ground and rushed at Dedian. The Dark King Chapter 408 A smile appeared on Duduen's face as he looked at angry Ron. He flicked the cup of hot coffee and kicked the table in front of him. Hot water splashed onto Ron's face. However, the pain from that was much less than the anger in his heart. He kicked the table and broke it into two as he approached Dedian. He stabbed the dagger. Whoosh! At this point, Ron felt a light breeze from behind. It was Gwyneth who had sword in her hand. Ron didn't care much about his defense. He still kept rushing towards Dedian. He was ready to give up his own life to take away Dudian's life. Dedian quietly looked at him. Suddenly he raised his hand and accurately grasped Ron's wrist. Ron's body abruptly stopped. Ron's eyes widened as he incredibly watched the boy. He was almost speechless because of the power pressuring his body from his wrist. Sorry, it's just you can't kill me. Dudian smiled. He pulled the Ron from his arm. The dagger cut off his clothes and a blood stain was on his body as dagger slightly scratched Dudian's chest. Ron was startled, however there was no time for him to react as a sharp whistle echoed from behind. At the moment he felt that the pressure put by Dudian was so tedious that he wasn't controlling his body. He was terrified by the strength put out by the teenager. His body turned automatically as he saw the maid who had searched him. The girl was holding onto a sword and her eyes were as cold as an ice block. She didn't have the temperament of a servant. Puff! Sword stabbed into Ron's chest and pierced his heart. Blood gushed out of his throat. He wanted to swallow it back but the pressure it was pumping out was too fast. He didn't have the power to swallow and spit it out. The blood splashed onto the floor and stained the girl standing in front of him. His consciousness became dizzy. Ron's body fell to the ground and he died on spot. Dedian withdrew his hand and let Ron's body to fall. He called Crone, bring a first aid kit and immediately inform the magistrate that there was an attempt on my life. Crone and Nicholas were shocked. Crone turned and left in haste. It's been hard on you. Dedian sat back on couch as he looked at Gwyneth. Gwyneth was still standing in front of the corpse as she held onto the sword. The blood had splashed onto her face. She silently looked at the teenager. This is my job. Her fingers gently rubbed the hilt of the sword. She thought that Sergei would be shouting out if he was in here. Although Gwyneth and Sergei expected that Dudian didn't let them remove the spikes because of fear of attack but she just witnessed the teenager show much higher strength than they had anticipated. Ron's physique was in no way inferior to Senior Hunter. Actually, he was more powerful than most senior hunters. However, Ron was easily suppressed by the boy which looked like a weak child. Gwyneth remembered the corpse of the legendary monster and her mood was a bit complicated. She looked at the boy carefully. She was from the inner wall and knew how great potential the people with legendary magic marks had. Moreover, the other side was a master of the temple. He had enough resources to cultivate his constitution to reach the apex. It didn't take long for people from the magistrate to arrive. There were two deacons and two groups of knights. They came in hurry which showed how much attention was paid to Dedian. Both deacons of magistrates saw Dedian sitting on the sofa as they entered the hall. His chest was wrapped in gauze while there was girls standing by her who held onto a sword. There was a corpse on the ground. The hall was silent as a cemetery. 
One of the deacons looked at corpse and went closer to Dadian, Master, did you know the identity of the assassin? Dadian shook his head. Please check the person. I would like to know the identity of the man and the reason why he would try to assassinate me. Your body seems to be injured. Deacon Ross took a deep breath. Master, are you all right? Do you want a doctor to check your body? Dadian shook his head. It's just a scratch. I'm all right. Ross saw the faint red color on the bandage on Dudin's chest. He thought that the scratch was fairly long. Master, please describe me the actions of the assassin. Dedian replied attendant said that a beggar had come over to ask for my help. I asked them to let him in. He didn't say anything but suddenly tried to attack me. Fortunately I had her protection and I'm a knight with a bit of skill. I was able to avoid a fatal blow. Ross nodded as his assistant wrote down. Ross looked at Dedian. Master, we will be investigating the scene. Please, I'll go upstairs. Dadian responded. All right. Ross nodded. You should rest. Dadian raised his arm and Nicholas helped him to go upstairs. The next day, New World News once again published a news that shocked the public. Master Dean, the hero of the war, was a target of assassination yesterday. He was almost killed. The title attracted interest of countless people. New World News once again was the newspaper with the most sales. Mel family. George woke up from sleep. Maid helped him to dress after washing up. He used crutches to come down to dining room. The newspapers were prepared and placed on table. He sat by the table. Hot milk was poured into the cup and he drank it to moist his throat. Afterwards he put on his glasses and picked the newspaper. He shook the newspaper and opened it to quickly read the content. After finishing the first paper he continued with the next one. After finished the second newspaper he took the third one. Master Dean, the hero of the war, was target of an assassination yesterday. He was almost killed. George's pupils shrank as he read the headline. He was startled. His fingers that were clutching onto the newspaper trembled. He face turned red. Suddenly he spat out blood which splashed onto the mild cup and the breakfast plate. Master! Master! The maids next to him hurried up to support his old body. The Dark King Chapter 409 Bang! Bang! The door was knocked in hurry. Mark was tired as he didn't even have the strength to open his eyelids. He instinctively frowned. Last night he was at the banquet because few big families had joined back the Melon Consortium. He drank a lot of wine as he accompanied people. Although he used medicine but he was feeling bitter and uncomfortable because of hangover. He was irritated as he heard the violent knocks. He raised his hand and pinched the bridge of his nose. He knew that some matter was pressing from the rapid knocks on the door. He sat up and raised his hands. The maid next to the bed had long prepared the warm wet towels which was handed out to him. He wiped his face and said, come in. The maid pulled the door but Sarah pushed in on impulse and ran in. She saw the tired look on her father's face. There was a trace of guilt in her heart as she said, father, a big thing had happened. Slowly, Mark's face sank. He stood up and waited for the maid to dress him. Sarah quickly handed out the newspaper. Father, check for yourself. Mark skimmed through the newspaper. However, the next moment his tired face changed as if he was hit by a lightning. Sarah saw that the reaction of her father wasn't calm. She was frightened as she asked, Father, what will you do with this matter? You have said that the teenager has an insidious personality. Will the problem smash up in our heads? Mark recovered and ordered her, Order Ron Cohen to come and see me right now. Ron Cohen. Sarah was in a loss. However, her face changed. Father, he couldn't. Mark interrupted her words. Get him here. I will ask the butler. Sarah was frightened as her father never was so fierce towards her since small age. Even if she wasted 100,000 gold coins, he wouldn't say anything instead comfort her. Sarah understood the seriousness of the matter as she turned away and run in hurry. Sarah's face was pale as she returned. Father, Ron is not in here. Mark almost fainted as his body shook. Father, what has Ron done? Sarah looked at him, did you send him to assassinate? The newspaper said that the assassination had failed as Dean Squire had killed him. If it's Ron then the investigation will sooner or later reach our doors. Mark's head was buzzing as he stared at the ground. He wasn't responding to his daughter. A desperate feeling burst out in his heart. He had gone through such things many times in his life but have never faced such a result. Did Ron betray me? No, he would never betray me, even if he was bought. He has lost his life so what's the use of money? Mark gradually recovered his mind. The chaos in his mind was cleared up. He was set up by a kid. He tightly clenched his fists. 
because of the excessive force his nails pierced deeply into his palms. Although he had considered this point when he allowed Ron to go, but he didn't plan it carefully. After all, Ron's strength was exceptional or else he wouldn't keep Ron as head of the family's nights. Otherwise, he couldn't defend their family for so many years. Moreover, he was aware of the strength of Dudin's attendants. There were only two people who Dudin bailed out from the Thornflower prison that had the strength of a senior hunter. However, with Ron's skills, he could easily retreat even if both of them acted together. It shows that the other side had made a good ambush since the beginning. They had fallen into a trap. He had also tried to take this opportunity to get rid of Dudian. Even if Ron wasn't able to kill him, this would send out an important message to Dudian. It was a kind of counterattack. Father, father. Sarah called out to him. Mark took a deep breath. Make sure that your grandfather isn't aware of this. He wouldn't be able to recover from such a blow. In addition, call back Melk and Myers. Convene everyone from the family to come back. We have to transfer funds as soon as possible. Sarah was shocked. Father, what do you mean? Transfer money? You do you want to? Yes. Mel family is finished. Mark looked back at her, but it won't die today. One day we will rise again. Right now we have to minimize the losses. Sarah couldn't acknowledge the words that her father said. The Mel family was high above the others. They had always looked at other noble with disdain. Now their family was going to be finished overnight? Father. Sarah looked at Mark. It's just an assassination case. We bribe the magistrate with money. If it's a big deal, then we will give them ten times the money than usual. They can close their eyes. I don't think that they won't do it. He was just promoted to a master. We can say that Ron acted on his own and didn't have any relationship to us in this matter. Mark frowned. Nonsense. Lost is lost. We had underestimated our enemy. We had let him drill loopholes way too many times. We can't use money to cover assassination attempt on a master. Holy Church will be disturbed because of this. According to the agreement with the magistrate, they will send people to participate in the investigation. Holy Church will make sure to obey the instructions of the kid. The dirty water has already been poured at us. We have no hope. The only hope is for us to rise again in the future. But but Sarah couldn't accept such a blow. She was different to an ordinary young noble lady as she wasn't as much spoiled and was aware of the rules of this world. However, she couldn't accept this relentless reality as it was too cruel and unbearable. Go! Mark shouted. Sarah bit her lips as crystal shiny tears flowed out from her eyes. She rubbed them with her hands and ran out. Study room on the second floor. Wrong. Copy hundred times more. Dedian handed back the small notebook to the boy. He looked at Gabriel. You have to know how to write too. Reading isn't sufficient. Do you know that knowledge is more useful than the sword? Gabriel bowed. Yes, young master. Dadian nodded. Go. Gabriel left. There was another small figure who was building a small house from small blocks that were on the table. Artemis carefully put the piles of the roof. She had a green hair and small face. She looked like a porcelain doll. Dadian sat down by the desk. What is this? Artemis's body shrank back. It is a house. Do you like this house? I like it. Dadian strength out his hand and touched the bottom of the house with his finger. A piece of wood block fly out and the whole house crashed down. The wood pieces scattered all over the table. Artemis looked at the wood pieces and looked back at Dudian. Her eyes flushed and it seemed that she was about to cry. But she didn't dare as she looked at Dudian's face with a wide smile. The last time when she cried Dudian had made her brother to slash with a sword for 3,000 times. Her brother's hands got tired and sour so bad that he wasn't able to hold onto a knife. It seems that you aren't strong enough to build yet. Dudian said. Tears slipped through Artemis's face. Once more, Dodian smiled. There is a penalty if you mess anything up. Artemis sucked her nose and raised her hands to take blocks to build the house. The Dark King Chapter 410 Master Dean, we have investigated and found the identity of the assassin. Deacon Ross looked at the teenager who was sitting on the sofa. He was polite towards a senior architect of the temple so he was much more careful with his attitude in front of a master. Moreover, Dedian had an unlimited potential as a master. Dedian nodded slightly. He was aware of Deacon Ross's body language, so he smiled and said, Deacon, please tell me. Ross replied, Master, the name of the assassin is Ron Cohen. He was born as a civilian and was fancied by a knight from the Knights Hall at the age of 13. He was taken as a student and by the age of 28 he passed the Golden Knight Assessment and became a Gold Knight. 
Ron declined the invitation from many families in request to join Mel family out of his own initiative. He served as the commander of the Mel family knights until today. Ross looked up at Dudian. He was aware of the conflict between Dudian and Mel family. It was easy to find about that conflict. Dudian's face sank as he heard this. Deacon Ross, do you mean that Mel family sent a knight to assassinate me? Ross Riley smiled. Master, this is only the results of a preliminary investigation. We haven't figured out whether the knight was ordered by the master of the Mel family or had come on his own. He was interrupted by Dedian. Do you mean that a knight would take a risk to assassinate master without instructions? Did you find out anything about that? Dedian stared at the deacon. Deacon, how long will it take to you to reach a conclusion? Ross felt the anger in Dudin's tone. He knew that he couldn't offend him. Master rest assured that we will investigate everything. Right now members of our team have gone to talk with Mel family. We will give you an explanation after the full investigation. Dedian nodded slightly but didn't say anything. Investigation? A voice echoed from outside the hall. Dedian and Ross turned over to see a middle-aged man wearing a silver armor strutting towards them. The man politely said to Dedian, I am, Guardian Redmain from the Holy Church. I've taken the liberty to make a visit. Forgive me, Master. There was a trace of smile on Dudian's face. Hello, sorry that I didn't greet you by the door. Master, you are too polite. Redmain continued, We were ordered to investigate this assassination attempt together with the magistrate. Hopefully you will get a satisfactory answer. The ones who dare to attack a master most probably have relations with the dark cult. So I will send someone to personally investigate the Mel family. Master, please be a bit patient. Dedian nodded. Thank you. Deacon Ross sighed. He knew that the Mel family was really finished. Anyone who tries to kill a master of the temple will be identified by the Holy Church as a member of Dark Church and engraved as a cult member. This was someone that Mel family couldn't afford to carry in such a situation. Nice to meet you, Deacon Ross. Redmayne smiled and moved forward to shake Ross's hand. Ross reached out his hand but didn't reply. What did you say? Sarah was shocked as she heard what her brother Mel said. We will be investigated as member of the cult. Milk sighed as she looked at the girl who was full of sadness. I have been a knight of light for a long time. There will be strict investigation if a high-level member of the Holy Church is targeted as part of assassination. There is an agreement between Holy Church and Magistrate regarding such a situation. A guardian will be involved and the incident will be changed to a cult case. They will investigate everything thoroughly. There is no escape unless we are as clean as an angel and never had contact with the Dark Church. Everyone's face turned ugly as they heard Melk's words. Mel family was one of the largest families in the commercial district. They had large number of industries under their command and had to deal with people from all levels of the society. Naturally, they couldn't avoid alchemists from the Dark Church. It was an unwritten rule that all the nobles one way or the other were involved with the alchemists from the Dark Church. No noble family could stay clear from such a claim. If such an investigation occurred, then they will be able to find out many things that had been covered up. Sarah bit her lips. We must not let a guardian to get involved with the investigation. Then they will certainly find out that our family had contact with Dark Church. We even have business cooperation with them. The charges will be too heavy if things go out of hand. Not only our assets will be seized, but we may not be able to keep our noble status. Everyone looked at each other. They knew this, but who could stop a guardian? At the same time, Mark slowly walked down the stairs. He stood and looked around the crowd. He slowly said, there is no way to stop this hurdle. Someone has to step out and bear the guilt for the sake of the family when the guardian comes over. I will be that person. I will say that this assassination attempt was purely because of commercial competition. The best you can do right now is to immediately sell as much as property as you can. Transfer as much as funds as you can out of family balance. Sarah stared at her father as tears flowed down over her cheeks. She regretted that she hadn't killed the teenager early on. Regret? Pain? She had never regretted anything but this. Unfortunately, there was no way to reverse the time. A cough echoed from behind Mark. Mark turned around to see his father George coming down the stairs as the butler helped him out. Half a day had gone past but the George wasn't the same man as yesterday. Everyone was shocked to see his body. At the moment he looked like a real old man. His spine was bent and wrinkles had covered his face. George was dressed in a fluff coat but he looked thinner than usual. Father! Mark approached his father. George sighed and stretched his hand to pat his shoulder. Child, don't forget what I had taught you. When the enemy hits you with a fist then you should get to his back to attack with a sword. The future of the family will be in your hands. 
Mark's face changed. Father, it was the result of my negligence. I made the wrong judgment, you can't. I am old. George looked at him then at the young members of the family. He smiled, old men should die. Stuff like this can't kill me anyway. You are my good boy. Work harder in the future. Members of the family cried as George spoke. The Dark King Chapter 411 The Dark King Did you ignite the fireplace? Duduen's body shrank as he tightly clenched the blanket and asked Crone who was by his side. Crone felt strange at the sight. Master, the fireplace has been ignited. Would you like to sit by it? Dedian frowned but slightly nodded. He held the book and sat on the sofa by the side of the fireplace. Crone put a blanket made out of animal skin on the sofa and paved it before Dedian sat down. The fire warmed his face. However, Dedian still felt his body cold. There was a trace of anxiety in his heart. Black snow fell down outside the window. The wind whistled as it accumulated thick black snow by the windows. Door was pushed open and Artemis came in. She looked at Crone and had more courage than usual because of his existence in the room. Master, did you call for me? Although she was four or five years old but she was more sensible than the most of the kids the same age as her. Moreover she learned more in the last few days as she studied under Dudian's care. Dudian nodded and waved her over. Artemis slowly came to stop in front of Dudian. Dudian looked at her green hair. He had never seen such a hair color in the outer wall area. Most of the civilians had either brown or black hair. Nobles had blonde or pale gold-colored hair. The green was an extremely rare color. Dadian whispered, Did you finish your homework? Yes. Artemis replied. Dadian nodded and grabbed her to sit on his lap. What do you want to hear today? Artemis blinked her eyes as her tense heart was relaxed a bit. She knew that Dadian was the most gentle when he told her stories. At the storytelling time her mind was in peace. I would like to listen to the ugly duckling story that you told me last time. Dadian smiled. The ugly duckling story is finished. I'll tell you the story of Snow White this time. Do you want to hear it? Snow White. Artemis blinked. Snow was black. How could there be white snow? Crone was standing by their side but his ears were erected. He was very fond of the stories that Dadian told. Moreover he admired his peer who was much more knowledgeable than himself. In a very distant place, Dadian continued, Snow is white. The story began in that place. There was a black snow fell down the sky. The wood cracked as the fire burned in the fireplace. Dudian's soft voice echoed in the room. Artemis sat in a very well-behaved manner and never intervened. She wasn't like other little girls which would interrupt to ask questions because of curiosity. Crone was still immersed in the story when it was finished. Artemis's eyes flashed. The dwarfs are pitiful. Dedian laughed as he silently put her back on the floor. Time to train with the sword. Artemis nodded. Yes, young master. Crone quietly watched her leave then looked at Dudian. Master, your time is valuable. Why are you wasting it as you are telling her these stories? If we blindly train her then we will have nurtured nothing but a monster. Dudian continued. The time will come when the cocoon will break up and the butterfly will fly into the sky. Crone didn't understand the last part. Dudian sighed as he looked at the accumulated black snow by the window. Knock. Come in. Nicholas pushed the door and respectfully said, Young master a representative from the Knights Hall has come over. They are here for the ceremony. Dadian opened up the blanket and put down the book. He got up and left the room. The air seemed colder. The pores on his body slightly shrank as he shivered. Dadian went downstairs. Dadian saw a man who was about 30 years old and dressed in armor of a gold knight. The man had an imposing aura and thick eyebrows. He got up as he saw Dadian appear. Greetings, Master Dean. I'm Alva. Dadian nodded. Please sit down. You have been waiting for a long time. I'm here to give you this letter. Alva respectfully handed out the envelope. Dedian nodded and replied, I'll go to the Knights Hall with you. Alva was rejoiced because of Dudian's answer, all right. Dedian commanded Crone to prepare horses. They were about to leave the castle when a team of people came from the distance. They were led by Redmain who dismounted. He reached out and held his chest to salute Dedian. He nodded towards Alva. Redmain looked at Dudian, Master, George Mel from the Mel family has admitted that he was the mastermind of the assassination attempt. He has been arrested and is detained by the military. He has been in prison for life. Dudian's eyes lit up. What was the reason behind his actions? According to the investigation of the magistrate it should be because of commercial competition. He had planned that if you died then the New World Consortium couldn't rely on you to suppress the Melon Consortium. 
Dedia nodded, I know. It's been hard on you. Master, the weather is bad. Where are you planning to go? Redmayne looked at Alva as he speculated about the man. Alva responded, the master has to receive his knight medal. Redmayne admired the path Dedian had taken. It is admirable to see that Master is not only involved in inventions and research, but he has the spirit of the knight too. Dedian bid farewell to Redmayne and rode together with Alva. They were wearing raincoats. After an hour of travel, they reached the knight's hall. Master, please. Alva took the lead and showed the way. Dedian followed after him. They passed through a huge square which had a tall dome. There were luxurious crystal lamps lighting the place. This is the place. Alva led Dedi into a hall. In the middle of the hall there was a round table. At the moment twelve figures who were wearing knight armors and medals were standing by the end of the table. Three people sat by the table. One of them wore a golden uniform which was a bit different than the other two who sat by his left and right. The man was old and had white beard. Recipient Dean, please come over. White-bearded old man's majestic voice spread throughout the hall. Dedian walked along the narrow aisle and came to stop in the middle of the round table. The white-bearded old man deeply looked at Dedian. I am the oath. I make oath. The twelve knights shouted in unison after the old man. Humble, upright. Everyone said what the old man chanted. Their voices reverberated in the hall and stirred the walls. The white-bearded man finished and stood up from his seat. He pulled out his sword and walked to stand in front of Dedian. Are you willing to accept the knighthood? Dedian knelt on one knee and bowed in accordance with the etiquette. I accept. The old man put the sword on his shoulder, swear. Dedian took a deep breath as he solemnly said, I, Dean, make the oath that I will purse the principles of knighthood all my life, humilitary, integrity, compassion, justice, heroism, sacrifice, glory, and spirit. These are my criteria of the knighthood. I swear that I will be kind to the weak. Enslave them. I swear I will be brave enough to fight. I swear I will go against the injustice. Depends. I swear that I will fight for unarmed people. Use them. I swear to help anyone who calls for me. Only valuable ones. I swear I won't hurt any woman. Unless they provoke me. I swear to help my knight brothers. Buy them. I swear I will treat my friends sincerely. On the surface. I swear I'll love until I die. His words echoed throughout the hall. Moments later the ceremony finished. The old man recovered his sword and stretched out his hand. Dedian reached out to grab his hand to stand up. It was not meant for help but symbolized the inheritance. Two golden knights brought a new set of armor and sword for gold knight and submitted to Dedian. The white-bearded old man took out a medal and handed it out to him. This medal was not meant for golden knights but it was a bright gold-colored one with crystal diamonds on its edge. It was meant for crystal knight who is the highest level of knight that could be reached. You will be a gold knight from today on. The old man said in a serious tone as he looked at Dedian, but because of your excellent performance we deliberately will give the medal of a crystal knight. You will have the treatment and resources of a crystal knight. I hope that we will replace your armor when the day will come and you become a real crystal knight. Dedian nodded, thanks. The old man nodded and gave the medal to Dedian. October 1st, year 308 of Sylvian calendar. Dedian was appointed as a gold knight and was given a medal of a crystal knight. He had become the youngest golden knight in the history of the hall. The Dark King Chapter 412 Afterwards Dudian listened to the origin story of the knighthood. He left the knight's hall and rode back to his own castle. He saw a large number of newspaper staff gathered around the entrance. The place was crowded and bustling. Dudian's face was pale as he felt his body frozen because of cold. He didn't slow down and went straight into the castle. Noise who was in front of the gate saw that Dedian wasn't reducing the speed of the horse so he opened the gates for Dedian to enter in. The reporters were afraid to block Dudian's horse because of the speed. Noise quickly closed the gate to keep out the crowd. The horse stopped at the door of the castle. Dedian dismounted and took a deep breath. His body was slightly trembling. Crone had prepared the blankets and waited for Dedian. Dedian stepped into the castle. His body staggered and he almost fell. He coughed up blood. It was extremely dark and had a pungent smell. His vision blurred, don't call a doctor. He fainted before finishing his words. Crone tried to help but he only had one arm so he couldn't hold his body. Gwyneth who was dressed as maid quickly took hold of Duduen's body. Both of them saw that Dedian didn't respond. She saw that there was faint reaction from his eyelids. Gwyneth's brows wrinkled as she grabbed him and walked upstairs. She told to Crone, make the reporters go away. 
Crone wanted to go out, but Nicholas interfered. I will go, Nicholas said and left. Crone quickly went upstairs. Gwyneth kicked open the door of Dudwin's study room. She came to the sofa by the edge of the fireplace. She looked at Crone, Adwood. He may be sick. Crone tried to Adwood but remembered that he was only one-handed. There were few people left in the castle as Dudian had sent back the other servants. The only one idol right now was Sergei. Too cold. Gwyneth touched Dujian's left arm. She felt like she has touched a block of ice. She felt that Dujian's body temperature was very normal when she carried him up. She touched Dujian's forehead and it was warm. Then she touched his neck and counted the frequency of the heartbeat. It was slow. She reached out and touched Dujian's chest. So cold. Gwyneth was scared. It was incredible that he was alive since his body temperature was so low. Gwyneth remembered the legendary magic marks that Dudian had. However, she knew that even if she took them out, they couldn't be used again. She frowned as she thought about the possibility of such a low body temperature. Is it caused by the legendary magic marks? Is it the side effect of having legendary magic marks? Or something else? Sergei and Crone added wood and lit the fireplace. Sergei came to check Dudian when Crone began to ignite the fire. Sergei looked at Gwyneth. Did he really faint? Was he attacked on the way back? Gwyneth replied, he isn't hurt. Maybe he was poisoned because of a meal or drink. Gwyneth shook her head. Do you think he will eat anything else after the hot soup even? He may not eat even in the night's hall. Sergei frowned. Since that may not be the case, then is it some kind of disease from before? Sergei looked at Crone. Do you know about his old diseases? Ask old Fulin if he is aware of anything. Crone was lighting up the fire. He didn't know much about Dudian after he had left the orphanage. The only one aware of Duduin's condition could be old patriarch. All right, I'll write to him now. Gwyneth suddenly said, wait. Sergei replied, what? Gwyneth looked at Sergei. Old Fulin shouldn't know about him even if he had a sickness. Otherwise, he would let us know before going to come. If we send a message to old patriarch, then the enemies will know about the news and his condition will be exposed. He asked us not to look for a doctor. He didn't want the news to be spread. Sergei shrugged his shoulders. What if it spread out? What are you afraid of? I will kill everyone who comes to attack. Gwyneth coldly looked at him. Are you sure that there is noon stronger than you in the outer wall? Sergei was startled as he stopped talking. Gwyneth continued. We can't leak the news. Tell the reporters that Master will give interview only to New World News and send them off. Crone hesitated. This, this. It will inevitably lead to speculation if you don't say anything and there will be people who would be interested in knowing the situation. Gwyneth continued, we will hide this matter. And if he wants to blame anyone when he wakes up, then it's all right to blame me. Crone replied, all right. Sergei reached out and touched Duduin's face. It's too cold. He looked at Gwyneth. He isn't dead, but how can his body be colder than undead? He is not dead if his body colder than dead people. Gwyneth said. Sergei looked at her. Maybe he is testing us by trying to tempt us? Gwyneth indifferently replied, You can try. Sergei responded, I don't plan to try anything. There is nothing to benefit off even if he really died. At this point I don't see a tree as huge as him in the outer wall. There is no better shade to rely on. Whatever. Gwyneth replied in disdain. Cage laughed, isn't it? You can rely on him if you want to enter the inner wall. Moreover, if we go to other consortia we will be treated as pawns. Additionally, we have fought in a battle together. Even though we have no love, but we are friends at least. So don't be cold towards me. All right? Don't irritate me more. Gwyneth coldly said. The temperature of the room rose because of the fire and it got warmer. Few hours passed in the blink of an eye. Dedian slowly opened his eyes. He felt as if his body was soaked in cold water. His stomach tumbled. He had kind of a nauseous feeling. Dedian felt drowsy and painful. He was reluctant to open his eyes. Artemis was the first person who he saw when he opened his eyes. Her little face was full of worry. Dadian felt warm. He saw that Gabriel and Gwyneth were behind her. Master, you woke up. Artemis cried out in surprise. Everyone in the room hurried over in surprise. Dadian glanced at Gwyneth, Sergei, Crone, and others. He sighed in relief. Get me a pillow. The Dark King Chapter 413 Sergei carefully lifted up Dudwen's head and Gwyneth put the soft pill behind his head. Master, are you all right? Crone was worried. Dadian took a deep breath. Warm air entered his body and dispersed a bit of chill. He might become a bit clear. He asked, how long did I sleep? About six hours. 
Nicholas answered. Dadian was concerned. Did the message leak out? No, only the few of us here know about it. The reporters were driven away. Nicholas replied, We didn't call for a doctor because of your orders. Should I find a doctor now to diagnose your body? Dadian felt uncomfortable as he felt the chill climb from his abdomen. He took a deep breath. Do you remember that I had told you bring people from residential district? There should be a woman called Jura. Call her but no one else. Jura. Nicholas was puzzled. From residential district? All right. Nicholas nodded. I'll go right away. Sergei looked at Dadian. How did you suddenly get sick? Is it because of the injury on the battlefield? Dadian was silent. He wasn't sure yet but he speculated about few things. Nicholas returned half an hour later. He brought a middle-aged woman with himself. Her body was still slender and straight. She was an intellectual beauty. Jura was startled as she saw the weak body of Dadian lying on the sofa. Her eyes turned red. She hadn't seen Dadian for the last few years. She thought that she would gradually forget the adopted child as he was in prison. However, after a few years she learned the child was out of the prison. It was written in the newspapers that Dadian was wronged. She wanted to come over to find Dadian, but she couldn't pass through the residential district to commercial. Afterwards, she saw his name appear on newspapers a lot. Especially the recent headlines were almost all about him. She sometimes felt that it was the kid from back then as the name written on the newspaper were the same. She was taken to the commercial district when the war broke out. At that point she was more convinced that it was the child that made them cross the borders through the districts. She had been looking for the reunion for the long time. But she couldn't see Dedian even after passing into the commercial district. She met him today but he didn't look like the high-spirited child that she remembered but a weak teenager. Although they had adopted him but she accepted Dedian as her own child. She understood what kind of hardships he had gone to reach the status he was right now. She expected him to live the life of luxury but came over to the castle to find that he wasn't living the life she had expected. She realized what kind of price the child had to pay to climb to the position he was today. All of you go out. There was complex feelings in his eyes as Dudian saw Jura, Crone alone is enough to take care of me. Gwyneth deeply looked at him then left. Sergei felt weird but left as he led Gabriel and Artemis out. The door was shut. Jura suddenly reacted and rushed forward. Are you feeling uncomfortable? Dadian looked at her anxious face. In few years he could see few strands of white in her hair. Time is always ruthless. I feel cold. Dadian whispered. Jura quickly touched his forehead. However, she quickly retracted her hand. There was a trace of panic on her face. Why is it so cold? Crone knew that the woman was the one who had adopted Dadian. He couldn't help but ask, Auntie, aren't you a doctor? Do you know what kind of sickness he has? Jura didn't answer him but checked Duduin's neck, arm, chest, and other parts. Her surprised face turned into panicky one. How could it be so low? According to her knowledge of medicine and experience, a human couldn't survive if they had low body temperature like Dedian. Him being alive was simply a miracle. Duduin's heart sank as he saw her expression. Although Jura wasn't a top doctor, but she could be considered a good one. Auntie, don't worry. Dedian took a deep breath. He mustered strength and soft said, I feel cold here. The problem should be here. Can we cut it off and check? Stomach. Jura quickly took off the blanket and touched his abdomen. She rapidly retreated her fingers, too cold. She felt that Dujen's abdomen was colder than an ice block. It was simply same as the temperature of the ice. But how come his body wasn't frozen if the temperature was so low? How could he survive if his abdomen was frozen? She bit her lips and looked at Crone, get me hot water. Crone immediately left the room. Jura sat by the side of the sofa. She took out scalpel, needles, and other tools from the medicine box. In addition, she had gauze, hemostatic, and anesthetic powders. She took of his clothes and used the anesthetic powder. It didn't take long for Crone to bring hot water. Jura said to Dadian, try your best to endure. Dadian softly replied, you do the surgery, I'll look. Jura's eyes flushed. She had seen nobles and wealthy business scared to open their eyes during the surgery. However, Dudian was very calm. How much had he suffered to have such a temper? She suppressed the grief and sorrow in her heart. She looked at the clock on the wall and calculated the time. He let Crone help her. She used the knife. Crone put pillow behind Duduin's head so that he could see his abdomen. Dudian wanted to know the cause. The knife pierced his abdomen. He felt no pain. The hemostatic powder played its role and not much of blood penetrated out. Jura's hands trembled as she held onto the scalpel. 
There was a cold feeling that spread along the iron scalp. Her fingers felt frosty. All three of them were shocked as they looked at the scene after his abdomen was sliced off. The Dark King Chapter 414 Dedian saw row upon row of crystallized blood as the skin above the abdomen was sliced open. The color of the crystal was dark red like frozen blood. It was like armor covering the body below his skin. At first glance it seemed like the skin was just a soft layer covering the armor. Dedian was perplexed. Young master, Crone's body slightly trembled in fear. Jura's eyes were full of shock as she stood confused on the spot. Dedian looked at her, what's the name of the disease? Jura reacted to his words. Her eyes were full of loss. She had never seen such a strange scene in her life. The surface of the crystallized blood was extremely smooth. It was like fish scales one over the other. The most strange thing that she found was that the owner of the body was still alive. I do not know. There was a complex expression on her face as she looked at the dark red crystals. The blood was frozen because of the low temperature, but she couldn't find the right words to express herself. She didn't dare to blindly make a diagnose as she hadn't met such a condition before. Moreover, she didn't know how to solve the problem of frozen blood because of the low temperature. Dudian's heart sank as he saw the complex expression on her face. Is there any way? I will try my best. She used the scalpel to expand the area. She sliced open the skin all the way to intestines, but there was nothing but dark red crystals. She tried to touch, but it was extremely cold. Jura doubted that even the knife may not be able to pierce through this strange crystallized blood. Auntie, is there a way to treat it? Crone looked at Jura as he gradually adapted to the scene. He was anxious and nervous. Cold sweat flowed down through Jura's forehead. She hesitated for a moment. It will be a little painful as I will try to remove one of the scales. Try to bear. Dadian took a deep breath. I will endure you continue. Jura nodded and stared at Dujin's abdomen. She looked at the edge of the scale and slowly stabbed the scalpel. Traces were left on the crystallized blood as if the surgical knife had stabbed onto an ice block. Dedian saw the blue veins extending on her wrist. He knew that she was putting a great effort but couldn't pierce through the crystallized blood. Although Jura was an ordinary person but her strength wasn't low either. Did it mean that to pierce through the crystallized blood you had to have an extraordinary strength? Jura gradually increased the strength she put onto the scalpel. She used 70 or 80% of her power, but she still couldn't pierce the crystallized blood. She was taking big breaths as her wrist felt sour. Suddenly an idea flashed through her mind. She was startled as she looked at Dadian. Her eyes had fear in them. The feeling turned into remorse and pain. Dadian felt bad as he saw her expression, Auntie, is there no way? Jura's eyes turned red as big tears began to fall down. I have seen a description of a similar disease in a medical book. It is a very rare disease and extremely few people were infected with it. Dadian was startled. What is the name of sickness? Ice blood syndrome. Jura bowed her head as she sniffed. It is a rare terminal illness. Duduen's heart sank when he heard the phrase terminal illness. It was the same as hearing that he had cancer. His heart beat violently but the throbbing of his heart gradually subsided. In the old era with the development of medical technology many types of cancer could be treated. Since in this era the ice blood syndrome was classified as an incurable terminal illness then he had to rely on knowledge from the superchip to find the treatment. Dedian was silent for a moment. Auntie, thank you. Please sew it up. Jura was crying silently. She bit her lips as she heard Dudian's words. She held back the sobs but her heart was broken. She removed the needly and very delicately sewed the skin. Dedian quietly looked at her. After she was finished he asked, Auntie, how long can I live? Jura bowed down her head. There are not any detailed records. But you shouldn't live long. She looked at Dedian. It is an infectious disease. You better not share anything with others. In addition, it's best for you that Holy Church isn't aware of the disease. Otherwise, they will hunt you down and isolate you. Infectious disease? Crone's face turned white as he stepped back instinctively. Dedian glanced at him then looked at Jura. All right, auntie. Don't mention this to anyone. If someone asks you then tell them that it's just a cold. Jura continued to cry. I'll stay to take care of you. Dujian's heart was warm but his expression became cold. Crone paid the medical expenses and sent her off. Crone left the room with Jura. Crone came back after a while. Dadian looked at him. Give those medical books from the shelf to me. Crone was startled as he handed him the books. Dadian looked at the medical books that he had brought back from the library. Previously, he didn't have time to check them as he was busy learning knowledge from the superchip. He wanted to know more about the disease. 
Maybe in the old era it had a totally different name. He wanted to know the outcome that would happen after being infected with it. He checked another book. At one point Dedian stopped at a particular page of an old medical book. There was a narrative from a doctor who had lived hundred years ago. He was invited by an aristocrat to check an attendant in a snowy day. The body temperature of the attendant was very low. After the initial checkup he had decided to do surgery and check the problem. But the doctor found out that the arm of the attendant was frozen below the skin. It was like frozen fish scales. Ice blood, Dedian knew that the description of the attendant's arm was very similar to his situation. I failed with the surgery. The noble drove me out. However, I later mentioned this situation to a friend of mine. Soon, I heard that the people from Holy Church looked for that noble and arrested the sick attendant. Dedian carefully read the page. According to the perspective of the above narration, the disease was called as ice blood syndrome. It seems the Holy Church was the one to name the disease. Dedian was surprised. He thought that doctors came up with the naming but he didn't think that Holy Church was the one to take the lead and identify the disease. He read more. However, there was no follow-up information after the attendant was taken away by the Holy Church. The Dark King Chapter 415 Unfortunately, there is no microscope. Otherwise, I would be able to find the cause of blood crystallization. The blood couldn't froze just because of the body temperature. There should be an order to everything. Maybe the blood was crystallized not because of the low body temperature, but there was a cause that made the blood froze and the body temperature got so low. Dudian frowned. Production of a microscope with current technology was nothing but a wishful thinking. He looked at Crone. Order Noise to go to different libraries and bring back medical books. The more remote libraries he goes the better it is. In addition tell him to bring only one-fifth of the total as the medical books and the other part to select from different sections. Ask him to be carefully of enemies. His every move will be checked. He shouldn't let outsiders know what he is aiming for. Do you get me? Crone reacted with an annoyance as he was puzzled. He knew that Dudian had chosen noise because of his golden hair, but he couldn't understand why he would take on one-fifth of total as medical books. Shouldn't it be better if he got more? He didn't ask because he was aware that Dudian wouldn't answer such a simple question. He had to come up with answer by himself. Crone brought few medical books that were on the shelf to Dudian. The splitter's scythe had pierced my body. Although Scar's corpse had blocked the most of the attack, but I was wounded. It had cut out a big hole in my waist. The wound was infected when my body was mixed with the corpses of other monsters. So everyone who has had ice blood syndrome in history had one way or other had come in contact with monsters, at least most of them. Initially, Dudian had the magic marks from Jaranzi, and he was immune to most diseases. So nothing strange had appeared. However, after changing it with the magic marks of the splitter, his body had changed too. He felt cold when he came back from the giant wall the last time. However, knowing the reason didn't mean that he had a solution. Moreover, he didn't know how long he had to live after being infected such a strange sickness. God will make me day when the time comes. However, heavens have put too many tests in front of me. Dudian gently rubbed his fingers. A few days passed in the blink of an eye. These last few days Noyce borrowed a lot of books from famous libraries. There were medical books that Dedian were interested in. The rest had variety of topics such as the history of the giant wall, the history of barbarians, biography of legendary people, music and so on. What's happening with Melon Consortium? Dedian asked Crone as he put away the medical book. He was checking medical books day and night to find clues about the disease and ways to solve it. There was no time to read newspapers and think about situation. Crone replied. Master Melon Consortium fell apart after the old patriarch of the Mel family George was sent to prison. The Mel family business also plummeted. The industries under their command have suffered boycott of public and other businesses. They are making losses every day. Hotels and entertainment centers they own have been smashed by mobs. They wouldn't be able to hold on for long. Tell old Feline to seize the opportunity finish them for good. If it's dragged for long then the anger of public will quell. We will need to use much more resources to completely defeat Mel family at that point. Dudian commanded. Crone nodded. He knew that Mel family was a famous aristocratic family in the outer wall. It was reduced to ashes at this point. He recalled the time when a gardener from Mel family had come to the orphanage for adoption. He was the most prominent person there at that time. 
Everyone wanted to be adopted by the gardener back then. Now the Mel family was a noble family in decline. However, as an old noble family, they had roots that had spread wide. They didn't immediately collapse even after the strong pressure put on them by Dudian. He said that if his hands had wounds then he was forbidden to touch the soul crystals so not to trap the spirits inside his body. Dudian was startled as he saw a case for treatment. The clergyman wrote that anyone who was infected with ice blood syndrome had to take lots of sugar and eat beef. If the medicine was taken on time then it was possible to live for two years. The shortest time is a week. If attention wasn't paid to cold, avoid cold water, black snow. Dudian felt like he was struck by lightning. At best only two years? The shortest, a week of life? Is it same as the late stage of cancer? He bowed his head to read again. He repeatedly read it until he confirmed that he wasn't wrong. Did it mean that at best he had two short years to live? Two years would pass in the blink of an eye. He thought about grand ideas and ideals in his heart. However, if it went like this, then there was no way to achieve any of them. Crone saw Dudian's strange reaction as he read the book. Crone's face changed as he realized that something bad was found by Dudian. He carefully asked, Master, what has happened? Dudian was silent for a while. Nothing. Go out now. Crone was hesitant as he left the room. He stayed by the door. There was a trace of confusion in Dudian's eyes as he stared outside the window. After a long time, the time got late and outside darkened. The night was reflected in his eyes. His numb look gradually restored as Dudian whispered. Sugar and beef. All of them are high-calorie foods. According to the book the disease can be suppressed if I consume high-calorie foods. If I eat something that has more calorie, then it is possible to even live longer. Moreover the physique of those people infected with ice blood syndrome are much weaker than mine. If my body reaches a higher level then the resistance will enhance too. I may be hold on for a little longer. Gradually a strong desire to live resurrected in his heart replacing the despair. I have to master the medicine in time of two years. Afterwards I have to find a solution. They were able to find solution to cancer. This ice blood syndrome is nothing much relative to cancer. It should be a simple condition even though they call it terminal condition in this era. I will change the world. I will change this simple condition and make it an ordinary disease. How could he throw the towel because of a little bit of pain? Crone! Dudian shouted. Crone pushed the door and entered the room. Yes, young master. My armor and cloth should be made out of the warmest materials. Dudian continued. Additionally, from today on I will eat only the rib meat of tooth crab. Crone was surprised. Meat of tooth crab? Master that is the most expensive ingredient. The front ribs of a tooth crab is about half a caddy. It's only enough to eat one meal. Moreover it's very rare and difficult to catch those crabs. Is it hard? Dudian said in a cold tone. You have to buy it even if I wanted the meat of a dragon. If nobody sells then steal it. The Dark King Chapter 416 Crone hesitated. I will try my best, young master. You must. Dudian added, in addition to the tooth crab I want to use the most expensive tableware produced personally by the masters. Moreover I will drink the pure water that has been repeatedly filtered. Crone was startled. He wanted to ask the benefits of eating tooth crab but he changed his mind as he heard Dudian talk. Maybe the personal preferences of rich and famous change as they get more wealth? Crone bowed his head. Master, anything else I should note down? Inform the temple to make sure that the temperature in the lecture hall is high. I think you know the reason. Dadian replied. I know, I will keep it secret. There was a trace of concern in Crone's eyes, Master. Teaching will consume a lot of energy. Would you be able to handle it with your current health issue? I'm not that easy to fall down. Call Artemis over. Yes, young Master. Father, can't we bail out Grandpa? Sarah looked at Mark in pain and remorse. Mark sighed, I have contacted few generals from the military. Bail is impossible. However, they promise to make sure that he lives in a better environment. He won't be humiliated. Sarah clenched her fists as tears fell down her eyes. Father, Ron was certainly ambushed. Maybe we should send everyone to kill him. As long as he dies, we can restore to our original strength and take back Grandpa. Nonsense. Mark spoke in angry tone. Have you forgotten my teachings? You gotta be more calm as the situation gets dangerous. Regret and pain won't bring anything. 
Moreover, if he is killed, whether we are involved or not, we will be the first target of the Holy Church's anger. They would just go for a genocide. Sarah's body flicked as she heard the word genocide. Father, father. Mark interrupted her. I have investigated the day of the crime. The kid had two senior hunters close to him. He sent one of them out. The woman by her side wouldn't be able to keep up with Ron. It seems he keeps another expert by his side. A hidden one. I think that this hidden expert is the old butler. Sarah was startled. Father, do you mean that he has three senior hunter level helpers by his side? The kid himself also has the strength of an intermediate level hunter. He has the magic marks of a Jaranzi. His combat strength is enough to fight with one or two ordinary senior level hunters. So unless we want to kill him for good, we need experts from at least two consortia. Mark continued in a cold tone. However, there are more ways to kill in addition to the use of sword. I have already posted a reward in Dark Church. Whoever can kill him will get five million gold coins. We don't need to keep to money right now. He won't let us go free. Either he dies or us. Sarah took a deep breath. Father, did you actually contact at the Dark Church? Mark Coldy looked at her. What? Why would I dirty my own hands if there is such a good knife to be used? No, no. Sarah whispered. It's sensitive period of time. If Holy Church finds that. Mark snorted. Holy Church? Holy Church is smart as they sell illusory things. Only fools will believe them. Sarah whispered. Father, you said that he has three people with the combat power of Senior Hunter. The strength of a consortium is needed to kill him. How Dark Church will accomplish? Mark replied, Even if they aren't able to kill him, then at least he will live in caution for the rest of his life. Don't underestimate Dark Church. They have vicious alchemists, potioners, puppeteers. He will die unless Holy Church sends a group of night to guard him day and night. Sarah's heart was relieved. What about our investments? We don't have much of a time. Old fooling has been devouring our businesses. Throw the rest away if they don't amount to much. Mark changed the topic. Father, it's useless. He said that he won't see me again. It's useless for me to beg him. Ginny was dressed in uniform of the magistrate and was looking at her father who was standing in front of her. Rudolph sighed. The Mellon Consortium is finished. The Mel family will have the same end sooner or later. Our Burong family is in dire need of your help. Only you are able to resolve the hatred in his heart. Otherwise, Burung family will be devoured and completely destroyed by him. Ginny bit her lips as she bowed her head. Miss, I beg you, please help out. Butler, who was next to them, knelt down to beg. Ginny looked at him. Uncle, don't. Miss, I won't get up unless you go to talk with him. Butler begged. Ginny replied in hurry. Get up, uncle. I. Rudolph silently looked at the scene. He sighed. Get up. Butler looked at him. Rudolph waved at Ginny. Ginny hesitated so she slowly walked towards him. Tell your dad. Don't you want to see him? Rudolph whispered as he stroked her hair. Ginny clenched her teeth not to cry. I went that time but. Rudolph patted her shoulder and took her into his arms. If you don't want to go then don't. I won't force you. Do what you want to do as long as it makes you happy. I will handle the family business. Tears flowed down Ginny's cheeks. This is the result of my actions. I will bear the loss of failure since our businesses fail. Rudolph stroked her hair and said in gentle tone, It's not a big deal. I believe that in twenty or thirty years the Burong family will rise again. Ginny wiped her tears and looked at him. I'll work with you. Rudolph looked up and laughed. Good. We will work together. Butler asked after Ginny left. Master, we are in a critical situation right now. After the public lecture the kid's strength will reach a new level. He will have enough power to crush us easily. Why did you stop the lady? She could plead for us. Pleading is not the way out. Rudolph slowly said as the smile on his faded away. Moreover, how do you think he climbed up all the way from prison to today's position? He didn't rely on love but hate. Hatred can make a person go crazy. Hatred will give you strength and drive that is much more powerful than love. He has strong hate towards us so an apology at this point will make him despise us. Rudolph continued, but the hate he feels towards us is not the revengeful madness. It's a good thing. We can squeeze out a lot of things from the hate and love that he feels. The Dark King Chapter 417 Master, what do you mean? Butler was confused. Rudolph responded. Do you really think that he is dealing with the Melon Consortium because of revenge? Everyone thinks so, but the point is everyone is wrong. It's not because of the resentment, but he just have deal with us. If he chooses to deal with another one, 
then he will have one more enemy to deal at the same time. So he is finishing off Melon because he has no other choice, and he have chosen to do so. The other consortia are happy at sight, and if there is a possible chance they will help out too. The knife will become more sharper that way. Butler sighed. Master but he isn't an ordinary weapon anymore. He has become a master. The Mel family has fallen so the next will be us. Rudolph slowly said. Have you ever thought why he dealt with Mel family but not with our Barong family? Butler was surprised then his eyes lit up. Master, do you mean that he didn't deal with us because he has feelings for little miss? Then we won't. Rudolph interrupted him. Since when have you become so foolish? Butler was stunned. Do you really think this monster has feelings? Imprisonment, suffering non-human torture. Do you think after all those he will have feelings? Do you think those feelings can affect his judgment? Rudolph said in a cold tone. Butler's face changed. Master, if he doesn't have feelings for Little Miss, then what was the reason? Rudolph replied. There are two reasons for his actions. The first may be his feelings towards Jenny, but I think it has so low possibility of happening that it is not even an option. So the real reason can be the second choice. This one is much more in line with his style of doing things. The second reason? In the past he fought with Melon Consortium but he was just a weapon. Scott Consortium was willing to help him and other consortia also supported him to see the fight between tigers. But now the situation has changed. As you have mentioned he has become a master. Since it is so then he has to face other masters too. The real battlefield has just begun for him. The other consortia will not tolerate such a monster continue to grow. The military won't allow and the Holy Church would not allow him to grow big and swallow up the other five consortia. Maybe he can even assimilate Holy Church and the military. If he becomes that big then he can influence the balance of power between the military and Holy Church. The side he gives support means the end of the other side. Neither military nor Holy Church would be willing to face such a situation. Butler was startled. Master, do you mean that he chose to deal with Mel family because he didn't mercy us but to defeat the Melon Consortium? After he gets rid of the main enemy, then he will go after the other consortia? Yes, Rudolph replied. Mel family was the leader of the Melon Consortium. The Melon Consortium dissipated after Mel family went down. Now as a master with two legendary inventions in his resume every consortium will want him to become their ally. However he is a disaster for the consortium. He's like a thorn in the flesh. Butler asked. But the thing is the relationship between him and the New World Consortium is very well known. He is bound to New World Consortium not just by the financial interests but by virtues. Then all the other consortia, Holy Church and the military will secretly try to suppress them, don't they? The military and Holy Church won't take action right now. The will see the situation and check his performance. Rudolph continued. There will be no consequences if he is only willing to keep New World Consortium as a consortium. But if he is restless and wants more than that then he will be finished even though he is a master. It's just a title. The moment he violates the rules then he will swallow the bitter fruit. Anyway, since Jenny doesn't want to apologize then you have to make a trip in her stead. Me. Don't forget to take a gift. This gift should be the one we used to give to the businesses in the commercial district. Butler was shocked. Master, but, go. Any news from the Ryan family these last two days? Duddian put the book aside and casually asked. Crone shook his head. No. Duddian handed a picture to Crone. Give it to them. They must built it before sunset. Crone saw a huge cage drawn on the picture. He was surprised but he didn't ask anything. Duddian called Nicholas over after Crone departed. There are few members of the Mellon Consortium that are my friends. You used to be a butler for a noble family. I will leave their protection to you. Don't let them get hurt. Nicholas nodded. All right. Crone returned after moments. Master Noyce have sent a letter. Sergey and him have gone to several markets to find tooth crab meat, but none of them sold anything. Duddian said in a cold tone. If there is none in market then they should have gone directly to the supplier. Is there no one in the entire outer wall that sells it? As long as there is tooth crab meat then it should be on my table. Do you understand it? Crone scratched his head. Young master actually there is. I have heard that Brandon family will give a banquet this evening and have bought tooth crab meat. Buy it. 
Dudian interrupted him. Crone carefully said, Young master, but this Brandon family is a high-ranking noble family and have big industries under their command. If they refuse to sell, steal it. I don't like repeating myself. If there is a tooth crab meat somewhere within the outer wall, even if it's placed in front of the Pope, I have to eat it. Am I clear? The Dark King Chapter 418 Master, we will offend people this way, Crone said in a weak tone. Dedian indifferently replied, I said do it. I'm the one who is offending. Okay. Crone didn't expect Dudian to be so persistent with food, should I tell Sergei to buy it? Nois should also go with him. Dudian continued, tell him to offer a price to buy first. If the man doesn't sell then rob it. I'd like to see if he has courage not to sell it. All right. Crone came to the hall and passed Dudian's words to Sergei and Nois. Both of them looked at each other. Sergei turned towards Crone, did he really say that we should steal if they don't sell it? Yes. Crone replied in a confident tone. Sergei was stunned, I didn't think he would be so much into food. I will bring it back. Both of them rode on horses as they went towards the territory of Brandon family. Linda isn't hall ready yet? Cage asked the girl next to him as he looked down at the attendants who were busy in the magnificent hall. The girl was about ten year old. She was wearing a luxurious golden skirt which had countless crystals embroidered on it. It was a very gorgeous and eye-catching dress. It seemed that a master tailor had sewn it. Father, everything is ready. We are waiting for guests. Linda replied and smiled. Cage laughed and said, Today Uncle William will come too. I have heard that his son is a second-level knight of light at the temple. He loves the music of Mr. Hamming. He is your favorite composer too. Talk to him in the banquet about that. Linda's face turned red. Dad, what are you talking about? Today's banquet is meant for you and Uncle William. It's to congratulate him because of the rise in position. Silly kid. Cage laughed. At the same time a middle-aged butler dressed in black tuxedo came forward and bowed his head. Master, there are two people who has come to see you. They claim to be the attendants of Master Dean. Master Dean. Cage was surprised. Linda's eyes lit up as she looked at the butler. Is that the genius Master Dean? The butler respectfully replied, Yes, miss. Really? Linda was excited as she clutched Cage's hand. Father, will he also come over to congratulate Uncle William? Cage felt strange when he heard her words. He looked at Butler. Let them come. Yes, Master. Butler left. There was excitement in Lena's eyes as she said, Dad, my birthday is after a few days. Can you invite Master Dean to my birthday party? My friends will feel so envious if he comes to my party. I have heard that Master Dean isn't only a superb architect but also a handsome golden knight. He knows poetry too. He is just too perfect. Cage helplessly replied, Don't even think about that. Our Brandon family is not on the same level as him. Linda pouted her mouth, I'm his admirer. I want to personally see him. Cage shook his head and stood in silence. The butler returned. Two tall figures were walking behind him. One of them had golden hair while the other had a burly physique. Both of them were indeed attendants from their uniform. Cage glanced at them and saw no gifts in their hands. Greetings, Mr. Brandon Cage. Sergei politely said as he stood in front of Cage. Cage smiled, please sit down. No need. Sergei looked left and right. He saw that no one was paying attention to them so he whispered, Patriarch Cage, our young master sent us to ask something from you. Ask something. Cage continued in a quiet tone, what things? Tooth crab. Cage said, young master has recently taken a liking to this food. We searched all the places today. In the market we were told that your family servant bought it today. We will pay three times the amount to buy the tooth crab. Would you please sell it to us? Cage and Linda looked at each other. They never thought that Sergei would come over to discuss a food. He likes to eat crabs. Linda secretly noted this point. Cage slightly frowned as he pondered. He knew that there was a constant storm in the business world. Master Dean was the main force to defeat the Mellon Consortium. However, Brandon family wasn't a pushover either. They knew the patterns of change in the commercial district. Patriarch, Sergei said as he saw Cage contemplate. Cage hesitated. You should tell Master Dean that we have already sent the menu to our guests. I can resell it now. If Master Dean wants it, I will find and bring tooth crab in a few days of time. Sergei's eyebrows wrinkled. Patriarch, let's not be so stingy. Our young master likes to eat it and we are ready to pay triple the amount. Is my young master's face so worthless? Or you don't want to give him face? 
Linda didn't expect her father to refuse. She grabbed his arm. Dad, let's give them. We can use something else. No, Cage flatly refused. There are rules of our family and we have to follow them. The menu has been published already. How can we freely modify it at this point? Sergei narrowed his eyes, if that's so. Patriarch, can you at least let us see the tooth crab? Is this request too much? Cage slowly replied, that's not a problem. I'll personally take both of you to see it. He turned away and took the lead. Sergei winked at Noyce and Noyce replied, I'll be waiting for you in here. Sergei nodded as he went to the kitchen. Cage Brandon ordered the chef to show the tooth crab. It was a big crab which had black colored head. It was totally different from ordinary crabs as it had sharp teeth in the mouth. It fed on fish. The feeding costs were very expensive and the crab itself was very rare. Only few people were willing to breed it within the wall. Most of the tooth crabs had radiation in them or could be found in desolate lakes in the wilderness. Very cute. Sergei reached out to touch it. Cage felt that Master's attendant was acting frivolously. At the same time, Sergei quickly grabbed the crab and hit chefs close to him. He turned and ran away. Cage was shocked. Everything happened as fast as lightning. Cage didn't react for a long time. He recovered when Sergei had run quite a distance. He loudly shouted, Get him! The attendant began to chase after him. Sergei was fast as he jumped over the wall of the manor. Whoosh! A figure was running behind him. Sergei looked back and laughed. Catch me if you can. He quickly bypassed few streets and was lost from sight. The man following him tried to catch up with him but still failed. He turned back to the manor. The same night a sensational news was spread from Brandon family. People claiming to be Master Dean's attendants robbed the kitchen. The news spread like spider net to everywhere. The Dark King Chapter 419 Master, Sergei, they come back. Crone reported. Did he buy it? He didn't buy just robbed it. Crone glanced at Dedian. Oh, I'm hungry. Let's go. There were few pieces of free rib meat of tooth crab on dinner table. The rest were high-quality beefs. Dedian looked at Crone. I'll be giving the public lecture a few days later. Did you contact the tailor for warm clothes? They are working on it. Crone replied. Dedian looked at the plate. From now on I'll eat the meal made in tiger-eyed rhino oil or one-eyed fish oil. From tomorrow I'm prepare accordingly. Crone nodded. Sergei strangely looked at Dedian. Before you weren't so picky about the food. What happened to you last two days? Dedian glanced at him but was lazy to answer. He felt the cold in his body ease up after eating rib meat of the tooth crab. He sighed and got up. Crone, come to my study room after eating. Oh? All right. Crone quickly ate his dinner and came to Dudian's study room. Master, are you looking for me? Come in. Crone pushed the door. He saw Dedian sitting by the desk and writing something. He waited. Dedian handed him out a paper and told to him, in the future I want to eat meals made out of these ingredients. If you can't find in the market then go to families and try to buy it. If they don't sell then steal it. Crone was speechless as he read through the ingredients. Master, only from this list? Yes. There were lots of ingredients that Crone had never even heard their names. But he was able to recognize some of them. All were valuable top ingredients. You couldn't eat them even in the well-known restaurants. A cost of a single tooth crab was enough to accumulate wealth of seven or eight years of an ordinary civilian family. In addition to crabs Dedian had written about clams, they were also rare than the crabs. Moreover, there was caviar and Mountain Dew. The former was also a very well-known food. The ordinary nobles couldn't even afford to eat it. The latter was something that money couldn't buy. It would only appear in black snow season. But finding it was a problem. Many civilians died every black snow season as they searched snow-capped mountain tops for Mountain Dew. However, the ones who found it would change their lives the moment they sold it. Crone put away the list and looked at Dudian. Master, these ingredients are hard to cook and we don't have a professional chef. We would waste them even if we find them. Would you like to hire a chef? Dudian replied, hired people are not trustworthy. A few days later, new partners will join us. You get to buy these ingredients first. Yes. Crone nodded. Mr. Chai, do you really want me to send someone over to get statement from Master Dean? Sergei slowly narrated everything to the old man then asked. Chai Rostov gently swayed the glass of red wine. I had already heard about it and made an investigation. Those two were indeed his attendants. The reason for his actions is to see our reaction. He hasn't dealt with the roots of Melon Consortium and he wants to deal with us. Young and ignorant. Cage frowned. 
Our consortium has been in partnership with him many times. We haven't offended him. Why would he pick us? Chai narrowed his eyes. He should be upset about the new textile machine. New textile machine? Cage was startled. We have them enough money because of the new textile machine. Although after two months it was already widely spread in the commercial district. Actually, Krul of Consortium tried to suppress him because of the senior hunter called Sergei who he had bailed out. Why doesn't he try to revenge them? Chai looked at him. It's hard to calculate such a thing. Anyway, since he wants to see our reaction, then let him see how we act. Send people and ask him to give a statement. I would like to see how he will respond. Yes. Cage nodded. Washing Consortium. Master, we just got information that there is a high price reward posted in the Dark Church for the one who can assassinate that genius master. Butler looked at the old man. Master, should we secretly push it up a bit? Hank folded the newspaper in his hands. No, the kid is still too young. He has swallowed the melon consortium but haven't digested it yet. But he has already provoked Scott Consortium. Ha! Huh. I though he will make an alliance with the Scott Consortium. I was very worried about it. Actually, originally, I was planning to send the information regarding the return of new textile machines to provoke the relationship between them. But now it seems the kid is aware of everything. The butler asked, did he trouble Brandon family to see the reaction of Scott Consortium? Brandon family has lost face. Will they find him for that? Let's see how they respond. Master than the plan before. Temporarily put on hold. Let's wait for them to get tired from fighting and we can attack at the best possible time. Green Foundation. Clinton family. Temporarily cancel the previous plan. I want to wait and see the reactions. Steve Clinton sipped from the coffee cup as he looked at the young man next to him. The youth wearing traditional Chinese clothing replied, Yes, master. The Dark King. Chapter 420. Master, the cage is built in ready. Crone reported to Dudian. Dudian nodded slightly as he retracted his eyes from the book. Order Sergei to take it to the passage by the giant wall. In addition, call old Patriarch Fulin. There are things I have to discuss with him. Yes, young master. Crone left the room. Ryan family carriage parked in front of Duduin's castle half a day later. Old Fulin and Sander got off the carriage. Three knights followed after them. One of them was a gold knight while the other two were silver knights. It's forbidden to carry weapons into the hall. Noise stopped them by the door. All three of the knights frowned as they turned to look at Old Fulin. Old Fulin nodded slightly. All three of them were displeased but still gave their weapons to Noise. Old Patriarch, please come over. Young Master has been waiting for a long time. Crone showed them the way. Old Fulin nodded but at the same time waved with his hand to indicate the three knights to stop by the castle's entrance. Sander helped him to go in. Korn opened the door to the study room and looked at Dudian who was wrapped in cotton clothing. Master, old patriarch has come over. You go out first. Dudian replied. Crone nodded however he gestured old Fulin and Sander to enter the study room. He gently closed the door and waited outside. It's so warm in here. Old Fulin said as he looked at the flames burning in the fireplace. Dudian folded the corner of the page and closed the book. He looked at old Fulin and Sander, are you all right? You have been missing from the scene for a few days. I'm getting old. Old Fulin laughed. He looked at Dudian. I heard that you had a small friction with Brandon family yesterday. Do you want me to settle it? No need. Dudian smiled as he took the teapot from the desk. He soaked and cleaned it. Later on he added tea and poured the hot water to brew it. He shook the cup and filled the cups. The smell of fresh tea exuded from the teapot and cups. Old Fulin was surprised. I would doubt that you weren't born in a noble family if your hair color wasn't black. Dudian smiled. Etiquette is something that can be learned. If the libraries were open to the civilians, the so-called noble etiquette wouldn't be for nobles only. Old Fulin smiled but didn't continue to chat. Dedian wasn't intending to continue to talk about that matter. He went straight to the point. Patriarch, any news from the Melon Consortium? Nope. Old Fulin took a sip from the tea. Most of the members of the Melon Consortium have joined our New World Consortium, but a small part of them have joined other consortia. Moreover, there is a public boycott to any product produced by Melon Consortium and there is noon buying their things. The Mel family is making loss every day and will collapse soon. Dedian nodded, Mel family. George was in prison without a chance for parole. The prestige of Mel family has fallen to the ground. In a matter of day, they were thrown from heavens to the hell. Old Fulin continued, Melon Consortium has no chance to stand up again. 
The Mel family will declare bankruptcy in few days. Dadia nodded. Exterminate them. Old Fooling stared at him. I will. Try to stabilize and operate the industries that you took from Melon Consortium. Dadian drank his own tea. From now on, I will not provide any practical help to the consortium. Patriarch, it's all on you now. Old Fulin was confused, but why? Sander was also anxious. Yes, why? We have the momentum and the public believes us. If we attack the other consortia, they won't be able to back on anyone. We can swallow all of them. If you provide us with inventions, then we can even rule the outer wall. Dadian looked at him, ruling the outer wall area? Don't forget the military and holy church are above the consortia. Sander was puzzled, military and holy church? They would never meddle and intervene in this matter. They have nothing to do with it if we are able to swallow up other consortia. Dadian stared back at old Fulin. Patriarch, right now everything seems calm. We are slowly swallowing up and digesting the Melon Consortium. But the other consortia are at start and looking towards the New World Consortium. If you keep trying to expand, you will be punished. The military and the Holy Church would never sit idle. They need a balanced system. The one who breaks this balance gets punished. That's why the temple forbids masters to cooperate and be in close contact with nobles. A master can't help out his own family so that an imbalance would be created. Of course, there are some masters who contact consortia, but they only help a little. If there is too much of a help provided, then the temple will open its one eye and close the other. You know the stakes at hand and I hope you can understand what I mean. Old Fooling pondered for a moment and looked at Dudian. Do you mean that we can't attack other consortia in the future? But what if they try to fight with us? What should we do then? A business is a business. Dudian continued. There will be conflicts and fricks while doing business. But I will still stay away from the operations of the New World Consortium. However, you shouldn't be worried. Although I won't help but everyone is aware that I have close connections to New World Consortium. They won't provoke you. You can also borrow my fame to operate. It should be more than enough to cope with other consortia. Old Fulin sighed. He also realized the current situation. He knew that if they tried to move forward the fill face a cliff. This cliff wasn't something that was there but was artificially placed in front of them. I know don't worry. As long as you are alive we only need to borrow your fame to become the largest consortium. Old Fulin replied. Dedian smiled as he continued to pour tea. What are you planning to do if not focus on inventions? Old Fulin asked while he drank tea. Dadian responded, There are lots of things. Right now, I'm going to be a faction master. But my department isn't stable yet. However, it has much better identity rather than a master with two legendary inventions. I'll continue to research. But I fear that I will ruin the world. Ruin the world? Old Fulin and Sander were surprised. This tone. Isn't it a bit cocky? Dadian saw the expression on their faces. He laughed but didn't elaborate. In the future, I will teach and train a group of outstanding students. No one would dare to touch New World Consortium even after I die. That's true. Old Fulin laughed. You are young, but you think so far ahead. One of my legs is in hereafter, but I haven't considered things like you. Dadian glanced at Sander. I always plan for long term. Old Fulin sighed. We may be able to go much farther if the military and Holy Church wouldn't suppress us. Unfortunately, the system is like this and it's not about our abilities. No one is willing to share the bowl of meat in front of them with others. We are same too. It's best not to threaten them. Dedian heard his words and added, in fact, every system is the same. If you want to climb up then being a bit stronger than the rest is not enough. You have to be so strong that you can rush out by losing them behind. Old Fooling continued, a supreme ruler. We were able to destroy a consortia which had a foundation that was built on decades of experience. But our background is too thin to cope up with Holy Church or the military which had hundreds of years to build foundation. I hope the next generation will rise. Dedian looked at him. Patriarch, you may be old, but your heart is young. You are a useless man if your heart is old. Dedian received the news that Burong family had come to visit after sending off old Fulin. Dedian didn't met them but let Crone to handle the issue. Master the messenger of the Burong family has gone back. They have brought over a gift. Crone handed out a box to him. The box was open and there was a contract inside it. I was worried that there would be something dangerous inside so I opened it without a permission. Crone said. Dedian said. I'll check it now. Yes, young master. Dedian picked up the contract and skimmed through. There was a trace of cold that passed through his eyes. They want to play around me by offering few industries. Naive. 
The Dark King. Chapter 421. Give this to old Fulin and let him send someone to get this industry. Dedian threw the contract at Crone, in addition to the letter from Burong family I don't want to hear these two words again. Otherwise I'll make sure that the family completely disappears from the commercial district. Crone caught the contract and left. Dedian continued to read after Crone left. Holy Church, the military. They have been in here for hundreds of years. Their roots must be in the inner wall. I have to know their bottom lines if I want to defeat them. Dudian's eyes lit up. The inner wall is the next target. Dedian finished the lunch when he heard the sounds of carriage from outside. He looked through the window. Dedian saw that it was his own carriage. Nicholas was the first to get off. He made gestures for the others to get off the carriage. Dedian stood up and rushed through his room. Gwyneth was confused as she saw his actions. She rushed behind him. Dean? A burly boy got off the carriage and loudly shouted at as he saw Dudian exit through the door. There was a smile on Dudian's face. The burly teenager diverted his arms and hugged Dudian. You are much stronger after these few years. Dudian looked at Mason who was in front of him. Mason was the closest friend from the scavengers training camp. Mason grinned, it's nothing in comparison to you. I have heard that you are a powerful master now. The newspaper write your name every other day. By the way, it was written that you are now a golden knight. I was told that golden knights are stronger than senior hunters. Dedian shook his head. I'm just an honorary knight. It's totally different from a real knight. Moreover, there is still a difference between a gold knight and a senior hunter. Oh. Do you mean honorary knights aren't as powerful? Of course not. Dedian laughed. Gwyneth was surprised as she looked at Dedian. She had followed him for long enough to know that Dudian also focused on identity and behavior. However, at the moment he was using the vulgar words he normally didn't. Mason, you bastard. Why are you running so fast? A person called out. Dudian and Mason looked to see a handsome teenager holding onto another ordinary teenager. Zack. Sham. Dudian was startled. Although it's been a few years, but all three of them have grown tall. There was a trace of childhood shadow on their faces. However, he noticed Sham's legs. One of them was broken from his thigh and there was a prosthesis used. Dean? Zack smiled as he helped Sham. Sham also saw the luxurious clothes Dudian was wearing. He was a bit ashamed. Zack said, we have been calling him Dean. Although he is a master and a golden knight, but we are the same. Zack continued, so should we call him Master Dean now? Mason helplessly looked at both of them. Nonsense. Dean is Dean. I'm right, aren't I? Dadian reacted, whatever you feel like. Sham, what has happened to your leg? This, ah, uh, Zack quickly said, a monster attacked when we were on a scavenging task. Sham's leg was bitten and infected. We couldn't detoxify on time so we had to cut his legs to save his life. Sham smiled, it's good this way too. I was expelled from the consortium because I had no value anymore. So I went back to help my father with his tavern. Although I didn't have not much of problems but my physique was much tougher than an average person. I was nicknamed as one-legged king. Dudian smiled. It's been few years but all of them were as close as before. However Sham seemed to have changed. In his mind all three of them were trustworthy but they were on different levels. Mason was the most trustworthy one followed by Sham who was honest. Zack had a bit of selfish personality. Although he liked to chat with Sham before but he saw that he had undergone through some changes. Zack seemed more generous. Mason was the same. Perhaps Sham had gone through much after being expelled from the consortium. He should have been in contact with more people as he helped with the tavern. Dedian sighed as he looked at the few people who he cooperated in the scavenger training. They had gone through many things together. From now on you guys will be with me. What's up? Mason laughed. It's good that the old man came over to help us or else we will be in sea of misery because of the breakup of consortium. Ah. Zack nodded. Shem bowed his head but didn't speak. Dudian looked at three of them. They have suffered for many years. The job of a scavenger was no different from a slave. They would be sent to dangerous locations without knowing about the existence or levels of monsters. They were only taught to pick up resources, transport them, and how to stay alive outside the giant wall. They would be dead once they faced a monster. However, it was precisely because of this reason that the resources consumed to nurture scavengers was much lover than a hunter. It was also much shorter time-wise. Hey, da. Mr. Dean or Master? A voice echoed from the carriage. Duduen's eyes lit up. Long time no see, Glenn. Since the last assassination. Has it been long? Glenn grinned. 
Dedian smiled, past is past. Today you are part of the family. Glenn blinked. I will go ahead then. I will also go in. A young man behind the Glen laughed. Dedian was aware of his existence since the beginning. He knew that Melon Consortium had another senior hunter who had chosen a night career. The youth had a very strong presence and was neck to neck with Glenn. He assumed that he wouldn't be inferior to Sergei in melee combat. Come in, the place is big enough to fit all. Dedian went back into the hall. Mason looked around in surprise. It was his first time coming into a castle meant for nobles. Glenn and the young man were surprised too but their surprise was uprooted in the idea that they didn't expect Dedian to live in such a simply castle. Dedian greeted everyone in St. Gwyneth to cook. Master, a person from Brandon family has come. Crone came to the hall. Glenn and the young man's eyes lit up. They knew that Brandon family was an upper-level nobility. They had almost the same position as Milan family had in Melon Consortium. Dedian said in a cold tone, I'm busy and don't have time to see them. All right, young master. Crone left. Glenn stared at Dudian. The Brandon family should be related to Scott Consortium. Are you going to cooperate with Scott Consortium? Dudian shook his head. It didn't take long for Crone to come back again. Pastor the messenger said that he was sent to get an explanation regarding the crab that was stolen. Explanation? Dudian indifferently said. Kick them out. Ah, uh, Crone was stunned as he saw that Dudian wasn't joking. What? You were driven out. Cage was shocked as he listened to his attendants. Was it his butler? Who was the one who kicked you out? I talked to his butler and he replied that Master Dean was busy. Then he kicked us out. The young attendant replied. Bastard. Cage slapped the table. He snatched my food from my banquet. Moreover, Brandon family have lost face. Now he kicks out my people? Kiddo, you have little time left, master? Shitty bastard. The young man trembled in fear. I'm going to a trip to Rostov family. Cage said. The attendants were relieved as they left the room. The news spread all over into the years of big families and the other consortia. The Scott Consortium held an emergency meeting that day. The specific content of the discussions weren't known to outsiders. The Dark King Chapter 422 Do you want to go war with Scott Consortium? Glenn asked after Crone left. She suddenly felt that was the reason of Dudian's recruitment. She felt bitter as she didn't imagine that she would be part of a ferocious struggle the moment she left Melon Consortium. Dudian laughed without replying. His silence meant agreement. Glenn stared at him. The Melon Consortium's network is very wide. You haven't finished with them yet. And now want to deal with Scott Consortium? Aren't you a bit too anxious? Dudian smiled. I know what my current abilities are. You don't have to be pressured by these. You will be working as my private hunters and won't belong to any consortium. That's why you don't need to comply with rules and regulations of the New World Consortium. Moreover, you will get three times more money than you received in Melon Consortium. At the same time, you will be registered as my personal knights. You will have the same identity as a knight serving a noble. Although it's not much, but it's a more decent identity. In the future, if you can pass the assessments of Knights Hall, you will be able to get an official knight status. I'll help you out to unregister your hunter household registration. Glenn was startled as she glanced at the youth next to her. She replied in shock. Are you going to help us to unregister from hunter household registration? Although in public registration they were registered as civilians but there were special symbol placed by their registration. This special symbol represented their identity as hunters hidden behind civilian status. Hunters paid taxes which was much more higher than civilians. Moreover, they could never get pregnant. In case of a pregnancy, there were severe punishments. These policies were like bones clamped in the throats of hunters. This was why most of the hunters didn't last for long. They either had to rely on personal relationships to apply to be an instructor or senior staff in consortia or get killed outside the giant wall. Glenn's eyes flushed as she got up and made a deep bow. Thank you. Her words were full of sincerity. Master Dean, thank you. The youth also said in a grateful tone as he bowed. Dudian glanced back at them. I have a high position now. There will be many people who would like to see me dead. Your life will be threatened if you act as my guards. Are you willing to? I'm willing. Glenn said without hesitation. Me too. The youth also replied in haste. Dudian smiled. Sit down. Both of them sat down. 
Mason, Zach, and Sham also saw the excited look in the eyes of both senior hunters. They were puzzled. As scavengers, they thought about hunters as an outstanding people. Their aim was to become a hunter one day. However, they didn't think that both senior hunters would be so emotional when Duddian promised to lift away their identities as hunters. It was very difficult to understand. Duddian looked at the trio. What are your plans for future? Mason smiled. I'll go with you as long as I'm not working as a scavenger anymore. It seems the choice of a hunter ain't good, so I also want to be your knight. Duddian smiled. You can die at any time if you want to be my knights. It's worth to die as your knife. Mason grinned. You have saved my life quite a few times back in old days. So I'm ready to die for you. Dudian's heart was warm as he looked at Mason. I am also willing. Zach replied. Sham was a bit nervous as he looked at Dudian. I would also like to butt my legs. Dudian replied. I'm still missing a chef. The last one tried to poison me and almost succeeded. I want you to be the chef so that I can eat safely. Mason and the other two were surprised. Assassination? Was Melon acting so vicious? Mason said in anger. Zack looked at the cup he was holding in his hand. He subconsciously put it back on table. Sham, are you willing? Duddian asked. Sham stared back at him. I'm willing but I have run just a tavern. My cooking skills aren't what you would like. I'm a bit picky. Duddian smiled. The chefs of famous hotels will be invited to teach you so learn. Sham scratched his head. All right. Dudian looked at the clock on the wall. He looked at Crone. Call Gabriel and Artemis. Crone came back after moments. Gabriel and Artemis followed behind him. Introduce yourselves. Dudian commanded. Gabriel and Artemis glanced at the crowd. There was a trace of fear in Artemis's eyes. Gabriel seemed to feel the timidity of her sister. He loudly introduced himself. He looked at Artemis with encouragement. They are orphans of war. I brought them back from outside the Golden Wall. Dudian looked at youth besides Glenn. Dennis, I have seen your hunter Sergei as my guard for now. He will be accompanying me around. You should teach Gabriel your skills. Dennis got up. Yes, young master. Glenn smiled. I've heard about Sergei. I think he was imprisoned in Thornflower Prison and I last time saw him outside the Golden Wall. He was fighting violently and furiously. Dennis has a more brisk way of combat. He should be much better to tutor the kid rather than Sergei. He still has to practice and stabilize his foundation. It's too early to talk about that. Dudian looked at Gabriel. Practice diligently under uncle's command. Gabriel nodded and came to stop in front of Dennis. Sir, please teach me. Dennis looked at the timid boy. Lead the way. Gabriel turned and led him upstairs. Glenn's eyes fell on Artemis. She looked at her with curiosity. I have never seen a child with green hair color. Who is she? I think she has the genes of different races. Dudian casually said as she looked at Artemis. Would you like to teach your assassination skills to her? Glenn looked at him. Did you have the idea since beginning? Dudian laughed. I like her a lot. Glenn looked at Artemis who was in front of her. Little girl I will teach you real skills. Would you like to beat your brother in the future? Artemis replied in a weak tone. I I don't fight with my brother. Glenn picked up her from Artemis's little arm. Can I go anywhere within the castle? Dudian drank tea. Except my study room. All right. Glenn took away Artemis. Artemis followed behind her but turned to look at Dudian from time to time. Dudian turned towards Mason and the other two. I assume you won't blame me as I have taken you guys under my wings. Mason shook his head. We would never do that. Zack and Sham smiled. Dudian looked at Zack and Sham who smiled. He knew that there was still a bit of disapproval in their eyes although they didn't say anything. You should be aware of my past by now. I was imprisoned by the Melon Consortium. Later I was sheltered by Ryan family after my escape. I was helpless back at time now it's time to crush Melon Consortium after I amass enough power. I didn't have enough power to pick you guys before. Melon Consortium is destroyed and I have ability to protect you guys. You should no longer worry about being erased inadvertently. Trio looked at Dudian with shame in their heart. Dean, we know about your... Mason said. Zack and Sham nodded in silence. Dudian was relieved as he saw them comply with himself. 
He didn't want to have gap between his three childhood friends. Dudian received the custom-made warm armor after the dinner. The armor woven with soft layer of materials that were taken from spiders. It was enough to protect him even in the places where lots of ice and snow accumulated. Dudian left the castle after the dinner. Gwyneth acted as the driver of the carriage. They came to a place outside the castle. Dudian let Gwyneth find a place to stay the night in the neighborhood. He quietly passed through the suburbs and reached at Golden Wall. There were lots of wood frames by the Golden Wall. Seems the repair was going on. He heard laughter from the dried part of the wall. He listened to the talk of men. Dudian learned that they were the workers who were rebuilding the wall. The Dark King Chapter 423 Dudian quietly detoured the place. Whoosh! He easily went over the golden wall. The surface of the golden wall wasn't as smooth as the surface of the giant wall. He could easily climb through by relying on the gaps and bricks. Dudian quietly went through to the other side after he landed. There were some towns outside the golden wall but all of them were desolate. Even the war had finished but there was still a strict military control over the area. They tried to prevent the barbarians from coming over to steal information. The town was silent like the darkness itself. Dudian crossed the towns and went to the southern fort. As he had expected the fort was empty too. The military didn't intend to station forces in the fort before forcing out the barbarians from the Red Maple Mountains. Dudian ran out of the fort and went straight into the wilderness. Dudian came to the place where he had hidden the splitty. He directly jumped through the weeds that covered the entrance. He saw the steel cage made out of the tungsten steel. Splitty was curled up into a ball as it laid inside. Splitty's size has decreased. Dudian's heart was anxious as he trotted over. Splitty's body moved when it heard the movement. Its body moved as the dark red eyes of it were exposed. Splitty was staring at Dudian. Dudian was surprised to see the appearance of Splitty's eyes. It wasn't the eye structure that he had previously seen. Did its eyes degenerate because of malnutrition? Dudian had hunted a three-meat-long crocodile along the way. He threw its body inside and took a few steps back. Splitty was stimulated by the bloody smell. It didn't immediately rush at the corpse of the crocodile but stared at Dudian. After it saw Dudian to take four or five steps back it rushed out. It scythe like forelimbs pierced through the tough cuticle and torn its body. It began to swallow its flesh. Dudian was shocked by its lightning-fast strikes. It found out that he couldn't clearly saw the speed at which the scythe-like limbs of the splitty stretched. It could be seen that despite starving the splitty's combat power was close to level 30 monsters. However the most surprising thing was that the edge of splitty's limbs had gone massive changes. He had raised the young splitters to level 40 level and he had observed the adult splitter too. Their scythe-like limbs were sharp and thin but Splitty's blade was much different. After carefully knowing he saw there were vertical spikes at the edges of the limbs. It was obvious that once Splitty attacked the target the limbs won't just pierce the body of the target, but will tore it out. But he thought that it was both an advantage and a drawback. The time when it would pull out the scythe-like limb it would cause a greater wound and much effective bleeding. But the speed of bleeding out would slow down at a reasonable rate. But if Splitty grow to an adult stage then its piercing and extraction would reach an extremely fast rate. Dudian was puzzled. How could the Splitty's edge of limbs could be different from the other young Splitter? Is it because he had fed it differently? Or was the cause because of the starvation? It didn't take long for Splitty to eat up the crocodile. Only the skin was left however it didn't continue to eat. Dudian pulled out the chain that was stabilizing the cage. He went to loosen the second chain. However the next moment Splitty pushed the cage as it rolled towards Dudian. Dudian's body flashed as he moved to another place and pulled out another diagonal chain. Bang! Splitty hit the cage as it tried to move it towards Dudian. Dudian used the chains to drag the cage. Dudian pulled the chains and jumped into the basement. He struggled to pull out the cage. The cage was moved to the door. The Splitty's body hit the cage as it tried to reach Dudian. After few hits the concrete by the door was ruptured. Dudian dragged the chain as he pulled the cage into the wilderness. Splitty squeaked in the cage as it seems it was angry at Dudian. Dudian's arms were sour and tired after running out for ten miles. Splitty fiercely struggled in the cage as the sounds echoed out. Dudian shook his head. I shouldn't have fed you now. You wouldn't have the strength to toss the cage. 
Splitty stopped struggling as its blood-red eyes stared at him after Dudian spoke. Dudian looked at it in silence while he rested. The Splitty rushed towards the cage and stabbed its scythe-like limbs towards Dudian. It tried to kill him but distance was big so it couldn't reach him. Dudian smiled as he got up and patted the dust on his buttocks. After a few hours they reached the barrier line made by the Holy Church. The weather was very dark as it was night. They were using fires to light the fort. Dudian looked at the bushes. He saw few red heats within the grasslands. It seems that few monsters were camouflaging with the bushes. The smell that they exuded was almost the same as the bushes. Even the senior hunters wouldn't be able to detect them. Dudian rushed through the gap where those monsters were hidden. He found a gap where no troops were stationed. There was a smile on his face as he pulled the cage with Splitty. Splitty occasionally screamed but it gradually stopped. Instead of pleading it just sat in the cage as Dudian dragged it. Creak. Dudian saw the Splitty attack him. Whoosh. Dudian quickly changed his location. Bang. The location where he was previously on was hit by the scythe. Dudian ran for a few miles. He heard footsteps echoing from the back. He sighed as he knew that it was the members of the Holy Church that were stationed in the barrier. S. Dudian returned back to the cage. Splitty saw Dudian's mighty momentum towards the cage, and it slightly retreated back. Dudian removed the key and unlocked the cage. He looked back at the people that were chasing him. He stayed still for a few seconds then opened the door of the cage and ran. Squeak! Splitty was stunned as it saw the door of the cage open. It paused for half a second then rushed out. Bang! The moment it went out Splitty overturned the cage as it vent its anger on it. Stop! Who is that? Stop! It's the area of Holy Church. Stop! The people from the church were riding on horses. They were about two or three hundred meters away from the cage when the Splitty had exited it. There were no stars and the visibility was low. Most could see only vague outline. After all dark vision was a precious ability which even the hunters didn't have. The Dark King Chapter 424 The Dark King Whoosh! Whoosh! Arrows flew down from the sky and pierced the weeds by the Splitty. Splitty's eyes turned towards the place where the arrows were aimed from. Its body moved as well as it looked at the direction as if it was a devil. The next moment it jumped up like a ferocious tiger, and its spider-like body rapidly moved. Its body swayed like a seaweed as it went towards the team. What the hell is this? Ah uh ah! -uh. Monster, it is a monster! The screams echoed as the flesh and blood were torn and cut off. Splitty rushed into the team of Knights of Light. It was like a meat grinder which quickly killed the knights. Its scythes were able to pierce through the armor of the knights easily. At the same time Splitty was easily able to avoid the attacks of the knights. Dudian ran for a few hundred meters and stopped to look back at the tragic massacre. He sighed. He pulled out his dagger and returned close to the cage and watched the battle. Do not panic. Shields. A young knight shouted out as he rode on a white horse. His face was frightened as he anxiously shouted. However the knight saw that Splitty was killing the well-trained knights of light killed in matter of seconds. He took into account his lack of confidence as he turned and ran. The knight pulled his bow and show few arrows. Arrows flew through the air and hit the sharp edges of Splitty's body. All of them bounced down. The sudden attack caught the attention of the Splitty. Its bloody eyes locked on the young knight. Splitty rushed towards the knight. Its scythe-like limbs waved as it cut off the bodies of knights on its way. They couldn't even scream. The young knight had never seen such a ferocious monster. He clenched the ropes of the horse as he saw Splitty rushing at him. Ta ta ta. Splitty quickly caught up with the war horse. The distance between the two was decreased in a moment. Splitty squeaked in anger as its sharp limb pierced through the tail of the horse and tore it apart. The horse hissed as its forelegs raised high. Splitty pulled out its scythe as it torn out the wound and brought out the blood, flesh and intestines of the horse. The horse held down. Splitty didn't care much about the horse as it rushed towards the young knight on ground. There was regret in Knight's heart. He didn't expect that such a brutal monster would try to move past. If he knew about its existence he wouldn't even come over. Whoosh! He waved his sword to resist but Splitty's scythe like limb cut if off. The next moment the young knight's body was embraced by Splitty. His shoulders, head, 
neck and other parts of the body were cut off. He didn't even have time to issue a scream. Splitty began to eat the knight's body. The rest of the knights were scared as they saw the scene. The initial knights who were injured by the Splitty tried to crawl towards the bushes to try to hide. Some of the had abdomen cuts. The others had no hands or others' limbs removed. Dudian slightly shook his head as he looked over the battlefield. He picked up few stones from the ground and aimed at the seriously injured knights who tried to avoid Splitty. Puff! 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 The stones flew out and hit the helmets of the knights that tried to crawl into the grass. Their heads were flattened. Splitty heard the sounds as Dudian killed the several survivors. It looked up and roared. He gave up on eating the young knight's corpse and rushed towards Dudian. Dudian dragged the cage as he ran away. The Splitty wasn't in the cage so he was able to effortlessly pull it away. Nevertheless, he wasn't able to pull away the distance. Dudian came to stop after seven or eight hundred meters. His mouth curved out into a smile as he saw the Splitty chase in haste. He grabbed the iron frame of the cage as he looked at the rapidly approaching Splitty. It was like a train that moved in full speed. Dudian's fingers clenched around the pillars as the Splitty rushed at him. The same moment he wheeled around the cage. He twisted his foots and pulled up the cage with the torque from his waist. He swung the cage and hit the Splitty. Bang! The open cage was perfectly aimed at Splitty. Its body went into the cage. Dudian stopped at the moment of the crash but rolled the cage along with his body for seven or eight laps. Dudian tightly pressed and locked the cage's door while rolling it. As the cage stopped rolling he jumped out of the cage and stepped onto the tungsten steel chain on the ground. Squeak! Splitty was able to stabilize its body. It was angered as cried out loud as it was itself within the damned cage once again. Dudian checked it but pulled the cage. Splitty fiercely struggled and squeaked in anger. Dudian didn't care much about its shouts as he quickly ran and pulled the cage over the grass. Dudian saw giant wall after ten minutes. He saw that there was a fire next to it. He quickly came close to the place where the fire was on. The fire was burning next to a passage and team of Knights of Light were stationed outside on duty. The Scott Consortium. Dudian's eyes narrowed as he looked at the entrance. It was not the death passage that belonged to New World Consortium but another next to it which belonged to the Scott Consortium. It was convenient for him to successfully transport Splitty outside the giant wall using the passage of another consortia. Whoosh! Dudian covered his face with a black cloth and held onto a dagger as he ran towards the place. Who is there? Stop! There is an attack from an enemy. The Knights of Light saw the masked figure running towards them. They were not slow and grouped in a team in haste. They had shields, swords, and spears as they stared at Dudian. It was about seven or eight meters of distance between them when Dudian threw out the dagger. It rushed out like lightning and pierced the forehead of a knight. The knight failed to react in time as he tried to move the shield to cover his head but his lifeless body fell down. Kill him! Several knights roared as they rushed at him. Dudian raised his hand and grabbed the rifle aimed at him. He turned his body and used the force to lift the knight who stabbed the spear. He waved the knight and spear to hit the others around. The knight was shocked and quickly let go of the spear as he didn't expect the enemy's power to be so shocking. Dudian took back the spear and used it to attack the others. He was like a dragon who killed the knight. The spear split the throat of a knife and hit the shield of another one. The knight holding onto the shield fell to the ground because of the sheer force. He was kneeling in front of Dudian. Dudian swung around the spear as he kicked another knight's shield. Bang! The knight hit the ground and fainted on spot. The spear was dancing as it quickly killed the others. In the blink of an eye eight knights were on the ground. Dudian came to stop in front of the knight which he had stabbed with dagger. He pulled out the dagger from the knight's forehead and put it back into its sheath by his leg. However he didn't discard the spear to prevent further investigation in the future. He turned back and pulled the cage in front of the passage. He went into the passage as he dragged the cage. He exited from the other side of the exit and climbed out. What? Dudian frowned when he heard the shocking sounds from the exit. He saw that a group was sitting behind a campfire. All the people looked at him. Hunter. Mr. Hunter. A boy who saw Dudian's dress was startled. There was a trace of excitement in his eyes as he got up and trotted over. Greetings, Hunter. I'm Scavenger of the Consortium. 
My name is Lorian. Lorian. Dudian was startled as the name was a little familiar. The Dark King. Chapter 425. The Dark King. Hunter. Hunter. The other two who were sitting by the fire also ran over. One was a girl while the other was a middle-aged man. They bowed down to salute Dudian as they saw the black armor he was wearing. Dudian didn't care much about the two but looked at the teenager in front of him. He pondered for a moment then remembered a person. He was startled as he looked at the teenager. Lorian was the name of the guy who had trained with them back in the scavengers' camp. The guy was also second behind him and tried to compare himself to Dudian a lot. He vaguely remembered that Lorian was the first person to select a consortia. Moreover, he had selected Scott Consortium. Dedian didn't expect to accidentally meet an acquaintance from back then. Hunter, are you out for implementing a task? Lorian asked as he saw Dedian staring back at him. The moment his voice faded, a squeak sound echoed from inside the passage. Dedian recovered and saw the alarm in the eyes of the three. He sighed as he pulled out the dagger from the sheath and quickly swept over Lorian's throat. The trio was stunned as they saw Dudian's attack. Lorian felt a pain coming off his throat. He covered his neck and felt the overflowing warm blood. He tightly covered the wound and stepped back as he looked at Dudian in fear. Sorry, just blame the bad luck you have, Dudian slowly said. Lorian's eyes widened as he fell down without a sound. The girl and middle-aged man were stunned as they were stuck on spot. Puff, puff, Dudian quickly stabbed with the dagger without waiting for them to respond. The blood flowed down their throats. Dudian put back the dagger and grabbed the chain. He pulled out the cage. Splitty was excited as it saw three corpses on the ground. However, Dudian felt complicated. He was used to killing strangers as he didn't feel too much about it. But tonight he had killed someone who he knew from childhood. Although the latter tried to compete with him back then but he had never done anything wrong to him. Now he had killed the man. Squeak! Splitty struggled in the cage as it smelled the blood. Dedian retracted his eyes and dragged the cage. It was very dark and faint sounds echoed in the silence. Dedian walked step by step as he pulled the chain. As the time passed he recovered himself from the death of the teenager. I have to bypass the area number 3 of Scott Consortium to reach the cave of the splitter. Generally they're level 15 to 23 monsters in the area number 3. So they need senior hunters to ensure safety in there. Dudian's eyes lit up as he pulled the cage. Soon he came to a broken asphalt road which was covered in weeds. Both sides of the road were full of ruins. It was quiet while pythons and lizards crawled around once in a while. Bang! Bang! The sounds of Splitty hitting the cage echoed out. Whoosh! A giant cat-like monster jumped out of nowhere. It stood on an object which had the shape of a car. It was covered in moss. The object broke down as the monster stepped on it. The next moment it lightly jumped and stopped on ground as it stared at Dedian. Dedian recognized that the monster was called a copper-clawed cat. It was a level 19 monster and was very flexible. It could annihilate a team of intermediate hunters. Splitty squeaked as it looked at the cat-like monster. The copper-clawed cat wanted to attack but it hesitated and shrank back as it heard the Splitty's cry. It turned away and jumped over the ruins of a building and disappeared. Dedian was surprised as he didn't imagine that such a bloodthirsty monster would know what fear is. Creak! Splitty scrambled in the cage as it saw the copper-clawed cat run away. Impressive! Dedian chuckled as he pulled the cage. Splitty turned its head and roared in Duden's direction. After a few times of loud roars of anger it stopped as it saw Dedian ignore him. Instead of in its dissatisfaction and anger at the cage, Dedian crossed the entire area of Scott Consortium and reached the region of New World Consortium about two hours later. He encountered a lot of monsters along the way. Some of them were scared away by Splitty's roars while Dedian killed the rest. He was easily able to kill monsters that were level 25 and less. Dedian came to reach the Splitter's cave after an hour. I brought you home, Dedian casually said as he looked at Splitty in the cage. Splitty roared as it heard Dedian talk. Dedian looked at the boulders that covered the entrance to the cave. He was relieved to see that there was nothing wrong. He checked from the gap and saw that an amazing heat was exuded from the inside. Apparently the other young splitter was alive too. He turned away. Dedian came back to the death passage by the giant wall. He saw a huge cage standing in the vicinity. He had let Sergei to transport it. The size of the cage was much larger than the passage. It was connected firmly though. Dedian was relieved as he took this cage and brought it back to the cage of the adult splitter. He looked at the cage where Splitty was. I'm going to give you a new place to live. Squeak! Splitty growled in anger. 
Dedian smiled and opened the boulder to create an entrance. The young splitter inside the cave had become enormous. Its body length was around six or seven meters. It was double the size of Splitty. Pungent and rotten smell exuded formed the cave. Dedian held his breath and jumped into the cave. He seized the body of the splitter and towed it out. Dedian had smeared lime powder on Splitter's limbs so it couldn't regenerate them anymore. At the moment it had only bare body. It was like a moth without wings. Its body color was white. It seems that it was affected by the moisture on the ground and had some kind of deformity. The young splitter opened its mouth as it saw Dedian approaching it. Dedian easily subdued it and carried it into the big cage outside the cage. Bang! Bang! The young splitter struggled inside the cage as its body hit the steel columns. Dedian looked at Splitty. It's your turn now. Splitty turned quiet when it saw its brethren. However, it squeaked in anger after hearing Dudin's voice. Dedian didn't care much about its roars. He pushed the spear into the little cage and moved the cage close to the big one. He poked the cage from outside and waved the spear. Splitty was forced to escape as it rolled from small cage into the big one. Dedian immediately kicked close the door of the small cage and grabbed onto the door of the big cage. Splitty saw that it was locked into the big cage. It tried to rush back at the door but it was already half closed. Dedian stabbed with spear to stop Splitty. He pushed the door to close it. Enough! Dedian sat down as he was tired. Bang! Bang! Splitty hit the cage, but it was much heavier than the previous one. Moreover, there was another huge young splitter in it. So the cage gently shook. Blame your fortune if you can't survive. Dedian looked at Splitty who was struggling inside the cage. He brought Splitty outside because he wouldn't have much chance in the future to look after it. Moreover, in the near future, he wasn't planning come outside the giant wall to hunt. He was planning to give public lecture first. Afterwards, he wanted to check out the inner wall. He was interested in seeing the place and to find out a way to deal with the military and the holy church. Both forces had roots in the inner wall. Even if he was able to destroy them in the outer wall, they would send reinforcements from the inner wall. He knew that the giant wall had isolated them from outside world. So if he wanted to ascend to the apex, then he had to overcome and break through the limits of the inside world. Otherwise, all the glory he had would become dust. The cave of the adult splitter was located in the middle of their region. So he could either send Sergei to feed them or they could rely on themselves. It would be very hard to move within the previous cage. But this new one was big and had enough space for both splitters. They had to learn to prey on other monsters from the cage or starve to death. The Dark King Chapter 426 The Dark King Dudian relied on his thermal vision to capture monsters lurking in the vicinity of the cave. He brought back a skeleton back to the cage. Dudian cut off its both legs and threw it directly into the cage. The gap was enough for it to pass directly. The skeleton made a low roar as it looked at Splitty. Splitty firstly shrank back in fear. However, it was angered as if its dignity was humiliated. Its scythe-like limbs pierced the skeleton into many parts. Dudian looked at it as he threw another corpse of a skeleton a few meters outside the cage. He stood about ten meters away from the cage as he looked at Splitty to prey on the skeleton. Dudian checked Splitty once more before leaving the place. Dudian ran at full speed as he went towards the giant wall. Along the way he met few monsters which tried to kill him. However, he ignored them as he was too lazy. These monsters tried to catch up with him but abandoned their prey as they couldn't come close to Dedian. Dedian took off the jacket of his armor when he came to stop in front of the giant wall. The transparent wings gently stretched out from his back and slightly trembled. His body slow let floated up. He placed his foot on the surface of the giant wall and pushed his body with the help of the wings. He began to run along the surface of the giant wall. Actually he was running faster than he did on the ground. Whoosh! Dudian reached the top of the giant wall. He felt like his chest was frozen. He gentle stretched back his wings and put on his armor. His body soon warmed up and he began to continue along the wall for half an hour. He reached the corner of the wall. According to the map, the giant wall of Sylvia was quadrilateral similar to ancient city walls. However, it didn't overlook any buildings and didn't have towers to station troops. Dudian continued to run but suddenly thought of an idea. If he could look directly from above the giant wall then he could see the inner wall area. The idea was an exciting one but he calmed down the more he thought about it. He was ignorant about the situation within the inner wall. 
Moreover, even if he smuggled into the area, he didn't know what he would do there. It just made no sense to go there at this point. Moreover, there were people like the dragon girl inside the inner wall. He assumed that she was just a small character. He couldn't easily save his life if he accidentally provoked an influential one. At the end, he would just expose his own identity. It wasn't worth entering the inner wall right now. He saw a magnificent building as he ran. You can view all the scenery from the top of the giant wall. The fortress he saw was like a black dragon that stretched to the distance. There were vast suburbs behind it. But the villages and towns were desolate. There were people who had rough weapons and ran around. Apparently, they were low-level soldiers of the barbarian army. The golden wall was behind the suburbs. At the moment the sky was bright so he could see black spots that seemed like ants which moved around the golden wall. All of them were the workers that repaired the golden wall. There were neatly arranged buildings behind the golden wall. It was the southern part of the commercial district. Dudian concentrated as he looked away. There was a distant building and a towering giant wall covered in hazy mist. That was the inner wall which was constructed 200 years ago. The height of the inner wall was more than half the height of the giant wall. According to the information it was more than 662 meters. It was said that countless workers had died during the construction of the inner wall, and the project was an extremely big one. Dudian's heart moved as he saw the inner wall. Although he wasn't planning to temporarily smuggle into the inner wall, but peeping at the place wasn't a problem. He wouldn't be ignorant when he entered the inner wall. He continued to run forward. After an hour later, the contours of the huge silhouette finally cleared up. He ran for more than an hour at full speed with the help of his wings. He was faster five times than a horse and Dudian's body was sweating heavily. Fortunately his armor could absorb the sweat so his body wasn't wet. Dudian stopped to rest on the giant wall. At the same time he looked at the inner wall. The inner wall cut off entire outer wall like a huge gate. The width of the inner wall was about 40 or 50 meters. The streets were more prosperous and wider than the ones in the commercial district. There were jungles as far as eyes could see. There were lakes, deserts, mountains and everything. He looked all around but couldn't detect shadow of a village or town in the inner wall. Dudian was startled. The inner wall area should be extremely lively place in his impression. Even the noble families such as Mel family craved to enter the inner wall. It was proof that the cream of the elite of the giant wall of Sylvia lived in inner wall. However there was nothing but desolate places. Dudian suppressed the doubts in his heart as he continued to run forward. The more he ran, the closer he got and clear he saw. He saw vast plains that stretched far. At the end there were mountains. At the top of mountains there seemed to be snow. There were lakes in the plains too. But still he couldn't see any villages or towns. Dudian felt incredible as such a massive area was empty. There wouldn't be such empty land even in the dilapidated slums of the outer wall. He suddenly thought about the shape of the map. He was shocked as he figured the size of the inner wall. The inner wall occupied nearly 80% of the soil of the entire giant wall of Silva. The outer wall and the radiation zone only added up to the other 20%. The vast plains outside the outer wall area were nothing in comparison to inner wall. Dudian decided to continue to move on. But he came to stop as he saw a huge shadow rapidly moving in the bushes. There was a very small figure in comparison to the shadow running behind it and trying to catch it. Dudian stopped to check the shadows. The shadow was actually dozens of meters long giant monster. Its body had numerous feet by the side like a centipede. It had a tail similar to a scorpion. Moreover the person trying to catch the monster was a young boy which looked like 16 or 17 years old. Almost the same age as Dudian. There was a huge sword in teenager's hand as he caught up with the monster. OMG! Dudian was surprised. It was a highly toxic monster which was a level 22 according to the Atlas. Intermediate hunters would die if they met this centipede. Moreover senior hunters would be reluctant to face it as the antidote was difficult to find. Whoosh! The teenager threw out a chain which clamped the feet of the monster. The centipede struggled as it shook its tail and twisted it towards the teenager. Teenager leaped up as he waved his sword. The centipede's tail was wounded. The teenager fought against the beast. It didn't take long for the teenager to cut open the centipede head. The monster stopped struggling. Its body slightly twisted but stopping moving the next moment. 
Dudian was shocked to find that the people from the inner wall were so powerful. It was his first time to see a boy similar to his age to be so powerful. Teenager pulled out his sword and tied the tail of the centipede with the chain. He began to drag it huge body away. Dudian followed as he wanted to see the place where the teenager lived. Suddenly, boy stopped and turned to look back at the sky. Dudian was shocked to see the teenager turn his head. He quickly shrank back his body as he hid under the edge of the giant wall. After a few moments he pulled out his dagger and slightly raised it. Although the images looked more vague on metal objects especially because of kilometers of the distance, but he saw the teenager standing still without any movement. The boy began to move after a few moments which was reflected on his dagger. The Dark King Chapter 427 Dedian checked to see that the boy was dragging the monster and going away. He was relieved but at the same time scared. Dedian didn't think that the teenager would be so sensitive. He didn't know what would it lead to if the teenager was able to spot him. Moreover, he didn't know with such skills what kind of status the teenager had within the inner wall. Moreover, the dragon girl he met last time. What stage was she at to have such strength? The most surprising thing was the existence of monsters within the inner wall. It was the same environment as the outside. How could monsters run inside the inner wall when there were people such as the dragon girl who could easily annihilate them? He couldn't find answers to anything but only speculate. Fortunately, he wasn't tempted to fight against Holy Church and the military. Otherwise, he didn't know what kind of trouble he would be facing now. He was lucky that he wanted to fight the backing of Holy Church and the military within the inner wall before taking them on. As he thought of everything, some doubts appeared in his heart. The commercial district was at stake because of the barbarian attacks. The military should have requested reinforcements from the inner wall, but they didn't respond. Does it mean that inner wall doesn't care about the life or death of outer wall? Was it that the military didn't ask for reinforcements but had another trump card? In addition to these two points, there was another possibility. Barbarians could have affected the reinforcements from the inner wall. But if that was the case, then the barbarians should have great backing to contact and influence the inner wall. However, for barbarians to contact the inner wall, the radiation zone was separated from the inner wall by outer wall area. So difficulty of directly contacting the inner wall for barbarians was no different from flying into the sky. Perhaps there are powers within the inner wall who had actively colluded with the barbarians, but this meant that the problem was more complex than he had thought. Dedian frowned as he knew that the problem was complicated and tricky. He suddenly thought of Yvette who was detained by the military. Dedian looked up at the teenager. He put away the idea of tracking him. The sun had risen and he should go back before it got late. Moreover, he had the ability to climb the giant wall easily so he would have chance in the future to come over to take a look. Gwyneth was waiting by the post office as she leaned against the carriage. She had a straw hat drooping over her face and covering it. The night had passed but Dudian wasn't back yet. Although she had become Dudian's maid but she felt that she couldn't see through him yet. The latter always found a way to hide things from her. She felt a smell. Gwyneth took off the straw hat and saw Dudian passing the street. She looked at him, are we going back now? We should eat something first. Dedian had a piece of cake in his hand. He took a bite and handed out the rest to Gwyneth eat it. Gwyneth was startled, I can't eat so much. You are beautiful as you are so don't lose too much weight. Dedian casually said as he stepped into the carriage. Gwyneth put the piece of cake away as she shook the ropes. The carriage drove away. Dedian saw that outside the castle was noise as there were lots of newspaper reporters. He suddenly remembered that there were three days left to his teaching. He knew that the nobles of entire commercial district were concerned about the lecture. The banner on the carriage fluttered. The people immediately noticed it and jammed over as if an ant colony. Gwyneth had an indifferent expression on her face as she jittered the rope to rush the carriage. The people hurried to avoid the carriage. Although they liked earning money but life was more important. They didn't think they could get compensation for death or work injury if they were wounded, bruised or killed by the horse. Noyce immediately opened the gates as he saw the carriage. Dedian got off and shook his head as he heard the shouts from outside. Master, you're back. Crone greeted. Dennis and Glenn were enjoying breakfast in the hall. They got up to greet him as they saw him back. Dedian changed his clothing and put on soft warm sweater. He went back to the hall and told to Glenn, a girl called Yvette is held by the military. She is the royal barbarian which I had captured. The military had agreed to hand her over to me after the investigation. This is my medal. Get her back. He gave her his master medal. 
Glenn was surprised to see Dudian had so much influence that he could get a girl from barbarian family to be handed over. However, she was relieved when she remembered that he had donated a legendary weapon for free. I'll be going now. Dudian nodded and sat down. He called Crone. The breakfast was served after ten minutes. Dennis was stunned as he saw the breakfast. He didn't expect Dudian, who lived so shabby, to eat so extravagant food. Dudian felt a lot warmer after the breakfast. The cold feeling was also a bit dispersed. He went back to his study room to learn medical knowledge from the super chip. At the same time, he exercised his left hand. By noon, he remembered the teenager from the inner wall. He called Crone. Go to meet old Fulin. Tell him to buy parasitic soul worms from the temple or black market. The more the better. Dadian ordered. He didn't need to personally go outside the giant wall to kill monsters as he had lots of money now. The efficiency was also high this way. Sometimes you had to wait for months to find a rare monster, but it didn't mean that you will necessarily be able to meet one. Yes, young master. Chrome was about to leave. And Dadian stopped him. By the way, tell old patriarch that spread out news that if any noble is willing to provide rare level parasitic soul worm, then they will get an opportunity to send someone to be assessed as my student. If they could provide a variation rare level parasitic soul worm, then they will directly get the spot. Crone promised. All right. In the afternoon, Dennis came back with a tall woman. The woman was very different from the women of the wall. Her body was much taller than most of the women in the outer wall. Yvette's height was as high as the most regular knights. In addition to her physique, her skin was also very different. Even the most plebs who lived in slums and didn't take a bath ever in their lives didn't have such a color. Dedian took a look at Yvette. He knew that the barbarian female's pride had been disheveled in the interrogation. Her clothing was tattered. Her bare skin had traces of whip and knife scars. Even her beautiful face had several scars and red marks. The Dark King Chapter 428. Master, we brought her back. Dennis came forward. Duddy and nodded slightly and went upstairs. Take her to my study room. Yes, young master. Denis nodded. It didn't take long for Dennis to bring a vet into Dudian's study room. Master, anything else? You should go back and order others to retreat to. Nobody should stay close to the room and disturb us. Duddy and sat in the sofa and poured tea for two. Dennis nodded and gently closed the door. Yvette and Dudian were only two left in the study room. Dudian glanced at Yvette. He saw that her face was numb, her eyes full. She was standing still. He smiled and said in English, Come over, sit. Yvette was expressionless like a tree. Dudian's eyebrows wrinkled as he got up and walked to stop in front of her. He raised his hands to shook in front of her. Suddenly, Yvette shot at Dudian and tried to lock onto his throat. Dudian's eyes lit up as his upper body swayed and he caught her with his hand. He grabbed her by shoulders and pushed her body backwards. Her body hit the door and some dust fell off because of the shock to the door. Yvette's hands rushed over at Dudian. Her fingers were like claws. Dudian waved with his arms and blocked her. He hit her chest and pushed her back again. Dudian's hand grasped her throat. Do you want to die? Yvette stopped as she looked at him with eyes full of resentment. Do you want to continue to attack? Even if you kill me, you will be dead. Dudian coldly continued. Move or you won't be able to kill me with your strength. Yvette bit her lips. Blood oozed out but she was unaware. She still stared back at Dudian as if a beast was looking at a human. Do you hate me? Dudian didn't sympathize with the barbarian girl. No matter what you think in your hurt, if you live in my house, then you have to follow my rules. Unless you want to suffer ten times more insult than in the military. He slowly loosened his fingers. However, she still stared back at him with eyes full of hate and anger. But there was a bit of faint fear. Dudian turned back to the sofa and sat down. He pointed to the seat opposite to him. Come over and sit. Yvette's hands were trembling as if she was a patient in a mental institution. She step-by-step step walked. Her feet seemed to be heavy. She sat opposite to Dudian and stared at him. Are you dumb, or did they cut off your tongue? Dudian chuckled as he gave her a cup. Yvette's chest went up and down sharply as her fingers clenched into a fist. Dudian snorted. You may hate my strength, but you better beg me as maybe I will help you get your revenge on the one who wrapped 3D and humiliated you. Yvette's body slightly trembled as she heard the word wrap 3. There was a trace of anger in her eyes. Her face was pale as she slowly bowed down her head. 
After a moment she said in a hoarse tone, It's all because of you, Dudian indifferently replied. You should stop blaming others because of the setbacks. If you continue to complain at best you will become a good wife. You should be aware of your fate when you were captured by me. You didn't have courage to commit suicide so I have you my word to keep your little life. In the end I actually did. You should not hate me but thank me. Yvette's eyes were flushed. I would have committed suicide long ago if you didn't promise to protect my life. I would not have gone through the humiliation, Dudian replied. Dead people can't take revenge. Yvette bitterly stared at him. What do you want? Can you help me? Will you help me? Depending on your attitude, Dudian took a sip from the cup. Right now I don't see you trying to plead. Yvette almost spat out mouthful of blood. She bowed her head and bit her lips. You want to get secrets from me so you have protected my life. I won't tell you even if I knew. Dudian looked at her. Look at me. Yvette looked up at him in anger. Dudian raised his fingers. First, your people tried to invade us. It was my duty to capture you. Second, first, as a wall of people, you invade us, I will you under the capture, this is my duty. Second, I said that your life will be spared and you weren't killed. Third, I can impose the torture hundred times more worse than military have done. Dudian smiled. A small reminder. Even if you commit suicide now, your body is still valuable. I will dissect your body, stripped of your skind and check the bones. I will see if it's the same flesh and blood of the people form the outer wall or there is something different. Later on I'll send your flesh and blood to barbarian tribes. Let them have a taste of a royal flesh. Oh in your head. You have such delicate facial features. I'm interested what's in it. Yvette wasn't scared as she said in an angry tone. Are you threatening me? Dudian shook his head. Why should I threaten you? I'm just standing the fact. I believe your tribe wouldn't be interested in your corpse and we are free to spoil it. Don't trouble me too much as I like to solve problems in an efficient way. I hate inefficiency, so don't force me to do something which I hate. Am I clear? I will tell you everything that I know if you can help me with revenge. I want you to help me to kill that damn dwarf pig. Yvette replied. It's better this way. We are saving time. Dudian continued. The man who was responsible for doing what he did to you will stay in here. He can't get away or run. Now let's talk about me. My name is Dean. I have two main occupations. I'm a master architect from the temple and a golden knight from the knight's hall. I'm telling this to you so you know that your request is very simple for me. Yvette as a part of the royal family of the barbarians was aware of two forces that Dudian had told. The kid had such a high status though his age looked smaller than hers. And why would such a person act personally on the battlefield? This if my medal from the knight's hall, and this is my medal from the temple. Dudian took out two medals and put them on the table. I won't know what to say if you don't even know what these medals mean. Yvette recognized the knight medal from the first sight. She picked it up to carefully check it and confirm that it's not face. She looked at Dudian. Are you lying? Dudian said. Why would I? Yvette's eyelids twitched. She found that the boy's mouth was sharp and insensitive. She took a deep breath. All right, I believe you. What do you want to know? Everything you know, Dudian slowly said. By the way, I know when people lie. Know that I don't mind choosing the hard way to take out that knowledge from you. I can assure you that my means are more effective than the military's. At least I can find thousands to humiliate you. Yvette's face changed, Dudian lightly said. One more thing. The barbarians have been defeated and were expelled from the Golden Wall. I can let my attendants take you to the Golden Wall to see the site if you don't believe me. The barbarians lost because of the weapon created by me. Yvette was shocked. Impossible. We can't lose. I can send you personally to verify the case. I don't need to tell a lie. Dudian indifferently said. The military is considering to attack your headquarters. I got lots of inventions and can help the military to completely erase the barbarians but I don't want to do so. If you are willing to believe then give me few years of time. I can make sure that there will be a place in Outer Wall for barbarians and Noon will expel you out. I hope you will be honest. Yvette stared at him. She felt that the boy could really achieve the things what he said. However her faith was shaken so she calmed her mind. The Dark King Chapter 429 the Dark King. Master, we brought her back. 
Dennis came forward. Duddy and nodded slightly and went upstairs. Take her to my study room. Yes, young master. Denis nodded. It didn't take long for Dennis to bring a vet into Dudian's study room. Master, anything else? You should go back and order others to retreat to. Nobody should stay close to the room and disturb us. Dudian sat in the sofa and poured tea for two. Dennis nodded and gently closed the door. Yvette and Dudian were only two left in the study room. Dudian glanced at Yvette. He saw that her face was numb, her eyes full. She was standing still. He smiled and said in English, Come over, sit. Yvette was expressionless like a tree. Dudian's eyebrows wrinkled as he got up and walked to stop in front of her. He raised his hands to shook in front of her. Suddenly Yvette shot at Dudian and tried to lock onto his throat. Dudian's eyes lit up as his upper body swayed and he caught her with his hand. He grabbed her by shoulders and pushed her body backwards. Her body hit the door and some dust fell off because of the shock to the door. Yvette's hands rushed over at Dudian. Her fingers were like claws. Dudian waved with his arms and blocked her. He hit her chest and pushed her back again. Dudian's hand grasped her throat. Do you want to die? Yvette stopped as she looked at him with eyes full of resentment. Do you want to continue to attack? Even if you kill me you will be dead. Dudian coldly continued. Moreover you won't be able to kill me with your strength. Yvette bit her lips. Blood oozed out but she was unaware. She still stared back at Dudian as if a beast was looking at a human. Do you hate me? Dudian didn't sympathize with the barbarian girl. No matter what you think in your hurt if you live in my house then you have to follow my rules. Unless you want to suffer ten times more insult than in the military. He slowly loosened his fingers. However she still stared back at him with eyes full of hate and anger. But there was a bit of faint fear. Dudian turned back to the sofa and sat down. He pointed to the seat opposite to him. Come over and sit. Yvette's hands were trembling as if she was a patient in a mental institution. She step by step walked. Her feet seemed to be heavy. She sat opposite to Dudian and stared at him. Are you dumb? Or did they cut off your tongue? Dudian chuckled as he gave her a cup. Yvette's chest went up and down sharply as her fingers clenched into a fist. Dudian snorted. You may hate my strength but you better beg me as maybe I will help you get your revenge on the one who rap 3D and humiliated you. Yvette's body slightly trembled as she heard the word rap 3. There was a trace of anger in her eyes. Her face was pale as she slowly bowed down her head. After a moment she said in a hoarse tone, It's all because of you, Dudian indifferently replied. You should stop blaming others because of the setbacks. If you continue to complain at best you will become a good wife. You should be aware of your fate when you were captured by me. You didn't have courage to commit suicide so I have you my word to keep your little life. In the end I actually did. You should not hate me but thank me. Yvette's eyes were flushed. I would have committed suicide long ago if you didn't promise to protect my life. I would not have gone through the humiliation. Dudian replied. Dead people can't take revenge. Yvette bitterly stared at him. What do you want? Can you help me? Will you help me? Depending on your attitude. Dudian took a sip from the cup. Right now I don't see you trying to plead. Yvette almost spat out mouthful of blood. She bowed her head and bit her lips. You want to get secrets from me so you have protected my life. I won't tell you even if I knew. Dudian looked at her. Look at me. Yvette looked up at him in anger. Dudian raised his fingers. First, your people tried to invade us. It was my duty to capture you. Second, first, as a wall of people, you invade us, I will you under the capture, this is my duty. Second, I said that your life will be spared and you weren't killed. Third, I can impose the torture hundred times more worser than military have done. Dudian smiled. A small reminder. Even if you commit suicide now, your body is still valuable. I will dissect your body, stripped of your skind and check the bones. I will see if it's the same flesh and blood of the people form the outer wall or there is something different. Later on I'll send your flesh and blood to barbarian tribes. Let them have a taste of a royal flesh. Oh in your head, you have such delicate facial features. I'm interested what's in it. Yvette wasn't scared as she said in an angry tone. Are you threatening me? Dudian shook his head. Why should I threaten you? I'm just standing the fact. I believe your tribe wouldn't be interested in your corpse and we are free to spoil it. 
Don't trouble me too much as I like to solve problems in an efficient way. I hate inefficiency, so don't force me to do something which I hate. Am I clear? I will tell you everything that I know if you can help me with revenge. I want you to help me to kill that damn dwarf pig. Yvette replied. It's better this way. We are saving time. Dudian continued. The man who was responsible for doing what he did to you will stay in here. He can't get away or run. Now let's talk about me. My name is Dean. I have two main occupations. I'm a master architect from the temple and a golden knight from the knight's hall. I'm telling this to you so you know that your request is very simple for me. Yvette as a part of the royal family of the barbarians was aware of two forces that Dudian had told. The kid had such a high status though his age looked smaller than hers. And why would such a person act personally on the battlefield? This if my medal from the knight's hall, and this is my medal from the temple. Dudian took out two medals and put them on the table. I won't know what to say if you don't even know what these medals mean. Yvette recognized the knight medal from the first sight. She picked it up to carefully check it and confirm that it's not face. She looked at Dudian. Are you lying? Dudian said. Why would I? Yvette's eyelids twitched. She found that the boy's mouth was sharp and insensitive. She took a deep breath. All right, I believe you. What do you want to know? Everything you know, Dudian slowly said. By the way, I know when people lie. Know that I don't mind choosing the hard way to take out that knowledge from you. I can assure you that my means are more effective than the military's. At least I can find thousands to humiliate you. Yvette's face changed. Dudian lightly said. One more thing. The barbarians have been defeated and were expelled from the Golden Wall. I can let my attendants take you to the Golden Wall to see the site if you don't believe me. The barbarians lost because of the weapon created by me. Yvette was shocked. Impossible. We can't lose. I can send you personally to verify the case. I don't need to tell a lie. Dudian indifferently said. The military is considering to attack your headquarters. I got lots of inventions and can help the military to completely erase the barbarians but I don't want to do so. If you are willing to believe then give me few years of time. I can make sure that there will be a place in Outer Wall for barbarians and Noon will expel you out. I hope you will be honest. Yvette stared at him. She felt that the boy could really achieve the things what he said. However her faith was shaken so she calmed her mind. All right I was concerned that the quality of the story will drop. That was my main excuse to read ahead. So I spent a lot of time today to read the Ross up to the latest chapter. Guess what? The shit gets real. Gushi doesn't fail our expectations. The Dark King. Chapter 430. Dudian injected five parasitic soul worms to his magic marks. The magic marks slightly bulged but it calmed down the next moment. Dudian picked up his eyebrows. Generally four parasitic soul worms were needed to promote from intermediate to senior hunter. If you had a bad luck then five or six would be needed. Unless you were an unlucky one then you would need seven or eight parasitic soul worms. It meant that the appetite of the magic marks was big. Right now it seemed that he belonged to the hunters with bad luck. After five parasitic soul worms there were no changes as if nothing was consumed. Dudian continued to inject. Because of his current status and identity getting parasitic soul worms was an easy thing. He didn't need to go out to hunt for magic marks. 6789 Dudian felt a slight pulse from the magic marks of the splitter. After the ninth parasitic soul worm. It slightly trembled. He continued and used the other two ordinary parasitic soul worms. Afterwards a heat spread through his body. His cold body felt warm after the heat flow. It is not enough. Dudian stared at his chest. However there was no movement. It was not a bad luck or being an unlucky person. It was something extraordinary at this point. Was it because of the deification of the legendary magic marks? He looked at the four rare parasitic soul worms. He hesitated for a bit but then grabbed the contained which had green parasitic soul worm. Although it was an extraordinary waste to use a rare parasitic soul worm's blood to promote the level of the magic marks, but there was no other choice. He didn't have time to wait for others to send ordinary parasitic soul worms. Moreover it was uncertain that he would get any. In addition he didn't like to wait. Dudian felt his chest boil after the injection. It was like a fire was lit and he felt all the pore in his body open up. 
His body was producing a lot of sweat. Dudian took a light breath. He once again grabbed another container. He removed the rare parasitic soul worm and injected it. This time the feeling he got was a bit different. He felt like as if an explosion had happened within his body. His consciousness blurred but he felt a faint twist on his chest. He remembered the originally the parasitic soul worm tried to drill into his brain. He was scared as he recovered his consciousness. The moment he looked down he saw the change on his chest. Previously it was like a small sword but right now it was like a finger-long two swords crossing over in the middle of his chest. The change of magic marks meant successful promotion. Dudian pulled the towel and dried his body. He felt very light when he grabbed the armor. I don't know which new abilities I have after being promoted to a senior hunter. There was a trace of expectations in his eyes. He was looking towards the transformation of a new ability rather than the physical growth. He knew that a good ability was much better than brute force. However, it was real life but not a game. There were no list of attributes to show him what kind of abilities he would have after the promotion. He could slowly explore on his own. Fortunately, after the deification he had learned how to explore his abilities. As usual he had to begin from the eyes. He found a strange thing when he was about to test his eye. Dudian could actually see. The whole room. He faced the fireplace but he could see the cupboard that was behind him. Dudian enjoyed the feeling. He turned his head towards the cupboard, but he could see the flames in the fireplace behind him. The angle of vision has expanded. Dudian touched his eyelids. He suddenly thought of something and rushed to stand in front of the mirror. He saw that his eyes hadn't changed and stayed the same. However, he noticed that there was a little green inside his pupils. Dudian blinked and looked at the green in the middle of his pupils. There is a change in the structure of my eyes, but fortunately, Dudian was relieved as he looked at the mirror. The hunters would have subtle changes in their bodies after the enhancement of their magic marks. Almost all senior hunters had some kind of body part that was different from a human. Sergei had scales at his spine which was the result of his dragon steel's magic marks. There were hunters which had very long teeth that were like ferocious fangs. Some had weird hair colors or others had skin which looked similar to a crocodile's scales. There were senior hunters whose hands were similar to claws of beasts. Because of such transformation senior hunters were like monsters in the eyes of nobles. That was why they lived in the dark. I have the vision which is similar to an insect's vision. I'm glad that the eyes didn't protrude or degenerate. Dudian checked his body for any other transformation. He focused his eyes. He saw the flesh and blood within his body. Later on his vision changed and he was able to see his own skeleton. He was terrified because of the scene and almost fell down. After he relaxed his eyes the vision changed. It was back to normal. The infiltration of his vision had gone a step further, and he was able to see the bone marrow. Most importantly he was able to control his own vision. Otherwise he would be looking at moving skeletons. It was no different than living in the world of living dead. It would be same as blindness. The angle of my vision has reached 270 degrees. He was able to see the bones in the body. Moreover he could freely control. Dudian was aware about monocular vision. But areas in the sight of the both eyes coincided, and the vision decreased to 120 degrees. In most cases a human was able to only see 90 degrees of the field of the vision. The more a human being concentrated the more the field of vision would reduce. Although I don't have a 360 degree vision but it's almost so. No wonder the eyes of the splitters are hidden deep in their bodies. They can see everything. Dudian speculated. The Dark King Chapter 431 Splitter is an ultimate attack type of a monster. If I had a big change in vision then my fighting capabilities would have improved too. Dedian tried to test his sense of smell and hearing. Dedian found out that the sense of smell was still confused. He pinched his nose to distinguish the hearing of smell. However he couldn't sense the sound of smell unless he covered his ears. However the range of the sense in hearing had increased twice. He could hear the smell from top to the bottom of the castle. He could hear a mouse hidden in the corner of the kitchen and eating something. Dadian was disappointed as his perception of the smell didn't improve much. However, he knew that Splitter was an attack type monster. It relied on high speed and keen vision. The sense of smell and hearing didn't have to be too strong. Dadian checked his physical strength. His body was twice the strong as before. 
He could break a hard metal with a strong grip. Generally, the physical constitution will be doubled in strength when an intermediate hunter is promoted to a senior hunter. According to the Dragon Girl, an intermediate hunter can hunt level 11 to 19 monsters. If there is a very powerful intermediate level hunter, then they can hunt early 20 level monsters. According to her, senior hunters would reach the strength to hunt up to level 30 monster. I was easily able to kill monsters level 20 to 27 when I used to be an intermediate level hunter. My body was able to cope with monsters up to level 30. That was the limit of a senior hunter. Now I assume I can hunt down monsters up to level 40. If I improve my fighting skills, then killing a level 45 monster wouldn't be a problem. Du Duan's eyes lit up as he speculated. There were no scales to classify the power of hunters. He had to reference the monsters to assess the constitution of the hunter. But it was a convenient way as the hunters existed to hunt monsters. My magic marks are still at senior hunter level stage, but my strength should be much more than senior hunters because of the deification. However, the dragon girl was able to hunt a mature level 68 splitter. The difference between her and me is too big, but I can catch up with her if my magic marks evolve once more. My potential would be much stronger than hers because of the deification, unless her magic marks is also the result of deification of legendary monster, Dudian calmed down. He looked at his abdomen. His pupils concentrated and his vision adjusted. He saw his bones and internal organs. There was white ice in his abdomen. Surprisingly, because of his 270-degree vision, he found that in addition to his abdomen there was white ice on his left arm. Even the bones of his left arm were made out of ice. Dadiam was shocked. Perhaps the abnormality in his abdomen was the result of the change in his left arm. The abdomen was infected with the blood of other monsters' blood. So it should have fused. Otherwise he couldn't explain why his left arm was made up of ice while his right arm didn't have the slightest trace of ice. I used to directly absorb cold crystals from the left hand. It seems the ice blood syndrome has direct relation to the cold crystals. Dadian speculated. He slowly recovered himself after a long time. He looked down at his body. Dadian didn't saw it at first, but he found out that his bones had undergone a strange change. He had seen the anatomical structure of human body from the super chip. His bones seems to have gone some deformities. It's like two small hands. The bones of the fingers are thinner, but... Dadian moved his fingers. He grabbed a metal equipment. The metacarpal bones and the phalanxes had undergone a deformity. He could burst out strong force because of the change. Dadian was startled. Now wonder I can have more strength than a senior hunter. At a genetic level, I'm a senior hunter, but my body has an abnormal structure. I can burst out with more strength and speed. Dadian checked his body. There was a different effect if the same material was used but in different structures. His body structure was relatively a human but sophisticated in many ways. However, these changes only have enhanced my physical constitution. There seems to be no other abilities, Dadian looked at his own body. In addition to the visual changes in physical power, there was nothing else. It felt a bit weird. Other senior hunters could control their blood or something else. Glenn could escape through the ground because of the magic marks of the Black Weaver. The pores in her body would shrink and she could hide her breath. The magic marks of Jaranzi could enhance the immunity and strong sense of smell, had the ability to absorb cold crystals and dark vision. But after deification of the magic marks of a splitter, he didn't have much abilities. It was less than abilities that he could get from a rare magic marks. Is it possible that some abilities have evolved but I can't notice them? Maybe I can't stimulate the ability by ordinary inspection. Dedian thought in his mind. If it was so then he could find out while fighting an opponent. After all, some abilities may be hidden but instinctively cast out in times of crisis. Temple of Elements. Mount Church. The castles were placed one after another by the mountain. At the end there was a forest. In front of the forest there was a magnificent and large castle. It was the castle of Temple's Lord. A large number of the Temple's staff were inside the castle as they took care of strange flowers and trees. In the depths of the forest stood a small-scale solitary castle. It was an ordinary manor. There were common vegetables and fruits within the manor. There were no staff but an old man wearing an ordinary clothing inside the manor. He carried water as he sprinkled the vegetables. He removed the weeds next to the vegetables. He looked like an ordinary old farmer. Arg! A giant black shadow jumped from the back of the manor and rushed towards old farmer. It was a giant dog which looked like a leopard. It was three meters tall and had robust limbs. There were brown spots all over its body. Its eyes were dark gold and had sharp horns on its head. 
In the blink of an eye, it stood in front of the old man. It opened its mouth but didn't bite the old farmer. Instead, it jumped in front of it like a puppy. The monster turned its head towards the outside of the manor and roared. Old man paused as he saw the monster act so. He looked towards the direction the monster roared. Lord of the temple is quite gifted as you were able to tame a rare monster. A tall figure appeared in front of them. Arg! The monster growled to try to intimate the figure. Old farmer put down the water kettle. He stood straight and spoke in a calm tone. The war is finished. What do people of Inner Wall do in here? The tall figure had come out from the shadows. He had a handsome face. There was a long stick in his hand. He was wearing a very simple white robe which looked like a huge sheet. The robe covered all of his body as if he was a monk. The youth had golden hair. I'm here on behalf of the monastery. I have to take a person back to the inner wall. The youth smiled. He didn't even look at the black monster. Instead, he stared at the old man. The Dark King Chapter 432 Roar The monster growled as it saw the youth approach them. It took a few steps forward. At the same time, the hair on its body got straight as if it was a hedgehog. The expression on youth's face didn't change. He gentle knocked the ground with the stick in his hand. Boom! The posture of the youth was so that it seemed he was ready to attack any time. The monster growled once more and was about to set its foot out when its head turned to look back. The old man touched its hair as he walked out. To take a person? The old man calmly looked at the youth. Is it the child who recently had produced a legendary item? The youth replied, I only know that his name is Dean. The old man touched the ear of the monster. The black giant turned towards the manor and disappeared. He is a real genius. Are you willing to kill a person like him? Old man turned towards the castle and began to slowly walk. The youth smiled. This is an order from above. That kid is using the powers of devil. I will take him to the monastery for purification. If there is a change then, you should go out. I don't welcome outsiders in here. The old man interrupted him. The youth startled. He looked at the old man who went into the castle. He slightly bowed and left the place. Temple of Elements. The rays of sun shined upon the Mount Church to welcome the new day. There were black spots all over the mountain road which took to the largest church castle. There were numerous architects who were wearing luxury clothing and going towards the location where the public lecture will be held. It was nine o'clock in the morning. Since seven o'clock the architects were up and rushing towards the St. Peter's Cathedral Square. It was the biggest venue within the temple which could hold such a big public lecture. It was 185 meters long and 160 meters wide. It could accommodate about 100,000 people at any time. There were a total of 180 sculptures of angels and goddesses carved at the square by the St. Peter's. A lot of people had gathered in the square since the dawn. Naturally, there weren't 100,000 architects in the temple, but about 30,000 of them. However, all of them tried to get a better location to hear the lecture clearer. Perhaps there was a chance that Dedian may see them and fancy if they were in front rows. There are so many people in here, but there are two more hours to go till the lecture. I think there is already more than 10,000 people in here. Master Ivisa looked at the site. There was a trace of amazement in his eyes. Usually if 10,000 people attended a lecture by a master, then everyone would regard it as a big accomplishment. Now every other lecture he had seen looked trivial in front of the one he was looking at. It's his first public lecture today, so inevitably there will be a lot of people. We have around 30,000 architects in the temple and he is very famous. There was a complex expression on the face of the old man who talked. He was Master Arson who was in conflict with Dedian. I vis aside, the little kiddo isn't here even though two old guys have come over. Arson snorted. I came to check what he was going to talk about. Him being an inventor doesn't mean that he can explain them so easily too. Accumulation of knowledge is needed for good teaching. He is as arrogant as always. He has just become a master and dares to hold a public lecture. He may utter something useful if he studied for another two or three years. Ivisa slightly shook his head as he saw that Arson was still angry at Dedian. He slowly whispered, he is useful. Arson's face sank. Hey! An old man wearing casual clothes came to stand by them. Both of you have come over. Do you want to learn from him too? Ivisa looked up and recognized the old man. Master, you have come too. Arson's face was still gloomy when he saw the old man. He turned away his head pretending not to notice him. The old man smiled. I wouldn't be able to come over if he hadn't made a notice ten days ago. Today I came over to bring few of my students. Ibiza laughed. You are way too polite. Carrie and Casper are already independent senior architects. 
It will take two years for them to become masters. You are one of the most powerful masters who has the ability to teach. Thanks for the compliment. I'm flattered. The old man laughed. It's useless to become a master at this point. If that dean wasn't one then they would have a chance to shine. But now everyone else would have to stay in his shadow. The old man's face slowly turned gloomy as he looked at Arson. I have heard that you had a conflict with the new master. Are you trying to pull us into the quarrel with him? Arson's face changed as he didn't expect the old man to be so direct. He said in an angry tone, What nonsense are you talking about? Ivisa intervened, It's a joke. Why are you so serious? The old man said, That wasn't a joke. Some people think of themselves superior to the others. But they are jealous of other too. I can understand jealousy and envy, but provoking someone else is something that I can't understand. Arson furiously said, What did you mean? Do you think that I'm jealous of him? He wasn't even in his mother's womb when I became famous. The old man laughed. An old man and a child will fight. Everyone knows that you were famous when he wasn't burn. But everyone knows that you are in a grave at this point too. You. Arson trembled in anger. The old man snorted and looked at him with a scornful expression. Why are you two fighting? The sound of Master Skagen echoed. Ivisa looked at him. You should talk to them. Skagen smiled. Today is the big day for Master Dean. We can't make trouble in here. Our bones are old and new seeds are growing. We should be happy that such an outstanding genius master has been nurtured in the temple. Skillful architects like him will drive and carry forward the temple. The life in the outer wall area will completely change. The old man smiled, I think so too. But there are some within the temple who say bad things behind the back of others. Moreover, they provoke them too. It's so dirty. The only thing they know about is talking to youth about respecting the old ones. They oppress the young generation. It's good to see a young person to invent something so good and close the mouth of this old ones. You. Arson stared at him in anger. Skagen smiled. Don't let the youth to see the jokes we make or they may misunderstand us. After all, masters should act like masters. The old man glanced at Arson and then turned his head. The Dark King. Chapter 433. The Dark King. A carriage approached the foothills of the Mount Church. A girl dressed as a servant was driving the carriage. There was a scar on her neck. The girl lined the horse ropes and jumped from her seat. She turned over and opened the door. We are here. The cold mountain breeze hit him when Dedian got off the carriage. He tightened his specially built warm master's gown. You come over with me. Leave the carriage in here. Gwyneth nodded. She inserted a stick to the ground and tied the horse rope so that the horse couldn't move. She followed behind Dedian. Today will be a lively day. Dedian whispered after taking a few steps. He couldn't see over the hill but he could sense the sound of smell coming from the Mount Church. Most of the castles that they passed by were empty. Dedian came to the square outside the St. Peter's Cathedral. The vast square was filled with architects. He looked at the stone corridor on the side. Get away, Edward. Do you think a pleb will be chosen? Roll away. Master Dean won't choose you as a student even if stood in front of him. Don't delve into foolish dreams. Dedian heard the sounds from the other side of the corridor. He saw four or five architects with golden hair and refined temperament squeezing two people. Both of them had brown hairs. One of them had handsome appearance while the other had mediocre looks. Both of them timidly looked at others but didn't dare to reply. Dedian simply glanced and was retracting his eyes when he saw the tightly clenched hands of the handsome youth. His arms were gently shaking. Get out! We can't allow plebs to learn. It's like robbing the gift from us. Aren't you convinced? Blonde architects looked with disgust at the both of them as they humiliated them. Whoosh! Gwyneth suddenly appeared in front of them. The others were scared because of Gwyneth's appearance. However, their eyes were attracted by Dedian who was standing behind Gwyneth. Master! Master Dean! Dedian didn't care for other as he looked at the handsome teenager with brown hair. He made a hand gesture, come. The teenager was stunned. He suspected that he heard it wrong. He raised his finger and pointed at his nose. Meet me? Yes. Dadian smiled. Are you willing to be my student? Everyone was surprised to hear Dudian's words. They looked at Dadian then at the teenager. The youth felt like his brain exploded. He uttered, Can I I? Don't you want to be my student? Dadian smiled. The teenager replied in haste. I am willing, I am willing. I'm wiling Master Dean. Come on. Dadian waved over. The teenager ran in hurry but was blocked by the stone barrier. What's your name? My name is Edward. Dedian nodded slightly and left. 
Gwyneth raised Edward from his shoulder and jumped over the fence. Follow me, Didion said but no longer looked at Edward as he walked along the corridor. Edward felt like he was in a dream. He bit his lips to make sure that it wasn't one. The blonde architects looked at each other in loss. Dedian passed the fence and appeared on the promenade. Crowd noticed his figure. Suddenly loud cheers echoed. Edward felt nervous as he heard the cheers and saw the gazes. He didn't want to stay too close to Dedian but couldn't stay far away from him too. Dedian was aware that the new received student was embarrassed. You are my student. Don't be nervous as you will reach the status that most of them won't have in the future. Edward replied in haste, Yes, master. Oh no, teacher. Do you know the reason why I took you as a student? Dedian asked as he walked. Edward shook his head as he was still in daze. He was just a primary architect. Although his family situation was much better than general civilian population, but financially he was at the bottom in the temple. He was a bit nervous, teacher, I don't know. Do you remember all the humiliation that you've suffered? Dedian whispered. Edward's face slightly changed. He bowed, I won't hate anyone. You won't or you wouldn't dare to. I can't. Edward hesitated to answer. Why? Edward replied, we are all part of the temple. We should be united. Moreover, they are noble. They have noble blood in them. I can't disrespect them. Dedian turned to look at him. So is it that you won't or you dare not? Edward looked at Duduen's eyes. He saw that his eyes were very deep with a touch of green, I dare not. Dedian slowly said, as my student you can't have such an attitude. Do you understand me? Dedian narrowed his eyes as he turned his face. He knew that he couldn't change the teenager in a day. But he wasn't anxious. Hate was a rebellious seed. The teenager would turn into a big towering tree if he was nurtured well. He looked beyond the corridor. He was vaguely able to see the vast giant walls of the Sylvia. Skagen smiled when he saw Dedian, you are on time. The old man next to Skagen saw two people behind Dedian. Who are these two? She is my attendant and he is my new student that I accepted. Dedian introduced both of them. Ivisa was surprised as he looked at Edward. He is just a primary architect. There are lots of senior architects who want to be your student. Why did you accept a primary architect? Dedian laughed. It would be hard to change the mentality of senior architects. But he is like an empty glass. Skagen nodded. It makes sense. Arson who was next to them snorted. Master Dean is worried that he wouldn't be able to teach senior architects. Although he is a talented youth but he would have to rely on massive knowledge to teach them. Master Dean has enough knowledge to teach these primary architects. The atmosphere turned stiff after his words. Dedian whispered as he looked at him. Do you mean that they are talentless? Arson's face slightly changed. You are insulting all of the masters. Don't think that you can act self-righteously just because you produced a legendary invention. Dadian whispered, You are forcing me to pull the strings of hatred. I advise you not to provoke me or I wouldn't mind to kick you down in front of all the people in here. I assure you that no one would be able to stop me. Arson looked at Dadian, do, do you dare? Skagen looked at Dadian, Today you are here for public lecture. Focus on that. Dadian didn't care about Skagen and Ivisa as he looked at Arson. I will naturally give you a reply since you asked me. He made a hand gesture. There was a trace of hesitation in Gwyneth's eyes for a moment. However, the next second she moved. Gwyneth appeared at Arson's back as if she had teleported. She raised her leg and kicked him in the ass. Bang! Arson's body flied out and fell over the platform onto the crowd. The crowd gathered over to catch him. Skagen and Ivis's face changed as they hurried over to support Arson. The man was senseless. Dedian looked at the others. It's time. I will go now. He set foot on the high platform. Gwyneth followed behind him. This man has a temper. The old master touched his beard as he looked at Duduin's back. Skagen glanced at him. You are the one to gloat. The old man laughed. The wicked are ruled by wicked. Edward was stuck on spot. In his mind there was no one above the masters. But his teacher servant kicked the master towards the audience because of just a word conflict. The man had a violent temper. Edward suddenly remembered the words Dudian said earlier on. There was an excitement and awe in his heart. The Dark King Chapter 434 The people began to cheer when Dudian stepped onto the high platform. Dudian looked at the crowd. He knew that it was the key moment in the establishment of the steam faction. He took a deep breath. First of all, I will to an introduction. My name is Dean and I'm 16 years old this year. To be more accurate, I'll be 17 after the black snow season. I know that some people will look at my age and think that it doesn't make sense. 
But Mr. Smog was only 19 years old when he painted the Mirror Saint. Dot. Mr. Elliot was 14 years old when he composed the Great Moonlight. Dot. Mr. Curtis was only 28 years old when he wrote Art of Warfare. Dot. The crowd was quiet as Dedian talked. Skagen and the old man looked at each other. They didn't expect Dedian to begin with history lesson. He compared himself to the most famous characters from the history. They knew that Dedian was using the momentum to change the perception of the crowd. He had produced the new textile machine when he was just 16 years old. The same year he produced another legendary invention and opened a new concept. There will be criticism when a great work is born. Dedian slowly said, but I hope that my age won't affect your judgment. The audience was silent. Dedian continued, in fact, today I will just discuss few things related to steam faction. I believe that all of you are curious. There were many masters who had mentioned the working of steam faction previously. However, I will talk about the origin of steam and the use of concept. Everyone's eyes lit up as they heard him talk. Skagen, Old Master and others also concentrated as they looked at Dedian. The faction. The key lies in the word steam. It's the same as the word gold in gold faction. Dedian continued, There are two things that are inseparable to us in all the faction. The first is steam while the second is water faction. A commotion arose within the audience. There were people who belonged to other factions. It was difficult for them to accept such a statement. Skagen and the old man's face also slightly changed. Although they are masters but they belong to different factions. No one was willing to think less of their faction. Dedian calmly said as he felt the relentlessness in the crowd, the reason is very simple. For example, if we didn't use the materials of the gold faction, would we die? The answer is no. If we didn't use the materials from what faction would we die? No. Of course our lives will worsen, but we won't die. There were some who were still dissatisfied. Master Dean, if it's as you say then if we didn't use materials from steam and water faction would we die? How could that happen? A young man shouted out. He wasn't here to change the direction of his study but to listen to the lecture of the genius master. He didn't expect Dedian to say words which would discourage him. Yeah. Yeah. I do not believe. Dedian slightly raised his hand to silence the crowd. It's very easy to verify. First of all, the most important material in the steam faction is air. Now you may cover your noses and mouths and refuse to breath air. Let's see how long can you hold on. Some primary architects who were in the crowd covered their nose to verify. However, most of the intermediate and senior architects didn't do so. They knew that people couldn't continue to live without relying on air. Dedian continued after a minute, you should have verified by now. Perhaps some of you would think that what is the role of air? Is it just to help us breathe? Is it comparable to the mystery of the metals? Is it comparable to the mystery of the lightning? Is it comparable to the value created by the wood faction? People nodded as they looked at Dedian and wanted to see how he would answer. Dedian smiled, it's true that the steam faction can't create inventions such as wood faction. Nor it can create a sword which belongs to metal faction. Everyone was stunned but felt weird at the same time. Dedian has the most right to speak about both factions as he had created the new textile machine. Dedian smiled, the steam is not a physical thing. So it's not similar to metal or wood inventions. But its materials are similar to lightning faction. The metal sword doesn't have the destructive power of a steam rifle. You have to understand this point. Maybe some of you would think that the destructive power of the steam rifle is big because of the metal ball. The metal ball is the one that kills the enemy. But it is useless on its own. Dedian looked at the crowd. Have you ever imagined that you can move a bigger object with the use of steam power? For example, our carriages. Carriage. Everyone was stunned. Skagen and the old man were stunned too. However, several people's eyes lit up within the crowd. Don't hesitate to think about it. Imagine that you have installed two of those at the back of the carriage. There would be no need for a horse to drag it. If there is enough force, then the carriage could move on its own. Why can't we do that? Imagine that a carriage's speed is faster than the time when a horse pulls it. Can you picture it? The audience was silent. Dedian didn't give time for everyone to think but continued, in addition to the carriage. Is there anyone with bold ideas? Bold? They looked at confident expression on Duduen's face. Is there any bolder idea than the carriage to rely on its own to move rather than a horse? For example, flying to the sky. Dadian whispered. The Dark King. Chapter 435. Flight. The simply word made the audience turn silent instantly. 
Skagen, the old man, and others had shock on their faces. They felt like they have been pushed out of the window and touched the gate of the vast world. They were aware that architects from all areas studied the STEAM concept to apply it to their areas. It was very clear that the kinetic energy generated by the STEAM concept would change the world of inventions. Although they were aware that the STEAM would become a faction, but they didn't expect the idea of using the same concept to fly. It was the ability of the god according to the Book of Light. They had always lived in a world enveloped by the giant walls. Flying meant that they could cross over the wall. It was a concept that they have never ever thought about. Skagen and other masters had an understanding of STEAM concept and knew that it was not absolutely impossible if the right idea would be used to realize the notion. Dedian continued, all of us know who an archer is. They shoot an arrow and it hits the enemy. But after the arrow passes out from the bow it flies. Could we make an object hundred times larger than a bow and shoot humans as an arrow? Would it be possible for humans to fly? The strength of the bowstring is directly related to the flight of the arrow. The steam concept of the steam rifle is the force that drives metal balls. All of us can walk and jump. We all rely on the strength of our body. If more power is put then a human can run faster or jump higher. Dedian slowly said, if we can come up with a clever use of steam-generated power then human beings can fly in the sky. This is the charm of the steam concept. Imagine a future where we can fly in the air while the enemy is bound to move on the ground. Could barbarians survive against us? We can cross over the giant wall if we can fly. We can travel to the distant world outside the giant wall. The minds of architects buzzed as they imagined the new world Dedian was talking about. Flight. This was an idea which nobody dared to think about. But, what would the future hold if human being could rely on inventions to fly at high attitudes? The eyes of some architects lit up in excitement. Although Dedian didn't come up with strong evidence to support his theory, but as a master he had high credibility. Moreover, the idea itself was an extremely advanced one which no one dared to think about. Master, can we really fly with the help of inventions? Some people within the crowd couldn't help but ask. Master, we are so heavy. How could we fly in the thin air? Dedian smiled. Have you ever heard about kite? Kite? Dedian continued. A primary architect came up with this invention about hundred years ago. For some reason it was banned. But those who are interested may go to library and find information regarding the invention. It's not difficult to fly into the sky. It's very simply and don't look down on the seemingly weightless air. Some of the architects were eager to go and check the kite Dedian was talking about. However, Skagen and other masters' faces changed instantly. The previous expression full of admiration turned 180 degrees that moment. Why did he use that as an example? He is too bold. We don't talk about banned inventions. Hasn't anyone told him that it's prohibited to talk about banned inventions? Several masters looked at Dedian. Some were worried about him while the others thought that he was too bold to talk without limits. Dedian was about to continue to speak as he wanted to introduce the basics of STEAM concept. However, suddenly he felt a figure jump up from the corridor and rush out towards him. Assassin? An enemy? Dedian turned his head towards the figure. It was as fast as lightning. Dedian was surprised to see that the figure was faster than Gwyneth. Whoosh! In the blink of an eye the figure passed over 100 meters of distance. It stopped at the high platform. It was as if he was standing there since the beginning of the lecture. The youth was dressed in a simple white robe. There were no extra decorations on the cloth. He was holding a stick in his hand. At the top of the stick there was a large gem as big as a baby fist. The sudden appearance of the figure attracted the attention of the audience. Everyone was shocked as they didn't see where the stranger had come over from. In the blink of an eye there was just one more person on the stage. Gwyneth who was standing about three meters away from Dedian appeared on his side. Her pupils shrank as she reached out and pulled the dagger from her waist. She stood in front of Dedian to protect him. Her palms were sweating. A saint. A saint from the inner wall. Skagen and other masters shouted in surprise as they saw the figure. They didn't expect a saint to appear in here. Bold. The blonde youth didn't care much about Gwyneth who was standing in front of Dedian. He coldly stared at Dedian, using demonic words to induce the people of light. I'll keep your life as you have contributed to the temple by inventing the new textile machine. Now quickly apologize for representing the evil and come with me. Dedian narrowed her eyes. What nonsense are you talking about? Coldness flashed past through the blonde youth's eyes. You are courting death. Dedian looked up at him. A lot of people have talked to me like that, but all of them are dead now. Saint. Mr. Saint. Dedian turned to see Skagen and other masters run over. 
They looked at the blonde youth, saying, You should have notified us before coming to the outer wall from the inner wall. We would have greeted you earlier on. Dadian thought of many things as he heard the phrase inner wall coming out of Skagen and other masters' mouths. The blonde youth frowned as he saw Skagen and others. I have come since yesterday. I have met the Lord of the Temple. This man is influenced by the devil and uttering the words of the demons. I was ordered to bring him back to the monastery and see him through purification. Skagen and other masters were stunned. Skagen looked at the blonde youth. Saint this has to be a misunderstanding. Dadian is the newest master of the temple. He didn't only invent the new textile machine but other high-level inventions. Moreover, he recently invented the legendary weapon, steam rifle, and donated it to the military. He helped to win the war against the barbarians. How could he be influenced by the evil powers? Dadian was surprised to see Skagen and others try to help him out. There was a trace of warmth in his heart. Everyone in the audience was stunned and stuck on spot as they didn't expect an unexpected guest to appear on the stage. However, there was a trace of awe in their eyes when they looked at the blonde youth. They had heard Skagen and other masters use the phrase inner wall. The Dark King Chapter 436 The blonde youth looked at Skagen and others. The higher-ups in the inner wall area have decided that the new legendary weapon is also related to the devil. It is classified as a taboo. It's sad to see a genius to degenerate to such a level to use the power of devil to earn reputation. Skagen and others were startled. Dadian coldly replied, The power of devil? Do you mean that you can classify my new invention as the power of devil all on yourself? What a joke. What evidence do you have? In my opinion, your words are the greatest blasphemy to the god of the light. Shut up. The youth with the blonde hair shouted as he suddenly approached Dadian. Gwyneth's face slightly changed as she tried to throw the dagger. Get out of my way. The youth mercilessly waved his stick. Bang! The stick hit Gwyneth's wrist and the dagger fell away. He took another step and stood in front of Gwyneth. He raised his other hand and shot Gwyneth on the shoulder. Jinnitha's body flied out and hit the ground about ten meters away. Get over here. The youth didn't pause after hitting Gwyneth. He raised his hand to grab Dudian's shoulder. Dudian was angry as he clenched his fists. Bang! Dudian's fist hit the blonde youth's palm. A massive force surged out. The youth's face changed as he felt incredible pain in his palm. He tried to flick his wrist to unload the force but it was too late. He heard a sound and he stepped back. There was shock in his face as he looked at Dudian. Dudian looked at him, are you a saint or a bandit? I have painstakingly studied the way of the god and come up with invention and you want to take it away with just a word? Ridiculous. Everything had happened out of Dudian's expectations. All of his future plans were upset as the inner wall had decided to take him away. The most important point was that he had somehow provoked people from the inner wall. They have even mobilized a saint to directly capture a master of temple. Moreover, the latter's strength was significantly higher than a senior hunter's. It was a proof that the power which had sent the saint didn't care much about holy church or the temple. The youth sucked in cold air as he felt bursts of pain from his arm. He suppressed the pain as he looked at Dudian you have sure enough taken refuge with the devil. Otherwise, how can a master of the god have such strong power? It is good for you to come back with me and confess or. I follow the will of the god of the light in my research. What kind of evidence do you have to seize and investigate me? Does it mean that the people of the inner wall can do whatever they want in the inner wall? Dadian replied. Skagen and others didn't expect the situation to become so stiff. They couldn't help but blame the youth for the way he have chosen to solve out the problem. If he had chosen to get Dudian secretly, then they didn't have anything to say. But at the moment he wanted to take Dudian in front of the members of the temple. He wasn't giving any face to the temple. Saint, there has to be a misunderstanding. You have to explain things if you want to seize Master Dean. Skagen was the first to speak up. The old man next to him said, Yes, Dean is the legendary master of our temple. You have to explain how he have colluded with the devil. It would be very difficult to convince the public otherwise. Yeah, yeah. The other masters also joined in. They didn't want to drip into the muddy water, but the blonde youth has chosen the most unacceptable way to do the arrest. The youth's face turned gloomy when he heard Skagen and other masters talk. Although he didn't care about the masters, but he knew that he would provoke trouble if he forcefully took Dedian at this point. Actually, if Dedian didn't talk about flight and other banned topics, then he wouldn't have emerged halfway into the lecture. Moreover, he wanted to directly capture Dedian and then leave. He wasn't planning to stay here for a discussion. The problem was that he didn't think the fragile architect would have such strong power. 
The master was about one-third powerful than him. An architect with such strength. Isn't that enough of an evidence? The blonde youth asked. Saint, Master Dean isn't just a master of the temple, but a golden knight of the knight's hall. It's not surprising for him to have such skills. Skagen explained. Knight. Face of the blonde youth changed. Dadian saw the subtle change on the youth's face. He narrowed his eyes. It seems that the other side feared his identity as a knight. It seems the knight's hall had power in the inner wall too. Yes, Master Dean is the honorary golden knight of the knight's hall. He was personally involved in battle to repel the barbarians. He had saved countless civilians. He is a hero. The old man added. The youth was startled. His face has turned ugly as the instructions conveyed to him didn't involve any of those information. There was no information about Dedian being part of the Knights Hall neither about his strength. Moreover the teenager had higher reputation in the outer wall than he imagined. No one in the audience dared to intervene with the conversation happening between the blonde youth and the masters. However no one was planning to support Dedian. Even the fools could see that the youth had identity which was even higher than the masters. They didn't dare to provoke the powers behind the youth. The youth was silent as he thought about the situation. Currently it would be very touched to take Dedian back. Apparently the temple will try to rebound him too. Although he wasn't particularly concerned about the temple but the strength of Dedian. He wouldn't be able to take Dedian back even if he used force. Moreover, the master had the identity of a knight. Arresting a knight by force meant that he had to give a statement and explanation to the knights. The Dark King Chapter 437 No wonder that Old Fart didn't react to the issue. The youth remembered the Temple Lord's reaction from yesterday. Most probably the other side was aware that the matter will be complex so he just let me handle everything. However, he should be aware that it would lead to a dissatisfaction of the temple and Knight's Hall if I forcefully took away the master. The youth didn't know what to say as he couldn't come up with a reasonable argument. He was just an executioner. The people from the higher ups have decided that the master dean has colluded with the devil. He didn't have anything to with decision. Actually, it was in a scope that he shouldn't be aware of. Skagen and others looked at the silent youth. They looked at each other and continued to earnestly try to persuade the youth. The youth slowly said after a long time of silence, Gentlemen, as architects of the god you are aware the dogma in the Book of the Light. The sun and the sky are the domains of the god of light. This person is talking about flying to the sky which is against the divine right. This sin can't be redeemed. Isn't his heart rebelling against the god? Dedian narrowed his eyes and took a deep breath. Would Saint elaborate on why the flying in the sky is in violation of the god's way? Isn't it actually a right given to the mankind by the god of light? It's a blasphemy that you are arguing so. The youth replied in anger, The sky is the domain of the god. Since ancient times no one has set foot in the sky except devil. You are disrespecting the god of light. Dedian snorted, I don't think the god of light is as selfish as the saint. The god of light has given us the right to invent items and products to make it easier for mankind. He has given me chance to understand the steam. Everything was given to me by the god of light. Why are you still arguing that I have colluded with the devil? You are slandering me. You. The youth stared in anger. Skagen and others saw the dispute between the two. They stood in middle to discourage them from continuing the argument. Skagen looked at the blonde youth. Saint, it's as Master Dean has said. If we can create an invention which can help us to fly in the sky then we can kill the monster lurking outside the giant wall easily. We can completely eradicate the barbarians. It's all good for us. How it can be related to the devil. The blonde replied in a straightforward manner, You are old and your sight is covered by the devil. It's not about killing the barbarians. Once we set foot in the sky the god will be furious with us. You won't be able to afford the disaster and punishment that will come. Skagen and others startled. Some of them hesitated to reply. Nobody is allowed to trample the domain of the god. If you continue to persuade then it will be understood as harboring the evil. The youth continued. Dedian knew how the crowd feared the god as he saw the expression on their faces. He considered his words before talking, Saint, I have no objection if you want to arrest me. But you have to give us evidence. You are arguing that I have colluded with the devil. It's very difficult for me to accept it. Dedian said as he looked at the youth. The youth replied, The greatest evidence is that your attempt to touch the domain of the god. Dedian smiled, Do you mean that the ability to master the flight is the violation of the divine right? If so, then are archers violating the dogma? They make the arrows fly. I would like to ask you one more question. Is jumping regarded as the infringement too? 
How many meters is the limit? If you can't provide answer to my question, then I have nothing to say to you. The youth wanted to reply but Dudian interrupted him. Moreover, I am a golden knight accepted by the knight's hall. I believe Saint is aware how harsh the assessment of the knight's hall is. If you want to arrest me, then set off charges with the knight's hall. Of course, your statement have to be investigated by the particular organization. I would be glad to follow you if the evidence was found. Otherwise, isn't it an injustice for you to slander me so? In the future, how architects can do research? If you come over and claim that we have colluded with the devil, then who would dare to invent one more thing? Skagen and others nodded. They knew that Dudian was deliberately inciting them, but he was using the right words. If a saint came over with evidence, then they wouldn't retort. However, he was trying to take a master without an evidence. It was just bullying. There was a small riot within the crowd because of Dudian's words. The youth was angry as he felt the change in the atmosphere. He bitterly looked at Dudian. He knew that the situation had become complicated. Knights Hall, Magistrate, and Holy Church wouldn't stand by. The youth looked at Dudian. Why do you fear to go back with me if you haven't colluded with the devil? Dudian answered, When did I say that I'm afraid of the investigation? I am innocent. It was you who tried to slander me by saying that I have colluded with the devil. Why shouldn't I respond to this charge? Secondly, there is no evidence in your hands so I'm just a suspect in your eyes. If it's so, then I'm more than happy to cooperate with the investigation. But right now I'm teaching and you came to interrupt my lecture. Moreover, you hurt my attendant. In addition, you tried to arrest me by force. Isn't this a bit suspicious to you? The youth suppress his anger. Since everything is alright with you, then let's just leave. Dedian saw that the youth ignored his words so he laughed. Saint, you have wounded my attendant and tried to forcibly arrest me. Should you give an explanation? Do you mean that hardworking architects like me are nothing in your eyes? The youth almost spat out blood. He showed mercy by not killing Duduen's attendant on spot. Now his own arm was wounded and the other side wanted an explanation? Why would your attendant be hurt if you had cooperated? The youth continued, your attendant dared to offend me. I'm not going to charge you for that. Do you dare to get an explanation now? Dedian replied, my attendant is loyal to me. Who asked you to directly rush out before reporting your name? I though you were an assassin sent by Dark Church to kill me. The youth continued, now things are clear. Come with me back to the inner wall. If you are innocent then you will be sent back. First of all, I have yet to see the evidence of your suspicion. According to the laws of the magistrate there has to be either evidence or witnesses to charge him. Do you have evidence? If there is no evidence then why are you wasting my valuable time? You! The youth almost went crazy. He knew that Dudian didn't intend to go back with him. The more he talked the greater advantage the other side got. There was no evidence in his hand. But since when the inner wall needed evidence to take people? However, this time he wouldn't be able to take Dudian by brute force. The blonde youth didn't want to waste time by pointless discussion. He coldly stared at Dudian. I advise you to obediently go back with me to the inner wall. If I bring evidence in the future you won't be pleased. Is this a threat? Dudian smiled. I also want to advise you. Don't act like a bandit or an assassin when trying to arrest people. Use evidence. All right. The blonde youth looked at him. You will regret it. He turned and left. In the blink of an eye he disappeared from the sight of everyone. Skagen and others looked at the direction of his departure. Dedian narrowed his eyes as he looked at the back of the blonde youth. He turned to look at Skagen and others, masters. Thanks for trying to help me out. I'm grateful. Skagen tried to comfort him. I believe you. I think this matter is nothing but a misunderstanding and it will be solved out. Dudian nodded. Although he knew that his reputation was bound to take a damage after this. The Dark King Chapter 438 Dudian looked at the crowd. The knowledge about the basics of the steam concept will be published in the temple's library. I'm very sorry but I have to end today's lecture. Interested people can go to library to get information. Additionally, I had told that I will select several students so anyone willing to live in my castle. Dadian slightly bowed. Dadian went off the stage straight away without looking at the commotion. He saw Gwyneth. There was a stain of blood on her mouth. Can you hold? Yes. Gwyneth replied. Dadian left through the corridor and Gwyneth followed behind. Edward hesitated for a bit but trotted over to catch up with them. Dadian saw that no one was around after leaving the corridor. He turned and picked Gwyneth's body. He looked at Edward, catch up with me. Gwyneth instinctively raised her hand to block Dudian as she didn't expect him to suddenly pick her up. However, Dudian softly pushed her back. She whispered, 
Master, I can move on my own. Ribs have been broken and there is an internal bleeding. You will make it much worse if you continue to walk. Dadian coldly said, there is no need to be shy when the choice is life or death. Gwyneth was startled as she didn't know how Dedian knew that her ribs were injured. However, she didn't say anything as she hold on to Dedian as he run through the slopes. She looked up at Dedian then retracted her eyes. Whoosh! In a matter of seconds Dedian was already at the foot of the mountain in front of the carriage. He put Gwyneth onto the soft chair in the compartment. He turned to see his new student still trotting over the hillside. Edward was sweating and out of breath. Dadian ran towards Edward and picked his body without any explanation to run back again. Edward was scared as he saw the scenery change every passing moment. He was scared because of the wind whistling past his ears. The next moment the wind stopped and he saw that he was in front of the carriage. Dadian put him onto the ground. Get into the carriage. Dadian jumped onto the carriage and drove back it. Dadian helped Gwyneth get off the carriage as they reached the castle. He looked at Noyce. Go and call over the best doctor from the military. Noyce was frightened when he saw the pale expression on Gwyneth's face. He took out a horse from the stable and went out. Dedian came to the hall and put Gwyneth on the couch. He looked at her wounded side. There were no signs of proliferation so he sighed in relief. Rest in here and don't tamper with your wound. He looked at Crone, call everyone for a meeting. Crone was aware that the situation was not good because of the anxious return of Dedian. He went to inform the rest. Go to the back of the castle. There is a training field there. Dedian looked at Edward. Edward felt that the mood of his teacher who was almost at the same age as him wasn't good. So he nodded and left. All the residents were in the hall after a few minutes. Dedian looked at the crowd. Something has happened. Sergei and Nicholas saw the Gwyneth lying on the sofa. They realized that the situation was not good. Sergei couldn't help but ask, weren't you teaching? Dedian didn't answer but slowly said, the people form the inner wall slander me as if I have colluded with the devil. They want to take me to the inner wall for investigation. What? Sergei, Glenn, Dennis, Mason and others had shock all over their faces. Artemis and Gabriel were at a loss. Yvette looked indifferently at them. She didn't have any idea about the language of the wall so she couldn't understand a word what Dedian said. However, she was curious as she saw the reaction of Sergei and others. Dadian continued, they didn't have any evidence so I was able to dismiss them. However, this is only a temporary solution. I think they will come again soon and at the time I won't have a chance but follow them into the inner wall. Sergei and others looked at each other. No one expected that their quiet life will be upturned at such a pace. Dadian added, I think I have offended some powers within the inner wall. They will find a reason to deal with him. You guys will be implicated if you follow me. So if there is anyone who wants to leave then it's time. I won't hold anything against you. I believe in you. Mason who was next to Sergei said out loud, they are free to slander good people. Not who can prove that you have colluded with the devil. You had helped us to repel the barbarians. I asked this how they are trying to repay you. Dedian shook his head. There is no need to touch those matters. What I meant was that I don't want to hurt any of you. I won't go. Mason decided on spot. Dedian looked at him and nodded slightly. The hall was silent. After a moment, Dennis said, Master, I'm very sorry, but I don't want to get involved in this. Dedian calmly replied, I understand. Dedian hesitated, I will be willing to come back if you can pass through this trouble. I hope you can forgive me. No problem, Dedian said. Dennis sighed and left. Glenn was hesitant as she looked at Dennis's back. Anyone else? Dedian looked at the crowd. There won't be any chance in the future if you don't quit now. Everyone was silent. Dedian was relieved as he saw no one had replied to him. He was prepared for Dennis to leave. After all, there was no friendship between the two. Moreover, he didn't want to send him to his death because of the contract. Dedian, I, I am sorry. Dedian was about to speak when he heard a weak sound. Dedian's heart sank down when he saw it was Sham who spoke up. Mason saw the hesitant expression on Sham's face. He said in an angry tone, Sham, what are you implying? Do you want to leave? Sham's body slightly trembled, he bowed his head. Sham, you can't. Zack also advised him. Dedian deeply looked at Sham. He didn't expect that second to leave would be one of his three mates. He wouldn't be surprised even if Nicholas left. But he had lived together with Sham for a long time. Moreover, he was one of the few people who Dedian trusted. Disappointment? Heartache? Anger? Dedian understood that time can change everything. The pain and hate can heal so the friendship and love can fade away too. 
if there is nothing that is eternal then what is immortality? I think the author makes fun at Xinxia novels in here by making a pun. It's all right. Dedian whispered. No need to blame Sham. It's all right to leave and I don't want to harm any of you. He looked at Crone. Take 10,000 gold coins from the safe and give it to him. The Dark King. Chapter 439. Crone bowed and went upstairs. Dean, Mason said in hurry. Sham is just confused. I won't let him leave. He grabbed at Sham's neck and said in anger, You bastard! Have you forgotten who was the one who saved you in the desert? Who were the ones who helped you in time of crisis? Don't forget that you owe your life to us or you would be more than a lame. Zack tried to stop Mason who was acting on impulse but hesitated. Are you really planning to leave? Are you worthy of Dean? Worthy of us? Mason's voice full of anger reverberated in the silent hall. Dudian frowned. He was about to stop Mason when Sham laughed. Mason was stunned. Sham pushed his hands. He broke free out of Mason's grasp but his body fell to the ground because of imbalance. He relied on Crane to stand up. He whispered. Yes, if it wasn't because of you and Zack then I would be dead as a result of poisoning. I would be dead if it weren't for Dean too. He slowly raised his head. Tears flowed down through his cheeks as he smiled. But I would rather die than living this shitty life as a lame person. Mason was startled. What the hell are you talking about? What lame? You would be dead if we didn't help you. Now are you planning to be noise and blame Zack and me? Sham looked at Dudian and whispered. Dean, I am very sorry. In this life I won't be able to repay you for what I owe. But I don't want to be involved in a struggle again. I want to live a peaceful life. Dudian raised his hand to gesture Mason to leave him alone. He slowly said, We have been like brothers before, so I won't blame you. I wish you a happy life. Sham lowered his head as he clenched his fists. Tears slid down from his cheek to his chin and fell to the floor. His shoulders trembled a bit. He took a deep breath and bowed once more. He didn't care about Crone who was about to deliver gold coins. He turned and left the castle. Mason and Zack stared in place as they looked at Sham who disappeared from their sight. Their eyes were flushed. They knew that the brotherhood they had for long time would be completely cut off after this. They supported each other in the special training. They didn't the same when they were outside the giant wall. The memories were same but people had changed. Dudian slowly said. Who else is going to leave? Nicholas sneakily looked at Dudian. He suddenly felt that Dudian was about to glance back at him. He retracted his eyes in haste. It's time to leave now if you want. Dudian continued. There was no response as the hall was silent. Dudian looked at Sergei and Nicholas. What about you too? Sergei shrugged his shoulders. I don't have a place to go. You have bailed me out and my life belongs to you. I have sworn to follow you until the end. Nicholas chose much more beautiful words to express his thoughts. However, he perfectly knew that he would be killed on spot if he left. Nicholas was aware that Dudian allowed Dennis to leave, because Dennis had lived in the castle for a little time, and didn't know much about anything. The other little devil was Dudian's childhood companion, and he wasn't aware about confidential stuff too. But they were different. They were released from the Thornflower prison and followed Dudian for a long time. Nicholas knew and understood Dudian's character. If they chose to leave then they would go extinct. Dudian smiled as he looked at the old fox. We are on the same boat that being the cast. I hope you have determination to face the death. Glenn sighed. I wouldn't have agreed to your invitation if I knew about the future. But since I've chosen this path I will help you till the end. As a hunter I'm using to face life and death situations. It's not a big deal. Moreover no one is dead until the battle begins. Dudian smiled. Yes, no one is dead. Nicholas asked in a careful tone. Master, do you have any plans? Dudian pondered for a while. I could force the man back this time. But the next time they will come in large numbers to use force to take me. I'll have to go to the inner wall. I'm a master of the temple and golden knight of the knight's hall. So they can't easily hurt me unless they have conclusive evidence. Mason added. What if they don't want to reason? Dudian looked at him. That's what I'm worried about. If I don't come back within a time frame then you will follow my plan and make a storm. If necessary, we will destroy the giant wall. Destroy the giant wall? 
Everyone was shocked, Dedian continued. The master of the inner wall is more powerful than you can imagine. They can kill senior hunters easily. You won't be able to storm into the inner wall on your own. That's why we will besiege the way to save the Zhao. Google it. Besiege the way to save Zhao? Everyone was puzzled. In short, we will use other things to attract the main force of the inner wall while trying to save me, Dedian said. Of course, this is the worst case scenario. If the charges are dropped by the investigation, then I'll be released soon, Glenn nodded slightly. They won't hurt you unless they have conclusive evidence, but we have to be ready for the worst case. Yes, Master, how we will know that you are in safety. Wouldn't we hurt you if we aren't aware of your condition and storm into the inner wall? Nicholas asked. Dedian smiled. That's not a problem. After her injury heals, I will take Glenn and Gwyneth into the inner wall. I'll teach them a method to get in. I will be able to pass messages to them this way. The Dark King Chapter 440 Sneak into the inner wall? They looked at each other in shock. It's been 200 years since the inner wall has isolated itself. Countless nobles want to bypass the walls but are blocked. Now Didion claimed to have a way to sneak into the inner wall. Even the nobles don't dare to think of this. Dedian didn't elaborate on but looked at Crone, give me pen and paper. After moments few words appeared on snow white paper. Dedian called Nicholas, collects the plants written in the paper. Hire someone to get a field to cultivate them. Remember to do everything in secret. Nothing must be leaked. Otherwise, neither Holy Church nor the magistrate will pass by your body even if you made a suicide. Nicholas's fingers flicked in fear. Young master, what are those plants? Ordinary plants. Dedian indifferently replied, but they will become unusual in the future. Nicholas skimmed through the list. Most of them were familiar. Ling leaf? Isn't that an ordinary weed? That one is a treasure. Dedian put the pin into the pin holder. You will be responsible for this matter. Hire the people and take care of them. If a problem arises, then you will be the main person to be held responsible. I will let Noyce help you with the management. You can ask Noyce if you can't come up with solutions. Do I need to teach you how to manage the people and the business? A simple grass is a treasure? Nicholas looked at the serious expression on Dudian's face. He knew that Dudian had a lot of knowledge, but his heart was bitter. He was aware that Dudian arranged Noyce not to help him but to monitor him. Noyce was more trustworthy in Dudian's eyes rather than Nicholas. Dedian regarded the task given to Nicholas as the most important part of his plan. Ling Leaf was the name used in this world. But in the old era it was called Mar Wanwana. Dedian wanted people of the outer wall to storm into the inner wall area. But he couldn't incite people with his own fame. Although people were crazy for wealth but he couldn't buy all the people of the outer wall. He didn't have that much of wealth. But he could do with the plants. Moreover the fermentation time and the growth period of the poisonous products were extremely alarming. The most important thing was that the people poisoned by the DR4GS were much more secure. They were crazier than the people with rights, wealth, and beliefs. No addict could refuse to the temptation. They would be ready to sacrifice their own family and even their own lives because of the temptation. Everyone was beyond the recognition after the calamity. However, plants that were harmless in nature had remained almost the same. Although there was radiation, viruses, and other unknown factors, but the plants kept their original appearance in comparison to the beasts. Ling Leaf was just one of the raw materials. He had added other plants that were much more harmful than the Ling Leaf. Sergey, you will be responsible for teaching Gabriel and Artemis. Moreover, help Mason and Zach practice combat skills. Dedian continued to give orders. I will nominate you as my squire. As a squire of the Golden Knight, you will have the right to recruit your own squad. It's time to establish a mercenary troop. Their mercenary groups were similar to the adventurer teams of slums in residential district. However, mercenary troop was totally different. It was a regular team and a contract had to be signed which would be recorded by the magistrate. Sergei was a senior hunter, but in the end of the he was a man of shadows. He could enjoy small part of privileges because of the consortia. However, a golden knight squire was different. A golden knight squire had privileges even if facing nobles. Moreover, he could soon change from a squire into a regular knight. Glenn looked at Dedian, Master, can I be your squire too? Dedian nodded. No problem. He was planning to plant her within the inner wall so he didn't want her to be defiant at this point. Sergei looked at Dedian, Master, what should be the name of the group? How many people should I recruit? You are in charge. Dedian continued, 
although they will be under my name but you will be the depute head of the group. Moreover you decided on the size and quality of the team. Gwyneth and Glenn also would be in the group. You will be captain but they will be responsible for passing my messages. If Sergey is swaying around then I will give them the right to cancel your orders. Glenn was delighted, yes. Sergey bitterly said, Master, why would I act so? It's to prevent the ambitions of human heart. Dadian replied. Sergey's mouth twitched. Dadian asked for Gabriel and Artemis to come close. He reached out and touched the Artemis's head. Dadian looked at Gabriel. Do you know why I took you back? Gabriel shook his head. I don't know. Because you are orphans. Dadian slowly said, If you stayed back in that town you would have become food for the barbarians. Gabriel had studied in the castle for the last days. He has asked Crone about many things. He was aware of the situation outside the Golden Wall and knew that Dudian wasn't lying. He didn't back down through the harsh sword training because of the gratitude towards Dudian. Sergei will teach you sword skills. But you have to study with you heart. Dudian patted Gabriel's shoulder. I have saved you once. But you have followed me and will face danger in the future. If you aren't strong enough then you will repeat the same mistakes. No one will be able to save you at that time. Do you want to be able to protect your sister? Gabriel bit his lips. Master, I understand. Dadian turned towards Crone. Go outside to greet the guests. The Dark King. Chapter 441. Guests. Crone was startled, but he went out of the hall. Dadian looked at Sergei. Don't delve too much on quality of the members for the troops. We need strong ones for now. You can teach them the skills as time passes. All right. Sergei nodded. Everybody left the hall. Dadian saw Crone bring one group after another one into the hall. He didn't move. Because of his identity he didn't need to personally meet the others. Most of the guests were wearing luxury dresses. There were accessories made of jades on their fingers and necks. It wasn't meant to show off but their lifestyle. There were few architects in addition to the aristocrats. Dadian looked at Crone, select nine people from the list of people who had sent parasitic soul worms. Send these people go back. Moreover the ones who had sent the rare parasitic soul worm and the top grade one must be in the list. I know, young master. Crone went away to send off the others. Dedian rubbed his head as he felt tired. He pondered for a while then took the pen to write another letter. It didn't take long before Noyce came with a carriage that had the banner of the military. There were two doctors that were led by Noyce who came into the hall. Greetings, Master Dean. Dedian asked them to treat Gwyneth. Noyce take this letter to the Knights Hall and personally give it to them. Dedian continued wait for their answer. Noyce picked the letter and hid in his arm pocket. Doctors bandaged the Gwyneth's body with a layer of gauze after finishing the treatment. They bid farewell and left. Are you feeling better? Dadian asked Gwyneth after the doctors left. Gwyneth whispered, Thanks young master. I'm much better. Tonight I will take you and Glenn to sneak into the inner wall. Have a good rest. Dadian handed her a small bottle. This is ointment made by the temple. It has good effects so apply cream. Dadian thought that if he went to the inner wall for the investigation then his eating and drinking would be a big problem. The black snow season wasn't over yet so he had to eat food with high calorie to maintain his body temperature. He called Crone over, hire few chefs. Remember to select them randomly. In addition to the ingredients for this month, let the new chefs to dry bacon. Taste doesn't matter as much as I can save it for long time. Joseph and Barton will attend Holy Church and the military. Their interview time is soon. Dadian pondered. At afternoon, Noyce came back to the castle. Master, Knights Hall has sent this letter to you. Dadian was relieved. The Knights Hall was reliable. According to the letter, they will be involved in the investigation in the inner wall to ensure the fairness of the investigation and in order to preserve Dudian's innocence. According to this letter, the monastery in the inner wall is linked with the Holy Church. The saints of the monastery dare to directly arrest the people of the temple, but Holy Church isn't responding to it. However, Knights Hall came forward. Dudian's eyes lit up. There were only two reasons for this. First reason was that the monastery was much stronger than the Holy Church. Second reason was that the monastery and the Holy Church were one and same organization. So they had kind of a subordinate relationship. Otherwise, the Holy Church would be offended by such a move. Dudian was a bit angry. He tended to believe to the second option because of the various factors and names. Holy Church. Holy Church! Dedian narrowed his eyes. He suddenly thought about the Dark Church. Could there be a similar organization to the Dark Church within the Inner Wall? If so, could he use it his advantage? 
However, he didn't know the current situation within the inner wall. He knew that there was the monastery and the dragon clan. He remembered the promise of the dragon girl. He could join the dragon clan if he went to the inner wall. But he didn't want to take refuge with them. Maybe the dragon clan couldn't shelter him from the monastery. Unless he exposed the deification to show that he was a valuable asset. However, he didn't know if there was a technology in the inner wall which could transplant the magic marks. If they had such technology and he exposed his own secret then it was like giving free food to the dragon clan. Time passed. Dedian gradually arranged a plan. At the same time the outside forces began to send letters of condolence. Dedian saw the superficial words written in them. Crone was preparing to throw them into the trash. Dedian looked at him. If you don't have enough money in your hand after I go to the inner wall then ask the people who had sent the letters. Pull them into the muddy waters. These letters are the best evidence of their support. Crone was stunned, Master, so we will get revenge on those who didn't help after you come back? Dedian looked at him. As long as I can come up with inventions, then we will climb up. Today the problem involves the inner wall. But if I was personally hurt or some other problem happened, then the mailbox would be blown with letters. Now we have to see which one of these powers are really our friends. Crone bit his lips. If they really want to help, then they will naturally help. If they didn't mean it, then it was just a hypocritical rhetoric. We must take measure towards such people. Dadian waved him off. Crone went away. The weather was getting dark. Dadian ate dinner and went upstairs to see Gwyneth. Are you good? Much better. Gwyneth wanted to get off the bed. Dadian interrupted her. We will set off after half an hour. Dadian checked the clock hang in the wall. Time was approaching 8 o'clock. The curfew time in the residential district was 8 o'clock. Only in the commercial area the curfew time was 9 o'clock. There may be visitors after we leave. Tell them that I'm resting. Dedian said to Crone. The Dark King. Chapter 442. Yes, young master. Crone spoke in a worried tone. It will be dangerous to sneak into the inner wall. I will be careful. Dedian smiled and looked at Gwyneth and Glenn who were by his side. Are you ready? We are. Glenn replied. Dedian, Glenn, and Gwyneth entered the compartment while Noyce acted as the coachman. They left the castle as the weather got darker. The carriage went into a remote place in the wilderness. Dedian and two women got off the carriage. Sergei had been waiting by the forest for a long time. Master, horses are ready, Sergei said. Dedian, Gwyneth, and Glenn rode dark horses as they left the place. They abandoned the horses as they reached the outskirts of the remote place. They began to walk through the hills and woods. It didn't take long before they saw the outline of the giant wall. They sped up and reached the giant wall in a fast manner. Give me the rope, Dedian said to Glenn. Glenn untied her backpack and took out a bundle of ropes. Dedian took a deep breath and unzipped the armor to take it off from his upper body. The thin and transparent wings stretched out from his spine. They seemed very soft but looked like sharp blades after stretching out. Glenn and Gwyneth were shocked as they saw the wings behind Dedian. They finally got to know how Dedian planned to sneak into the inner wall. It would be very easy to climb the giant wall with a pair of evolved wings. Wait for me. Dedian clutched the bundle of rope and began to run over the surface of the giant wall. He felt that his wings had become more powerful after he had become a senior hunter. In the blink of an eye he reached the top of the one kilometer tall giant wall. He unlocked the bundle of rope and threw it down. Gwyneth and Glenn woke up from the shock when they felt the snake-like rope fall down. They grabbed onto the rope and carefully climbed up. Neither Glenn nor Gwyneth dared to be as fearless as Dedian. Their heartbeat increased after climbing up 300 meters high. They feared that the rope would break or the rope would be released from the other end. Although both of them would survive falling from that height but would have serious injuries and crippled, disabled, for life. Both of them reached the top of the giant wall. The fear was replaced by the shock after reaching the top. The top of the giant wall was spacious. They could see the whole of the area within the giant wall. The giant wall was a sacred symbol in the hearts of many. They never thought that one day they could have climbed the giant wall. Dedian put away the rope. You will have to rely on this rope to climb the place in the future. Don't forget to change the routes frequently so that you couldn't be tracked. He turned towards the direction of the inner wall and ran. Both of them followed after Dedian. Both women looked to the sides as they run. Their hearts was full of shock and excitement as they saw the geographical landscape in the vicinity. They reached the inner wall's barrier after half an hour. Dedian was about to directly go down to inner area's wall when his eyes narrowed at sight. There were shadows on the high walls of inner wall. He squatted down in haste. Gwyneth and Glenn also bent down in fear. Patrols! 
Dedian made a gesture with his hand while he secretly looked up. There were two silhouettes every few hundred meters who were on top of the barrier walls for inner wall. Gwyneth and Glenn stayed silent as they saw Dujian's gestures. They were tense. Although both of them had experienced life and death battles but the pressure of sneaking into the inner wall area was much more. It's strange. The last time there were no one on top of the wall. How come there are people on duty right now? Is it possible that I was exposed last time and they have decided to put line of defense on the inner wall? Dudian frowned. However, the next moment he thought that the last time he had come to this area it was morning but right now it was curfew time. Perhaps the patrols would withdraw at dawn. Dudian took out stone powder and smeared it on his body. He waved at Gwyneth and Gwyn to do the same. Dudian was able to see clearer as the distance got closer. The people on the barriers of inner wall were wearing uniforms and had weapons. Their bodies emitted strong heat. All of them seemed to be senior hunters. But Glenn and Gwyneth's body heat seemed slightly more than theirs. After they passed the barrier of the inner wall, he saw steel ladders stapled onto the barrier of the inner wall. There was one nailed onto the wall every 10 meters or so. It would be very difficult for an ordinary civilian to climb over them. Much better. It seems it's not because of my appearance last time that the people were sent to patrol the inner wall's border. Most probably it's not just me but there are other forces who want to secretly get into the inner wall. It would be much more difficult if that many senior hunters were stationed on the border wall. Dudian, Gwyneth and Glenn ran away from the border wall of the inner wall. Patrols on the inner wall didn't notice their existence on the giant wall. Most probably they didn't think that someone would be able to climb the giant wall which was a kilometer tall. All three of them had officially entered the inner wall after passing the border. Glenn was more excited as she checked the place. Glenn was much calmer. Dadian made a sudden hand gesture and all three of them stopped. He carefully looked for a while then he whispered, There is a patrol on the giant wall. Glenn and Gwyneth were surprised. They didn't think that someone else in addition to Dadian could climb the giant wall. Does it mean that there were others with special abilities? Dadian got another rope bundle from the Glen. He pushed it down the desolate bushes. There were no red dots in the bushes. However, hundred meters outside the bushes there were several long red dots. He thought that they were beasts that hit themselves. Slide down. Gwyneth and Glenn climbed down the rope. Dedian took the rope and directly jumped. Dedian opened his wings when he was about two or three hundred meters from the ground. They helped him to smoothly land. Squat. Dedian said in a haste. Both women quickly bent down. Dedian looked at Glenn dig a hole. Glenn put her hands down to the ground. After a careful look sharp edges could be seen next her little fingers. It helped her bend the soil easily and open up path. Glenn dig out a pit of half a meter in a matter of half a minute. Dadian and Gwyneth jumped into it and Glenn covered it with surrounding soil. Afterwards she continued to drill a new hole to hide herself. Because of the magic marks of the black weaver her nose was transformed too. She could hold her breath for a long time underneath the earth. The Dark King. Chapter 443. Dedian and Gwyneth shrank their bodies as they squatted in a small pit. Gwyneth moved her finger to poke the covering soil to create a small passage for Dedian to observe the outside. Dedian quickly grabbed her hand as he felt her move. In addition, he controlled his heartbeat. His heart was beating in a very low frequency. It was almost didn't beat as if he was a stone. Glenn and Gwyneth's heart turned ugly when they saw Duduin's abnormal move. They were not rookies so they understood that something terrible was over their heads. Dedian closed his eyes and raised his head. He did so to prevent the sand falling into his eyes. Although his eyes were closed but he still could see everything outside. This was another advantage that he got after advancing to senior hunter level. Eyelids couldn't block his observation. He could clearly see a humanoid shape that was on top of the giant wall. The figure's speed was not fast. However, the intensity of the heat the figure was exuding was way too abnormal. Dedian felt like the figure was a person on fire. Dedian was shocked as he tried not to think about the strength of the person. He tried to do so as to avoid the slight changes in his body. He felt on instinct as if a high-level beast was staring at them. He had never seen such a strong heat exuded from a human body. It was like comparing sun to the firefly if a comparison of the figures in Glenn and Gwyneth's heat emission was done. Although the heat emitted from the body didn't absolutely represent the constitution of the person but in most cases the judgment wasn't wrong. Only few magic marks had abilities which made the person emit a strong heat but the constitution wasn't strong enough. The figure came to stop exactly above the place where Dudian and others were hiding. The figure stopped on top of the giant wall and looked around. 
After a few minutes it went to the other part of the giant wall. The figure came back after more than ten minutes. It seems that the figure was taking a walk. This time the person didn't stay above the trio's head but directly went away. Dedian couldn't see the figure anymore as it almost was extinguished. The person was way far away. Dedian was relieved but he saw the faint heat stop. It didn't move. Is the person resting? Dedian was about to replace the oxygen inside his lungs when he thought of a possibility and changed his mind. Another seven or eight minutes passed. The weak heat suddenly moved. It was as if a meteorite was falling down. It moved rapidly towards the direction of Dudian and others. Whoosh! The figure stopped on top of the giant wall as it looked down. It was exactly above Dudian and others. It paused for a moment then went back. After minutes the heat completely disappeared. Dudian felt dizzy because of the lack of oxygen. He drilled out from the pit and took big breaths. He looked at Gwyneth and Glenn. Gwyneth you know about inner wall much more than we do. You should lead the way. Glenn makes sure that this place looks like the original. Glenn looked at him. I felt a terrible existence over our heads. Dedian nodded, a very strong person. I think the existence was much more powerful than senior hunters. He looked at Gwyneth. You have been a disciplinary knight within the inner wall. Do you know what types of people are above the senior hunters? Gwyneth whispered. I have been part of the magistrate so I don't know much. But I have heart that there are people called Limitless. I have heard that there were some in our disciplinary institute. Limitless. Dedian and Glenn's eyes narrowed as they secretly noted the name. Come with me. Gwyneth took the lead. Dedian and Glenn followed after her. There should be beasts within the bushes ahead. I can smell blood. Glenn whispered. I can feel it too. Gwyneth whispered. It should be monsters but not beasts. The inner wall is totally different from the outer wall. Although it occupies the 80% of the giant wall's area but its population is only half of the outer wall. 70% of the landmass within the inner wall is wilderness. There are many monsters living inside. The nobles of the inner wall live in the central zone and never go out. Monsters. Glenn was surprised. Dedian was startled as he heard Gwyneth's speech. He thought that the inner wall occupied the vast majority of soil and resources so in his impression it should be a more flourishing place in comparison to the outer wall. At first he speculated that the ancestors of the noble families of the outer wall were expelled because of overcrowding. He didn't think that his reasoning would be wrong. The populate wasn't big but relatively scarce. As a result vast amount of space was abandoned. No wonder he saw wilderness all around. The monastery is a strong power within the inner wall. It's equivalent to the holy church of the outer wall. Gwyneth whispered, in addition to them there is magistrate, his majesty, the ruler of the giant wall, and his military, the forces of nobles and the devil families. The disciplinary knights which I was used to be part of was under the command of the magistrate. Dedian was relieved to see Gwyneth to come up with information without him asking. At the time of bailing her out the most he valued was her identity as a person from the inner wall. He knew that at one point the information that she has about the inner wall would be useful. He was planning to use Gwyneth as an intelligence officer back then and now it happened so that she become handy. He wanted to inquire Gwyneth about the saint but held back. He saw that the girl trust him but hadn't surrendered herself. He was in a difficult situation. It would be useless and counterproductive to use force if the girl didn't take the initiative to help him out. After all, the girl couldn't be tamed back in the Thornflower prison. She was nailed with spikes all over her body but she didn't give up. It was a proof of her stubborn temper. Dedian was glad that he had used soft means instead of hard when dealing with the girl. In short, there are five powers controlling the inner wall. Dedian whispered. Gwyneth nodded. On the surface, yes. But all of those five powers have different factions. Moreover, the nobles have a lot many factions in comparison to the others. I got it. Dedian wanted to know a bit more. Is there anything similar to the Dark Church within the inner wall? Gwyneth replied in a cold tone. No. There is no trace of the Dark Church within the inner wall. But there are more bad and sinister powers than the Dark Church in the inner wall. The Dark King Chapter 444 Dedian felt the hatred in her tone. He remembered the reason of her imprisonment. Whoosh! Gwyneth led the way. They avoided the monsters hidden in the bushes. After about two hours they had passed over a long distance. They had passed by hills, lush forests, and dark lakes. Gif Valley Gwyneth looked at the steep cliff. The central zone of the inner wall is after this Gif Valley. The monastery is also located there. We can't continue to move forwards as there will be limitless on duty. They have variety of abilities to find us. 
It would be very difficult to pass by them. Dedian looked at the blurred rock on the cliff. It had a natural blend. However, the silhouette of the rock seemed like Buddha. There were moss all over it. Dedian was shocked so see the statue of the Buddha in here. Buddhism never appeared within the giant wall. The holy church should have replaced it. Most probably the statue was left from the old era. He retracted his eyes and looked at Gwyneth. How do we determine the location to pass the letters if we can't go to the central zone? Sorry, young master. Gwyneth bowed. We can only make contact in here. We will be definitely exposed by the limitless patrolling around the central zone if we move forward. Even the rare mature monsters won't be able to sneak inside let alone us. Dedian pondered for a little. All right. I will find a way to pass information to here. Both of the women nodded in confirmation. Let's get familiar with the next terrain and go back. Dedian said. The task was almost completed. Gwyneth nodded as she led Glenn and Dedian to wander around the vicinity of the place. Glenn poured lime powder or sulfur powder from time to time. Dedian knew that she had a special smell perception of the soil and rocks so she was covering their tracks. They were passing by a lake when Dedian sensed a rotten smell. His pupils shrank as he pulled Gwyneth and Glenn. He turned to look towards the direction where the smell floated from. He saw red spots scattered around as he looked through the countless jungle trees. He was already very familiar with his thermal vision. Although he could only detect heat but he instantly knew that it was a group of people behind the forest. There were hundreds of them. Dedian concentrated more. It was night and there were hundreds of people lined up in the forest. Why? Are they trying to make an ambush because they had traced Du Dian's team? The next moment Du Duen's face turned ugly. Every hair on his body turned up because of the fright. He saw a huge red heat coming out of the lake. The entire lake seemed like a sea of fire. He had never seen such a big heat emission even outside the giant wall. The most important thing was that the shape of the source of the heat was extremely large. It looked like a giant ball. The diameter was at least 40 or 50 meters. What was this creature? The biggest monster Dudian had ever seen was the adult splitter. But adult splitter was much smaller in comparison to the giant monster within the lake. Was it another legendary monster? Moo! A roar echoed from the lake. It seemed like the sound that cattle would make. However, it felt like a low thunder. Dudian saw hundreds of people rush from the forest into the lake. Ambushing monster? Dudian overthrew the idea the next second. It wasn't an ambush. They were jumping into the lake one by one and disappear. Why would they jump directly as they were facing such a monster? They weren't ambushing it. They were its food. Dedian was startled as he stood still in the same location. His hand was pulled. He looked up to see Gwyneth looked at him. S.H. gestured them to another location. It meant they had to leave. Gwyneth was the first to leave. Glenn followed after her as she heard the sound of the roar. Dedian didn't neglect Gwyneth so he quietly caught up with them. After four or five miles they increased their speed. What was that? There was still fear lingering in Dudian's mind. The size of the creature was unimaginable for him. Gwyneth turned to look at him. I'm not sure too. But, but I guess, we have stumbled into, the area of Monster Institute. If we are really close to the Monster Institute, then we have to leave as far away as possible. Monster Institute? Dudian was startled. What is that? What power do they belong to? I'm not sure. I have heard that they have relationship with the monastery and with the nobles. Some had said that it's directly under the power of His Majesty. Gwyneth took a break. In short, it is a power which we must not provoke. They are a group of devils. They study the monsters from outside the giant wall. The monsters that run wild in the inner wall are the ones that have ran out of their research or breeding bases. His Majesty, the rule of the giant wall? Dudian's face slightly changed. Is it the Monster Institute which provides the monster atlas and maps for the outside to the outer wall? Yes. Gwyneth continued. Everything related to the monsters are designed and produced by them. The original armor and weapons for the hunters are their products. Moreover, they manufacture the disgusting life weapons too. They can do anything. There was a person who helped the Monster Institute so that they could treat his sick sister. The Monster Institute agreed. But when the man saw the recovered sister after a month, he went mad. No one knew the reason. Stuff like that had happened many times in the past. The Dark King Chapter 445 Dedian finally understood the reason why the crowd was near the lake after hearing out Gwyneth. They weren't there for ambush but waiting for the emergence of the monster. They were the bait. Dudian's eyes were gloomy. Monster Institute feeds and breeds the monsters. The heat level of those people were comparable to intermediate-level hunters. 
They had voluntarily became rations for monsters. I could understand that the Monster Institute could blackmail one or two out of them, but feeding hundreds, one hundred people at intermediate hunter level at once. Dedian understood the terrorizing means of the Monster Institute. He wouldn't be likely to drive so many people if he used poison to control so many addicts. No wonder there are only nine factions in the temple. There is no study of the monsters, neither the production of the god's blessings. Consortia said that the blessings were produced by the temple. The temple, however, takes the blessings from the Monster Institute. Dedian finally understood few things. There is a relationship between the temple and the Monster Institute. There is a contact. It meant that the walls didn't isolate the organizations. So if they can't climb the giant wall to smuggle, then perhaps there is a regular team that sneaks into the inner wall to get God's blessings. Maybe this is an unspoken rule within the temple which some are aware. Dedian secretly thought of possibilities. Whoosh! Trio returned back to the outer wall area. They went to the giant wall. There was no one on top of it. Dedian helped the other two to climb the giant wall again and they went back to the outer wall. There are patrols at night over the barrier walls of the inner wall. You have to find their timings in the next few days. Dedian looked at the other two. They were riding horses in the wilderness of the outer wall. Glenn and Gwyneth nodded. I will search for another way to sneak into the inner wall. Having access to two paths would be much safer. Dedian said. If there was a patrol on the giant wall then the coefficient of the danger would be much too large if Glenn and Gwyneth tried to sneak into the inner wall. Moreover, they had to rely on ropes to climb to the giant wall. Once the rope was removed, there was no way for them to come back. Dedian planned to make a small hot air balloon and a glider for ensuring much safer landing. They had spent about four or five hours in the inner wall. It was still curfew time as they rode back to the outer wall. Dedian found a suitable place to stop. Glenn kicked open the door of a hotel. She frightened the boss of the place. They arranged a new carriage and rode it back to Dudian's castle. Glenn used the banner on the temple on the carriage. Along the way some patrolling soldiers stopped them but quickly let them away after simply questions. Ha! Huh. Dedian was sitting in the carriage and thinking about the situation when he saw five red heats near the castle. The heat emitted from those bodies were massive. In addition to that there were several humanoid heats that was exuded too. But they were weak in comparison to those five. Ambush? Dedian thought of an idea as he hurried Glenn to stop the carriage. Glenn looked back into the compartment. Yes? Dedian was surprised as he looked at the people lurking in the castle. They didn't emit any smell. However, the heat exuded from their bodies were similar to Saint that he had met. The only power who would dare to ambush him in his castle could be from the inner wall. You turn right now. Dedian said in haste, there is an ambush at home. Neither Gwyneth nor Glenn doubt his words. They had seen that Dudian's strength was much higher than them when they sneaked into the inner wall. The plan. Dedian thought. He was estimating that they would come tomorrow but he didn't imagine the saints to come over the night. Fortunately he wasn't taken by surprise. Hiss. The horse pulling the carriage loudly screamed. Bang. Bang. Dedian pulled Gwyneth as both of them jumped out of the carriage. They were about seven or eight meters away from the carriage when Dedian turned to see a black shadow. It had completely broken the compartment. At the same time a red figure appeared in his broad vision. It was like an eagle that swept at Dedian. Dedian pushed Gwyneth to the side as he quickly pulled the dagger and attacked the head of the figure. Whoosh! The figure flapped and danced over the Dudian's body. It was a whip. Dedian pulled another dagger as he blocked the whip. The whip was taken back. He looked at the black whip that was swaying and waving on the air. It was actually a snake. At the same time it spat out a transparent venom. Dedian was caught off guard. The venom hit his left arm. He tried to wave his arm but was late. The snake's head quickly retreated back and rolled into the arm of a person. The person looked at Dedian with an interest. Whoosh! 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 Few more figures rushed out from the distant castle. Dudian's face changed as he looked at his opponent. The man had a sturdy body and bright gold hair. He was wearing a platinum armor. There was a black whip in his hand. The whip was twisting and swaying at the same time. It was clearly a black snake. Dedian took a deep breath, the monastery? The blonde man smiled. Yes, I'm Francis, the captain of the third team of saints from the monastery. Are you Mr. Dean who had wounded our saint? Dedian narrowed his eyes. Are you here to kill me? Francis replied, we are not as bad as you think. We are here to take you back into the inner wall. Please help us with the investigation. The Dark King Chapter 446 Please, 
Dedian knew that it would be very difficult to get away as the other figures came over from the castle. The people from the inner wall have a very special way to treat others. Francis smiled, special invitation method for special person. This is our style. Mr. Dean, please cooperate with us. Dedian looked at him. Don't forget that I'm a golden knight of the Knights Hall. Show me your identities before I go back with you. It's too windy in here. Let's go back to your castle. Francis laughed. Mr. Dean, please don't think about escaping. I have the antidote for the snake venom. You will be killed if you don't use it. Dedian narrowed his eyes. Although he was looking at Francis, but he could see the wound on his left arm. The previous transparent venom spat out by the strange snake hadn't spread into his shoulder, but was absorbed by the ice. Sometimes harmful things could benefit a person too. Dedian thanked the ice blood syndrome he had. He quietly said, the temple and the knight's hall must know about your forced arrest. Otherwise, I will doubt your identity. After all, I'm not sure whether you work for Inner Wall or the Dark Church. Francis indifferently smiled as he made a gesture for Dedian to get into the castle. He seemed to have expected Dudian's actions. Dedian followed back to the castle. Glenn and Gwyneth were surrounded by several saints as they returned to the castle. Dedian saw a youth wearing a platinum armor within the hall. The youth was a saint too and was wearing the same style of armor Francis had. Sergei, Nicholas, Mason and others were sitting on the sofa next to the youth. Mason stood in hurry when he saw Dedian enter the hall. Dean, run. They are here to force you back. Bang! The saint who was standing by the sofa kicked Mason. Mason's body flew out and hit the wall. He dropped to the ground and coughed up blood. Mason lost consciousness as he laid there. Dedian clearly saw that there were four or five ribs on Mason's chest that were broken. This was the result of the saint being sensible. Otherwise, Mason's body would be broken into two. Despite knowing this, Dedian felt anger gushing out of his heart. The blood in his body boiled. He burst out in a flash and hit the saint's chest. The saint's face changed as he tried to block Dedian. Whoosh! Dudian's fist was like the hammer that hit the saint's arm that was blocking his attack. It was the first time Dudian had used the full power of the splitter's magic marks after getting them. Bang! The armor covering the saint's arm deformed the instant Dudian's fist touched it. The saint's face turned ugly as the armor distorted and concaved in. He was about to retreat when pain spread through his arm. Saint's body fly back and hit the stairs. Bang! The wooden stairs crushed and fell down. The dust covered the place. Stop! Francis shouted. Dudian's eyes were full of anger as he wanted to slaughter the saint on impulse. However, he restrained himself. If he killed all the saint in here, then he will have to face the monastery's wrath. He couldn't bear to face them at this point, so he had to tolerate the actions of saints. Whoosh! A saint standing behind the Francis rushed towards the saint under the broken stairs. He cleaned the blood from the latter's mouth. The neatly combed gold hair was scattered as it was stained with dust. The other saint was full of anger as he went to grab the hilt of his sword to counterattack Dedian. Enough! Francis shouted once again. Dedian looked at Glenn, checked Mason. Dedian wasn't able to move as Francis and other saints had surrounded him. Okay. Glenn rushed out and picked up Mason. She looked at his chest then at Dedian. Several ribs are broken. Stabilize the injury. Dedian ordered. Glenn nodded as she undressed Mason who was unconscious. Dedian looked at Francis, is this how saints act? Would you wound innocent civilians? Francis wrinkled his brows, we are being cautious. He took the initiate to cover the crime of a suspect. Don't forget that you are a suspect now who is investigated for the relations with the Dark Church. He should be grateful that we didn't kill him on spot. Dedian said in anger, IT doesn't matter that I am a suspect or if he tried to cover me. According to the law, no one could be treated that way. In general, you are right. Francis indifferently smiled, but as he said, he is just a civilian. You aren't an aristocrat too. A civilian who dared to harbor a criminal suspect. We have already given face to you by not killing him. The proofs of your identity? Dedian changed the topic. This is our Medal of Honor. Francis took out a medal and handed to Dedian. This is the medal which proves our identity. As for the warrant, we never need a warrant to take people from the outer wall. Dudian's face sank as he grabbed the medal. He carefully checked both sides. Francis and others couldn't help but laugh as they saw Dujian's actions. Francis continued, it's a real one. By the way, it's expensive than gold. Dedian handed the medal back to him but remembered all the details of the medal. I was way too drunk. So sorry for the late release. I got back home like six hours ago and slept for four. I usually sleep four hours a day. 
I'm good now and on Mad's Nail Mode. Expect more to come. The Dark King Chapter 447 An avid reader of TDK, Deez Nuts welcomed his second, Connor, son a day ago. Congratulations, mate. Mr. Dean, it's too late. Where were you? Francis looked at Dodian with interest. Dodian indifferently replied, Do I need to report you where I travel to? Francis smiled. I was just curious how you sneaked into the inner wall. Dodian was surprised. Sneaked into? Dodian turned to look at Sergei and others. Sergei secretly pointed to Crone who was sitting alone on the sofa next to them. Dodian looked at Crone in shock. Crone's face turned pale when he saw Dodian's eyes. Dean, I'm sorry. I was forced to. Dodian's body trembled. He was very disappointed when Sham left, but he never imagined that Crone who he brought out of the slums would betray him at the key moment. Francis smiled as he saw Dudian clench his fists while his body trembled. Mr. Dean, we were shocked too. We didn't dare to think that you would be able to get into the inner wall. I'm so curious about the way you got into the inner wall. Dudian stared at Crone. He didn't care about what Francis said. Why? Crone's body shook. Dudian, I didn't do it intentionally. I was told that they will kill me if I don't talk. You see that they don't care about civilians. I don't want to die. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but I don't want to die for nothing. I'm sorry. Dedian never thought that he would face the same situation that happened years ago again. He remembered Jenny's eyes piercing through his heart years ago in the prison. Dedian didn't imagine that he will feel the same heartache once again after years. He controlled his anger. Crone, you can't. You can't betray me. Crone looked at Dudian's eyes which were full of grief. I didn't want to. I know that you took me out of the slums. You gave me chance to live a good life. Because of you I felt being respected everywhere. I had much better life. But, but I don't want to die. I'm so young. I would rather continue to live in the orphanage than die so early. Dudian felt his heart ache. Are you so afraid of death? They didn't talk. You were the only one to talk. Why? Yes, I am afraid of death. Crone stared into Duduen's eyes. Don't look at me like that. You took me out of the slums, but in your eyes I was a tool. Nothing but a tool. You just used me to do your dirty work. I covered in places where it would be very suspicious for you to get involved. You didn't dare to use others, so you choose me. Dudian stared at him. Do you know why I chose you? Why? Of course it was because of trust. Crone slowly said after a moment of silence, I know why you trust me. It's because if you leave me I will die. In your eyes I'm just a useless cripple. I won't be able to survive in the commercial district if I left. That's why you can trust me without a worry. I would be loyal to you if you really thought of me as a partner. I am afraid of death but I would be willing to sacrifice myself for a friend. But you are not my friend. You are my master. I have to call you young master. I'm just a servant. You took me, Barton and Joseph for old man to teach. But what for? It was all for you to use us in the future. Would you say that you weren't using us? You had so many magic marks. You didn't even give me one of those. You can get those rare magic marks whenever you wish with your identity and status. But you didn't even want to give one to me. You never wanted to nurture and cultivate me. You just brought us up not as friend but as slaves. You have such a black heart. You are vicious, insidious, and despicable. You are not the Dudian from the orphanage I remember. You are a monster. I have never seen anyone worse than you. You are the devil. You will sooner or later abandon me when you get a proper butler. It happened to the adoptive parents. You casually placed them in a house and gave them money. I'm not even sure if you will treat me like that. Maybe I will be worse than that. Duduen's heart got cold as he listened to Crone's words. He felt the whole world making a joke with him. The expression on his face turned normal as he took a big breath. Are you finished? Crone replied, I'm finished. I'm sorry, but I'll go to inner wall, so. To the inner wall? Dudian smiled. I didn't give you magic marks because I didn't want you to get involved with these things. I think the magic marks aren't a good thing for the body, so I didn't give them to you. I never intended you to be on the battlefield, so giving you a magic mark was useless to being with. Crone's face turned gloomy. Do you think I will believe? You do not need to believe. Dudian indifferently replied. I'm just trustfully saying my thoughts. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not as it has nothing to do with me. As for my adoptive parents, they had adopted a new child and the family was happy. It was Gray's dream to live in the commercial district. So I helped him with it. My mother Jura, she is a very good woman. 
I didn't want her to be involved in my life and suffer like you who is being held as a hostage now. You could be killed any moment. I didn't them to live through this. You said that I was vicious and despicable, true. I don't deny that. But my enemy sent me to prison without a just cause. What do you expect me to do? Have I been despicable in any way when I have treated you? Have I ever used your life in exchange for mine? Crone was startled. Sergey and Nicholas were silent as they sat on the sofa. Dedian turned to look at Francis. When are we leaving? Francis replied, Don't be so anxious. You are more powerful than I have imagined, though. You were able to sneak into the inner wall. Dedian indifferently said, I don't want to talk. Francis shrugged his shoulders. It's possible that you will live in the monastery for some time, so I recommend you to take your daily necessities and valuables. Dedian knew that they had already searched all over the castle. Now they wanted to give him the initiate to take out stuff that would be taken away by them. All right. Dedian went upstairs. None of the saint followed him. Dedian didn't take the chip. He took some clothes and the toothbrush made out of animal hair. He put everything into a backpack and went downstairs. Francis winked when he saw Dedian come down. Two saints jumped down from the second floor. They shook their heads as they looked at Francis. Francis looked at Dedian. Mr. Dean is incorruptible. Dedian indifferently said, I just have one request. Don't hurt others. They are my servants and have nothing due to with anything. I hope you will at least put the effort on surface. Monastery is similar to holy church, isn't it? Francis smiled. You are damaging our image with such words and make us look like the villains. Dedian was too lazy to continue to wrestle words with him. Let's go. Francis waved his hand. Two saints left the hall and went behind the castle. There were six snow lions over there. Each of them was almost two meter tall. They had magnificent appearance. Two white sword-like teeth were exposed from their mouths. The horses were screaming constantly in fear. Please. Francis smiled. Four saints jumped over lions. Dedian also went to towards one snow lion. The snow lion began to growl as it saw Dedian approach it. Its mouth was open wide and it could directly swallow Dedian. Obviously it was roaring to intimidate him. Dedian wasn't feeling well because of the previous situation. He growled back when he saw the beast roar. The snow lion saw the green in Duduin's eyes. Its tail went down and drooped under its head after it heard Duduin's growl. Dedian jumped over its back. The saints were surprised as they saw the scene. The snow lions were nurtured by the monastery since birth. Even saints had to go through several months of training to tame them as partners. They didn't expect Dedian to tame it after just a growl. Francis sat on the back of a lion too. He took out a pill. This pill should stop the spread of toxins. It won't detoxify it but will help you to hold on until we reach the inner wall. Dedian stuffed it into his mouth in front of Francis's eyes but didn't swallow the pill. The poison of the snake was frozen and had lost its effect. However, if this pill was a poison then he couldn't be saved. Mr. Mr. Crone ran out. Francis looked back. Anything else you want to say? You promised to take me to the inner wall. If I stay in here they will certainly kill me. Francis shook his head and turned over when he didn't hear any news from Crone. Sorry, but not everyone can enter the inner wall. Especially people with disabilities. Crone's body slightly trembled. You, you, aren't you from the monastery? Aren't you part of the holy church? How could you? Francis replied, you are too young. The Dark King. Chapter 448. You. Crone's eyes flushed as his body trembled. He bit his lips as he thought of something to seize the last chance. Mister, your actions will damage the reputation of Holy Church and the monastery from the inner wall. Even if I die there will be others who will spread the news of today's happening. Sergei, Nicholas and others' face changed as they looked at him in anger. Dedian shot a cold stare at Crone. Francis deliberately crouched his head to think, this is justified. He looked at Dedian, what do you think? Dedian turned to look at Francis. He said in a serious tone as he stared into Francis's eyes, I advise you not to go with such a stupid decision. Francis smiled, we are saints not devils. We won't kill unless it's necessary. Moreover there will be an investigation so them trying to cover you may be pointless in the future if you are deemed innocent. Crone said in a hurry, Mr. Please take me with you. If I'm cumbersome then put me in a small town within the inner wall. Please I beg you. Town. Francis snorted as he stroked the hair of Snow Lion. You have to make sure that my baby lets you to sit up. Crone's face turned ugly. He put a smile on his face as he looked at the snow lion. Can you let me sit on your back? Arg! The snow lion growled. Crone took few steps back. 
His face had turned white as he looked at Francis. Mister, did it agree? Francis laughed. What do you think? Another saint laughed out loud. It is a beast of light. Do you think you have the right to ride it? The other saints laughed when they heard his words. Crone begged in haste. Your honor, please. I beg you. I will get a horse to ride after you. You have promised me or the news will spread out which will badly influence your... What do you mean? Francis smiled. Do you think a horse can keep up with our babies? But Crone wanted to continue to plead but Francis waved with his hand. The snow lion shook its head and turned around. The snow lions began to move on their own. Crone tried to catch up. Mr. Mr. Please I beg you, he chased for 20 meters. However, the snow lions were already 100 meters away from him. Gradually they disappeared from his sight. Whoosh! Whoosh! Six snow lions left the castle by the river. They rushed through the streets and made a detour of the suburbs. They did their best to avoid the soldiers so not to be delayed. Francis rode in front while two rode on left and the other two on right. Dudian was riding in the middle. Snow lions were sturdy and very fast. Occasionally they would encounter steep hills or swamps. But they would easily jump past them. They were silent all the way. Dudian, Francis, and others came to stop in front of the barrier wall of the inner wall after an hour of ride. Francis took the lead as his snow lion reached a gate. There was another saint on a snow lion waiting for them there. It was the youth who had come to take Dudian while he was giving a public lecture. The youth's face sank when he saw Dudian. He subconsciously raised his hand to block the bandaged arm from Dudian's view. He didn't want to let him see his injuries. Open the gate. Francis whispered. The youth nodded. He began to knock the giant gate in different frequencies. Moments later the gate began to slowly open. There were two people by the gate who were wearing standard armors. Dedian thought that they were the people who patrolled the top of the barrier wall. Francis was the first to enter and the others followed after him. The guards who were there came to stop in front of the gate. They twisted a stone valve and the gate began to slowly close. Thank you too. Francis looked at the guards by the gate. Let's go. They maintained the previous formation as they went into the deeper parts of the inner wall. The injured youth was riding at the back and blocking the only gap that was left. Du Jin's face was calm. He had no intention of escaping half the way to the monastery. He thought that he hadn't offended any noble from inner wall or any other power from there. So he estimated that they wouldn't kill him. He knew that there would be a chance to get his life back. Moreover, the Knights Hall also promised to make sure that he was safe within the inner wall. He would screw everything up if he ran away at this point. That way he would have to lurk in the shadows of the outer wall or escape by death. In addition, lurking in the shadows meant that he would be beyond redemption if he was betrayed. After Crone's betrayal, he realized that in the world the only person he could trust was himself. The trust of others would deter if they were offered much more valuable things and benefits than he did. Du Jian's mind drifted away as he thought of these. He felt that there was a lot he had to learn. It was not just about the scientific knowledge and strength. He had to know and see through the humans. He had to gain the knowledge of life. The jungle is ruled by its own laws. To be the king of the jungle you have to be more ferocious than the other beasts. But we live in a human society. My strength is only guarantee of my own security. The ancients said that it's easy to form a country but hard to keep it. I can't rely on force to keep others by my side. Because if a country was controlled by the force then there will inevitably be a violent counterattack. I have to convince them and make it obedient by use of words. If I want to be the ruler of all then I must understand humans and know how to control them. Crone betrayed me by saying that I was despicable and evil. I did all my planning in front of him without any reservation but didn't take into the account that he would sell me out at some point. He was afraid of me and thought that I have no bottom line and won't treat him better in the future. That was my failure. However, it was a good lesson. Fortunately, this lesson didn't cost me heavily. Mr. Dean, what are you thinking about? Francis, who was in front, turned his head to ask Dedian. Dedian restored his focus as he looked around. Nothing. We have been moving for so long, but we are still in the wilderness. Francis smiled. It's your first time in here, so the answer will be clear to you after a few hours. Dedian lightly said, Are you trying to urge me to escape? I'm innocent and I'm not afraid of anything. I know that you are not guilty. Francis laughed. Dedian wrinkled his eyebrows but kept silent. After three hours of ride, Francis looked at the woman on his left. You should leave to rest and let the big guy get fed. All right. My family's perquet hasn't eaten but had to run for the whole night. The woman, Saint, replied. Dedian looked at the distant horizon in silence. The Dark King. 
Chapter 449 It didn't take long before they reached another tall stone fort on top of a barrier wall. The fort was about 50 meters high and was designed like a hedgehog. It had sharp thorns stabbing out. There were few corpses hanging over them. The fort seems to be quite long, Dadian said. Francis replied, it's not that long. This fort surrounds entire central zone. It is the line of defense. The strength of this barrier is much better than the barrier wall of the inner wall. Dadian frowned, why inner wall stuffs itself within barriers one after another? Is it to protect itself from the monsters of the wilderness? Francis shrugged his shoulders, living inside the wall is always safer than living outside it. But what's the point of living inside the walls when you can't see the landscape outside the wall? Francis laughed, it's just bushes and grass. What scenery are you talking about? There is nothing worth to look at. You may perceive it as desolate wilderness but I think of it as freedom. Francis didn't reply as they came to stop in front of the fort. There were soldiers wearing standard armor and standing in front of the gate. The gates of the fort opened as they were given access to the central zone. There were several barracks and villages behind the fort. Dadian asked, I didn't expect to see a village in this desolate part of the central zone. Francis answered, Mr. Dean, there is no concept of villages in the inner wall. The people who live there are the families of the soldiers stationed in the fort. These soldiers can't go back to the home for long so their wives and children have been transported to live in here. Dudian's eyes lit up but he didn't ask for anything else. The group passed through the roads over the hills. Half an hour later they came to see a towering mountain. There was a lively town at the foothills of the mountain. It's the St. Paul branch of the monastery. We will be going there. Francis pointed to the road leading to the top of the mountain. Dedian quietly observed the place. The buildings within the town were scattered around. Francis didn't take Dedian into the town but they went along the road to the top of the mountain. They passed through a gate where two soldiers were at duty. Both of them respectfully saluted Francis and others, greeting saints. Francis nodded as they continued along the road. They reached a square and all of them got off the snow lions. At the end of the square there was a magnificent abbey. It was similar to western cathedrals that Dedian remembered. There were sculptures of two angels in front of the abbey. This is the courtyard. There are seminaries and other structures along the hillside. Francis introduced the place to Dadian. Dadian found that the monastery had the same institutions like the Christianity from the old era. They had seminary, hospital, and other structures. Was it that the structures were passed down from the old era? They walked down the stairs and went into a hall. This part of the abbey was extremely elegant. Come with me. Francis opened a door on the side and went in. There was a long passage behind the wall. They walked for more than 10 meters and passed through several forks. Francis chose forks as if following a particular path. It didn't take long when the secret corridor finished and a spiral stairs appeared in front of them. The place was looking like a maze. Why it's so complex? Dadian asked. Francis indifferently smiled. The monastery contains the secrets of the universe. Taking you to the main hall of the abbey would be the same as blasphemy towards the god. I'm taking you to the investigation room for the interrogation. The place is called Azura's Hell. You will taste it when we get there. They walked down the spiral staircase. Dadian heard faint voices echoing from the chamber they were getting close to. The more they got closer the clearer the voices were. They were actually screams of humans. They reached an iron gate. Francis opened the door and they entered a court-like place. But it was much larger than the sentencing room of a prison. There were many instruments such as hooks, whips and etc. that were used for torture. There was even a few instruments which had human hair and skin attached on top of them. At the side there was a big glass aquarium. There were human head, tongue, heart, and other organs inside it. There were bloodstains spilled all over the walls. Dadian wrinkled his eyebrows as he entered the room. Francis saw the calm expression on Dudian's face. Mr. Dean seems to have been through some storms. There isn't conclusive evidence for you to torture me. I thought you were not afraid of it. Francis laughed. Dedian indifferently said, I'm not here to fool around. Francis chuckled, I hope you can maintain this attitude till the end. By the way I'm not the person who will investigate you but the elders of the St. Paul's Abbey. Francis looked at the guard inside the room, opened the door. The man was obese and had a round belly. He had a black mask covering his face. He looked like the butcher in the market. The man moved and removed string of keys from the shelf. He opened the key. There were bloodstains and dust on the door. Dedian looked at the prisoner inside the room. The man was whipped. Half of his scalp was missing while some of the fingers on his hand and toe were missing. 
the door opened and led to another passage. Francis led the way. They came to stop in front of a fork. One of the passage was much more bigger than other passages. The oil lamps on the walls were new too. There was wooden floor on the ground and a layer of carpet on it. There was a big wooden door at the end of the passage. It was colored in scarlet red. Francis knocked the door. Francis is here. A voice of an old man echoed, come in. Francis pushed the door and turned towards the other five saints. Go back and wait for me. The others nodded and left. Dedian had long detected the existence of two humanoid heats within the room. However, he was startled as he saw Francis's care when stepping into the room. He followed after the captain of the saint team. Elders. Francis respectfully bowed after he entered the room. The ground was covered with soft cotton carpet. The room was very spacious and the walls were decorated with lots of artwork. There were skeletons in the middle of the room. At the end of the room there was a large bed. A man who seemed to be in his seventies was leaning by the bedside. There was a beautiful woman who was in his arms. Dudian's face slightly changed. Was they the elders of the monastery responsible for the punishments? Is this Dean the little genius? The old man stretched out his hand and took the glasses that were handed to him by the woman in his arms. He looked over at Dudian. Francis replied, Yes, elder. Dudian was also looking at the old man. Their eyes collided. He felt a pressure from the man. Although the latter seemed like an old man but it seemed as if a giant was looking down at him, Dedian thought that the old man could see all the secrets in his heart just by looking at him. Dedian was shocked. The main reason was that the heat emitted from the old man's body was no different from an ordinary person, but the woman in his arms was like a fireball. The heat her body emitted was much more terrifying than the Francis. Moreover, such a terrifying woman was sitting on old man's lap and playing with his beard as if nothing was happening at all. By chance today I read Licinia's post on NUF about Patreon stuff. I was moved thanks winking face. The Dark King Chapter 450 Greetings Elders of the Punishment Division Dudian nodded. The old man looked at him in silence. After a moment he smiled. I heard that you have hurt a saint of the monastery. Dudian expected to be held accountable for hitting the saint. It was a misunderstanding. The saint approached in an instant and I thought he was an assassin of the Dark Church. Therefore I resisted with full force. I didn't know about his identity as the saint of the monastery at the time. I have offended the monastery, I'm sorry and I hope you will forgive me. Sorry isn't enough to express sincerity. The old man whispered. Duduen's brows wrinkled. Elder please instruct me, he said. The old man smiled, did you observe the place when you came here? Dudian quietly answered, yes. The old man looked at Dudian's expression. Mr. Dean has a hard backbone. I am just curious if you will stay so after experience the life in here. Dudian's face sank. I don't believe you will listen to the slander of others. If there is no evidence then it's a proof that I'm being wronged. Are you going to believe to the words of others without an evidence? Francis scolded him. Pay attention to the way you speak. The old man waved his hand to stop Francis. You are young but wise. I hope you will continue to be smart. So let's cut the long-winded chat and focus on topic. We called you over to let you join the monastery. Dadian was confused. Join the monastery? The old man smiled, yes. The Holy Church is just a missionary division of the monastery within the outer wall. Pope of the Holy Church is preacher of the monastery. You are an outstanding master of the Holy Church. We have reviewed your resume and decided that you are eligible to join the monastery. Are you willing to? Dadian was perplexed. It was an unexpected situation. Elders, Dadian continued, I was suspected of colluding with the devil. How am I going to join the monastery? The old man gently smiled, I am aware of that. Normally, the priests and architects of the Holy Church or the temple are sent an invitation to be called over. This way all the forces within the outer wall know the situation. But you are a special case so we had to use a special way. Special? Yes. The old man slowly said, you just mentioned the dark church. Do you know the origins of the Dark Church? Dedian was startled as he could understand what the old man was going to talk about. I don't. What does Elder mean? There was no Dark Church 200 years ago. The old man continued. The first preacher was appointed by the monastery to the outer wall. He was the missionary that established the Holy Church. Since then the believers of the faith began to appear. However, the peace didn't last for long. There were people who joined the Holy Church who dominated over the missionaries. They wanted to seize the power. A civil war began within the Holy Church and the organization was split into several factions. 
After some time all of them join into two big forces. Now they are Holy Church and the Dark Church. Dedian was startled. Although Dedian was aware that the waters of the Dark Church were deep but he didn't expect it to split out of the Holy Church. No wonder the names were antagonistic to each other. The old man continued, the elders and the preachers of the monastery were furious when they heard the news. They decided to send the saint to the outer wall to destroy the Dark Church for good but His Majesty ordered to preserve the existence of the Dark Church after he was informed about the situation. As a result the Dark Church became a division of the Holy Church. Dedian was frightened. The Dark Church is part of the Holy Church. Yes. The old man nodded, you should be aware that in this world there is light and the darkness. People won't know cherish the light if they are not aware of the darkness. The old man continued, you will be one of the deacons of the monastery in the Dark Church if you the monastery. Your first appointment will be as the elder of the Dark Church within the Outer Wall. You will work to preserve the other within the Dark Church and cooperate with the Pope to eradicate unregulated extremists. Dedian felt like he was in a dream. Everything was too dramatic to hear. Many hidden mysteries could be understood after the explanation of the elder. No wonder Nightingale told him that the town they visited was under the rule of the Dark Chick. The town was full of alchemists, potioners, and others while there was no one from Holy Church to arrest them. The hands of the Holy Church were everywhere. Moreover, it was impossible to keep the information about the town a secret. Nightingale had told him that the town was under rule of a noble. But now it was obvious that the Holy Church was the big brother. In addition, even Gwyneth had told him that there was no dark church within the inner wall. The dark church was a terrifying force that lurked within the outer wall. The Holy Church fought with it for endless years and spent endless number of forces. The alchemists and potion masters were the most frightening ones out of all. But Gwyneth as the member of the disciplinary knights was not aware of the existence of the dark church within the inner wall. Why did you link my arrest with the devil? If you want me to join. Dedian bitterly looked at the old man. The old man faintly smiled, in this case you won't have a leeway. Dedian stayed silent while he was relieved in his heart. It seemed that his life wouldn't be threatened. Although the structure of the monastery had shocked him but he had a chance to breathe. He got another chance. The Dark King Chapter 451 Your arrest as a suspect was to facilitate your future work. The elder continued, Don't forget that after you become an elder of the Dark Church you will lose your glorious identity. You will have to live in the shadows. There would be two options left for you in case your identity is exposed. The first one is to be transferred into the inner wall and get another job within the monastery. The second option is punishment by the Holy Church which is death sentence. Let me remind you that there is no spare posts in the monastery for the time being. So you have only option two for you in case your identity is revealed. Dedian felt a chill as he saw the faint smile on Elder's face. He realized that there was no choice for him. He couldn't resist. Moreover he had already labeled with the collusion with the devil. He didn't have much of a choice. He would become a member of the Dark Church if he agreed. In case he tries to expose the monastery and the Holy Church in the future the Holy Church will use the charge to discredit him. However if he agrees to enter the system then he would be arrested by the Holy Church once he loses the value to the system. Dedian took a deep breath, what if I do not agree? The elder indifferently replied, you will have a new home. Dedian smiled, it seems I don't have a choice. Is this a deliberate test for me? The old man replied, I don't need to waste my time to test you. Because of the punishments, there is always a spare room in here. Dedian knew that the elder wasn't joking. He asked the question for two reasons. The first was to be cautious. The second reason was to make them think that he was looking at the surface of things and he was a simple man. It was kind of a self-protection measure. Elder, why did you choose me? There are so many masters in the temple. Aren't you just destroying a master of the temple with a great potential? The old man laughed, you are not humble at all. Dujun's face turned red. The old man deeply looked at Dudian. The answer lies within the problem. The reason why I picked you is very simple. They are very old and have been living under the influence of the Holy Church for too long. I'm afraid they won't be able to accept the truth if it's revealed at this point. Even if they accept the position under intimidation, it would be very hard for them to adapt to the change of identity. However, you are different. You are young. You were in contact with a noble lady but were imprisoned because of her father and influence of other nobles. But you were able to jailbreak from the most solid prison. It shows your abilities. You are able to camouflage, observe, endure, in short everything that we need. 
Although we are not aware of your identity before your acceptance to the orphanage, but we think that you were abandoned like the others. You are not someone who believes in God. You are the best fit to be the elder of the dark church. I suspect that you would enter the dark church anyway. After all, that's the most suitable place for you. Dudien's face slightly changed. It was indeed easy for the monastery look for his resume. Moreover, he felt that he had defects in his alibi. Although he didn't believe in God, but he never pretended to believe in God too. He never actively participated in the masses. He had helped to defeat the barbarians. But if someone from a high position looked at the situation, then they would find out that he did it for his own benefits. Therefore, he was able to confuse the public with the barbarian feet, but it would be very difficult to confuse the ones living in the inner wall who overlooked everything within the outer wall. Old man looked at Dadian who was silent. Mr. Dean, let's stop with the useless chat. It is time to announce your answer. Dadian sighed. It seems I don't have a choice. As you have consented, then I hope that you can fulfill your duties. By the way, don't disappoint us. The old man smiled. Dadia nodded. I will do my best to adapt. However, what am I supposed to do as the elder of the Dark Church? Should I send intelligence about the members of the Dark Church to the Holy Church? The old man stared at him. That is just one of the responsibilities. Moreover, you won't need to do it yourself. Dadian asked, Is there any other elders appointed by the monastery in addition to me? You don't have the right to know that. Do what you are supposed to do. I advise you to keep your identity confidential. Some of the elders are real members of the Dark Church. It would be very hard to keep your identity if they know that you were sent by the monastery. Dadian smiled, Am I on my own? The elder replied, The only ally you have is the Holy Church. You can keep continue to engage in research. There is Alchemy Tower and Academy in the Dark Church. The elder continued, But try not to catch many eyes. Stay away from taboo subjects that the Dark Church has set. It's better for you not to touch those topics. Dadian pondered a little. I don't have any background. Would it cause the doubt of other elders if I'm appointed directly just like this? The elder answered, Every elder is appointed by the Pope of the Dark Church. No one knows the identity of other elders. You will be in shadows unless you take the initiative to expose your own identity. Dadian sighed in relief, Is it only Pope that knows the identity of the elders? Yes. Why don't you get rid of all the other elders? Elder indifferently replied, That's a simple-minded solution. All the elders are involved with alchemy families and other forces. If we appoint our own people then there can be two results in the long run. Either the dark church would go light or all the elders we sent would be part of the darkness. Dadian knew that the elder wasn't telling the truth. The biggest drawback of such a situation would be the union of the elders. The monastery was afraid of a joint rebellion. The monastery didn't want to see such a thing. Although the forces of the inner wall could completely suppress the rebellion of the Dark Church, but it would put the Holy Church into a passive role. There has been long-term friction and numerous casualties between the Dark Church and the Holy Church. Many knights of light with great potential have fallen. Countless amazing alchemists were beheaded by the Holy Church. Wouldn't it be much better if these people didn't die? Dadian asked. Elder narrowed his eyes as he looked at Dadian. That's a very dangerous idea. Dangerous? Dadian was at a loss. Isn't it all about that? The Dark King Chapter 452 Elder looked at the confused expression on Dudian's face. Do you know why some inventions are classified as taboo? Dudian's heartbeat increased but on surface he looked like a lost sheep. Why? Do you think those bands have something in common? Common points. Dadian thought for a moment. I remember that the inflammation technique used by the military is banned because of the destructive power. If it's not properly used, it would cause numerous casualties and destruction. At the same time, he speculated in his mind. He came to a terrible answer, but he didn't dare to show it on his face or tell it. The old man replied, true. The main reason for the ban is the destructive power. Such things are great harm for the nobles and the inner wall. That's why they are banned. The priests have studied your steam rifle. It's much more dangerous than the inflammation technique. Even a child could easily kill a noble with a steam rifle. Do you think the nobles would let these weapons run rampant? Dadian was silent. He had expected this possibility long ago. Nevertheless, in the Middle Ages, when the gunpowder was born, the sword lost its rule in the Western countries. But in this case, the gunpowder was suppressed by the inner wall. Moreover, they chose to suppress the steam rifle too. He moved with the production of the steam rifle despite knowing the results. The main reason was to take the opportunity to destroy the Melon Consortium in one sweep. It was a consortium with roots far and wide. 
It would take him a lot longer to clean it up if he went with the normal solution. That's why he had made a bet. But it wasn't a blind risk but a calculated move. He knew that it wouldn't threaten his own life because the dark church had banned the inflammation technique of the Inferno family. So at the worst case, the same would happen to him. The life and wisdom was given to us by the God of the light. Elder slowly said, but if the wisdom is not converged, then it would lead to a disaster. Your steam rifle was based on the concept of the steam. If you joined the dark church, then it would be used for the evil. But as the founder of the steam faction, you still can do research but can't publish it. The Inferno family from the Dark Church does the same. They can make research but it has to be audited before publication. If it's deemed to be banned then the research wouldn't be public. Dedian was silent as he listened to the Elder. He knew that he had no room for negotiations or resistance. However, there was a strange question in his mind. If the research is classified as forbidden and can't be made public then why they allow for such research to continue on? Do they want to give some level of freedom to architects and alchemists? Or would these banned inventions will be used in the necessary times? Like the army did. If it's like that then how do they define the necessary time? Is there a stronger enemy within the inner wall? Or is there a greater threat outside the giant wall? The elder looked at silent Dudian. He didn't imagine that Dudian was contemplating about the issues. He thought that the boy was young so he didn't dare to speak in front of him. The elder smiled. You are an elder of the dark church from now on. I hope you will work on behalf of the monastery and deal with the issues of the Dark Church. Try to adapt as soon as possible otherwise no one will help to keep your little life. Elder stopped for a moment then laughed. But you have survived in the Thornflower prison for three years, so the general scene should be so frightening for you. Francis, take him through the formalities. Elder looked at Francis. Francis respectfully replied, yes, elders. He looked at Dudian, Mr. Dean, let's go. Dudian looked at the elders. Elders, I have never been to the inner wall. Is it all right if he shows me around? The old man replied, not a problem. Francis, take him to see around. Don't forget to delay the evening trip. Francis nodded, yes. Dudian regretted as he had less than a day for the trip. But he didn't have right to speak so he followed after Francis as they left the room. The door was closed. The old man and the woman listened to the footsteps. The woman who was sitting on the old man's lap smiled. Her fingers were playing on the chest of the old man, an interesting little fella. Old man was surprised. Do you fancy him? His body smells delicious. The woman licked her lips. The old man's eyes lit up. He is too young but he was able to achieve a physical limits of the saint within the outer wall. It's really rare occurrence. It's impossible to break through from the senior hunter level by relying on the god's blessings or magic marks. The most important point is that the God's blessings supplied by the Monster Institute to the outer wall area don't enhance the physical constitution after senior hunter level. The kid has many secrets. The woman looked at the old man. Should I make a move? He can't afford you. The old man gently smiled. Moreover, he is a deacon of the monastery. It's very hard to find candidates so. So I'm a deacon of the monastery now. Is my position lower or higher than yours? Dedian asked as he walked by Francis's side. Francis smiled, we haven't gone through the procedures and you want to control me? I just want to beat you. Dedian cracked his fingers, I guess the other saints aren't aware of these things. Is it only captains that have access to the information? The Dark King Chapter 453 Francis shrugged his shoulders, you can think whatever you want to but you have no right to beat me. I belong to another division and only obey the elders of different divisions. Although you are a deacon of the monastery but your identity and tasks are not for public knowledge. In short you hold no real power. You have to climb to the position of elder to make your dreams come true or ask an elder to get permission to command me. Dadian was startled. Do you mean that the other captains of St. Teams can expose my identity if they want to? It would be a great blow. Francis laughed. It would be very dangerous if someone exposed your identity. Don't think that you will be exempted if you try to expose my identity. Dadian threatened. Are you going to keep it secret? Francis replied, all right. Dadian changed the topic. Do I have to collude with anyone else after I went to work for the Dark Church? A proper arrangement will be made. Francis choose a different fork to walk. The first thing we have to do right now is to brand you. Brand? Dadian frowned. Both of them came to a spacious prison room. There were many tools for torture on the wall and the place was splattered with the blood. Greeting Saint. Two guards were on duty by the door. Francis nodded as he took a key from the wall and opened a heavy iron gate. He looked at Dudian, please. Dudian went inside the room. 
It's a room we use to place criminals, but it's just a cover. We brand people like you in here. Francis closed the gate. Rarely anyone comes into this room, but after they go out, they have a different identity. So you will have to lay low too. I will tell the other saints that your interrogation is over and your identity as a suspect is temporarily lifted. Dedian didn't speak as he looked at various tools on both sides of the room. Francis continued, The first thing for the members of the Dark Church is to be branded with the Medal of Darkness. Pick a pattern. Dedian was aware what Francis meant by a brand. He had used ink tattoo before to join the Dark Church. However, the one Francis was going to make wouldn't be washed away. It meant that the monastery and the holy church could easily push him out in the future. Weak involuntarily. Dedian looked at a tool and said, like this. Francis glanced at him, location. Spine. Dedian pondered for a moment and answered. He had used to paint his chest, but he was able to wash it off. He no longer had such a privilege, so he had to choose a concealed position. Some people would engrave the tattoos under their armpit or cracks of their buttocks because it would be hard to find the location of the tattoo. However, he was going to be an elder of the Dark Church. He would be talking to the Pope so generally he wouldn't go through a search. Francis nodded, all right, take off your clothes. Dedian put away the thoughts and took off his coat and jacket. The scars were still visible on his young body. Francis's pupils shrank, but he recovered. He understood why Dedian didn't feel intimidated by the tragic tortures and screams that they saw. Even he was scared and had cold sweat the time when he was promoted to a saint and saw the vulgarities. You have gone through a lot of experiences. Francis whispered. Dedian replied, it seems it's not enough. Dedian thought in his mind that if he had gone through enough, then he wouldn't be played around by the monastery today. Francis naturally wasn't aware of Duduin's thoughts. Francis handed a mirror to Dedian after half an hour. Check it. Dudian's face remained calm as he felt the pain on his back. He checked his back through the mirror. Dedian said, good job. Francis was surprised as he looked at Dedian with interest. He had branded many people and seen them crying but Dedian was tolerant, all right. You can't abandon the brand in the future. How would I dare? Good. Dedian put on his clothes and took the baggage. The sun is almost going to come out. Let's go sightseeing. All right. Francis whispered, I'm quite tired as I haven't slept for a whole night. If you want to. I dare not scrutinize as the elders have given the order. Both of them left the underground court of the monastery and returned to the square outside the abbey. All five saints were waiting in the square. They were surprised when they saw Francis and Dedian come back. One of them couldn't help but ask Captain, why did he come back? Francis smiled, the elders have interrogated him and the suspicions are temporarily brought down. I'll take him back. You guys go and rest. Oh damn. The youth continued, so boring. I can finally go back and feed my kitten. I'm leaving first. The woman saint laughed as she left. Another saint added, I will go with you. They saluted to Francis and left altogether. Francis turned towards Dudian. All right, I'll take you to see the inner wall. But don't be an idiot and offend someone. There are many figures which I can't even do nothing but bow in front. The Dark King Chapter 454 The Dark King Francis walked down the mountain pass with Dudian after warning him. This is the area of St. Paul Mountain. It is one of the bustling areas of the inner wall. The place is under the control of the monastery. Francis talked while they walked. Dedian asked, what about other areas? Francis laughed, buy a map if you want to know the areas of the inner wall. I'm not a conductor. Dedian didn't ask anything else. Both of them reached the foothill. Francis called a carriage which had flag of the monaster. He commanded the coachman, to the Eden city. City? Dedian was surprised, city of Eden? Francis laughed. It's the largest city under the jurisdiction of the St. Paul's mountain area. The cities are much bigger than the outer wall. The roads are perfect and there is an order. There are no villages or towns in the inner wall. You will get to know after you see. Dudian nodded. He didn't expect to see the similar management within the inner wall with the old era system. There was no concept of city in the outer wall. Francis leaned back and closed his eyes. Dudian looked at him. The branding is over. Are you going to give me the detoxification pill? Francis opened his eyes. I thought you didn't need it. He pulled out a plastic bag from his pocket and took out a dark red pill. Francis closed his eyes. Dedian checked him and moved his hand towards his mouth. However, he didn't take the antidote but put back into his pocket. He looked outside the carriage and enjoyed the scenery. There were lush trees where birds tweeted along the roads. There were buildings scattered around in distance. 
The air was fresh and the environment was totally different from the outer wall. The roads were made out of large stones. There was a feeling of ease as he saw the intensive life of the cities form the old era and the beautiful trees all around the place. He thought that he would be happy if he lived in such a place. The next moment the idea of ease and laziness disappeared without a trace as he recovered his thoughts. The carriage came to stop in front of a high wall after half an hour of ride. The city of Eden was written at the end of the road. There were guards by the gate. The carriage slowed down as they approached the checkpoints. The coachman took out gold coins and handed to the guards to pass through. Francis opened his eyes as the carriage slowed down. He looked at Dudian. This is the city of Eden. There is different entrance taxes to different cities. It's your first time so I'll pay for you. They passed through the walls and traveled for another ten minutes. To the inn. Francis commanded. Dudian looked at the city. There were shops on both sides. The surface of the roads were clean and tidy. The bricks were paved without a trace of gap. Ah! Dudian was shocked the next moment. He saw a woman wearing an elegant clothing and a black hat. She was holding onto a rope. The other end of the rope was tied to a man who was walking like a dog. The man was wearing a dress and his hair was combed. However, he had stretched out his tongue like a dog. He was imitating an animal. Dedian was frozen as he stared at the man as the carriage passed by. Soon he saw other nobles who were wearing elegant dresses and holding onto ropes which were chained to men or women. It seemed like they were strolling with their dogs. Francis noticed the weird expression on Dudian's face. He looked at the same direction as Dudian. Those are the slaves of the nobles. Some are servants, some are maids, and the others are slaves. But don't underestimate those dog slaves. Most of them have used blessings and they are very strong. Would you like to go to the beast slave market? The nobles would often bring their dog slaves and make them fight. It's very interesting. Dudian was startled. Slave, isn't it? Isn't this contrary to the aristocratic etiquette? Francis was surprised as he looked at Dudian in a strange manner. However, soon he recovered as he patted his head. I have totally forgotten. You are from the outer wall, ah. Slaves have no rights in the inner wall. In the outer wall they may be used to do some hard work, but they still keep their dignity because of the rules of the Holy Church. However, there are no such rules in the inner wall. Moreover, this custom has been here from their very early times. There is nothing strange with that. Duduen's face changed slightly as he understood that Francis was accustomed to the sight. He looked out of the carriage. From time to time he saw the same scene again and again. The surrounding people turned blind eye to the slaves as if they were already used to it. Is this why the nobles in the outer wall desire to live in the inner wall? He thought in his heart that the inner wall would be much more bustling place than the outer wall. The area would be much more elegant and the civilians would have very fair and easy life. Dedian thought that the system would be much better than the outer wall. However, the imagination was shattered after he saw the place. It was incredible to see how the slaves were treated. However, according to the Francis, the people in the inner wall didn't have the concept of human rights. Actually, even if there was the rights didn't have any effect on the slaves. Dedian realized that the civilians and the nobles who aspired to live in the inner wall imagined that they would move to heaven but would get to live in the hell. The carriage stopped in front of an inn. Francis looked at Dudian, I'll take you to see the place. If you like something, then you can buy. I know that you have money so I'll pay for you and then I'll send someone to get it from you in the outer wall. Dudian nodded. Francis walked along the street as Dudian followed, I'll take you to see the dog slaves fight. I hope we will be lucky to see something interesting. Dudian nodded. Francis's eyes lit up as if he was eager to see the place. He walked in big strides. Dudian checked the shops along the way. Most of them had exquisite jewelry and swords. The scabbards and the hilts of the swords were covered in diamonds. It was anything but a weapon of war. Dedian walked along the way as he checked the atmosphere. The place was much lively than the commercial district of the outer wall. There were shops selling luxury items. Once in a while he heard laughter of nobles in their conversation which made him shiver because of the topics. Francis. A sound echoed. Dadian and Francis turned towards the direction of the sound and saw a young man with a golden hair waving his hand in greeting. Francis was startled. You, why are you here today? I got my leave today so came over to play around. The blonde youth squeezed through the crowd. He noticed Dadian standing next to Francis. Is he the new servant you have bought? Good temperament. Francis laughed. Don't utter nonsense. He is Mr. Dean and he has been appointed as the deacon of the monastery in the outer wall area. I've taken him to see around. Outer wall, the blonde youth looked up and down at Dudian, then recovered his eyes. 
He said to Francis, we must go to Red Square today. There is a play and we have to see if we can get a place or two. Dedian was about to shake hands with the blonde youth, but he didn't expect the youth to turn a blind eye. There was contempt and disgust in his eyes. Apparently the youth wasn't friendly with him because of his hair color and the origin. They didn't even try to cover the discrimination. Perhaps the other side doesn't care about the idea. Francis laughed. I can't accompany you as I have to go with Mr. Dean to shop around. Dude Elisa is going to attend. You will regret it later. The blonde youth insisted. Francis hesitated for a moment then turned towards Dudian. I'll be back in a while don't go anywhere. Dudian nodded. The Dark King Chapter 455 Francis and the youth left. Dudian was carrying his backpack as he waited. He saw a crowd gather around a place across the street. The bursts of laughter echoed from there. He moved over to observe the place because of the curiosity. Kid, look where you walk. A voice echoed from behind. Dedian turned to see a blonde youth with an arrogant look. There was a graceful woman with beautiful golden hair in his arms. There were few people wearing black suits and white gloves behind them. Apparently the man was an aristocrat and belonged to an extraordinary family. Dudian's eyebrows wrinkled but he moved sideways to open the room for them. He didn't want to provoke anyone inside the inner wall for now. The youth and the beauty walked past him without taking a glance at him. Dedian came to stop behind the crowd. He used his toes to look. There was a table in the middle and few people were showing performance. It looked like an ordinary magic show. Dedian knew that magic was also one of the favorite hobbies of the aristocrats. If a real magician was disguised as a magician then he would be winning numerous. Dedian was thinking when a voice resounded. Hey! Dedian turned to see the previous blonde youth. He didn't know when and how he had appeared in front of the crowd. The blonde youth said, it's too boring. Show something different. Cut people off. Young master, we are just a small group. We don't have equipment to do such a show live right now. A middle-aged magician replied. The blonde youth didn't expect to be dismissed. He waved and one of his attendants hit the middle-aged magician in chest. The youth pulled out a stack of golden notes and threw them at the man. He said in a cold tone, I will say it once more. I want to see a show. Do you understand me? The people on the stage jumped and hurried to help the middle-aged magician. Duduen's brows wrinkled as he saw the scene. He didn't expect the blonde youth to be aggressive and overbearing. The nobles in the outer wall would love to do something like this but were restricted in the outer wall. In addition, he didn't want to be a hero and naturally stayed away and quietly observed the sight. I have given you the money. Quick! We are going to see a man cut into parts. Come on. The crowd cheered and urged the middle-aged magician and his group. The middle-aged magician's face turned ugly as he saw the excited crowd. He knew that it would be very problematic if he didn't go on with the show. We will. The middle-aged magician nodded as he looked at the blonde youth. Please be a bit patient. We will get the equipment. The blonde youth looked at him. Are you deaf? Or are you an idiot? I want to see it now. Do you want to die or do you want to be a dog slave? It would be quite nice to have a dog slave who knows magic. Don't you think so? The blonde youth looked at the woman in his arms. Mr. Mr., the middle-aged magician panicked. The woman looked at the youth and shook her head. He is so old. My sisters would pull jokes because of him. The youth nodded all right. I will look for a young one. Yes. The youth turned towards the middle-aged magician. Are you still in here? The middle-aged magician was relieved as he squeezed a smile and turned towards his assistants. Such a dangerous magic trick was prone to errors even if there were equipment. Leader, what should we do? We don't have the equipment for cutting people. What should we do? Yeah, how to solve this problem? The middle-aged magician was troubled as he climbed to the stage. He said to the assistants, I have a way. He whispered once more, do you remember the show? The leader is smart. We knew that you would come up with a solution. Leader, wouldn't it be? The middle-aged magician interrupted the last assistant. Don't be long-winded. Do you have a way? The assistant shrank back without giving a reply. Everyone, the next show will be about cutting off a man alive. The middle-aged magician stood on high platform as he loudly said. At the same time his assistants brought a huge wooden box onto the high platform. Now we will pick out one person from the crowd. It will be a random choice. The middle-aged magician said with a big smile. The crowd was stirred because of his words. He continued, rest assured that there is no danger in this performance. He raised his hand and looked at the crowd. Dedian felt bad when their eyes met. He pulled over a person from the side and moved. Whoosh! 
The man who Dedian pulled floated for a moment and stopped in the position where Dedian was moment ago. The middle-aged magician's finger was pointed at him. The man saw the middle-aged magician's hand directed at him. His face turned ugly as he shouted, Do you want to die? The middle-aged magician felt embarrassed when he saw the man to be a noble. He felt angry but found Dedian standing next to him. Little brother, why don't you come up? Dedian thought that he had escaped the problem. His face turned gloomy. You said that you will pick a random person. What are you doing now? The middle-aged magician's face turned sullen. I just chose you. Do you want to make the young master unhappy? Why don't you bless him with your performance? Dedian understood that the middle-aged magician was not prepared for the show and knew that the process was dangerous. He didn't pick anyone from his own group but had to select from the crowd. He was the only one with the black hair in the crowd. He was going for the soft persimmon. Boy, go on. Do you want us to take you there? The group of servants standing next to blonde youth rushed over. Yes, go on stage. Whose servant is he? Dedian looked at the middle-aged magician. You aren't prepared for the show. What will you do if there is a danger? The middle-aged magician didn't expect to be questioned by Dedian. We are professionals. There is nothing dangerous. We made jokes about the equipment to make the atmosphere a bit lively. We can perform even without the technology. Don't worry about anything. Dedian wanted to kill the man. What technology? If you have any technology, then make the people fly. Stop being long-winded. The man next to Dedian said in an impatient tone. The middle-aged magician looked at Dedian. Don't make people wait anymore. Dedian looked at the person next to him who set him to go onto the stage. His hair was brownish. However, there was an expensive watch on his chest. It seemed that he had a big background too. Dedian said in a cold tone, If you are so interested in the show, why don't you go? Hey, are you talking back to me? So rude. Why hasn't his master disciplined him? The angry roars echoed. Dedian narrowed his eyes. He wanted to slaughter all of them, but he had to press down the impulse as this was not the outer wall. He said in a cold tone, Whoever wants may go onto the stage. I won't. He turned away to walk. The crowd pointed at him when they saw Dedian try to leave. At the same time sounds of hoofs echoed out as a carriage with a black dragon banner on it moved. There were knights gathered around the carriage. The loud shouts resounded, Open the road. Open the way. The Dark King Chapter 456 The Dark King The Dragon Clan? Quickly escape! It is the Dragon Clan's carriage. The pedestrians on both of the street went sideways as they saw the black dragon flag on the carriage. Dragon Clan Dedian remembered the dragon girl from the last time. He quickly moved to the roadside to avoid the carriage. The middle-aged magician and his troop didn't respond so quickly. Although they saw the carriage approach the place but the crowd was too chaotic. You! The knights that rode in front of the carriage tightened the ropes of the horses in front of the crowd. Bastards! Get away! The knight used the whip to hit the people who fell onto the ground. The people who were on the ground climbed up and carefully apologized to run towards the roadside. The road was cleaned and the carriage was ready to continue the voyage but the door of the carriage was kicked open. A figure wearing a green clothing jumped out. It was a girl who looked 15 or 16 years old. She was wearing a green tank suit. Her face was lively and naughty. There was a pair of wretched eyes that looked around. Her eyes focused on the middle-aged magician. She looked over the night at the side. I want to see a magic show. The knight was perplexed. Miss, why did you come down? I want to see the magic show. The girl walked towards the middle-aged magician without answering to the knight. Knight's face was anxious as he jumped over the horse. Miss, we have to hurry. I said I want to see a magic show. If you are in hurry then go on. The girl replied in a harsh tone. The knight wryly smiled as he was aware that he couldn't overcome the little miss's order. The middle-aged magician shouted in haste. Hey, didn't you heart? Little miss wants to see a magic show. Get ready for a good show. The middle-aged magician's spine was full of cold sweat as he spoke in a tone full of fear. Greetings, little miss. What kind of magic show do you want to see? The girl touched her chin as she pondered for a moment. I have heard that the most exciting magic show that magicians can perform is cutting a person. Hurry! By the way, make sure that I don't see through your petty magic tricks. If your play is too clumsy, then your heads will fall down. She raised her hand and made a gesture of slicing the neck. She was staring at the middle-aged man to intimidate him, but the tender and beautiful face that made her look cute. A man being cut. The middle-aged magician almost choked out a mouthful of blood. He regretted that he hadn't brought the proper equipment for today. He glanced around at the previous crowd, but it had been long that everyone had scattered away. 
There were only a few blonde nobles. He hesitated for a moment but then saw Dedian behind the girl across the street. He nodded as he looked at the girl. Miss, we are lacking manpower. Is it all right that person to work with us? He directly pointed at Dedian. Dedian didn't think that the trouble can find him from so far away. There was killing intent in his eyes as he looked at the magician. He wasn't worried about the previous noble as he was going to leave tonight, and there was no way for the noble to find him. Moreover, he didn't plan to get revenge on the magician too. But the other side once again was sending him to the foot of death. Hurry up! I'm not in favor of waiting for long. The girl replied in an impatient tone. The middle-aged magician was relieved as he knew that the girl had given permission for them to use Dudian. He gestured at his assistants. Several assistants came to stop in front of Dedian. One of them said in a cold tone, Please cooperate with us. Dedian saw the expression on the assistant's eyes. He knew that the middle-aged magician dared to act so because once Dedian resisted it meant offending the little miss. He took a deep breath and suppressed his anger. He knew that it was not worth to offend such a big force because of a street magician, all right. One of the assistants continued in an angry tone, You are not away but this. Dedian raised his hand and pushed the guy from his shoulder. He stepped forward in big strides and stood in front of the middle-aged magician. Are we going to start? The middle-aged magician smiled as he said, Thanks, please come over. They stepped onto the high platform and the magician opened a wooden box. The others came over to assist the middle-aged magician in the performance. Miss, we are going to begin the show. The middle-aged magician was going to begin the ceremony. Hurry up. Don't continue with the nonsense. The girl wrinkled her little nose. The magician was embarrassed but he had been in the magic business for many years. He adapted soon and turned to wink at the assistant. He raised the sword. Today we are going to perform the show with this swords. It is a real sword. Check it. He pushed the sword and cut a wooden piece. Dedian who was inside the wooden box was listening to the middle-aged magician's act. The middle-aged man finished the opening ceremony and began with the real performance. Dadian used his thermal vision to detect the middle-aged magician's movements as he sat inside the wooden box. Although he couldn't see the sword in magician's hand but he was able to every move of the magician. That way he could easily determine the position where the sword would pierce through. Whoosh! The sword stabbed into the wooden box. Dadian was ahead of the attack. The middle-aged magician's heart was relieved when he didn't feel the sword to pierce through the flesh of Dadian. Whoosh! The second sword stabbed into the wooden box. Dedian escaped again. The third, fourth thing. In the blink of an eye, ten swords had pierced the wooden box. All of them were inserted from completely different angles. Little Miss and the knights clapped. The audience also exclaimed. They were standing far away but still watching the show. Ha! Huh. The girl was surprised as she looked at the wooden box. The middle-aged magician was relieved and quite proud as he saw the surprise expressed on the girl's face. Miss, it's time to open the box. He waved at his assistants. Assistants came to stand in front of the box. They pulled out swords one by one. All of them were surprised as there was no bloodstains of the swords. Moreover, it was just a normal wooden box. They opened the box. Duduan's body was revealed. There was no injury on his body. There were a few scratches on his clothing. He took a few steps and the backpack fell down. It was cut in the clothes and other things that he carried fell down. Dudian frowned. He turned to pick the things. Ha! Huh. The girl issued a cry. Her body was like wind as she moved from the ground to the high platform in a matter of second. She looked at Dedian. Give that to me. Dedian was surprised as he saw the girl talk to him. There was purple handkerchief in his hand. Do you want this? The suspicion in girl's heart turned into surprise as she looked at the handkerchief. She looked up and down at Dedian. She was going to say something but she changed her mind. Nope. You look very pleasing to the eye. Come with me. Dedian understood that she knew something about the purple handkerchief in his hand. The handkerchief was one of the most treasured items that he had. It was given to him by the girl who had brought him to the front of the Mysian orphanage. He had never used it since then and had kept it like a work of art. Is this the girl which gave the handkerchief to him so many years ago? The Dark King Chapter 457 Dedian remembered the little girl who took him to the Mysian orphanage in the rainy night all those years ago. She looked the same age as him and was also wearing a tang suit. She should grow to be the same age as the girl in front of him. Moreover, he had never seen anyone else wear that unique style of tang suit. Most of the nobles wore western-style suits while the girl from the dragon clan who hunted the adult splitter and the one in front of him are the ones wearing that style. Apparently, both of them are from the dragon clan. 
In addition, the one who had led him to the Mysian orphanage was from the Dragon Clan too. His eyes lit up as he thought about the situation. Do you know about this handkerchief? Dadian asked. The girl blinked few times. Come to the carriage with me, we will talk there. Dadian was in a good mood. He understood that this wasn't the right place to talk about the handkerchief's origin. I'm a bit curious, but can you help with something? What? There was interest in girl's eyes. Dadian continued. I want to take this person's life. He raised his hand and pointed to the middle-aged magician. The magician was scared as the sweat followed down his spine the moment he heard Dudian's words. The girl replied in a gently tone, It's all right. You should be able to kill him with your skill. If you want to kill him, then kill him. I'll cover for you. She raised her chest in a proud manner. Dudian sighed in relief as he saw the girl had no malicious intention toward himself. He didn't know if he would be able to find the middle-aged magician in the future so he made the request to fulfill his desire. Little Mississippi, I didn't offend you, you can't. The middle-aged magician's legs trembled as he saw the girl promise Dudian. He went forward to beg but was stopped by the knight from the dragon clan. Bastard, stay away from our lady. Yes, yes, the middle-aged magician begged as he face turned white in fear. Miss, my magic show was very successful. I didn't do any harm to him and he wants to take my life. Miss, you can't promise it to him. I'm part of Baron Jesse's household. Please forgive me because of him. The girl frowned. Who is Jesse? What is he? The middle-aged magician was going to continue to plead when Dudian took a step towards the girl. So should I go with the... Of course. What are you afraid of? It ain't a big deal. The girl didn't seem to care about the man. Dedian thought that the price of life was not expensive than a grass in the inner wall. He took the sword from the ground and stabbed it at the middle-aged magician. The sword pierced through his mouth and went out from the back of his head. There was fear in his eyes but the man didn't even know when he died. Dedian pulled out the sword and stabbed at the assistant who was standing behind the magician's corpse. It was the assistant who had spoken in a harsh tone with Dedian back in the street. The assistant was shocked as he didn't expect Dedian to attack him. His eyes widened the moment the sword pierced his chest. The breeze blew and the assistant body fell down from the platform. Two people were killed in an instant. Dedian looked at the girl, sorry, I had forgotten about the other one. It's all right. Should we go now? The girl was only concerned about the handkerchief. Dedian nodded, yes. The girl jumped down the platform. She walked towards the carriage as she hummed a song. Dedian quickly put the things into his backpack and followed after them. The knight jumped over the horse as Dudian entered the carriage. The people came to the center of the road after the carriage left. They began to whisper. Geez, I didn't expect to see the little miss of the dragon clan in here. It seems she is one of the two princesses of the dragon clan. She is so beautiful. Be careful. If they hear then your tongue will be cut off. The second princess is known as the little devil. I rely envy the kid. I don't know his origin but he was able to get a favor from the dragon clan. No one looked at two corpses which were around. They only talked about envy and lament. Where did you get the handkerchief? The girl asked as her eyes stared at Dedian. She spoke in a cold tone and there was no smile on her face. Dedian was startled. A person gave it to me. Gave you? The girl narrowed her eyes. It is an item of our dragon clan. It seems you don't know but if you lie to me you will get a miserable death. It will be much worse than those two. Dedian wrinkled his eyebrows, it was given to me by a person long time ago. I assume you should be able to check it out as the Dragon Clan should have a big intelligence network. The girl stared at him, who gave it to you? When? Where? Dedian replied, it happened a lot of years ago. Seven or eight I think. I saw the girl only once and never saw her again. I don't even know her name. Seven or eight years ago? The girl was perplexed. Do you remember that you saw a little boy in slums of the outer wall seven or eight years ago? Dudian asked. The girl thought about his words and spoke in a surprised tone. You are the little boy from the outer wall. Right. Dudian was excited. Yes, I'm that little boy from then. Do you remember me now? The girl whispered. The original so, seven or eight years ago. Outer wall. No wonder. No wonder, she stared at Dudian, thinking of it then it is really you. I didn't expect you see you in here after so many years. Dedian was happy to see her remember the boy she had met overnight. He had big impression of the girl as it was the first time he had come out from the frozen storage and the first person who he had made contact with. He thought that the girl had totally forgotten about him. He was in joy as the other side remember him. Dedian took a deep breath. Thanks for sending me to the door of the orphanage back then. 
I'm afraid I would have been dead otherwise. He knew that if he wasn't accepted as an orphan to the orphanage and sheltered by them, then the only choice was that he would be caught and used as a slave in the mines. The Dark King Chapter 458 In addition, he was aware of the chaotic order in the slums. If he was caught by the other people at the time, he wouldn't be able to survive the hard conditions. Even though he was smart but there was language barrier coupled with his frail constitution, he will be dead not long after. Therefore he had regarded the girl as his own savior as she had helped him to get into the orphanage. He was grateful towards the girl and to Jura couple. The girl was startled as she heard Dudian's word. I didn't think you will remember the things back in those times after so many years, Dudian smiled. There are things that should never be forgotten, the girl added. My name is Aisha. I belong to the hunter family called Dragon Clan. If you have any difficulties in the future, you can always find me for help. Dudian was relieved to see her smile in non-malicious way. My name is Dean. If there is anything that you need my help with please tell me. Aisha blinked. How come you are in the inner wall? As far as I know it's very difficult to pass from the outer wall to the inner wall. Dudian responded. I was taking here for a reason and will go back tonight. For a reason? Aisha was perplexed. Would you be able to come later on? Dudian shook his head. I don't know but I assume yes. There was a trace of loss expressed in Aisha's eyes. Will you not visit again? Dudian felt the reluctance in her tone. It's hard to say anything about the future. But as long as there is an opportunity then I will come back. Aisha pondered for a moment. What about joining the Dragon Clan? You can live in the inner wall. What do you think? Dudian pondered for a moment then shook his head. I have joined the monastery, I'm afraid. The monastery? Aisha was surprised. So you have been recruited by the monastery. I have heard that the Holy Church of the Outer Wall is part of the monastery. Does it mean that they have brought you here and tasked you with some secret mission? Dudian didn't think that she would be able to infer the details of the Situatino from few sentences. You are right. Aisha's interest rose. What is the task about? Is it fun? Dudian saw her eyes shine in curiosity. He immediately shook his head. It's a secret task. I can't tell you the details, I hope you will forgive me for this. Although Dudian was grateful to her, but he couldn't tell her everything at the first meeting. It wasn't distrust but a long-term habit of vigilance. Aisha looked at him. Stingy. I can give you a high position in the clan and get you a nice place in the inner wall. Do you want to join the dragon clan? As for the monastery, they will let go of you if I come forward to plead for you. Naturally, Dudian was eager to live in the inner wall and get in contact with high-level people to know the core secrets of the giant wall. However, once he was part of the dragon clan, he had to rely on the protection of the little girl in the future. He was ignorant about the situation of the dragon clan. The only thing he knew that the dragon girl from the earlier hunt had super combat strength. He assumed that they were a strong hunter family. Do you guys have strong standing within the inner wall? Dudian asked. Aisha laughed. Of course, we are one of the three devil families. Moreover, we are the strongest one. The monastery would let go of you if I come forward to help. It is an easy task. Three devil families? Dudian was surprised. We will give you the most generous resources to cultivate and nurture you if you decide to join us. You will certainly get the best because of me. In short time you will get to be an existence who will be on part with the holy level warriors of the monastery. Aisha continued. No one would dare to bully you. Dudian remembered the little girl's silhouette who took him by his arm and brought to the orphanage. He said in a deep tone. Thank you. Aisha's eyes lit up. Do you agree? Dudian shook his head. I can't agree for the time being. Why? Aisha was surprised. I don't want to live in the inner wall for the time being. You don't want to live in the inner wall? Aisha was stunned. It was first time she saw someone to deny life in inner wall. I won't force you since you don't want to live in the inner wall. But if you want to come to the inner wall then this should be enough to help you out. She handed a medal to Dudian. It was a black medal which had carving of a dragon. Dudian reached out and took it. He looked at her. Thank you. I will definitely come to find you if there is an opportunity. Aisha continued. Unfortunately, I don't have enough authority to go to Outer Wall on whim. I won't be able to call you from there. 
Damned wall. Dudian was surprised. Why can't you go to the outer wall? Aisha responded. The last time I sneaked out, we don't have permission to go the outer wall. In addition, I don't have the right to call you in, unless you are willing to become part of our clan. How did you slip out the last time? Dudian asked because of curiosity. Perhaps there was a more convenient way to sneak from the barrier wall. Aisha shrugged her shoulders. I climbed over the wall when the guards were not looking. Dudian was stunned. Over the wall? You were only a kid, the height of the wall. The Dark King. Chapter 459. Aisha said in haste, It's not that difficult to climb over the wall as long as there are no guards. Dudian was speechless. The girl was able to climb over the wall when she was around seven or eight years old. What kind of physique she had. The cultivation methods of the devil family should be incredible as a little girl could burst out with such strength. The average person couldn't be so powerful even if that person was fed with God's blessings since the time in womb. Unfortunately, you won't be able to climb, Aisha sighed in regret. After a moment she said in a pleasant sound, I have a way. Yeah. Dadiam was doubtful. Aisha continued, we can meet outside the giant wall afterwards. You were summoned by the monastery so you must have good connections in the outer wall. I see that you have extraordinary physique too. I think you should be hunter too. So if you can go outside the giant wall then we can decide on a place and meet there. Dedian reacted quickly, it's not a good idea. It's very dangerous outside the giant wall if... It's alright. Aisha put her hands under her chin as she pondered for a moment. You just need to stay in a safe location and I'll come over. So there won't be any dangers. Duduin's heart stirred when he heard her words. He spoke in a soft tone. I'm not worried about myself but you. It's very dangerous for you to cross the areas to see me. So it's better for you to choose a place and I'll come over to meet you. Aisha shook her head. I didn't take that into account before. But the passage to the outside from the inner wall have long distance to the passages to the outer wall. In the middle there will be lots of dangerous monsters. You won't be able to pass. Dedian hesitated a bit. I have special skills so I won't face an accident. Don't worry about it. Aisha flicked her finger. Don't underestimate me. I'm very strong. There is no danger to me so the matter is set. In fact, Dedian had already noticed the heat emitted from the girl's body. It was very rich. He had seen the person on top of the giant wall exude such a heat. Even the captain of the saints team Francis isn't on par with Aisha. The woman elder that he saw by the old elder was lacking in comparison to Aisha. Moreover, it seems she is too powerful as she was able to pass through the barrier wall all those years ago. He thought that Aisha was comparable to the dragon girl he had met. Unfortunately, back then he didn't have thermal vision so he couldn't observe the heat emitted from her body. So he couldn't make a reference at this point. All right, let's meet at the corner of the giant wall. Dedian said. Aisha laughed. All right, when are you going to be free? Dedian pondered for a moment. After seven days. Seven days. Aisha nodded. All right, I'll see you at night seven days later. We will meet at the west side of the wall. Time to pinky promise. She reached her hand. Dedian smiled as he reached out to pull the hook with her pinky finger. You will be going tonight, won't you? It's pretty early now so I'll take you to see around the place. It should be your first time in the inner wall, isn't it? Aisha laughed. Dedian thought of Francis and then nodded. All right, I'll trouble you then. Good. I was out to play around. We have a proverb in our clan which says the music isn't fun when listened alone. Aisha smiled. Dedian didn't expect to hear such an old eastern proverb in here. He looked at her tang suit and thought of some things. However, he didn't want to ask such a secret thing at the first meeting. Aisha saw Dedian checking her out. She blinked. Do you like my clothes? Dedian retracted his eyes, pleasant to look at. Aisha laughed but didn't say anything. At dusk, a carriage with a black dragon banner came into the city of Eden and headed towards the station outside the city. Aisha said to Dedian, There are a few more places to take you out but we don't have a time. I'll take you everywhere after you enter the inner wall. Dedian smiled, There will be a chance later. The carriage stopped at the station. Dedian didn't see Francis's carriage there. Most probably he had gone back in advance. He turned to Aisha. Thanks for the hospitality. I'll see you again. Seven days later. Aisha smiled. Aisha pulled the curtain and the carriage left. Dedian looked at the carriage until it disappeared from his sight. He returned back to the inn and bought a horse. He had gold coins with himself but didn't brought gold notes. After all the notes were issued by the banks of the outer wall, 
He didn't know if he would be able to exchange them inside the inner wall. Dedian spent a gold coin to buy a horse. The prices in the inner wall were ten times more than the outer wall. He rode the horse and left the city of Eden. Unconsciously, he returned back to the St. Paul Mountain. In matter of seconds, he saw young men and women surround him. They were wearing the uniform of saints. Dedian frowned he was about to open his mouth when he heard a voice. Slow. Dedian saw that it was Francis. He looked at Dedian. Didn't you run away? Why should I escape? Francis waved his hand and the saints surrounding Dedian put away their weapons. Francis looked at Dedian. I said to wait for me. I came back to see you disappear so I thought you took the opportunity to slip away. I was going to issue an arrest order for you. Fortunately, you came back on time otherwise. Dedian was speechless. You should be aware of my identity. Escape means death. This is the result of disobedience. Francis shrugged his shoulders. I have to do my job and report. It's the responsibility of Top Brass to deal with you. Dedian saw that there was no point in arguing with Francis. Can we go back now? Of course. Francis whispered a few words to the saint beside him and patted the man's shoulder. He looked at Dedian. Let's go. Dedian heard Francis tell the man to go back and remove the arrest warrant. He felt angry as he followed after Francis. The Dark King Chapter 460 Snow lions went towards the barrier wall along the official road through the wilderness. Everything has been handled within the outer wall. We will just get you appointed now. Francis looked at Dedian. I'll give you a mask to cover your face if you don't want to expose your current identity. Dedian was silent as he looked to the path within the wilderness. He knew that there was no chance to enter the inner wall until his identity was exposed. In that case, he could be abandoned as a pawn too. The crowd reached the front of the wall after few hours of ride. They met monsters along the way which were beheaded by Francis. Their corpses were abandoned on the roadside. Dedian put on the mask given by Francis. Francis came forward towards the gate. There were two guards at the moment. One of them pulled the valve and opened the gates. Francis ordered the other saints to stay while he led Dedian through the gate. It was late and the time was about 10 o'clock in the evening. The curfew time applied to the commercial district too. Francis went through the suburbs as Dedian followed after him. Dedian breathed the air and felt his whole body relax. About an hour later they reached a small town at the outskirts of the commercial district. The place was extremely dark. It was a luxury for most of the inhabitants to burn lamps over the night. Francis put the snow lion beside a tree outside the town. Let's go. Dedian also tied the snow lion and followed after him into the town. The residents of the town had long slept. The only thing they heard was the whining of the wind. Once in a while blue leaves flew by them. Francis looked around as they entered the town. He seemed to be looking for something. After moments his eyes locked in a remote house. The design of the house was simple and crude. It didn't stand out. However, Dedian noted that the Francis's eyes were locked onto the fishes that were hung to dry in front of the house. He checked it too. They were rare blackwater fish. There are many dark spots on blackwater fish's body. They feed on small fishes and it's very difficult to capture them. He looked at the house. Because of the thermal vision, he was able to identify four figures within the house. Two of them were asleep while the other two were in the basement. Francis came to stop in front of the house with the blackwater fish and knocked the door. Two people who were sleeping raised their heads at the same time. The ones in the basement also look up. A figure came to stand behind the door. He lit up a faint light and unlocked the door. A gap was revealed and old man looked at Francis. Who are you? Francis whispered, the darkness is eternal. The old man's pupils shrank as he opened the door. He looked at Francis then saw Dedian behind him who was wearing a mask. He said in a low tone, come in. Francis was the first to step in and Dedian followed after him. The old man and the other two checked the place to see if someone was looking at the house. The old man gently closed and locked the door after he couldn't detect anything. An old woman came out from the bedroom and said in a respectful tone, Greetings, Holiness. Francis nodded, Where's Carrie? The old man who shut the door said, Holy One, please come with me. He led them to the basement as he ignited the oil lamp in the basement's wall. The basement was very spacious. There were two figures in there, an old man and a young person. Francis smiled when he saw the old man, Elder Carrie. The old man checked Francis's dress, the medal. Francis handed out his saint medal. The old man checked the medal and nodded. He handed it back and looked at Dudian. It seems the one who will be replacing the elder is young. Francis laughed. There is no need to worry. Elder Carrie, please finish as soon as possible as I will be taking you back tonight. 
Carrie nodded, everything is prepared. The new elder has to report his code name. This is Hawkeye, my assistant. He will help you understand your duties. The elder pointed to the youth next to him. Dedian saw that the youth wasn't wearing a mask. He had golden hair and looked handsome. However, there was some kind of evilness in his eyes. Hello, Dedian said as he adjusted his voice. It was easy for him to control his voice. Hawkeye greets the elder. Youth smiled. Francis said, all right, I'll be waiting for you in here. You must be back before four o'clock. Carrie nodded and took out a mask from the robe. I'll take you to your future office in the headquarters. Dodian nodded. Carrie, Dedian, and the Hawkeye went upstairs to leave. The old man opened the door and Trio disappeared in the darkness of the night. The old man closed the door as he smiled. The Dark King Chapter 461 They walked out of the town and came to stop in front of a carriage. It had the flag of Sal family stuck on top of it. The Sal family was an average-level noble family under the command of Scott Consortium. Their main business interests were in property sector of the residential district. Dedian didn't expect the Dark Church have such deep connections. Hawkeye acted as coachman. I deliberately used the carriage from the Sal family for our meeting. Carrie smiled, they have deep connections with our region and you will engage with them a lot in the future. Dedian was aware that there were lots of nobles who had deep ties with the Dark Church but he didn't expect such an in-depth relationship. He whispered, was the former house a temporary stronghold? It was our secret liaison office. Those two old men he saw were the top brass intelligence officers of the Dark Church. They have been responsible for gathering intelligence for decades. Dedian glanced at the man, were you dispatched from the inner wall? Carrie faintly smiled as it seemed that he was aware of what Dedian wanted to ask. I'm about to return so there is no harm to telling it you right now. I was commissioned by the higher-ups. They have deemed my job as a success and now want to bring me back to the inner wall as an elder of the supervision department. According to your voice, you are young. I hope you can hold on for good and become my student in the future. Dedian nodded. I will work hard. Don't trust anyone in the Dark Church except Hawkeye and don't reveal your identity to anyone. The people are too sinister in this organization. I hope that you will succeed. Dedian was silent. He wasn't going to trust even the Hawkeye. The carriage passed through the city and came to stop in front of a remote neighborhood. Let's go. Carrie got off the carriage. They came to a luxurious manor. The Hawkeye handed out a medal to the guards at the door. They respectfully saluted the trio and let them inside. A woman wearing a black suit greeted them inside the manor. She waved at guards, gesturing them to leave. She looked at Carrie. Greetings, Elder. Carrie nodded. Little Crow, this is the new Elder which I mentioned before. The woman wearing the black suit immediately saluted Dadian. Greetings, new Elder. Dadian slightly nodded as he remembered her appearance, voice, and smell. The little crowd turned to lead them. They passed through a dark passage in the basement. It led to a place that was about 10 meters under the basement. There was a spacious square that they reached. There was sounds of melodious music floating in the place. There were many members of the dark church gathered in the square. Most of them were wearing masks. Only the few who were the staff of the dark church didn't wear masks. The reason was that they were never going to live in the outside world. Carrie's arrival caused burst of uproar in the square. The crowd whispered as they saluted Carrie. Carrie smiled. Ladies and gentlemen, I am about to retire. This is the new elder of the Ninth Region. Please warmly welcome him. Many had heard about the new appointment in advance. They looked at Dedian with fear in their eyes. Welcome, new elder. Welcome. Dedian nodded slightly as he listened to applause and cheers. Carrie waved his hand, gesturing everyone to recede. He led Dedian to a towering hall behind the square. There were two black angel sculptures by the door. Carrie was the first to enter the hall. Dedian followed after him. Everyone was bowing their heads until Carrie and Dedian went into the place. It's the headquarters of the Ninth Region. It's my office. Carrie came to the second floor of the castle. The wallpapers of the luxurious place was colored in scarlet red. It looked like the place was smeared in blood. It gave a gloomy and hideous vibe. Hawkeye stepped forward and opened a door which led to a spacious room. Carrie joined the room. This is the office. There is file on the desk regarding the things in the recent time. I have finished almost everything. The rest will be up to you. However, you shouldn't be worried as Hawkeye will help you to complete everything. Dedian nodded as he looked around. His vision range was wide so he actually didn't need to look around to see everything. Carrie saw that Dedian was concentrated on him so he continued. Usually as elders we do nothing. 
We just solve some necessary trouble and disobedient people. The rest of the time we are free to do whatever we want. This is called animal glue mask, which is prepared for you. By kneading it, you can change the appearance of the face. You won't need any masks in the future, but can rely on this one. He took out a fine box from the drawer and handed it out to Dadian. Dadian was startled as he didn't expect there would be something like this. He looked at Carrie. He was startled as he understood why Carrie didn't wear any masks. He was using the animal glue mask, too. This mask is only for the elders. You have to make an application and submit documents in case you lose it. The application process is very troublesome, so don't give it to others or lose it. It's not sold outside and only given to the insiders of the dark church. Carrie added. Dadian asked, what did you mean by the elder of the ninth region? Carrie gentle smiled. You will get to know about it in future. Since you have asked, then I'll give you an introduction. The dark church is divided into 12 regions within the outer wall. There are 12 elders in charge of each region. Hawkeye will give you details about the scope and forces of the ninth region, so I won't elaborate on it. Is there any conflict between the regions? Carrie looked at Duduen's eyes. His heart turned slightly cold, but he smiled. It's inevitable. The small conflicts should be solved by the people on the same level. However, you need to intervene to the big conflicts. If there is a problem between the regions in mass, then the Dark Church will decide the problem by voting. That's why you need to have good relationship with the elders of the other regions. There are a total of three factions at the moment. I belong to the faction of Night King. You will inherit the Ninth Region, so you may choose to stay in the Night Faction, choose another faction, or don't join any at all. My advice is to continue to follow the Night King. Night King! Dedian narrowed his eyes. Yes, that's the code name of the elders who is in charge of the third region. The third region is the biggest and most influential within the twelve regions as they have the most number of alchemists and potion masters under their commands. Moreover, they have a great potion master. The man can speak with Chai of Scott Consortium and the leader of Washing Consortium without a care. He is unfathomable. Carrie continued, the relationships you have are shallow at this point. So I advise you to make a good connection with the Night King. Our ninth region isn't a strong region and there are a handful of five-star alchemists under our command. You will inevitably suffer big if you get into intense conflict with other regions. Do you understand me? The Dark King Chapter 462 The Dark King Dedian narrowed his eyes. If Rostov family of the Scott Consortium has connections to the Dark Church, then there should be forces from the Dark Church behind the Melon Consortium. Dudian's eyes lit up. Does it mean that the poisoning of the soup and the assassination attempt at the canyon were related to the forces of the Dark Church behind the Melon Consortium? There was a murderous feeling bursting out in his heart. Elder, the Night King, and Scott Consortium have deep relationship. So do other elders of the regions have contact with the other big consortia? Dedian looked at Carrie. Carrie nodded. Basically, there is a contact. But it's not specifically clear who is sided with whom. I only heard rumors about the contacts. However, I'm sure that the elders of the 12th and 7th region are competing for the support of the new consortium. You may wish to try too. If you can get support from the new consortia, then the 9th region won't be so weak. Do you mean the New World Consortium? Yeah, it's the one which took the place of Melon after its destruction. Carrie continued, The New World Consortium is backed by a master from the temple called Dean. They were able to swallow all the industries that Melon Consortium occupied in the past. Soon they will get into growth period. It won't take long before they replace the Melon's previous position and compare to the other big consortia. Although the master backing them up was arrested by the inner wall, but there is a chance that they would come out in the future. Dedian asked, I've heard that too. Elder, why do you think the inner wall arrested him? I have heard that the monastery ordered the saints to arrest him. They charged him by saying that he had colluded with the dark church. It's a very naive assumption, thou. Or maybe he wanted to cover the relationship with the Dark Church so they didn't use the forces of the Dark Church to hurt Melon when they were dealing with them. Dedian pretended to be surprised. Why would the monastery arrest him if there is not much of an evidence? Carrie slowly said, I'm not sure of the specific details, but there are lots of motives that the monaster should have. You should be aware that Master Dean invented two legendary items and a new steam concept within a year. It not just impacted the nine factions of the temple, but the way alchemists and potion masters were thinking. The new concept had a strong impact on everyone. If he was given an extra few years of time, then you would never know where he would end up with. Because of such a potential danger, the inner wall wasn't going to let him continue his growth. So they had to either kill him or win him over. 
It would be a disaster if the other forces tried to draw him so the monastery came up with a casual charge and took him into the inner wall. Dedian pretended to ponder, why didn't they just call him back into the inner wall? Carrie smiled, actually it is very simple. If they summoned him into the inner wall then the attention of the other forces would be on the master and they would be able to get in contact with him. However by taking him into the inner wall under the assumption of charges they have a justifiable reason to refuse him contact the others. So it is. Dadian nodded. I may be able to meet him when I retire back to the inner wall. If he was recruited by the monastery then he should have a high status now. Carrie said in an authentic tone. Dudian's eyes lit up. Elder, do you originate from the inner wall? Carrie was surprised. Why do you ask? It seems to me that you are familiar with the inner wall. I am just cooked, it's a damn freaking phrase. Carrie laughed. The monastery is the power behind the holy church. Every elder of the dark church is aware of this. Moreover, if I was from the inner wall, why would I come to the outer wall? Dadian was startled. So, it's going to be your first time in the inner wall? Yes. The Holy One will take me to be part of the Dark Parliament in the Inner Wall. Carrie laughed. Dark Parliament? Yes. It's the force in the Inner Wall which backs the Dark Church. It has a reconcilable relationship with the Monastery. The relationship between the Dark Parliament and the Dark Church is the same with the Holy Church and the Monastery. Carrie smiled. There was a complex feeling in Duden's heart. If he didn't visit the inner wall earlier on and didn't see the elders of the punishment division in St. Paul's Abbey then he would believe Elder Carey. Dedian understood that Carey wasn't from the inner wall but ascended up the positions within the dark church. So the monastery had come with a fabricated solution to make them believe the existence of dark parliament. He didn't know whether Carey was not giving him the right information on purpose or the monastery was going to use Carey in another place. He didn't continue to ponder about the issue. There were way too many possibilities. Moreover, Carrie could be misleading him on purpose too. You have Hawkeye in here. He is my trusted confidant. Carrie patted Dudian's shoulder. I'm giving the ninth region to you. If there is an opportunity in the future to come back, I hope to see much more powerful ninth region. Dudian nodded as he whispered in his heart. I'm afraid you won't have a chance. Elder, how do I deal with the situation if other elders collude with the Holy Church to frame us? Dudian asked. Carrie shook his head, that's way too risky. Everyone will boycott the elder or alchemist who colludes with the holy church. No one would dare to violate such a rule. Don't do such a thing. I know. Dedian narrowed his eyes. Since the jailbreak he hasn't followed any rules. Carrie nodded, I'll go if there is nothing else for me to help you out with. Dedian bid him farewell. Hawkeye sent him off. I'll use the animal glue mask so go out for a moment. Dedian commanded. Hawkeye exited the room. Dadian opened the box and saw an exquisite and think mask. It was as transparent as water and didn't emit any smell. He called Hawkeye. Inform me about the situation in the ninth region. Dadian sat by the desk. Hawkeye looked at him. Sire, you are not serving as the elder. So we can't use your previous code name because your origin can be detected. I hope you can give me a code name that I can register for your future use. Dadian pondered for a moment. Nighthawk. Let's go with it. Nighthawk? Hawkeye was startled. What? It's a coincidence, but there is a four-star alchemist in the ninth region with this code name. Hawkeye continued. Elder, we can only change the code names of members below two stars. Dadian wrinkled his eyebrows. Then I shall be called the devil. The devil? Hawkeye reacted. I'll check it and see if there is anyone who uses this nickname. All right. Dadian nodded. Before that report the situation. Hawkeye looked at him. The territory of the Ninth Region goes from the West Street to Pushi Street of the Commercial District. Our staff is concentrated in the Residential District as the rule of Holy Church is loose there. We can facilitate our actions much easier. The headquarters of the other elders also concentrate in the Residential District. However, our five-star alchemists and potion masters mostly are active in the Commercial District. We have four five-star alchemists and two great potion master and one diviner. Hawkeye made an introduction then took a file from the bookcase and handed it to Dedian. There were everything in details in the file. The Dark King Chapter 463 Dedian checked the information that Hawkeye handed to him. Hawkeye, do you have animal glue mask? Dedian casually asked. Hawkeye replied, Elder is joking. The animal glue mask is too rare and I'm not qualified to use it. I show my real face because I was born in an alchemist family. I was destined to chose this path since burst. You were born in the alchemist family? 
Dadiam was surprised. No wonder the previous elder dared to trust him. It was because of his background. Which family do you belong to? Randy family. Hawkeye respectfully answered. The Randy family. Aren't you guys which made the human glue mask 80 years ago? Dadian asked. The time when he heard about the Inferno family Dadian researched about the other big families of the Dark Church. The people preferred to call them behind their backs as the human skin family. Hawkeye responded, it was my great-grandfather who created the human skin bonding method. Dedian didn't think that the Hawkeye would have such an extraordinary origin. I heard that the technique can help to bind the skin of others to the person. You can change your face and smell of the body, Dedian said. Hawkeye smiled, Elder, it's been many years that my family doesn't dare to study this technique. It's a taboo method so I don't know much about it. Dedian no longer asked for information after he saw Hawkeye was reluctant to answer him. Three primary dark knights, six intermediate level. Dedian was surprised when he saw a piece of information. The senior level dark knights were equal to senior hunters. He had a total of nine senior hunters under his command. It was four times more than what Melon Consortium had. Of course, it doesn't include the forces that Melon Consortium secretly nurtured. Which regions are stronger than ours? Dedian asked. Hawkeye replied, only 6th, 8th, and 11th region are weaker than us. All right. Dadian secretly speculated about the strength of the regions. They had nine senior hunters, then the other regions had more than them. If he made an estimate, then the Dark Church had around hundreds of senior hunter-level knights. It meant that they had a lot of power. The strength of the monastery is unpredictable if I count the saints. However, the devil families such as the Dragon Clan have terrifying forces. The monastery should have hidden strength too. I have to rely on my own strength if I want to be the master of the giant wall. Duduin's eyes lit up as he looked at the information in his hands. The deification had an infinite potential. He had to enhance his strength as soon as possible. The sounds of pages flipping echoed in the huge office. Another two hours passed as Dudian checked the information. Elder, messengers from the third region have come over to meet you. Hawkeye reported. Dudian frowned as he was checking the information. He pondered for a little and said, Let them in. Yes. Hawkeye left the room. Dedian muttered as he cracked his fingers, quite anxious. Hawkeye returned to the office with two people after few moments. One of them was a middle-aged man who was wearing a gray cloak. The other was a youth who seemed to be a knight. Dedian checked the knight. The youth was comparable to Gwyneth in strength. Greetings, elder. How should I address you? The middle-aged man said in a respectful tone. Hawkeye quickly said before Dedian opened his mouth to reply, The code name of our new elder is Devil. There was a weird expression on the middle-aged man's face which disappeared without a trace after a second. He smiled, Elder Devil, our master knight king, has heard that you took the office so sent you a small gift. I hope it would be to your liking. He unlocked a package. There was a square box cast with gold. Hawkeye quickly took the box. It was to prevent anything toxic infecting Dedian. Dedian had to be careful as the dark church was the lawless place. Hawkeye's eyes lit up as he opened the box. There was a vial in a green porcelain bottle. The bottle was very thin and looked almost transparent. You could vaguely see the light red liquid flowing within the bottle. The middle-aged man continued, Elder, this is the gift of my master, Night King. It's the spring water made from the dragon earthworm. It has incredible effects in regeneration of limbs. As long as person has a breath left, then he could be saved. It's not excessive to call it a second chance in life. Dadiam was shocked. He had heard about it in the temple. It was one of the most valuable items in the temple. The dragon worm was an extremely rare monster that lived outside the giant wall. A young dragon worm was about level 20. A dragon worm in maturing period reached level 35 to 40. Mature dragon worm was a terrifying existence comparable to adult splitter. The dragon worm didn't have magic marks but it was in no way inferior to other famous monsters. Night King can get the things which the temple doesn't even sell. Dedian was shocked. He recovered the next moment. Dedian was aware of the intention of the other party. There were few message underlying in this gift. The first one was that the Night King was highlighting the huge intelligence network of his region. Second one was the show of strength. Dedian had let to have a firm foothold in the ninth region so the Night King was pressuring him. Dedian put back the vial into the box. Relay my thanks to Night King for the gift. The middle-aged man's smile turned wide. I'll retire then. Dedian nodded. Hawkeye, see off the visitors. Hawkeye looked at the golden box in Duduen's hands in envy. 
He recovered his eyes as he sent away the middle-aged man and the young knight. Dedian opened the box and took the vial after the trio left. He looked at the small bottle, then narrowed his eyes. It's a pity to send such a valuable thing to me. Dujin's lips curled up as he put away the vial. He looked at the information in his hand. He had to master everything about the ninth region in short time. The third region. Elder Knight King, he received your gift. The middle-aged man knelt on the ground. There was a throne above the main hall. A man wearing a black robe and a black hat was sitting on the iron cold throne. Knight King looked at the middle-aged man. Did you just say that the new elder's code name is Devil? Yes, Knight King. Hmm. The Dark King. Chapter 464. The middle-aged man wearing the gray cloak was startled as he looked at the stalwart figure shrouded in darkness that sat on the throne. Night King, although the spring was expensive, but it shouldn't be too much to get him under our wings. Isn't it? The Holy Church has branded us as minions of the devil. The new elder has chosen the code name Devil. Such an ambition. Do you think he would be willing to work under anyone? His foundation is too thin as he has just taken over the position of elder. He didn't have the ability to refuse at this point, but in the future he will rebel. The middle-aged man's face slightly changed. Night King, if it's so then, should we cut off his wings before they are opened wide? He could be only a commander of the Ninth Region in the future. It's impossible to do that, but we can't give the opportunity for the Ninth Region to grow. Otherwise, the checks and balances of the Three Kings will be in dismay and caught in chaos. Yes. Dawn of the next day. Dedian was still in the office as he read the information about the Ninth Region. He had a general understanding of Ninth Region's situation after a night of reading. The Ninth Region was in lower mid-level within the Twelve Regions. The number of followers, wealth, and forces were quite far from the other regions. Especially the Night King of the Third Region had massive powers. Unexpectedly, the gap between the regions is too big. I don't know if the monastery appointed the Night King or he is someone who has increased his power from the beginning. Dedian pondered, the identity of the other party doesn't matter. According to the words of Punishment Division's Elder, once the identity is exposed, then you either get back to the inner wall or get an extreme punishment. I shouldn't care about his identity. He is not a friend but an enemy. Elder, did you call me? Hawkeye joined the room. Dadia nodded. Call all five-star alchemists, great potion master, great diviner, and the commander of the Dark Knights. I'll have a meeting. Meeting? Hawkeye nodded. I'll notify everyone. Dedian continued to read information after Hawkeye left. These information were the collected data by the previous elders about the other eleven regions. There are three kings in the twelve regions. The Night King of the Third Region, the Sword King of the First Region, and Underworld King of the Fifth Region. The other elders are attached to these three men. In addition, the Second Region, the Tenth Region, and the Twelfth Region are not affiliated with any of these factions. There seems to be four factions in total. However, those unaffiliated ones should help each other, but only to a certain degree. Duduen's eyes lit up as he went through the information. After a long time, Hawkeye joined the room and reported, Elder, Stuart, and Karina, two five-star alchemists have come and are waiting for you in the chamber. Dedian frowned as he looked at the hourglass. What about others? Hawkeye bowed. They are on the way. Are they usually so slow? Dodian frowned. Hawkeye bowed. Elder, they are far away from here. Some of them have matters in their hands so it is inevitable slow for them to reach the HQ. Dadian looked at him. How long is the slowest time for all of them to reach? There was tension in Hawkeye's eyes. The slowest was when the others had reached here in two and a half hours. It's been an hour now so we will wait for another 1.5 hours. Dadian waved his hand. Tell them to wait. All right. Hawkeye responded in hesitation. 1.5 hours passed. Hawkeye knocked the door. Come in. Hawkeye pushed the door and went into the room. He saw Dedian sitting by the desk and concentrating on the information in front of him. He bowed his head. Elder, the time is up. Dedian looked up at Hawkeye. Is everyone in here? Hawkeye hesitated a bit. Elder, seven people aren't attending. Seven. Dedian wrinkled his eyebrows. The total number of people to attend the meeting supposed to be sixteen. At the moment nearly half of them weren't in the HQ. All right. Dedian got up from his desk. Write down the names of the people who haven't come and wait for my instructions. Hawkeye looked at Dedian as if he sensed what Dedian wanted to do. Elder, you just took over the region. If they move to reinforce other regions, then our ninth region will be greatly impacted. I hope you won't act on impulse. Dedian stopped when he heard Hawkeye's words. He said in an indifferent tone, Don't forget it. In my house everyone follows my rules. 
Dedian walked in big strides as he went out of the room. Hawkeye caught up with him. He secretly looked at Du Duan's eyes which weren't covered by the mask. He saw that there was no anger in them but calmness. They reached the spacious room on the second floor. Dedian saw eleven figures sitting in the room. Five of them exuded senior hunter-level heat from their bodies. The remaining six were bleak but slightly higher than average civilians. But those six were weird. The head was unevenly distributed in their bodies. For example, there was one who had both of his arms exuding a great heat while the other had his chest exuding great heat. Elder, please. Hawkeye showed the way. The room was a very luxurious conference hall. It was decorated with resplendent tables and chairs which were made from expensive materials. The laughter and chatter within the room stopped when Dedian entered it. All the eyes were focused on Duduen's body. Some of them frowned as they watched Dedian. Dedian was intense because of their gazes. He was aware that the people sitting in the room weren't angels but people who are identified as devils in the current era. However, he was not a young child that he was years ago. He was master of the temple and had been in contact with other high-status people and knew how to calmly deal with these occasions. He sat by the table. I'm the new elder of the Ninth Region. My code name is Devil. I have called you over to casually talk about few things. Devil? All of them were stunned as they heard the overbearing nickname. An enchanting woman sitting in a nearby chair said, Devil? Elder, in addition to three kings within the dark church, no one dares to use word king, let alone devil. We would come under harsh suppression if the other three kings misunderstood your code name. Yes. Elder, you are heavily provoking them. Change the code name. Two more people joined her. Dedian narrowed his eyes as he quietly waited for them to finish. He saw that no one else was going to speak so he said, Today is the first day that we meet and you want me to change my code name. Is this how you welcome me? The enchanting woman said, Elder, you misunderstood us. We have no other meaning behind our proposition. It's just your name is too overbearing and our ninth region is only at moderate level. The consequences will be unimaginable if you cause the unhappiness of the kings. Dedian stared at her. He roughly judged that the woman was a great potion master. He smiled, unimaginable like what? The woman's face turned ugly, elder, I just kind of. I know. Dedian interrupted her. The smile on his face disappeared as he coldly glanced at everyone. The main reason that I called you over was to talk about the future development and position of the Ninth Region. I only have one goal and that is to be the strongest. The hall turned silent after his words echoed. Everyone looked at him in astonishment. The strongest, a middle-aged man who was frozen for a long time said as he smiled, Elder, you just took the office so you may not have good understanding of the situation. The Ninth Region. I know. Dadian interrupted him. I know the situation of Ninth Region. I have checked the intelligence on Third Kings. I am also aware of our current ability. We can compete with Three Kings. However, we can develop and catch up. You have been watching Three Kings plunder and swallow the resources. Don't you dare to do anything. Everyone looked at each other. They knew that Dadian had done his homework after he said the last sentence. We want to but catching up with Three Kings is very difficult. Even if they stagnate at the same place we will need more than 10 years to catch up with them. An old man said in a helpless tone. Well, the enchanting woman nodded. Elder, what is the plan? It's not wonderful if you only talk about it. It will only cause the anger of three kings which is not something that our ninth region can afford. Dedian lightly said, the plan is very simple. We will enhance the training curriculum of the academy, cultivate new five-star alchemists and great potion masters while we train dark knights on the side. The woman was stunned however she reacted after a while. Elder, are you joking? Dedian replied in a serious tone, Do I sound like that? The woman was dumbfounded, You are right about the plan. But it's very difficult to nurture a five-star alchemist, great potion master, or a great diviner. Even if we are lucky to find talented students, we will need seven to eight years to achieve success. To nurture a new five-star alchemist, we will need at least ten years of time. It's not that difficult. Dedian said in an indifferent manner, I have my own methods about that. In the future when I give you tasks I hope you will take them seriously. If any tasks fails because of the personal reasons then you won't imagine what the consequences will be. HMPF. A loud sound echoed. A middle-aged man wearing a black cloak who sat at the end of the conference table rugged his face which was full of ridicule. He coldly looked at Dadian, ignorant. It's ridiculous to see someone like you being appointed as an elder. What kind of a profession do you think a five-star alchemist or a great potion master is? Do you think that everyone can become a dark knight as long as the God's blessing is used? 
Ignorant. Du Duan's eyes narrowed as he looked at him in silence. What? Aren't you convinced? The middle-aged man's eyes were full of arrogance as he looked at Dedian without the slightest fear. Dedian knew that the man was the commander of the Dark Knights. They had high status within the organization. Even the elders need to be polite towards them. They could defect to other regions any time. Although it would cause impact on their fame and reputation, but there was room for the free action. Moreover, they had strength and influence as well as the commanded the teams of Dark Knights. It would be very difficult to arrest them even if the elder made the order. Anything else? Dadian said. The middle-aged man continued, Your feet aren't firm, but you already dare to challenge the three kings. Nothing but rhetoric. If I had known that it will be so, then I would have slept at home. Dadian looked at him in silence. The middle-aged man's face looked good as he saw Dadian didn't speak. Don't you have anything to say? I'll begin since you have finished. Dadian slowly said, You just argued that the cultivation of alchemists in Dark Nights is very difficult. Indeed, for you it is difficult. Otherwise the Ninth Region wouldn't be in the position that it is for so many years. From today the Ninth Region is under my control. You only need to the tasks that are given to you. In six months the Ninth Region will be in top five regions and I'll become the new king. You can choose not to believe it but I don't care. I will say it once. After the task is given if it's not completed because of personal reasons or collusion with the other regions then don't expect a light punishment. Everyone's face changed. Neither the woman or the middle-aged man thought that Dedian would speak in such a harsh tone. The middle-aged man frowned as there was dissatisfaction in his heart. But he held back as he saw Dudian's assured look. Half a year was not much of a time. If the new elder couldn't realize such big words, then he would lose all his prestige. The middle-aged man believed that Dudian knew about it. No matter what the character of the elder was, at least they had a brain to think. Elders, do you have any plans? Old man asked in curious tone. Dedian said, naturally. We will believe you since you have come up with such a big goal. The enchant woman glanced at the audience. Dedian looked at Hawkeye. Did you write the names of the people into the list? Yes. Hawkeye handed out the list. Dedian didn't pick up the list. I don't need it. Cancel their positions. The Dark King. Chapter 465. The Dark King. Hawkeye was stunned. Cancel their posts? The member in the conference hall were shocked as they looked at Dudian. Dudian wrinkled his eyebrows, did not hear it? Hawkeye understood that he hadn't misheard. He said in hurry, Elder, they are the members of the council. Canceling the position of six council members at once, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Dudian indifferently continued, You have misunderstood me. I said to cancel their positions. It includes the titles they held regardless whether they were five-star alchemist, great potion master, or a dark knight. All of that should be cancelled. If they want to get their positions back, then they have to reapply from scratch. The crowd was stunned. The previous middle-aged man was the first to react. He came over and hit the table with his palm as he said in an angry tone, Are you kidding? Do you want to cancel their posts and identities because they couldn't attend? Do you even know what you are doing? Do you want to destroy the Ninth Region? Dedian narrowed his eyes as he looked at the man. First, adjust the volume of your voice when you talk to him. You don't know my rules, so I will forgive you for this. The second, Elder Carey must have notified about his retirement to everyone. They haven't come over to greet their new elder. In addition, if they had temporary tasks, then they should have sent people to apologize in advance. None of them acted so. The middle-aged man continued in an angry tone. I don't care. You can't cancel their positions even if they didn't come. You are forcing them to betray the Ninth Region, and you are self-destructing. Dedian shook his head and raised his hand, come over. The middle-aged man rushed at Dedian and said in an angry tone, What do you want? Look at this. Dedian raised his right and clenched his fingers into a fist. The middle-aged man's eyes fell onto his right fist. He was about to speak when he instinctively raised his hand to block the punch. However, he was slow. Bang! The pain burst out from his abdomen and his body bowed like a shrimp. His feet gently went up the ground as he couldn't help but choke blood out of his mouth. His body slowly fell down like a snow. The violent pain spread all over his body. It was like all the bones in his body were cracked. It was hard for him to stand. Dedian pulled out a white handkerchief and gently wiped the invisible filth on his right hand. Then he threw the handkerchief on the middle-aged man's face. Dedian indifferently said, Don't think that you could be unscrupulous because you are the commander of the Dark Knights. Carrie needed you for protection, but I don't. This is the first time, but the second one won't end up with just a simple pain dot. The hall was silent. 
The eyes of council members almost protruded out as they watched the scene in shock. The middle-aged man's palm tightly pressed onto the desktop to support his body. He clenched his teeth to restrain screaming but his body was covered in sweat. He adapted to the pain and reluctantly looked at Dedian. There was fear and anger in his eyes. Perhaps he would be dead if Dedian had a dagger. They didn't join the meetings and I assumed their purpose was to test the new elder who took the office. Unfortunately, I don't like arrogant people. In my house everyone follows my rules. I kick out the one who doesn't comply with those rules. The attendees barely maintained their calmness but there was trace of alarm in their eyes. Obviously no one thought that the newly appointed elder would be so strong. The strength had scared everyone. However, there were few who thought that the middle-aged man cooperated with Dedian to stage this play. Anyone who betrays me while I'm in charge of the Ninth Region will face death. I'll use all the resources of the Ninth Region to hunt them down. Dedian coldly looked at the crowd. After finishing the talk, he turned away and left the hall. Hawkeye was stunned but recovered and followed after Dedian. The tight and cold atmosphere lingering in the hall relaxed after Dujin's departure. Everyone felt that the newly appointed elder was much more oppressive than the previous carry. Tom, are you all right? The enchanting woman asked. The middle-aged man took deep breaths. The abdominal pain gradually subsidized and he was able to tolerate it. I'm all right. At the same time, he looked at Dudian who went out. There was fear in his eyes. He knew that no matter how much power was used, such a strong pain wouldn't be caused unless a special meridian was hit. It alone was proof that the elder was much powerful than him. However, there were less than people who numbered and less than fingers of two hands in the entire outer wall who could beat him. I didn't expect the new elder to be so strong. An old man whose face was full of beard said. There was diagonal scars on his face which made him look more hideous. He deliberately used power to dead air us. I think he is comparable to high-level warriors of the Holy Church. It's really strange that we haven't heard about such a monster that lurked in the dark church. Another old man frowned. The enchanting woman whispered. Every elder has amazing background and strength. I think our new elder is not simple either. He has chosen the self-styled devil, codename not to show off but to deliberately provoke three kings. Yes, perhaps the ninth region can really be one of the top five regions under his leadership. We can produce the philosopher's stone if the resources are sufficient. Don't be so happy. The strength is the most worthless power in the dark church. Hawkeye said as he saw Dedian sit by his desk, elder, those six positions. There are two five-star alchemists, two senior knights, an intermediate dark knight, a great potion master. Some of them belong to families while the others rely on nobles. We will lose strength and the loss will be too great if we do it as you say. Dadian looked at him. They tried to use strong force to rebound but I will use the force to suppress them. The basic of the system is that the subordinates have to follow the superiors, not vice versa. Hawkeye Riley smiled, we can use more gentle means to suppress them. Violence is the most effective wave. Dedian waved, go out. Hawkeye was dumbfounded. He turned and left. Inner wall. Funny, did he really say that? The elder of the punishment division said with a smile, half a year to reach a top five. He is a funny one. A shadow next to him whispered, should I remind him not to stand out? No need. The elder shook his head, he is already low-key. He could subjugate all the areas with his strength. He knows that we are checking him so he didn't go for a quick success. He wants to be a king so he is telling us that he will follow our will and do part of the work he has to do. It's enough that he hasn't drawn trouble. The mouth of the shadow twitched under his cloak. Dedian had named himself as future king. Moreover, he was going to take ninth region into top five. Is it being low-key? Go back? The elder continued. The outer wall will be very lively for the next six months. If he sincerely makes an allegiance to us, then he will be the next pope. Pope. Shadow's eyes narrowed. However, he bowed his head as if he had heard nothing. Subordinate will go back. The shadow disappeared. Elder turned to look at the door which opened and closed. There was a smile on his face. That was almost as long as two normal chapters of TDK, so we have two chaps today. The Dark King. Chapter 466. Did he cancel all my positions? Angelica looked at her servant. They were in an extraordinary castle of aristocratic origin. The room was cool. In addition to you, five other members of the council who didn't attend the meeting were deprived of their statuses and positions. The young man said as he knelt on ground, to get back the status and identity you have to repass the exams and get your new medal. The people were sent from the headquarters to collect your five-star alchemist badge. 
They are still on the road. Others have been removed too. Angelica was shocked. Did the new elder wanted to force them to rebel by depriving them of their identity and statuses? Angelica took a deep breath, elaborate about the identity of the new elder. How come he is so rampant? The young man bowed his head. The code name of the new elder is Devil. His origin is unknown. According to the information from the meeting he was able to hit and mess Tom the commander of the Dark Knights with a single punch. He has extraordinary strength. Although there are some who speculate that he may have colluded with Tom to act out. But Carlos and Lemon who are friends and students of the Tom were removed from their positions too. It means that there is a small chance that there was a private collusion. He beat Tom with a punch. Angelica narrowed her eyes. Does he want to go against the three kings like this? But the thing is if he can beat Tom then his physique has gone over the limits of human body. He must have relationship with the inner wall or else it's impossible to reach such a state by relying on God's blessings. The young man was silent. Angelica's eyes lit up as she calmed down. All the elders are carefully chosen for their position. The new elder should have some trump cards to have such a confidence. The anger in her heart disappeared as she looked at the youth, prepare a gift. I'll make a trip to the headquarters. Youth was startled. He didn't expect someone as proud as her bow in front of anyone, yes. He wants to recover my medal? Is he crazy? A woman who looked like a 16-year-old girl looked at her confident. The shock in her eyes turned into anger. She clenched her fingers into a fist. It's amazing that he can beat Tom, but no one can resist my potions. The maid bowed her head to show the respect towards Amy. Mrs. Wright, even a god can't resist the erosion of your potions. Yes. A trace of hatred flashed in Amy's eyes. I wanted to show him the authority that I hold, but he dared to directly cancel status, identity, and duties. Does he think that there is no place the ninth region where we can go? Since he wants to use force, then I will present his head as a gift to Underworld King. The maid said in a respectful tone, Underworld King should appreciate the talents and attainments of the miss in potion making. Of course. I gave face to Elder Carrie or else I would have left long ago. Amy replied. The news spread quickly after the meeting. Dedian received a report from the Hawkeye. Elder, Sword King and Underworld King have sent gifts to you. The messengers are waiting for you. Dedian was reading information. This was not related to Ninth Region, but as an elder of the Dark Church, he had access to some confidential files. He had read intelligence on Ninth and other regions last night. Because of his current constitution, it was very easy and fast for him to go through books. He looked at Hawkeye, learn what they have sent. If it is not expensive, then directly send back. Hawkeye Riley smiled. He had understood the way new elder made business. Senior Hunter is the bottleneck. Certain potions can simulate the body. But that's it. The God's blessings are limited to only Hunter. To get past this level, I need God's marrows. The problem is you can't get those in the outer wall. The only R with them is the inner wall. Dedian wrinkled his eyebrows as he read the information. He wanted to enhance his constitution as soon as possible, but now it seemed not realistic. It was no wonder that there were no people with saint-level strength in the outer wall. The inner wall held vast majority of resources and the monopoly on everything. This was the main reason why the inner wall could easily suppress the outer wall and even enslave them. In order to enhance my constitution, I have to find passage into the inner wall and get God's marrows. Dudian's eyes lit up. He knew that if he relied on the passages of the dark church, the monastery would be aware. He had to find another way, but the inner wall was blocked. There is only one legal passage, and that was to rely on Monster Institute. According to Francis, Monster Institute was the organization that supplied God's blessings to the outer wall. I have to see if I can obliterate their supply team. If not, then I have to rely on good old way. Smuggle. Dadian decided. Hawkeye returned. Elder, the first gift is an alchemy item called Whirling Stone. It is an unusually rare and very difficult item to be refined by five-star alchemists. There is a small chance to extract it. It has a high price as a collectible item. It's loved by the aristocracy. The gift sent by the underworld king is called Beauty Wine. It was created by the great potion Master Sober. A drop of this wine can be used to poison tens of thousands of people. If a person directly drinks it, then they will immediate die. The only flaw is that it has the flavor of the red wine. So a red wine has to be used or people will get the whiff of it. Dedian listened to him. All of them are third-rate items. Send them back. We can buy this in outside too. Go and buy this wine and let our alchemists analysis and see if they can decrypt the formula. Hawkeye shook his head. Elder Carey have tried this in the past. 
Several five-star alchemists and outstanding potion masters tried to analyze the composition but could not get any results. We have half of the bottle in the warehouse if Elder wants it. The Dark King Chapter 467 The Dark King All right. Dudian spoke in a casual manner. Find few outstanding potion masters and set up a research group. Give them the rest of the wine. I'll write the formula later on. They should find it out afterwards. Analytic formula? Hawkeye was stunned. Elder, do you understand potions? Dedian waved him to go out as he didn't want to waste time. Dedian took a piece of white paper and wrote down the distillation process and chromatography. He threw aside. It was more than enough to analyze the poison and he didn't intend to delve into this aspect of the process. In fact, he didn't even care about learning how to operate the ninth region. After all, twelve regions of the Dark Church are just pawns in the hands of the monastery. Even if the performance is outstanding, they will be nothing more than a piece on the board to be controlled by the monastery. It's stupid to be immersed into such a thing. However, I have to cut off the fingers of the chess player if I want to get rid of the manipulator. Du Dien's I lip up. The monastery will repent for the sin in the future. They will repent for letting him return to the outer wall. This time he was planning to get good grasp of the time and resources. He wanted to have enough strength to compete with the inner wall the next time he faced the risk. However, he couldn't rely neither on strength of the dark church or holy church. After all, the strength of the entire outer wall was nothing but a dust in front of inner wall. He must use the strength from outside the chessboard to overturn the game. He called Hawkeye. Yes, Elder. Hawkeye was holding onto a list of master potioners who he was going to contact. He was surprised to see Dedian to call out to him. It seems the elder was going to give him new instructions. Actually, he was a bit frightened. The new master was totally different from Elder Kelly. The new one was always doing something while Elder Carey was a low-key and cautious person by nature. It was difficult to adapt to the new conditions. Dedian asked, How many God's blessings do we have in our warehouse? Hawkeye shook his head. We don't have recent statistics. But the last time I made a count there were enough to promote seven intermediate knights into senior level. Do you want some? I want all of them. Dedian glanced at him. Do not ask another question right now. Hawkeye bowed. Yes. Bring them as soon as possible. Dedian said, in addition buy from the market too. The price doesn't matter. If you are short on money then let me know. Yes. Hawkeye was surprised. He knew that the new elder was going to make a big move so he didn't neglect. After a while, several dark knights followed after Hawkeye as they entered Dutin's room. They were carrying huge black boxes. Hawkeye said, Elder, these are the blessings in the warehouse. We left some to satisfy the basic daily needs of the ninth region. Do you need more? Temporarily, no. Dedian opened one of the boxes and looked at the old-fashioned syringes which had pink liquid inside them. Hawkeye waved at the Dark Knights to leave after they transported all the boxes. Hawkeye asked after everyone left, Elder, any other orders? No, you go out. Dedian gentle stroked the box. Hawkeye exited the room and closed the door. He saw Dedian put back the syringe into the box as he closed the door. Dedian picked out the God's blessing that he put into the box moments ago. He lifted the sleeve of his right arm and stabbed the needle into his arm. He slowly injected the liquid into his body. According to the information and knowledge from the old era he knew the serious consequences of genetic manipulation. He had felt the chill the first time when as a scavenger he had used the God's blessing. He always felt that the God's blessing was imperfect. Something very horrible was hidden in the secret formula of the God's blessing. Or there was a conspiracy. He couldn't believe that the backward world of the giant wall could solve something that couldn't be solved back in the old era. However, after these years he knew that God's blessing was the only way to become strong. The final price would be destruction. Because of Jaranzi's magic marks he could take shortcuts and directly absorb the cold crystals to enhance his strength. As a result his left arm was left unconscious and now he suffered from ice blood syndrome. Now he didn't have the magic marks of the Jaranzi so he had to rely on creations of the Monster Institute. I don't know what kind of secrets this Monster Institute. Dedian secretly pondered as he injected the God's blessing. After the injection he felt cold spread from his arm into his body. But soon this cold feeling turned into hotness. In a blink of an eye he restored to usual. Dedian continued to inject the second God's blessing. He felt the same sensations again. He had a senior hunter-level constitution so the cells in his body could still desire for God's blessings. Dedian didn't stop but kept injecting and absorbing 18 God's blessings. There was a slight pain in his arm so he stopped the process. 
According to the instructions, this was a sign of short-term saturation. If he continued with the injection of the god's blessings, then the capillaries in his body would rupture. He may even cause damage to his internal organs. I can absorb 20 blessings or so in one go. Dadian felt that his strength was significantly enhanced, but it was relative to his overall strength. An average senior hunter need to absorb thousands of god's blessings to reach the physical limit of senior hunter. Because of short-term saturation on average, I can absorb three times a day. According to basic calculation, then I need more than five months if I continue to absorb 18 blessings three times a day. Dudian's eyes lit up. Six months were needed to reach the limit of senior hunter. However, with the deification of his magic marks, he would be much more stronger than the captains of the saint teams. It was inefficient because of the slow speed of increase in strength. But this was the limit of everyone within the outer or even inner wall. It was impossible to go over the limits as the results would be terrifying. Otherwise, the big consortia would have a lot of strong people by their side. Dadian picked up another syringe and carefully observed it. Cold crystals can also enhance the constitution, but the consequences will be harsh. It's a proof that the god's blessings are extracted from the cold crystals. The problem is the cold crystals will turn the body into ice and they have transparent color. The god's blessings is colored pink. What have they added into it? Where do they extract this pink thing? Aisha said that she was able to climb over the barrier wall between the outer and inner wall at the age of 8 or 9. Dragon Clan must have a special way to make people quickly enhance their strength. A newborn child would die if they are injected by God's blessing every day. She couldn't have that must of strength even if they injected a blessing a day. Unless she had wings. But it seems she doesn't have wings as I clearly looked at her stature. The Devil Families, the Hunter Families Dadia knew that if he got the secrets of any devil family or the Monster Institute then he could speed up his growth. But there was a barrier wall. He wouldn't be able to sneak into the Monster Institute and steal their secrets even if he was able to sneak into the inner wall. He thought of the meeting he had agreed with Aisha after seven days. The Dark King Chapter 468 Elder, five-star alchemist Angelica have come to visit you. Hawkeye's voice echoed from outside the room. Dedian put back the syringe into the box and returned to his seat, let her in. The door was pushed open after a moment. Hawkeye lead a woman dressed in black clothing and white cotton gloves. Dedian glanced at Angelica. According to the information the woman was over 60 years old but she looked half her age. Dudian's surprise calmed after he thought about her identity as an alchemist. Greetings, Elder. Angelica bowed her head and raised her skirt from the sides. Her eyes swept through Dudian and quietly recorded his appearance in her mind. She was surprised as she had keen sense of smell. The new elder exuded very rich vitality even though he seemed very young. Dudian indifferently replied, If you are here for an apology, then I accept. Go back and follow the rules in the future. Angelica didn't expect Dudian to be so direct. Elder is straightforward. Thanks. I hope Elder will accept my humble gift. She took out a fine gift box and put on Dudian's table. Dedian glanced at it but didn't touch, all right, you can go. Angelica looked at him, Elder, I heard that you want Ninth Region to become one of the top five regions within six months. Do you have any objections? Dedian looked at her. Angelica replied, no, no. I admire the Elder's courage. Please give me commands if you need my cooperation in the future. Dedian waved her to leave. Hawkeye asked Dedian after sending off Angelica, Elder, should we recover her position because of her apology? Dedian glanced at him. I'm not the god of light. The only role of apology is to cause mercy and compassion of the other side. I don't forgive. Hawkeye turned pale. Elder, I was wrong. Go on. Dedian waved. Time passed. After Angelica, one senior dark knight and one intermediate level dark knight came to apologize. They pleaded to Dedian to help them resume their identities and statuses but Dudian's refused. In reality, it wasn't difficult to pass the exam. The difficulty lied in recovering the lost face. A girl came after the two left. Greetings, Elder. Amy stood before Dudian's desk. Duduan's were dull as he looked at alluring Amy. According to the information, this girl's age was even higher than Angelica's. She was more than 70 years old. She had taken a lot of medicine and with the help of life alchemists maintained the posture and appearance of a girl. But it didn't mean that her lifespan was extended. I'm listening. Dudian glanced at her. Amy took out a small porcelain bottle from her sleeve and handed out. This is the latest medicine that I have developed. It can make an ordinary person as strong as a bull. 
They won't feel any pain. I'm ready to present the formula of this medicine to the headquarters. Dadian was about to reach out his hand when he saw Amy's eye lit up. It seemed there was a hint of joy in them. He put down his hand and looked at the great potion master which looked like a girl. Amy was stunned as she didn't expect Dadian to stop. She panicked as she had many years of experience and know what the results will be. Elder, what's the problem? Her cheeks flushed and she bent her head as if a shy young girl was looking at her crush. Dadian was going to vomit because of the sight. He looked at Hawkeye, I don't need it so I'll gift it to you. Hawkeye had followed Carrie for a long time. He was aware from Dedian and Amy's expression that something was wrong. Thank you, Elder. He took out a specially made handkerchief. It's a precious gift and I would be ashamed to dirty it. Amy put away the bottle. Since Elder doesn't like my gift, then I will take it back and bring another one. Dedian confirmed his feelings. He spoke in a cold tone. No need for that. Surrender. Amy's face slightly changed. She bit her lips as she spoke in an angry tone. Elder. Why are you bullying your underlings? Dedian indifferently said, Do you want to leave the bottle or your hand? You. Amy's face turned ugly. She knew that Dedian had seen through her plan. She was frightened. Elder, you can't do this to me. I had some other things, that's why I couldn't attend. Hawkeye, get her. Dedian shouted. Hawkeye was feeling bitter. He was most reluctant to provoke a potion master. They were like snakes and covered in poison. But due to Dedian's orders, he had to act. Master Amy, please take you the bottle. Amy bit her lower lip. Do you dare to touch me? Hawkeye smiled. I have heard that your body is toxic. Even the dress that you wear are made out of spider silk which was soaked in venom. I don't have an antidote so I don't dare. It's good that you know. Amy looked at Dedian. What do you want from me? Dedian indifferently said. Are you still holding on to the last trace of hope? Did you want to take my head as a gift to seek refuge with the new outer? I will give you a final chance. If you say something of value that I don't know, then I can leave your old life. Amy's face changed and anger burst out in her heart when she heard Dedian say, Old life, damn bastard. You were just lucky. I'll let you taste the poison directly. Do you even dare to kill me? Dedian snorted as he grabbed a pen from the table and threw it out. Puff. The pen hit the porcelain and pierced her wrist. Amy screamed in pain as the porcelain dropped to the ground and broke. The powder spread out as she held onto her hand and screamed like a pig. She couldn't change her voice. Dedian looked at Hawkeye. Hawkeye was stunned as he wryly smiled. There was fear in Amy's eyes as she looked at Dedian. No, no, not my hands. I will talk. I know a big secret. The Dark King. Chapter 469. The Dark King. Listening to lies is the same as delaying and wasting my time. Dedian looked at her. I don't like listening to lies. Amy bit her lips as she endured the pain from her wrist. I know a bishop of the Holy Church who is member of the Dark Church. He has a high status and identity within the Dark Church. If we expose his identity then the Holy Church will make an investigation and it will be a loss to them. Moreover you will damage a pawn of other region. She sincerely stared at Dedian. Dedian shook his head as the last race of hope in his heart was lost. He was in contact with the monastery so he was aware of the inner works of the system. He didn't care about bishops, pope or even the speaker of the dark church. Pope should know about the identity of the bishop more than anyone. He would get rid of him the moment bishop loses the value. Pope should be overseeing every little move. The only pity was that the faithful believers of the God of Light and the members of the dark church fought each other and bleed for their God. They didn't know that the faith they hold was nothing but a phantom created by the monastery to enslave them. Really? Dudian rubbed his fingertips onto the pencil. Amy was looking at Dudian's eyes but found that Dudian didn't respond to her news. It seems that he was disappointed. She spoke out. Elder, did you know about it? Dudian glanced at her and said, I don't know about truthfulness or reliability of the information. If it's true, then I'll be having a problem with another elder. The next move that you will make would be take refuge with another elder. You will let them think that you have found an evidence of me colluding with the Holy Church. Afterwards, there will be a conflict, but you will get merits by that elder. Is it kind of a retaliation? Amy's face slightly changed. How could I? Elder, I have conclusive evidence. This topic ends here. Anything else? Dedian put the pencil gently onto the table. The sound was very light, but Amy's heart stopped for a moment. Amy was angry. Elder, if you punish me, then the Ninth Region will lose a great potion master. We don't have many potion masters in the Ninth Region to begin with. You just took over the position and the other parties are eyeing you. You can't weaken your own strength. 
I can make up for it. I'll develop a new high-class potion within a month and will give the formula to you at the lowest price. You just don't understand me. Dadian gestured at Hawkeye. She has attacked an elder. Take her down to prison and get her equipment for her research. Hawkeye stared at Dadian. He didn't think that Dadian was so ruthless. Amy uttered in panic, You can't imprison me. You don't have the right to do so. Do you even know about my connections? I don't have a right? Dadian lightly said, before the Ninth Region was ruled by elder and council members. However, I'm the sole ruler now. I'm the dictator, tyrant, or whatever you feel like calling me. Actually, it will be a good test to see how the families and the consortia that have good relationship with you will act. Would they act against me because of a great potion master? Is your worth really that high? Amy's face turned pale as her body trembled. She stared at Dudian. Don't do this to me. I can promise you other things, but you can't imprison and limit my freedom. The potion production of the Ninth Region will be greatly reduced if you imprison me. The union which I had and my students will strike and stop the supply of potions. The influence of the Ninth Region will fall once again and become the worst region out of all. Dadian indifferently replied, We are nothing but a group of cold-blooded monsters. It's Dark Church, not Holy Church. Do you really think that you students will go against me because I had imprisoned you? Although I'm not aware of the specifics, but I can assure you that your students are looking forward to your death. No one likes to be suppressed by someone else. I just have to add a bit of sweetness for them to sway. Amy's lips twitched. Dudian's words were like sword which pierced through her heart. Deep in her heart she certainly knew that in addition to few students no one else would be willing to follow her till the end. She was vulnerable and as weak as a paper in front of monster like Dudian. She didn't expect Dudian to be so overbearing, crazy and have tough attitude. You will definitely lose if you imprison me. Amy took a deep breath. I would rather die than make potions for you if you restrain my freedom. Dudian gently picked up the pencil. Did you expect you so easily? The most painful is barely surviving. I advise you to obey otherwise you won't be able to keep your delicate face. What do you think if I sew a dry mummy's face onto your face? Amy's eyes widened as her chest violently went up and down. Her voice was trembling. No. No. Don't. It would be nice to sew an ugly male face onto yours. Dedian continued. I don't know what kind of an image would appear. Amy shook her head. It seemed that she had forgotten the pain on her wrist. I will obey. I will obey. It's a bit late, Dadian shrugged his shoulders, but unless I'm satisfied with your performance. Dadian looked at Hawkeye, handle this matter. In addition, prepare two large mirrors and put them into the prison cell so that our great potion master can appreciate her own beauty. The scalp of Hawkeye tingled. He had served Elder Carey for many years, but he hadn't seen such a punishment ever. He swallowed the saliva in his mouth, why yes. He didn't even dare to persuade Elder. The new elder wasn't just a devil on codename but a real one. No, no. Amy was scared as she saw that Dudian was serious. She knew that he wasn't trying to intimidate her. I beg you. I am willing to do anything. You have to pay the price for the wrongdoing. Dudian indifferently said, Do you think that trying to poison an elder is just a small matter? By the way, give up struggling. You won't be able to escape. There are primary dark knights outside the manor and intermediate level ones inside. You won't be able to get out of here. And the author of this idea was a madman who I had met years ago. You should thank him. No. Amy cried in despair. Dedian looked at Hawkeye. What are you waiting for? Hawkeye moved. It was as if he teleported. Bang. Amy wanted to react but her body fell down unconscious. Hawkeye took out a handkerchief as he looked at the unconscious Amy. Elder. I'll call over people to move her and change the carpet. Hawkeye was really worthy of being Carrie's confidant. He both served as a secretary and a bodyguard. He should be the strongest within the Ninth Region according to Dudin's thermal vision. Hawkeye's physique should have reached the top senior hunter level and he should have additional abilities because of the magic marks. Hawkeye once again came to see Dudian after moving Amy. Elder, messenger of the Speaker has come. Speaker is the Pope of the Dark Church. Speaker? Dudian narrowed his eyes. The Pope was quick to find him. Bring him in. Yes. A man wearing a black robe, black hood and black mask joined the room. The heat exuded from his body was superior to Hawkeye. Is he on the same level as the normal saints? Dadian narrowed his eyes and looked at Hawkeye. Go out for now. Yes. Hawkeye left the room. Greetings, Elder Devil. This is the letter from the speaker. The man spoke in an awkward tone. It seems that he was deliberately trying to control his voice. 
He took out a letter and put it on Duduen's table. He was wearing a black glove. It seems he was afraid to leave the traces of his fingerprints on the letter. Dedian didn't pick up but glanced at letter. There was a black scythe logo on top of the envelope which was the seal of the speaker. The man bowed and left without a word. After he left, Dedian took out a handkerchief and opened the envelope. Task? The Dark King. Chapter 470. The Dark King. Dedian didn't think that the speaker would give him a task before the seat under his buttocks is heated. Kill Marley at 7 o'clock tonight. A three-star alchemist have to be used for assassination. Target location, Falkland Street 12. There were no superfluous words in addition to the task within the content. The task to kill the Marley seems an easy one but the identity and the number of assassins. Dedian narrowed his eyes. I would like to know who this Marley is. Dedian lit up and burned the letter. He didn't want to expose the identity of the speaker. Although the writing wouldn't be Pope's own handwriting but one of his henchmen but still being a bit cautious won't hurt. Hawkeye. Dedian called Hawkeye after the ashes were extinguished. Hawkeye came in. Elder, do you have any order? Investigate someone called Marley who lives on Falkland Street. Dedian commanded. It didn't take long for Hawkeye return. Elder, we have checked out. Marley is a history professor and 58 years old this year. He was born in a declining knight family. His grandfather was a silver knight and the family owns 20 acres of land. His father has passed away and his mother lived in his hometown. He temporarily resides in Falkland Street 12. Hawkeye paused at this point and looked at Dedian. It seems that he is a believer of nature. Dedian didn't think that they could get such clear information about a person in such a short time. He was surprised by Dark Church's intelligence network. Nature? Does it mean that he doesn't believe in God? Yes. Hawkeye nodded. They don't believe in neither the God of Light or our great gods. They always utter blasphemous words such as material. They were quite low-key until two years ago. But they have been more active recently. We had several frictions with believers of nature but didn't have any fierce conflict. Why? According to Elder Carey, the Holy Church would be more interested in dealing with them than us. So we left them to Holy Church. Hawkeye responded. Dudian nodded. It meant that Carey wasn't a person sent by the monastery but someone who had moved the stairs from the bottom. The monastery used this move to place him inside the Dark Church and eradicated a real believer of the Dark Church. Is there any three-star alchemist who is free? Dedian asked. Hawkeye pondered for a moment. There are few. Get one and let him take nine people. We will go to kill this Marley at six o'clock this evening. Dedian ordered. Hawkeye was surprised. Do you want to personally kill him? At the same time I'll get to know what this teachings about nature is, Dedian casually said. Dedian was pondering about something when he remembered the animal glue mask. He took it from the box. He couldn't always use proper masks as there could be someone who could imitate his body language and voice to convey fake commands. The consequences would be unpredictable. The Night King had sent him the vial with regenerative powers so he wasn't worried about anything. He removed his mask and put on the animal glue mask. IT was like a soft layer of skin that was attached to his face. It seemed to penetrate the pores on his face. He looked at the mirror. His appearance has actually changed into the face of another person. The opposite side had to concentrate to see that the pores were different than on usual human face. Dedian began to knead his face. He saw that his appearance was changing. It's amazing that the monastery have designed something like this. Dedian saw that his face had totally changed. It was an artifact for any criminal. However, once the disciplinary knights got involved, the situation would change. You couldn't escape from the tracing and tracking abilities that they held just by changing the face. I can't change my face to an old man's as my voice will spill out that it's a mask. Dedian looked at the mirror. Time passed. Six o'clock. Trun was outside the manor beside a carriage with nine of his friends. He took out the pocket watch to check the time once in a while. He was excited and tense since afternoon. He didn't think that he could travel with an elder to do a task. It was like a dream. The task wasn't difficult too. He knew that if he could have the backing of an elder then it was possible to get promoted once again. His friends rushed to beg him to choose them. They offered him gifts to get a place in the squad. However, he didn't pick any people who were three-star alchemists like him but acquaintances from the bottom level. Two people came out of the manor as Trun nervously waited. His eyes lit up as he recognized Hawkeye. He was secretary of the previous elder too. Even five-star alchemists couldn't neglect him and give him face because of his identity. Trun's eyes fell onto the body of a young man who looked 20 years old. The man had black hair and moist eyes. 
He had unique temperament. Elder, Trun whispered in a respectful tone as he saluted Dudian. Dudian wrinkled his brows. Hawkeye looked at Trun, don't you have brains? We are outside. Trun looked at Dudian. I'm sorry, I couldn't help. Dudian was lazy to listen to Trun, is everyone ready? Yes. Trun replied. Dudian nodded and sat into the compartment. Hawkeye said in a tone full of worry, shouldn't I accompany you? No need, go back. Dudian closed the door. Trun sat at Coachman's place and winked at his friends. All of them sat on the carriage. Trun whispered, should we go now? Yes. Trun drove the carriage. The carriage deliberately went through few streets before reaching Falkland Street. It stopped at the corner of Falkland Street 12. Trun jumped off the carriage and went towards the compartment. Should we begin now? He didn't want to make any mistakes so he speak as low as he could. Dedian opened the door and looked at the tall building. There seemed to be two people in the building. One of them was walking around and it seemed that the person was a servant. The other was sitting and that one was their target, Marley. Clean up the scene so that Holy Church can't find traces. Dedian continued, I'll come out soon. No one is allowed inside without my permission. Yes. Trun laughed. Dedian strode to the door and gentle knocked the door. An ordinary middle-aged woman wearing servant's clothing opened the door and looked at Dedian in puzzled manner. Who are you? I'm looking for Mr. Marley. Dedian replied. Come in then. Mr. Marley is in study room on second floor. I'll call him for you. The middle-aged woman handed slippers to Dedian. Dedian put on slippers and entered the living room. He was surprised to see that the living room was full of bookshelves. Mr. Marley will be here in five minutes. The middle-aged woman came down and poured tea for Dedian. Dedian thanked her as he quietly waited. Middle-aged woman wiped the place while she looked at Dedian from time to time. Dedian felt that making his face too handsome had brought some problems onto him. Footsteps echoed after few minutes. A man with mixed white and black hair came down. He looked at Dedian who was sitting on the sofa. He couldn't get who Dedian was so he put on the glass to check him out. Who are you? Dedian smiled, Mr. Marley. Hello, it's our first meeting. I'm an elder of the dark church. Marley was startled and frozen at the same time. It was the first time he was meeting a member of the dark church in open. Moreover, the other side wasn't just any member but an elder. Ah, the middle-aged woman was stunned too. It was very difficult to believe that the handsome young man on the sofa had such a shady background. However, she wasn't able to utter a word before the cracking sound of her neck bones echoed. Her lifeless body fell down as blood splashed out. Dedian moved his arm. It seemed that he was holding onto something but it was gone. The plates that were beside the middle-aged woman were dyed in red. Dedian turned back to sit on sofa. Marley couldn't utter a word for a while. You, you. Marley's face turned pale as he looked at the corpse of the woman on the ground. He clenched his fists but there was fear in his tone. What the hell are you doing? The Dark King Chapter 471 Dedian smiled. Don't be nervous. I'm here for a casual chat. Marley's face turned ugly. She was innocent. An ordinary civilian. Don't you feel shame by killing her? Every corpse is innocent. No need to get into those topics. Dedian indifferently said. I've come to visit you to talk about teachings of nature. Marley's pupils shrank when he heard teachings of nature. He took a deep breath and no longer care about Dudian who sat on sofa. He quietly walked and sat on a chair by the sofa. He said in a calm manner, I knew that sooner or later someone will knock my door. That's why you had only one servant. Yes. Did you expect a visit from the Holy Church? Marley stared at Dudian. What's the difference? There isn't. Dudian looked at the elder man with the scholar temperament. Since you were aware that such a day would come, why do you live alone? Isn't it more dangerous? Marley questioned, do you think I should live in a turtle shell? Everyone seems to live in a turtle shell. There was a trace of mockery in Marley's eyes, but our thoughts can't be imprisoned. You just believe in those fake gods. All things in this world are composed of materials. That's what constitutes the life. There is no god of light or other holy gods. You just ignore the truth. It's ridiculous and sad. Dedian smiled as he looked at the bookshelves. If I'm not mistaken, those should be the books that you have written. Didn't you know that you will be exposed once you go out into public? I volunteered. Marley continued, I wanted to question the existence of these ridiculous claims. I expected that there will be a revenge. Do you want to die? Don't you want to live? I would love to live in a world in which the minds of public is liberated. Dedian looked at him, unfortunately you can't do anything. Your books are banned and sealed by the Holy Church. No one will listen to you. 
Actually, your presence is meaningless at this point. The only meaning that it will have would be death in my hands. Marley's mouth twitched. Nothing can stop the people from pursuing the truth even if my book is sealed. My life would be meaningful if just one person checked my book. Yeah. Unfortunately, people never knows where to pursue the truth. Dedian got up and came to stop in front of a bookshelf. All the books were signed by Marley. Dedian randomly picked a book, are all believers of the nature same like you? Do you want to overcome religion by the word of mouth? Marley looked at him, what do you want? I just want to know if you have any capital that can be used against the Holy Church. Do you want to use our teachings to attach the Holy Church? You are daydreaming. Why? Dedian smiled, we can naturally use your teachings to attack Holy Church. As for the Dark Church, no one cares about what we believe including ourselves. Marley was perplexed. Dedian sat back on the sofa. This book seems good. Can I take it? To read that book you must believe in materialism. Of course I believe. Dedian shrugged his shoulders. Marley was stunned, indeed a member of the Dark Church. You can abandon your gods and faith to achieve your unscrupulous purposes and goals. I won't tell you about the headquarters no matter what you do. Dedian faintly smiled. I really believe in materialism. Marley frowned. There are no gods in this world. If there were any then they wouldn't let us live within the giant wall. Dedian continued. The people would know that the gods are nothing but shit if they stepped out of the giant wall. Marley narrowed his eye. How can you become an elder of the dark church without believing in your gods or devils? Dedian smiled. Do you have to believe in God to become a pope? Do you have to believe in justice to get justice? Do you have to believe in love to get loose? Marley was startled as he sat in silence. Dedian checked the time. It was almost seven o'clock. He retracted his eyes and said, I'm interested in your teaching methods. You know you guys have two enemies, the dark church and the holy church. As the saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I hope we can become good friends. Marley looked at the vase next to the bookshelf. There were several roses inside the vase. He murmured, what you said was right. Dedian raised his eyebrows as he didn't know what Marley was referring to. Read the book and you will know how to join the believers of the nature. Dedian looked at the book in his hand. All the secrets are hidden in the book? Yes. Dedian got up and shook his head. Thanks. I'll make sure that they will move to the point. Marley was silent as he looked at the vase full of roses. Dedian left the room and came to the door. He put on his shoes and opened the door. He looked like a student who had come to visit his teacher. Trun who was hiding outside came to him. Elder, make sure that his death isn't painful. Yes. Trun waved and two more people rushed into the house with him. Bang. Dedian heard them brutally kick the door that he softly closed. He closed his eyes and opened them again. Suddenly he saw a large number of heat in the neighborhood. Whoosh! His body disappeared like a smoke. The sounds of armored people moving in the street echoed as Dedian vanished. They came from all over and surrounded the house. A teenager leisurely walked along the path by the river. He looked at the castle reflected on the river because of the moonlight. He shook his head. It's been few days. The Dark King Chapter 472 Bastards! A teenager punched his palm on table and said in an angry tone, What the hell is with Knight's Hall? They didn't help out but instead even took away the honor medal of Dean. Damn it! Nicholas who was sitting on sofa next to him, gentle sip from tea and spoke in an indifferent tone, The more you prune the more refined things come out. Everything will look perfect if you cut out discomfort and ugly parts. Why are you being so annoying? Mason looked at him, It's been almost three days that Dean was taken away and there is no news about him. Aren't you worried? Sergey, who was sitting opposite to them, snapped. What's the use of panicking? Gwyneth and Glenn have already sneaked into the inner wall. What's the meaning of getting angry? We have to wait for news from both of them. Mason's face was ugly, but he knew that he had to face the reality. Nicholas took out a scissor to cut off his nails. You are like a stone. Old Fooling said that the military has given them a decree that they can't publish any news about Dean. It's intended to make him slowly fade out of public's memories. Over time, he will eventually be forgotten. By the way, even the Holy Church stood still so what do you expect us to do? Zach who was sitting close to them said, We can't give up even the resistance is futile. Who will help him if not us? I don't care. Tomorrow, I'll go to magistrate to get justice. Mason said in a bitter tone. Nicholas glanced at him but didn't respond. Sergei was about to talk when he sensed something. Who is there? Everyone looked around in surprise. Haha, uh -huh, a gentle laugh echoed from the second floor. They were stunned when they turned towards that direction. 
Dean was sitting on stairs as he watched the crowd in the hall. Dean had already needed his face back to the original. He came down as he smiled. It seems that there have been lots of things in the last two days that I was gone. Nicholas was like the cat whose tail was stepped on. He jumped from the sofa and stuttered, Young master, how come you are back? Dean went over and patted his shoulder. Don't be so angry. Nicholas was stiffened. Yes, young master. Mason exclaimed in surprise, Dean, you are back. Dean? Zach also said in a pleasant tone. Dean sat on the sofa. When Gwyneth and Glenn comes back, tell them not to smuggle into the inner wall so that an accident doesn't happen. Sergey was amazed. Did you sneak back? Do people in the inner wall know about it? It's all right. You guys don't have to worry about me. Follow my instructions after both of them come back. Borrow from old Fulin if you lack money. Sergey's face changed. There were people outside. Don't worry, I avoid them. Dean's eye narrowed. There are eight people outside the castle. They are in different locations and have locked the path. Do you know which force they belong to? We didn't dare to get close to them, but Glenn was able to secretly approach them. She said that they were dressed like members of the Dark Church. Dark Church. Dean's eyes lit up. They are too cute. These people are here to observe you but instead got their identities revealed to Glenn. Everyone laughed as they looked at each other. Nicholas said in a respectful tone, Young Master, Glenn and Gwyneth drilled under the ground when they went out so these people aren't aware of it. Dudian nodded. Glenn was a top assassin and there weren't any in the outer wall who could trace her. These should belong to the ground who have poisoned me. Dudian pondered for a moment. He looked at Nicholas. What's the recent information about the Mel family? We don't care much about them. Nicholas bowed. Dean didn't blame them. I'll solve out this matter. You guys don't get involved with this. Focus on completing my instructions. Especially Nicholas the matter that I have given to you I see very important. Sergey. in addition to recruiting knights you have to establish a stronghold outside the giant wall. It will be the last place where we can escape to in case of emergency. I'll personally come to check the place so try to dismember the materials of the previous monster too. He is referring to adult splitter. Sergey knew which monster Dean was referring to, I will. Dean looked around. Where's Noyce? Nicholas replied, Master, Noyce went to Old Fulin to get information about you. He will soon come back. Dean nodded. At the same time, the sounds of footsteps echoed from upstairs. It was Yvette who was holding the hands of Gabriel and Artemis. Gabriel and Artemis were aware of the situation, too. They were surprised to see Dean return safely. They immediately ran over. Dean stroked in Artemis's head. Did you listen to your brother when I was away? Yes. She replied. Gabriel smiled. Young master, you are finally back. I'll always return. Dean patted his shoulder. He turned to look at Mason and Zack. In the future, you guys should practice with Gabriel too. Ask old Fulin to give you batch of God's blessings to improve your constitution. You have to be able to have enough strength to protect yourselves. All right. Mason grinned. Nicholas Glenn will work with you to manage the affairs when she comes back. Sergey, you and Gwyneth will be responsible for the hunting outside the giant wall and the group. Dean looked at Sergey. Teach them when you have free time. Yes. Sergey replied. Dean smiled. I'll talk to Yvette so leave us alone for a while. Yvette saw Dean wave at her. What? Dean spoke in English. Do you want to go back? Yvette was stunned. Are you willing to let go of me? Her voice was trembling. She was brought by Dean and thought that she would never be able to escape from the hands of the devil. Moreover, she never expected the other side to show mercy and let go of her. Dean smiled, it's useless for you to stay in here. I don't need hostages. Of course, there is a condition to your freedom. Yvette suddenly woke up from her dreams. She knew that the devil wasn't so kind to let her go out of blue. What conditions? Dean smiled, it's very simple. I want you to be the king of your people. Yvette pondered for a long time as she understood his aim. You are daydreaming. First of all, a woman can't become a chief within our hierarchy. At best, woman can become a witch. I carry the royal blood so I can never be a with. Moreover, I won't help you even if I become the chief of all tribes. Dean replied in a calm manner. Do you think I need your help? The age-long goal of barbarian tribes is nothing more than entering the golden wall. You just want clean soil and nice place to live. Dean indifferently said, your goal is only outer wall while mine is inner wall. It is not me who needs your help but your people who needs mine. Yvette stared at him. Are you going for a rebellion? I would betray myself if I don't rebel against others. Dean smiled. The Dark King. Chapter 473. Yvette stared back at him. 
I can't do anything even if I'm willing to help you. First and foremost, I'm daughter of the chief. Moreover, there are brothers who are much more talented than me. There is nothing that you can't accomplish as long as you are willing to do it and ready to pay the price. Dean continued in an indifferent matter. IT won't be hard to be the chief of all tribes if I support you. As for those brothers of yours, they will be removed if they hinder you. Ivet's face changed. Do you want me to kill my brothers? Aren't you willing to pay this small price to be the chief of all tribes? Dean stared deep into her eyes. Yvette's face turned ugly. What's the meaning of getting the throne full of blood? Dean looked at her. You will know meaning when you reap the harvest. You will get the rights and glory of being the chief. Moreover, you will lead your people into the golden wall. Your name will be remembered for generations. Doesn't it stimulate you? Yvette bit her lips. I don't need to be remembered by future generations and I don't need the rights of being a chief. I only hope that we can live on the land we deserve, not like the savages. But... What's the point of getting something that I want if I'll be killing my brothers? Isn't it ironic? Dean wrinkled his brows. He didn't think that the female barbarian would have such family relations. He thought that the barbarian chief had dozens of heirs so they shouldn't be united. They should be even fighting for the resources, but it seems the opposite was true. Did they cherish each other because of the harsh environments where they lived? You may think so, but it doesn't mean that your brothers share your ideals. Dean continued. They will get rid of you if they know that you have cards that can affect them. Moreover, how can I help you if you refuse? There isn't a hope for your tribe to enter the Golden Wall without my help. Do you want so many people live in the radiation zone for an eternity? There was a complex expression on Yvette's face. I have to think about this. Dean pondered for a moment. All right. I'll command Glenn to take you back. I hope you can give me satisfying answer after a week. We will meet below the 8th Fort by the Red Maple Mountains. Yvette nodded. I'll give you a reply. Dean waved. Go and pack your luggage. Yvette went upstairs. The sounds of hoofs echoed from outside the castle as Yvette went upstairs. Soon a figure entered the castle and saw Dean sitting on the sofa. You came back. Dean smiled. Noise recovered from shock. What did you come back? Did they send you back? I sneaked back. Dean looked at him. What did the Ryan family said? Noise was a bit worried because of Dean's reply. Master, wouldn't they look for you? Isn't it dangerous to be in here? Don't worry. Dean said, talk to me about the Ryan family. I heard that you went to look for their help. Noyce responded, old Feline said he would think of a way. He has contacted other nobles and they are ready to contact the magistrate. It's just the magistrate isn't willing to give an answer. Dean nodded, old Feline is still loyal to us. Yes, he is, but Noyce added, his children aren't so. We covered for them when they owed a huge sum of money. But this time when I went to visit their house, they bluntly said that I will get them into trouble. Ungrateful pricks. Dean said in an indifferent manner. Don't be surprised. People are so. Are you willing to follow me? Noyce responded, of course. You took me out of that dark prison and I swore that I will follow you to any place as much as this worthless body of mine has a trace of life. Dean narrowed his eyes. However, we will go to a bitter place this time. We may need to peel off your face and change it to a new one. Noyce trembled on instinct as the picture of peeling flashed through his mind. However, he suppressed the feeling as he looked at Dean's gentle eyes. He took a deep breath. I will. Dean suddenly smiled. You should have thought about it a bit more. It will be bitter. Noyce replied. I'll follow you even if it's worse than the prison. Dean patted both of his palms. Sergei and others who were on second floor came down as they heard the sound. Yvette also was in the hall. Tell Glenn to take her back after she comes. Sergei asked in astonishment, why are we letting her go? Isn't she a hostage? Her value may be high, but there is no point in continuing to act so if she doesn't speak our language. Dean stood up. It's getting late. I can't be outside way too more as I found an opportunity to slip out and may cause doubt. I'll come to find you so don't look for me. Are you going back to the inner wall? Mason was surprised. Dean patted Mason's shoulder but didn't answer him. He looked at Noyce. Are you ready to go with me? Noyce nodded and went upstairs. Do you want to take Noyce? Sergey continued. Isn't Gwyneth or Glenn more appropriate as you help her? Dean laughed. Noyce isn't worse than them. Noyce heard Dean's voice as he reached upstairs. His mouth curled into a smile as he quickly walked. The Dark King Chapter 474 Dean bid farewell to the crowd and went to the back of the castle with Noyce to quietly dive out from the castle. Dean stopped by the river which reflected his face through the moonlight. He began to knead his face and changed it to the previous one. 
Young master at your, Noyce was completely stunned as he saw Dean's appearance change. Dean didn't hide the information from him. I didn't sneak out but was sent from the inner wall as the elder of the dark church. This is called animal glue mask which can change my face. It's too precious and I only have one of this. That's why we have to change your face so that other won't know your identity and guess mine. Noyce stared at him in shock. Noyce slowly digested the shocking news. Do you want me to join the dark church? Yes. I know that you were knight of light under the holy church and there will be a bit of conflict in your heart. Dean patted his shoulder. But you will get used to it as you know more. Noyce took a deep breath as his body slightly shook. There is nothing to contradict. I have lost my faith in God long ago when I was captured by the holy church. How can we talk about the God of light if there is no justice? You gave me another chance and I'll be loyal to you until the end. That's the justice. It seems that I wasn't wrong in my choice. Dean smiled. The process will be a bit painful because of peeling off your face and replacing it with a new one. I hope you will be able to tolerate. Noyce slightly shook his head. Nothing is unbearable as much as I'm alive. It should be all right. Dean continued, we will use anesthetics so you will sleep and wake up to find your face changed. The only thing that will be real is that the Noyce will be dead. Noyce died long ago. Noyce replied. Dean looked at the town in front of them. There is a small nest of 8th region of the dark church in this town. This is the place where the materials we need are. Wait for me in here. Yes. Noyce nodded. Dean took off his coat and sneaked into the town. A manner of a respected squire in the town was the den of the 8th region. He went into a farmer's house and took a set off work clothes worn by the farmer during the day. It was stained with thick sweat and taste of animal feces. He put on the clothes and went straight to the manor. Ten minutes later, a figure rushed through the town and appeared near the river like a ghost. Noyce was frightened when he saw Dean appear holding onto a jacket. The next instant he sensed thick bloody smell. He couldn't help but ask, did you hurt him? Nope. Dean took of the farmer's bloody coat and threw it into the river. He put a bag by his side and squatted by the river to wash his hands. The blood spread from his palms downstream the river as he washed his hands. Noyce noticed the bag, is this the material? Yes, it's to help you change in few other items. Dean replied. Dean got up and grabbed the bag, come on. Noyce touched his cheek and rubbed his face with his hands. He followed behind Dean. Ninth Region Headquarters of the Dark Church Hawkeye was wearing a luxurious black suit as he stood on the balcony of the castle and looked at the distance. The sun was setting and the horizon looked gray. He frowned as he looked at the attendant next to him. You haven't found information about the elder even though a night passed? Attendant spoke in a trembling voice. We have investigated. The members of the Holy Church encircled the people inside. However, elder wasn't there. Trun and the rest of the members were caught or killed. Elder should have escaped. We have contacted other divisions for search, but there isn't any news yet. Hawkeye indifferently said, Did you found out the reason why so many Knights of Light appeared on Falkland Street? The servant is still checking. The attitude answered in a cautious manner. Hawkeye narrowed his eyes. It would be best if you find out by the sunrise or it will be your sunset. Attendant's face turned white. I'll go. Hawkeye turned his head as he looked down the manor. He saw two figures approach from the corner. Both of them were wearing black robes. He was startled when he saw one of the figures make hand gestures. He had strong vision so he was able to see clearly. Hawkeye jumped over the balcony to meet the figure because of the hand gesture. Greetings, Elder. Hawkeye respectfully said to the figure. Dean gently lifted his hood and revealed the handsome young face. Let's go in. Yes. Hawkeye nodded and looked at the figure next to Dean. Who is this? His code name is Golden Wolf. He is my personal attendant. Dean replied. Hawkeye quietly looked at the Golden Wolf. Elder, please. They went to the basement below the manor where the headquarters was located. There was no one around the fountain within the square. At the moment, everyone had gone back to their houses and residences to begin their daytime life. The staff behind the counter yawned because they were tired after the work over the night. Dean sat on his chair in the office and looked at Hawkeye. Any news for me? Hawkeye knew what Dean was referring to. He whispered, Elder, it was our negligence. We still don't know who leaked your whereabouts. It's good that you weren't injured. I sent someone over the night to find your trail thinking that you were secretly arrested by the Holy Church. Dean indifferently said, It's been more than ten hours and you haven't found the traitor? Hawkeye replied, Elder, we used everyone to find your traces so we didn't have time to investigate our people. Please give me an hour and I'll give a proper reply. Half an hour. Dean indifferently said, Yes. Hawkeye knew that there was no room for bargain. 
Dean said in a cold tone, Golden Wolf will be my personal attendant while you will be my secretary. I know that you worked for Elder Carey for a long time but he has gone to Inner Wall. I believe that you should know who to give your allegiance. I won't treat you badly as long as you are loyal to me. Hawkeye knelt on one knee in hurry, Elder, I have pledged. Stand up. Hawkeye slowly stood up. I want to know who dared to betray me. Dean ordered. Yes. Hawkeye left the office. The Dark King. Chapter 475. Noise whispered after Hawkeye left. Master, what do I need to do? Firstly, change the way you address me. I'm not master but elder. Dean leaned against the chair. You don't need to do anything. I'll make sure that you reach the constitution of senior hunter as soon as possible. You have used the magic marks of the swallower, so you will test my meals and drinks in the future. Don't forget not to expose your magic marks in front of others or they will think of more vicious ways to poison me. Noyce replied, I know, Elder. Dean nodded. The main reason for him to bring Noyce was his magic marks. After all, he was confident that he wouldn't lose to anyone in the outer wall in terms of strength. However, no one would be silly enough to fight him face to face. Many strong people often die in the hands of the villains. Half an hour passed. Hawkeye carried a youth whose body was full of scars into Dean's office. He threw the youth onto the carpet and reported to Dean, Elder, this messenger is the traitor. Dean raised his eyebrows as he looked at the youth. He had gone through brutal torture. It seemed that his hands were smeared with something and the skin was brownish. Dean couldn't see the teeth in his mouth. You have found the ghost. Dean glanced at Hawkeye. Hawkeye's heart jumped when his eyes connected with Dean's. He thought that all the secrets in his heart were seen through. Dean was letting Hawkeye know that he wasn't fooled by him. However, he wasn't intending to break down the show. Why did you betray me? The youth's body trembled but he couldn't speak. He said few vague words. I, wrong, elder, life. Dean looked at Hawkeye. You have made so that I can't get reply to anything. What should I do? Hawkeye's face turned pale. Elder, please punish me. Dean waved. Who is this man? Who he used to be. Hawkeye said in haste. Elder, he is just a messenger we use as a courier. He has no patrons. His father was a knight of our dark church but died in battle with the holy church. His mother died long time ago. He has no father, mother, or relatives. Dean sneered, no patrons, no relatives. How can he become a messenger? Hawkeye couldn't answer. Is it that you don't want to say or you couldn't find out? Dean narrowed his eyes. Hawkeye replied, please give us a little time and we will find the person who is in contact with this messenger. Time, time is life. Dean looked at the youth. Do you know what kind of sin you have done by colluding with Holy Church to frame an elder? I'll peel your skin, cut off your tendons, and we'll put the eggs of an insect in your mouth, ears, and nostrils. I'll put you into a pig cage and sink you in water until the eggs hatch. The youth was frightened. Elder, please show mercy. I am innocent. I didn't betray you. Dean indifferently said, Give me the names of people who instructed you. The youth was at a loss. As Hawkeye said earlier on, he had no relations to anyone. Moreover, he only became a messenger after Hawkeye appreciated his job, but Hawkeye didn't promote him later on. He was waiting for the day of promotion. However, he didn't expect to be beaten and forced into such a move. I can guess the truth even if you don't say anything. Dean continued, Did you betray me with the division of the great potion master Amy? Hawkeye looked at the youth in excitement. Be frank and lenient. The youth heard Hawkeye's words. He saw the last straw of life he could attach to, yes, yes. Surely it was her people. Dean narrowed his eyes as he looked at Hawkeye. Amy was just imprisoned. What was your intention when you let her to pass my whereabouts? Hawkeye knelt down, Elder, I'm not aware of anything. I didn't know when Great Potion Master bought him. Please believe in me. Dean coldly stared at him. Hawkeye anxiously looked at Dean. He hoped that Dean would see the frankness and sincerity in his heart. The coldness in Dean's eyes gradually faded away. I believe that you won't do anything stupid like that. Dean indifferently said, however because of the negligence my life was at risk. This crime is inevitable. Hawkeye bowed. I'm guilty elder. Please give the appropriate punishment. I'll think about it. Dean said in a cold tone. I hope you can live up to my expectations in the future. Yes. Hawkeye was relieved. Take him out. Dean continued. Call the members of the council. Yes. Hawkeye stood up and pulled out the youth from the office. Noyce saw how sinister the methods of the members of the Dark Church were from the scars on the youth's body. He was also aware that Dean couldn't trust the people around him. Let's go to the meeting room. Dean got up. 
This time Dean was the first to enter the conference hall. He quietly sat there as he thought about random things. The Dark King Chapter 476 The first council member arrived after moments. It was Angelica who was penalized by Dean. Angelica frozen for a moment when she saw Dean sitting alone in the conference hall. She gently moved towards the table. Greetings, Elder. Dean looked at the oil painting but didn't reply. Angelica casually grabbed a chair and sat down. The other members came one after another. In half an hour there were 14 figures in the hall. There was supposed to be 16 members. One of them was Amy who was imprisoned and the other person didn't come on purpose. That council member had defected to Sword King's side. Dean retracted his eyes and said, You must have heard about the situation from yesterday. Tom was the first to talk. Elder, it's good that you haven't been hurt. Otherwise we would have to give a big blow to Holy Church. Dean replied, I'm afraid there isn't such a person in the outer wall who can hurt me. Tom smiled as he remembered Dean's extraordinary strength. True. The action itself was very confidential so very few people knew about it. Dean glanced around. An old man sitting next to him said, Elder, do you suspect that someone betrayed you? Betrayed the elder? Who would do that? Who is so bold? There were few who asked. Dean slightly raised his hand to stop the chit-chat. The person who leaked the message has been found. He gentle tapped the bell. The door to the conference hall was opened. Hawkeye came into the hall as he carried the previous youth. Dean looked at the youth and asked, Who was the one to instigate you to sell my location? The youth trembled. Elder, it was Amy. Amy instructed. An uproar echoed after council members heard the youth. How could Amy? She isn't being. Everyone looked at each other. I heard that Amy was dissatisfied with the punishment of the elder. Moreover, she had tried to kill you in the office. Most probably she instructed this youth to sell your position because of the hate. The previous old man said. Dean waved and Hawkeye dragged away the youth. He looked around. I would take care of Amy if she didn't try to kill me and give my head as a gift to Underworld King. However, since today all the rights and wealth of Amy will be confiscated and given to the treasury of the Ninth Region for use. In the future, anyone who will act like Amy will have the same punishment. Do you have any objections? Dean silently looked around. I agree with the elder. Tom took the lead. I also agree. She dared to kill the elder. Her sins can't be redeemed. All the members raised their hands. Only four stayed silent. Dean remembered the four as he announced the end of the meeting. Dean told Hawkeye to get rid of the youth after returning to the office. Sky lit at the dawn. Dean asked for breakfast and morning newspapers. Golden Wolf tried them out. Dean handed the milk and bread to Noyce. Noyce drank a bit of milk and ate a piece of bread. Elder, it's not poisoned. Dean nodded as he picked up the newspapers. At 7.20 evening yesterday members of a cult committed violence against the history professor Marley of the Rui Institute. He was killed. The Knights of Light who were patrolling in the vicinity rushed to the scene but were a step late. They couldn't save Mr. Marley's life. Ten members of the cult were arrested including a three-star alchemist. All of them will be purified by flames in the Oak Square at 9 o'clock this morning. The captain of the Knights Team Milk was active as he personally captured the evil alchemist. He was awarded with a Grand Knight Medal. Dean wrinkled his brows when he read the name Melk. The name was familiar. He pondered for a bit and remembered where he heard the name. The first time he heard Melk's name was when Melk killed the captured alchemist in the scavenger trial. Later on Dean got to know this man's identity. He was Mark's son and elder brother of Sarah Mel. Mel family. Dean narrowed his eyes. He didn't expect to see the sight of this family as they should have disappeared. Pope was the man who designed this task to him and others. He was supporting the remnants of the Mel family. Pope knows my identity and he is aware of the hatred that's between me and the Mel family. So what is he trying to tell me by giving such a task to me? Is he trying to say that I should forget the past hatreds or simply, he will beat me? Dean pondered. After coming back from the inner wall, he wasn't going to play around with Mel family. He knew that the monastery was his main enemy. However, he didn't think that the descendants of the Mel family will be used as pawns by the Pope. They will be the stepping stone for him. The monastery concealed my identity and it's known to you, Pope. 
If you want to play around, it's in PF. Good. Dean's eyes narrowed as an intent to kill flashed in them. After a moment, his expression restored back to normal. He turned the pages as he checked other news. It was same as Sergei had told him. There were no news and reports about him in the newspapers. It was as if he had completely disappeared from this world. He felt that if the whole world joined to deny the presence or existence of someone, then that person wouldn't exist. Who can fight against the whole world? Oh! Dean gently smiled as he slowly put down the newspaper. However, a news on the corner of the newspaper caught his eyes. His breathing went up and his eyes opened wide as he picked the paper. The Dark King. Chapter 477. Whoosh! Dean grabbed the newspaper. His eyes concentrated on the column on the corner of the newspaper. Ivy Street number 72, owners. Suicide, suspected to commit because of problems with neighbors. He read word by word over and over again. His hands trembled as his breathing got rough. Ha! Ah. Dean suddenly got up as he caught and crushed all the newspapers, including the one in his hand. Noyce, who was next to Dean, was frightened because of Dean's angry action. He had been with Dean for so long, but he had never seen him act so angry. He was not angry even when he was insulted in the prison. Stay here, Dean coldly said as he left the office. Hawkeye was returning and happened to see Dean in the corridor. He wanted to greet the elder but saw that the atmosphere wasn't right. He carefully said, Elder, that youth has been finished. Are you worried about that? I'll go out for a trip. Dean passed by Hawkeye as he walked step by step. His eyes concentrated on Hawkeye's face for a moment. The man felt chill because of Dean's glance. Dean said, if anyone follows me then there won't be a return trip for them. He was like a ghost that passed through the corridor after the speech. Hawkeye was startled. He turned to check the elder but saw that Dean already was nowhere to be found except his robe that was on the ground. Dean took a horse as he left the manor. This was a red-brown horse which was bred by the Talon family. He didn't need to show proof of identity and could go to anywhere within the outer wall as long as he rode the horse. The horse flew like a lightning through the streets. Dean came to the heart of the commercial district after an hour. The place was bustling and overcrowded. He reached an inn and dismounted. Dean threw the rope at the attendant and said, Take care of it. He turned towards the street and mixed into the crowd. He joined the adjacent street and quickly kneed his face to change it. He grabbed a passerby and joined an alley. He stripped the clothes of that person and replaced with his own clothing. He quickly left the place to the other side of the central area. Dean came to Ivy Street number 72 after a few minutes. He saw a spacious manor. There was a carriage of the magistrate parked in front of the manor. The carriage was reinforced with steel. A knight of the magistrate was leaning to the side of the carriage as he held onto a piece of bread. He was chewing it in a depressed mood. There was a the heat of a figure inside the manor who seemed to be busy with something. Dean sensed the thick pungent smell in the air. Even an ordinary person would be able to, to sense this taste of rot. Dean's heart sank as if the cold snowflakes fell onto the frosty lake. Whoosh! Dean disappeared from the street. Dean's figure appeared on the third floor of the manor the next moment. He gently pushed the curtains as he slowly walked inside. Luster of dust floated on air. He was silent for a moment. Afterwards he slowly went to the second floor. He was like a ghost as there was no sound when moved. He saw chaos in the second floor. The pillow on the sofa had fallen to the ground as if a robbery has happened. There was a new textile machine on the corner of the living room which was full of dust. The figure emitting the heat was busy on the first floor. A sound was issued. Dean bit his lips as he quietly went downstairs. He saw a knight of the magistrate wearing few layers of gloves and masks. However, it seems that the masks weren't enough to block the bad air. The knight squatted on the ground as he dragged a seriously rotten corpse. There were scars all over the body. The air seemed to have been cut off and was full of blood. The body was stripped of clothes and there were whip marks all over the body. It wasn't difficult to imagine how much the owner of the body had suffered before death. Dean's mind buzzed and went blank as he saw the face of the owner of the corpse. It was his adopted mother Jura. He felt like he fell into a cold abyss. He had bought this manor for Jura, Gray and their newly adopted kid to settle. The rights to the house was transferred to them so when he saw the address on the news his heart had sunk. Chaos run amuck in his mind as he stared. The knight of the magistrate dragged Jura's body along the smooth wooden floor. There was panic and anger in Jura's eyes that were still open. The knight dragged the body along the corridor until it was taken outside. Dean stood still. He thought of the conclusion written in the newspaper. Suicide, suicide? He grinned but he couldn't laugh. 
Suicide. There are so many scars on the body, but the magistrate decided that they have committed suicide. Tears flew down across his cheeks. The grin was still on his face. He looked like a madman. He thought that he would never be emotional again. He would never cry. But life and reality were ruthless. The Dark King. Chapter 478. The Dark King. The knight who dragged the juror's body returned to the living room. He walked straight below the stairs. If he turned to look at the stairs above him, he would see a twisted face which was smiling. The knight bent down and pulled out another corpse. It belonged to a middle-aged male. The legs were broken and there were many scars on the body. His eyes were wide open too. The knight felt suffocated because of the smell emitted from the corpse. As he was near the stairs he felt uncomfortable as he dropped the body and turned to look at the stairs. It was empty but it felt as if there was someone there. Dust floated on air. He sighed in relief. He thought that he saw someone for a moment. The knight didn't dare to delay the situation as he grabbed the corpse of the male and dragged it away. Even though he was a believer of the Holy Church but he still felt that some hidden invisible spirit was staring at himself. Soon he removed the second corpse and quickly ran back. He bent down to grab the corpse. This time he didn't need to drag the body because it belonged to a child who was eight or nine years old. The eyes of the child were gouged out. The kid had gone through a miserable death. He left the place. Dean appeared at the stairs again. Captain, I've moved all of them. A voice echoed from outside. Oh, I'm here. Another voice echoed from outside. Damn it. Too smelly. Yes. Ah, God knows how many days it has been that they were killed. The knight who previously carried the body said. Captain replied, don't be worried about the smell. Put them inside the bags. Captain, why only two of us are working on this case? Your mother. You are asking way too many questions. Dean slowly went down the stairs to listen to both of them to speak. Dean's body was shrouded in the darkness so his face wasn't seen. He didn't make the slightest voice as he walked down the stairs. He turned his head and looked at room from where the previous night who was dragging the bodies. The room was messy. Blood was splattered all around. The furniture were knocked over. Dean's eyes had turned dark. It seemed that even if your burn flames in front of him their reflection would be swallowed by the darkness in his eyes. He watched the room in silence. He had rich hunting experience so his mind automatically visualized the scene. He saw three of them struggle. Even a blind person would see that this wasn't a suicide but a brutal killing. He smelled the air. The killings didn't happen two days ago but at least half a month before. The temperatures were very low because they were in the middle of the black snow season. That's why the bodies rotted late. Who killed them? Dean's eyes were dark and empty. Damn it. I lost my appetite because of the smell. The captain's voice echoed. Dean slowly turned his head as he looked through the gap in the window towards the two. The previous night carried the corpses into the back of the carriage stood in front of the captain. Captain, they were killed so miserably. It seems like a revenge so why did they say that it was a suicide? Shut up you idiot. Captain snapped. It's decided by the people from above. If they say that it's a suicide, then it's a suicide. Are you some kind of saint or priest? We are just executing the orders and nothing more. You need to learn a lot of things. Don't forget sometimes you have to open one of your eyes while to close the other one. Otherwise you will end up like one of these that you carried. Open one and close the other? Captain, but isn't it an injustice? Are you still asking questions? Yes, yes. No questions. They left the place as the carriage moved. Dean looked at them then his body disappeared from the living room. The next moment he appeared on Manor at street number 73. He knocked the door. The door opened as brawny man looked at Dean. Who are you? I heard that an accident happened in the next house. Did you see anything? Dean asked in a hoarse voice. Brawny man's face sank. Screw off. He tried to close the door but failed. Dean raised his left hand and held the door. The man's body shivered as he felt the door cool down. Tell me everything that you know. Dean said. The man swallowed saliva as he felt that the Grim Reaper was pointing its scythe at his neck. I don't know. I know that half a month ago when it was raining a group of people came to the manor. I heard screams all over the night. I haven't seen the family since then. The passerby people had sensed the smell and reported to the magistrate. The people from the magistrate came over yesterday and that's how I learned that the family had committed suicide. Half a month ago. Dean pondered. He remembered that half a month ago Jura had come to check himself. He looked at the man. Don't tell anyone that I asked for anything. 
Otherwise, your family will make a suicide too. The man's legs trembled. He could see that Dean wasn't making a joke. I won't talk. Dean looked at the direction where the carriage had left. His body flashed and he disappeared like a ghost. The man was scared and almost shouted out loud. However, he raised his hand to cover his mouth. He didn't dare to make a sound as he closed the door in hurry. He decided to move from this unlucky and dangerous neighborhood. It didn't take long for Dean to trace the carriage. Perhaps because of the probable smell problem, the carriage didn't enter the main streets but went through the remote suburbs. At the moment, black snow was gradually falling from the sky. The carriage went along a desolate and quiet trail. A squeaky voice echoed from the carriage as it moved. Dean was far behind, but he understood the destination the carriage was heading to. The carriage came to stop in front of snow-capped mountains after 10 minutes. The black snow covered the mountainside. This place was the location of the three volcanoes that were in the outer wall area. It was a natural crematorium. The land prices were very expensive in the commercial district. That's why vast majority of people couldn't afford to bury their relatives in the cemeteries. As a result, the corpses of the dead were cremated in the Zywich volcano. According to the rumors, the phrase Shi Wa Ji meant heaven in the language of the ancient ones. Both knights carried the bags as they walked towards the volcano. Both of them seemed tired. The captain looked at the knight who was panting. We will bury them in the first magma pool that we find. The knight looked around and found a magma pool that was close to him. There were few tombstones by the pool which were crooked. Captain commanded, throw them. The knight threw the bags. Dean clenched his fingers into a fist but he didn't move. He would be able to effortlessly kill both of them but an investigation would be opened and his identity was bound to be exposed this way. His heart trembled because of anger but he had to tolerate. All three corpses were thrown into the slowly flowing magma pool in a blink of an eye. However, they didn't sink. It seemed that the pool was very shallow. Let's go. Captain gestured as he turned away. Knight looked once more at the slowly sinking bags then turned to leave. A figure teleported by the magma pool after both of them left. Dean quickly shot inside the pool and stood by the bags. The bags were burning. Dean slowly opened the bags. Three faces were revealed. They were staring at the distant sky as if asking for an answer. Dean's face was stiff. The nails of his fingers had ripped into palms. The temperature was extremely high but he ignored it. Many pictures emerged in his mind as he remembered the time when his adoptive mother selected him. In this cold world the only one who smiled at him with warmth was her. He wanted to cry out but he couldn't shed tears. Everything streamed in front of his eyes as if it happened moments ago. But his heart was frozen. He couldn't make a sad expression to react to the sight in front of his eyes. What is this sadness? He gentle touched the woman's face. Dean thought that he would be able to pay them back for their affection if he brought them into the commercial district and gave them a house. He wanted them to stay away from him so that they wouldn't be affected by his business. However, they were still implicated because of him. He slowly stood up, took the three bags and left the place. Dean came to stop near a small forest near the Zywich volcano. He broke of branches and set up fire to cremate the three corpses. After the cremation, he took his clothes and wrapped the ashes with them. You won't die just like this. They will pay hundreds of thousands of times more. They will kowtow before being buried. Dean walked through the forest as the black snow fell on his shoulders. His eyes were darker than the black snow. The Dark King Chapter 479 Holy Mountain The Holy Mountain was the most famous mountain in the commercial district. It was even the most famous mountain in the entire outer wall as the headquarters of the Holy Church was located in here. The mountain was 580 meters tall with full of steep cliffs. It was covered in white flowers. The thick black snow couldn't freeze the white flowers but would make it bloom more brilliant and beautiful. That's why the name of these white flowers was Sunflower. Because of Sunflower's proud, unyielding and tenacious qualities it had got the appreciation of the first pope. Since then the sunflowers were called as holy flowers too. They were engraved all over the mountain as a holy emblem. It symbolized the pursuit of light God's will. Sunflowers couldn't be spoiled or taken out. The people responsible for the flowers would be punished if anything happened to them. St. Mark's Square on Mountaintop An old man was quietly sitting in here. He was wearing a gorgeous gown and holding onto a scepter which had a fist big white gem on top of it. Voice! Voice! The silence of the square was broken by the anxious cries of a woman. The old man slowly turned to see a boy who was around eight or nine years old running towards him as he carried a wooden sword. A graceful woman dressed as a nun was chasing the kid. Grandpa Pope, I want to fight you. 
The little boy rushed to stop in front of the old man and said in an angry tone, Voice. The nun reached and pulled the kid in hurry. She bowed in front of the old man. Pope, it's because of my discipline wasn't strict that voice disturbed you. She pulled the boy's hand as hard as she could, but because of disparity and strength, she couldn't take him away. Pope smiled as he raised his hand to stop her. He looked at the little boy. Do you want to duel? Yes. Voice replied. Pope, your highness, please don't take his words to heart. He is just playing around. Nun looked at Boyce. You are being rude. Apologize to the Pope right now. You don't understand what you are doing. Pope asked in a tone with full of interest. Why? Because I'm angry. The little boy thought that his answer was reasonable. Voice. Nun was frightened. Stop uttering nonsense. Apologize. Pope raised his hand to interrupt her. No need to suppress and hold back the anger. I would like to listen to your reasoning. Voice, why are you angry? Nun Riley smiled as she let go of the little boy. She winked at the kid, but the latter ignored her. I'm going to fight you. Voice continued. Grandpa Pope, you said that if I can beat the instructor, then I can go down the mountain to play. Nobody is listening to me. Why? I want to beat you so that everyone will listen to me. Nun's face turned pale and her body trembled as she heard the kid's words. She almost fainted because of fear. Pope smiled, remember my original words. I said that you are allowed to go down the mountain if you can beat the instructor on a head-on fight. You cheated by using a medicine for diarrhea. Is that right? It's not the right way. Pope smiled as he spoke. Boyce's neck shrank a bit and a trace of embarrassment flashed in his eyes. However, he brought back his head. I didn't use medicine for diarrhea. I relied on strength to beat him. HMPF. You are going to be the most outstanding knight of light. You shouldn't lie. Pope said in a serious tone. Boyce was not willing to bow his head so he stubbornly said, I didn't lie and I also disdain lies. I gave him a medicine for abdominal pain not for diarrhea. The kid whispered, how could a mere medicine for diarrhea make his stomach? Pope shook his head as he smiled, anyway, you should beat him face to face. Boyce pouted, Grandpa Pope, why others can go down but I can't. It's unfair. Pope gently touched his head, silly kid, you aren't same like others. You will become the most powerful person in the Holy Church in the future. Actually, you will be the strongest person in the outer wall. Boyce replied, I'll die because of boredom by that time. Pope laughed. Nun took the opportunity as she saw that Pope was angered. Your Highness, Boyce is not sensible. Please forgive his rude. Pope held Boyce's shoulder. Would you quickly grow up if you are angry? The kid saw the serious look on Pope's face. He thought for a moment and nodded. I'll grow up as soon as possible. I'll whip that instructor day and night. HMPF. He will ask for mercy from me every day. Pope couldn't help but smile. It seems that the kid had decided on it. Grandpa Pope, why are you always sitting here? Boyce asked in a curious tone. Pope smiled as he turned to face the vast St. Mark Square. There were numerous buildings at the end of the square. He whispered, because it has the best scenery. Hawkeye was pacing back and forth on the balcony of the manor. He saw a figure came closely. It was Dean. Hawkeye's eyes lit up as he rushed to greet Dean. Elder, you finally came back. One of our subregions is being swallowed by the eighth region. Dean raised his hand before Hawkeye could finish. Hawkeye turned silent. Dean went into the manor without a word. He walked along the underground passage to the headquarters. A woman almost hit him on the way. She apologized in hurry as she recognized Dean. Hawkeye shouted, Bastard, do you want to die? Dean had gone far by that time. Elder, you are back. Noyce stood upright when he saw Dean come back. Hawkeye joined the room too. He wanted to continue to report, but Dean said in a cold tone, From now on the Ninth Region will be controlling by you and 14 council members. You will decide by voting. Hawkeye was stunned. Prepare an alchemy room for me. Dean sat down on chair. He put the ashes aside and lifted a pencil to write bunch of materials. No one would come in without my permission. Do you understand me? Hawkeye was at a loss. Elder, are you? Did you understand? Yes, Elder. Hawkeye scratched his head. Elder, but you were the one to control the ninth region. Didn't you say that we will be one of the top five regions within six months? Then, if there is someone who wants to say something, then let them come personally. Dean said in an indifferent tone, the previous commitment won't change. You don't have to worry about as the ninth region will become one of the top five areas within six months. Hawkeye looked at him. Elder, what about the 8th region? I said you will deal with everything with the council members. 
There will be a total of 15 people so there won't be any deadlocks. Dean handed out the paper to Hawkeye. Prepare these materials and send them to my alchemy room. Hawkeye quickly glanced. Most of them were metal materials. He couldn't help but wonder what Dean had in mind. But this was a quite clear message to him. Elder was an alchemist. Noise who was by Dean knew that something was wrong with Dean. However, he remembered the shark spear and two legendary items that Dean had produced. His heart turned cold as he knew that Dean was up to something else. The Dark King Chapter 480 Check about the institutional structure of the barbarians and get me all the information about the members of the barbarian royal family including the personal preferences. Barbarians? Hawkeye was slightly startled. He didn't expect Dean to inquire about barbarians. Although he didn't know what Elder wanted to do but it was obviously a grand matter. He didn't inquire much, yes, Elder. Go. Hawkeye left the office. Dean took a piece of paper and began to draw with a pencil. Outline of two sketches emerged which were two different faces. Dean handed out the paper to Noyce after drawing was done. Personally look after these two men. Noyce took a look to remember them but was puzzled. Elder, who are they? They are knights belonging to Magistrate at Caesar Avenue. Dean indifferently said, Don't forget to make sure that they find you. In case they are killed keep up with the killers to find the people behind their deaths. Noyce was confused but didn't ask for more as it seemed Dean wasn't going to tell anything else for now. Dean was silent for a moment before giving the ashes to Noyce. Find a cemetery and bury it. Noyce asked, Elder, what's this? Ashes. Noyce's face slightly changed. Who's? My foster parents. Dean took a deep breath. Someone wanted to inquire information about me from their mouth. Find a good place and bury their ashes. Don't write their names on the tombstone. Noyce was at a loss. Them? How could they? He clearly remembered the faces of Jura couple. Dean had commissioned him to personally bring them to the commercial district. Noyce didn't imagine that innocent couple to be killed. No wonder Dean was like a volcano which was about to burst and explode when he came back. Were these two the culprits? Noyce was angry as he looked at the pictures one more time. They are just minions and wouldn't be used for such a thing. Dean continued, The people who got the money to rule out the outcome may know about the situation. But I think they wouldn't know much too. I will assassinate them. Noyce said in an angry tone. Dean slightly shook his head. We can't scare the snake now. They are just nobodies. I want to catch the people who killed them. Noyce suddenly thought of something. Is it the Mel family? I don't think so. Dean narrowed his eyes. The people responsible for this should have no hatred or resentment towards me. It seems that they wanted to control me by finding my weakness. They wanted to control a master. So that they could threaten me in the future when necessary. It seems they didn't let go of their aim. Dean once again remembered the tragic scene which looked like hell. There was a trace of extreme hatred and anger in his eyes. His face expression turned ferocious for a moment but the next instant it faded away. Noyce instinctively wanted to retreat when he saw the killing intent on Dean's face. He knew that Dean won't hurt him but he couldn't help but panic. Noyce pondered for a moment. Elder, how do you know that they didn't let go of their goal? If the enemy knew your weakness. Dean interrupted Noyce's words. I wouldn't be sitting in here then. He would be isolated by the Holy Church in case Jura said that he had ice blood syndrome. He was sure that Jura didn't disclose his illness. That's why the pain in his heart was much heavier. Go! Dean was tired as he closed his eyes. Noyce picked up the ashes and lightly went away. Dean slowly opened his eyes after a while. The previous exhaustion was no longer there. He took a pencil and a paper. It was time to draw the new invention. Conference Hall. Where's he? Are we going to decide by voting? He actually want us to decide the matters when the others are at our doors. I tease the first time I see an elder like him. Stop quarreling. Isn't it the same? I believe elder has his own reasons. Fourteen members of the council debated. Several of them sided with Dean. Angelica who was punished earlier by Dean was one of them. Hawkeye slightly smiled as he had expected the situation. He slightly raised his hand. Ladies and gentlemen. The 8th region wants to swallow our 13th subregion. Although it's a remote place with no resources but it is our boundary. Once a hole is torn they're bound to be more trouble in the future. Other regions would get the courage to treat us same way too. Nonsense. Of course we can't let them act the way they want. Tom said in anger. 8th region is deliberately provoking us. HMPF. They have been staring at our region for long. Ladies and gentlemen we have to protect everything that is ours. Of course. 
Most of the agreed to keep the 13th subregion. Only four or five people didn't agree. There was a person who wanted to abandon the subregion. Hawkeye, the elder, said that we will become one of the top five regions within six months. Did he abandon the idea? The enchanting woman said, It seems that he is retreating now. What do you say? Hawkeye didn't expect the topic to be brought up again. Elder said that he will certainly accomplish that task. It's too early and you are being impatient. Today we will talk about the problem that we are facing right now. No one replied when they heard this. They continued to discuss the plan to recapture the 13th subregion. The Dark King Chapter 481 Two days passed. The outer wall as always was calm on the surface and waves splashed in the darkness. The ninth region eventually chose to fight back the eighth region after the vote. They recaptured the 13th subregion and Tom personally led the force to reconstruct the guarding posts. Conflicts on this magnitude occurred often. Afterwards the subregions would be ruled jointly or a friction would be inevitable. Dean was working in the alchemy room in the headquarters of the ninth region. He was researching his own new invention. He decided not to deal with the affairs of the ninth region before completing the product. It didn't matter to him whether the ninth region lost or gained anything. He didn't want to take over the business of the ninth region so as not to waste his own energy. After all, he wasn't doing anything good for himself but the dirty work of the monastery. However, the new invention was totally different. I would be used for his own interests. Moreover, this would be the strongest weapon in his hand. He would be able to get revenge for the Jura and Grey. Moreover, he could overthrow the inner wall and become the king of the outer wall. Since there had to be a king, then he would be the one. In an underground hall. They haven't moved even thought it has been two days. A man whose face was covered with a mask said. A graceful figure wearing black goggles knelt in front of the man and whispered. In addition to normal colleagues, no one else contacted with them. The man looked up. It seems that the newly appointed elder isn't the genius master who had disappeared. HMPF. The old guys in the monastery should have taken this rare talent for themselves. Graceful figure looked down without a word. Go and clean up. Make sure that you don't leave any traces. The man said in an indifferent tone. Graceful figure indifferently replied. Yes. Knock knock. The door to the alchemy room was knocked as Dean was engraved in drawing apart. He wrinkled his brows as he turned his head. He saw the heat emitted from the person standing behind the door. According to the emission of heat it should be noise. He put down the pen and moved to open the door. Elder. Noise was slightly startled when he saw Dean's messy hair. The knights that I was tracking were killed today. Dean narrowed his eyes. Did you track the killers? They were two people and were wearing masks. I tracked them all the way to a manor in Simpson Town. They didn't come out for a long time so I guess they are people of the dark church too. Noise said in hurry. Simpson Town. Dean's chest went up and down. The Underworld King, Dean said in a cold tone. Don't follow them anymore so that we don't scare the snake. Attend all meetings of the Ninth Region with Hawkeye and record the content of the meetings. Report to me immediately if any of the operations implicate Sergei or the New World Consortium. Yes. Noyce nodded. Dean closed the door. Same night. There was a trace of weariness in his eyes as Dean came out of the alchemy room. He joined the office and drank two bottles of red wine form Carrie's collection. He had replaced the previous need for high-calorie food with the wines. The results were good as this special wine could easy his hunger and coldness in his body. The only bad part was that it was easily intoxicating him. I have to order Hawkeye to brew some wine to warm my body. Dean looked at the wine shelf. He wore a suit, black robe and tied a dagger to his legs. He opened the drawer and glanced at an information. He confirmed the address and left the office. Elder. Hawkeye was surprised to see Dean. Elder, are you leaving? I'm going out for a feast. Dean adjusted his tie. Something wrong. Hawkeye Riley smiled. Nothing. Dean nodded and left the manor. Normally, at least one intermediate level knight would follow an elder for protection. Fortunately, the elder's strength was extraordinary, and there was no need for additional protection. Dean went out of the manor and sneaked into a dark street. He went around a dozen streets before taking the suit and tie off. He threw them into a trash cane and covered them with leftovers to cover the smell. No one would be able to trace him this way. 
Whoosh! Dean quickly left the commercial district and came to the Golden Wall. At the moment the Golden Wall was being repaired by workers. Most of it had been restored. The patrolling soldiers went back and forth along the Golden Wall. The barbarians were still occupying the Red Maple Mountains. That's why the military didn't dare to slightly relax in defense of the Golden Wall. Dean went towards the part of the Golden Wall which faced the Giant Wall. Those areas were mainly wastelands and the people avoided to live in those areas because of intense radiation. Dean took of his coat. The transparent wings stretched out from his skin and quickly became thin and hard. The flapped as his body went upwards. He flied over the Golden Wall and came back to the area where people lived some time ago. The towns were desolate. The villages and towns had become ghost towns. The houses looked gloomy in the darkness of the night. Dean passed through the abandoned villages and towns straight to the Red Maple Mountains. Waterfall. Yvette was sitting on the edge of the cliff. The sound of the waterfall roared beside her ear. She was in trance as she looked at the faint starlight. She sneaked back with the help of Glenn. However, her tribesmen looked at her strangely because of her return. Especially several brothers and sisters of her which she was close with in the past tried to avoid her as much as they could. It felt as if she was infected with a plague that would spread out any time. She felt lonely. Yvette was aware that what the people were worried about. It simply didn't make sense that she could safely come back after being arrested. She felt that even her father didn't believe her after she explained the reason to him. I'm not a spy. I'm clear about it even though they may choose not to believe me, Yvette whispered. They will naturally believe that I'm not a spy as long as I'm not involved in any intelligence leaks. She secretly made up her mind. However, she didn't notice that a black figure swept from behind the waterfall. The shadow didn't issue a sound it gently walked towards her. The Dark King Chapter 482 Dean's eyes lit up as he looked at the familiar figure sitting on the cliff. He walked around the whole Red Maple Mountains for about two hours to find her. Fortunately, he had thermal vision to detect the problems in advance. Dean saw that she still hadn't responded when he was about two or three meters away from her. He was no longer polite as he quickly reached out as he used the dagger. Ah! Yvette was perplexed when she heard the sound of movement. The first thing that came to her mind was the bodyguard sent by her father. However, the next moment that idea shattered as she felt the strong killing intent from behind her. S.H. wanted to pull out the dagger from her legging but she felt the cold dagger on her neck. Her body frozen as she didn't dare to act rashly. However, she knew that whoever the person was didn't want to kill her. Dagger didn't cut off her neck but stopped. Yvette was relieved. However, she didn't feel well because of the throat being under the gasp of the dagger. Who are you? Do you know who am I? My father will send troops after you if you dare to assassinate me. Dean said in hoarse low tone, tell me honestly. Who help you come back? What is your purpose? Yvette's heart sank down. Who are you? Who is your master? Stop being long-winded. Dean continued, if you are not honest then say goodbye to your head. The dagger moved a bit and sliced a bit off her neck. The blood oozed along the dagger. Yvette's face turned ugly. A man who has a high position in the wall helped me to come back. I have no purpose. Do you mean that you were sent as a spy? Dean said. It was time of war so he had to speak accordingly. No, no. There was a trace of anger in Yvette's eyes. If not for the dagger tingling by her neck she would have vented all the anger on the man. I will never ever work as a spy and betray my people. The man just helped me get back. Why no one believes me? All right. Dean snorted. At the same time few figures came from the other places. He had deliberately left traces so that other could reach them. He no longer delayed. Since you don't want to talk then no point in staying alive. He raised the dagger. Cold sweat poured down Yvette's body. She saw that the enemy had lifted the dagger so she seized the gap to lift her own dagger to block. Bang! Sparks burst out because of the friction. Yvette almost fell over the cliff because of the giant force of the enemy. Who? The patrolling barbarian shouted as they approached. Dean turned around and ran. Yvette turned around to see Dean's appearance. Although it was dark but the vision of barbarians was always excellent. Dean had raised his hand to block his face but Yvette was able to see his looks through the glimpse. Whoosh! Dean disappeared in the darkness. Several barbarians guards who were on patrol came to see Yvette on the edge of the cliff. Princess are you? Yvette waved, I'm all right. It seemed that someone run away. The guards suspiciously looked at her. Yvette didn't hide anything, he tried to assassinate me but fortunately you came in time. 
The guards were shocked. Who is so bold who wants to assassinate you? Princess, did you see how he looked like? Yvette would never forget the face. Nope, I did not. One of the guards said, Princess, it's too late so you should go back to rest. We will inform the posts to find the person. Yvette nodded. The guards separated as they left. How could you find him? Yvette looked at the guards and bit her lips. I don't want to rebel. Why are you not giving the chance to prove my innocence? Why? Whoosh. The Red Maple Mountains were dangerous because of steep terrain. There were many tall cliffs. Even a veteran senior hunter would find it difficult to climb such dangerous terrains. That was the main reason why Red Maple Mountains was easy to defend but hard to attack. Dean flapped his wings as he disappeared. About ten minutes later, he slowly landed in the wilderness after he flew out of the Red Maple Mountains. He raised his hand and kneaded his face. The previous one was a fabricated face. He had ordered Hawkeye to investigate the members of the barbarian royal family. He had chosen Yvette's older brother's face which had high status and big rights. Yvette don't blame me. I can't allow you to fail. You have to become the king of barbarians and my pawn. Dean clenched his fists. He looked back at the direction of the Red Maple Mountains. He recovered his eyes after a moment and erased the blood from the dagger. He put them back into his legging. He knew that he need a weapon for close combat as the dagger wasn't enough. He was planning to use sharp sides of the adult splitter. It was undoubtedly best natural weapon. I didn't think there would be terrible monsters within the barbarian base. Dean checked the Red Maple Mountains while he was looking for Yvette. He found out a place on top of the hill. There were huge tins there. It seemed that they belonged to the chiefs of the tribes. He saw one which was much larger than the others. He wanted to directly go inside to face the king of barbarians. It would be much easier than planning with Yvette. Fortunately because of the thermal vision he was able to see the strong red heat within the tent. It was like a surging flame was exuded from the body. The person was comparable to Aisha from the inner wall. Aisha was definitely one of the strongest people he had seen so far. Perhaps the girl wearing the tang suit was comparable to Aisha. Moreover the figure patrolling the giant wall when he sneaked in with Glenn and Gwyneth was in that same power level too. It was proof of how terrifying the power of the barbarian king was. According to Dean the man was several times stronger than Francis. He was aware that if he battled with Francis for ten times he would win seven while Francis would win three times. But he knew that there was no chance of winning if he went against Aisha or the man who patrolled the giant wall. Francis belongs to the Limitless. Tang Suit Girl and Aisha should be top level Limitless too. Generally senior hunters can hunt monster up to level 30. Saints should be less than level 40. Francis could hunt monsters level 40 to 45. I can barely cope with monsters with level less than 50. It means that Aisha and the person who is patrolling the giant wall could fight with monsters above level 50. Tang Suit Girl is the same level too, Dean pondered. Although he didn't have thermal vision back then but he had directly observed Tang Suit Girl's combat prowess. Because of his observation he knew that at least for now he hadn't met anyone with stronger presence than them. The Dark King Chapter 483 The Dark King Dean came to the barrier wall set up by Holy Church. He relied on his thermal vision to escape all the patrols and came to stop in front of the giant wall. Dean used his wings to climb the giant wall. There was thick dust and black snow on top of the giant wall. Apparently no one had set foot in here. There was a patrol on the giant wall by the side of inner wall. However there isn't slightest residue of human interaction on the outer wall part. They may think that no one can climb the kilometer high wall from the outer wall, Dean pondered for a moment. If I reverse the reasoning then it means that there are people who could climb the giant wall in the inner wall. So they are trying to make sure that those people don't sneak in or out. He found the death passage after a moment. He overlooked from the top and saw that there was a red dot in the wilderness outside the giant wall. Dean focused to see that there was a simple shack and a person lay inside. It had to be Sergei. Whoosh! Dean flew away. In the blink of an eye he reached the grasses outside the shack. Sergei moved as he heard the movement. He grasped his weapon from the side and secretly looked through the door. Young master! Sergei was stunned to see Dean. Dean asked, Did you get the monster's body parts? Sergei didn't expect Dean to come out of the giant wall as he didn't dare to expose himself in the outer wall. He quickly replied, I haven't moved them as I didn't think you will come up so fast. Dean frowned. Sergei rushed in front to lead when he saw Dean unhappy. We can get them now. He didn't wait for Dean's answer. Dean didn't say anything. He knew about bad habits of Sergei and didn't want to easily blame him for everything. 
Soon they reached the remnants of adult Splitter's body. A rancid smell exuded from the body of the adult Splitter after so many days. Fortunately, the temperatures were very low because of the black snow season. The ground was frosty so the body was frozen. As a result, it wasn't completely frozen. Dean jumped down. He picked the forelimbs of the adult Splitter as they were the sharpest sides. He looked back at Sergei, cut off the parts as soon as possible. Find a place to restore it and make sure that it doesn't rot. Sergei scratched his head, all of it. All. Dean replied, including flesh and blood. Sergei Riley smiled. Why do we need its flesh and blood? We can't eat them anyway. There are many parasites and bacteria in it by now. Dean glanced back at him. People may not be able to eat but monsters can. Do you get me? Sergei wanted to kill himself. He was also a senior hunter but had totally forgotten about the use of monster meat. The time in prison had rusted him. He said, I know. But we can't retain its corpse for long. It will rot anyway after the black snow season. Don't worry about that. I have a way to keep them frozen. Dean indifferently said. He held onto long scythes that were almost 10 meters long. Both limbs seemed thin but they weren't light. Each of them weighted about thousand pounds. Fortunately this weight was nothing to him because of his current constitution. They came back to the giant wall. Dean asked, do you have ropes? Yes. Sergei took out a bundle of ropes from the shack. Dean took them over and opened his wings. He went straight to the giant wall. Sergei was stunned at the scene. He finally understood how Dean was able to sneak out from the inner wall. He had a pair of wings. Dean instantly flew to the giant wall. Sergei knew that flight was the ability of gods. He didn't think that as a mortal he would have such a great magic marks. Such an ability. It's impossible with rare magic marks. He certainly has legendary magic marks. Sergei enviously looked at him. Dean unlocked the rope and tied it to the edge of the giant wall. He flew down and stopped in front of Sergei, temporarily live outside the giant wall. Sneak back using the rope in case of an urgency. After you get to the top of the giant wall then go down to the corner. The radiation is too large in the corner so there is no patrol station by the holy church. It will be up to you to pass the golden wall. Sergei's eyes lit up as he looked at the rope. There was excitement in his heart as he never expected to board onto the giant wall one day. It's good. At least I won't have to stay in the detention center for a week. Sergei grinned. Dean nodded. Although there were people from the Ninth Region who had infiltrated detention center and the Holy Church and he could use his privileges as elder to let Sergei go back directly but it would easily expose his own identity. I'll go back now. Dean said. He bent over and grabbed the sides from the edges. Dean unfolded his wings and leapt up. The weight of sides didn't affect his flight. Moreover, those sides would be very usable in close combat to behead the enemy. Whoosh! Dean began to run after landing on Giant Wall. Dean quietly entered the commercial district after an hour. He hid the sides in a common house which was owned by a family of three. The couple had a 16-year-old daughter. All of them were asleep as he hid the sides in the cellar of the house. Dean returned back to the headquarters of the Ninth Region afterwards. It was two o'clock in the morning but the headquarters was very busy and bustling. The elite of the Ninth Region was buying and selling high-end items. Most of the people who were attending were at least three-star alchemists. Of course, some high-status alchemists would bring their students to open their eyes to the world. Dean walked through the square. Dean felt a familiar smell that floated in the air. He stopped to look at a middle-aged man who was wearing a black robe. He was selecting materials from a stall. There was a slim girl wearing an owl mask behind him. The familiar smell scattered from her body. Nightingale. Dean was startled as he didn't imagine to see the old acquaintance in here. Greetings, Elder. Greetings, Elder. The passerby people respectfully saluted him. They didn't mind Dean who didn't respond to them. Dean pondered for a moment before he went towards Nightingale. The stall owner who was showing the materials to the middle-aged alchemist felt someone came up. He was frightened as he looked up. Subordinate greets Elder. The black-robed middle-aged man quickly bowed too. Greetings, Elder. Nightingale was also reacted when she saw her teacher act too respectfully. However, she was surprised as she didn't expect the elder of the Ninth Region to look so young. Dean was silent as he observed her. She was smart as always. He looked at the middle-aged alchemist. You seem to have a good student. The man was stunned. Nightingale was shocked but then she was in joy. She didn't imagine that she would get the favor of the elder in the first meeting with him. It was a sign that she would get a lot of benefits in the future. Moreover, she was going to be famous in their own circle. Dean turned and left without a word. 
the trio reacted after Dean left. Nightingale looked at her teacher. Teacher, he just praised me. The middle-aged man looked at her. Not he but elder. Nightingale smiled. Teacher, the elder of our ninth region seems so young. Don't talk nonsense. The middle-aged man said. Nightingale didn't dare to talk more as she saw her teacher take a harsh stance. The stall owner smiled. Little girl, you may not now, but members of the council and elder have their own ways to keep themselves young. They may look in their twentieth, but in reality they could be older than your grandfather. Nightingale uttered, really? The middle-aged man frowned. Ask your teacher. Stall owner smiled. Elders have extraordinary knowledge which a twenty-year-old man couldn't know. You are too young. Nightingale replied in a well-behaved manner. Thanks for telling me. It's all right. The stall owner smiled, but you will have a promising future if you got the appreciation of the elder. You might be stronger than your teacher in the future. So take care of my business if you get promoted. Nightingale smiled. My teacher is very powerful. I could never learn all his knowledge in this lifetime. The middle-aged man eased a bit as he revealed a pleased smile. Dean looked at Hawkeye the moment he arrived in the headquarters. Come over. Yes. Hawkeye kept up with him. Dean wrote down an address. Go to this address. There will be two body parts of a monster. Each of them are about 10 meters long. Be sure to bring them back here in safety. Hawkeye nodded. Yes. He took the note and left. Dean put on the clothes of a five-star alchemist after Hawkeye left. The clothing could block the radiation from the vast majority of materials. It was even resistant to the radiation in the radiation zone. It was an extremely expensive clothing. He went into the alchemy room to continue working on the production of the new item. The new product was totally different from the ones in the past. It was a vast project and he had to rely on himself to finish it. Although the other alchemists could complete the item because the technical content wasn't high but that way the information might leak to the ears of Pope and the monastery. That's why he had to rely on himself to do it. The time required to finish it would be much longer too. He estimated that it would take a few months for himself to finish the project. However, it meant that there would be confidentiality and security. The new item would be his gift to the public of the whole wall. Therefore, he couldn't afford to lose. Dean went out of alchemy room in exhaustion. He returned to the office to see Noyce had already brought the breakfast. Dean ate breakfast and called Hawkeye. Did you bring the materials from the yesterday? Yes. Hawkeye asked, Elder, do you want them now? Dean waved his hand, I don't need them. Hire a few masters to transform those scythes. I need handles above them. Don't forget that there is no need to modify its characteristics as they are already sharp enough. Yes. Hawkeye respectfully replied. He had seen the two scythes. He guessed Dean's purpose. It meant that Elder was making a weapon for himself. Moreover, he saw the terrifying sharpness of the scythes when they carried it back. In addition, they were very heavy. The scythes could slice the iron as if cutting through butter. Dean took out a paper and pen. He had good idea about what kind of a weapon he wanted. He painted it on paper and handed it to Noyce. Make sure that they follow this style. Yes. Noyce left. The Dark King. Chapter 484. Depths of the St. Paul's Abbey in the Inner Wall. I have heard that he is buried in his own alchemy room for day and night. He had let go of the management of the Ninth Region. The elder of the Punishment Division leniently leaned against the sofa. A repulsive groan echoed from a sturdy young man who was in front of him. The youth's body was hanging and there were scars all over it. There were stab wounds, whiplashes, and so on. Even the skin of the abdomen was cut open. The flesh and blood was revealed. The internal organs would fall out if the cut was a bit deeper. Francis looked down at his feet as he replied, According to the news from the shadow he had let the secretary of the former elder, Hawkeye, and the fourteen members of the council to control the region by popular vote. The kid just took over the office and claimed to be the devil. Why did he lay low so suddenly? The elder glanced at Francis. Francis still bowed his head. I have inquired about the details. It is likely that he changed his mind after an incident. Oh, it was a small event. Pope gave him a task. He commanded him to send someone to assassinate a member of naturists. However, he personally went to the task. According to my understanding, this small even made him change. There are likely two reasons. First is that his ideas changed after being in touch with the member of naturists. The second is that Pope took this opportunity to nurture a knight of light. This knight was the member of a family which was his enemy. Most probably he was dissatisfied with it and stopped. The elder slightly wrinkled his eyebrows, so it seems this old guy Miller had made a move. 
He has also realized that we have sent the kid to be nurtured as an elder to replace him in the future. So he had deliberately used his former enemy to anger the kid. Miller wanted to kill Dean's will and get rid of him. A good play. Francis was startled. Elder, do you mean that Pope isn't willing to retire? He has been in ultimate power for twenty years and accustomed to the identity. Elder indifferently smiled. He knew that the kid has potential and we will do our best to cultivate and nurture him. Miller is aware that the kid will replace him sooner or later. Ha ha ha. Really funny. Francis pondered for a moment. I'll send someone to notify him then. He refers Dean. Nope. Elder continued. It's a small problem. How can he serve as a pope if he can't overcome it? He is still too young. We gave him rights and powers to be in charge of others, but he isn't accustomed yet. We have to wait a bit. We have to wait until he wakes up and wants to be strong. It's kind of a life experience, too. Yes, Francis responded. But old Miller is inobedient. He will think that we are blind if we don't beat him. The elder looked at Francis. Do you know what to do? Francis whispered. I understand. Go. Elder waved. Francis left in hurry without neglecting for a second. Elder gently smiled as he looked at the youth who was hanging in front of him. You have rested for half a day. Have you considered my proposal? The youth closed his eyes. He was barely breathing, but he still kept his silence. Why are you being so stubborn? The elder said in a soft tone. The pain will disappear and there will be money and beauties for you to enjoy as long as you are willing to write down that recipe. You will live so until the end of your life. What's the meaning of being stubborn? Monster Institute won't be able to take you out from this situation. The youth slowly opened his eyes and said, Monotheistic dogs who want to get their hands of the formula of the abyss. Why don't you go to Kingdom of God, die, to inquire the formula? I bet you can't even make half a step. Elder shook his head. I like stubborn people like you. I like challenges. Three days passed in the blink of an eye. Dean came out of the alchemy room. Noyce was familiar with Dean's timetable so he had prepared the breakfast and advanced. He personally tried everything to confirm that none of them were toxic. Dean checked the newspapers while making the breakfast. He wanted to understand the recent changes from the perspectives of the newspapers. The military had restored its strength and was ready to expel the barbarians. Dean's eyes lit up. He called Noyce after the breakfast and asked, when the weapon will be ready? The master said that materials are too hard. It's very difficult to insert the handle. It will take a few more days. Noyce responded. Everything was within Dean's expectations. Try to urge them but ensure that the quality is good. Yes. Dean needed an ordinary face and wore a mask. He left the office. Hawkeye quickly stepped forward when he saw Dean. Elder, are you leaving? A small trip. Dean left the ninth region. A few hours later, Dean appeared by the giant wall. He flew to the top of the giant wall and went to the western corner of the giant wall. He flew down and hit his wings. He swept around the place and didn't see Aisha. It seems he was earlier than her. Dean found a clean rock and sat on top of it. There are lots of monsters in the region. Dean checked the place. He wouldn't be able to find a place if he didn't have his abilities. He saw some huge red heat scattered few miles around his location. The monsters weren't inferior to Sergei or other senior hunters in terms of heat emission. He estimated them to be around level 30. The Dark King Chapter 485 Unfortunately, there isn't a passage by the side of the giant wall or I could think of ways to lease it. We could create large number of high-end equipment if we could hunt all these monsters. Dean pondered. In his eyes these bloodthirsty monsters were materials. However, his time was limited so he couldn't personally come over to hunt them. He shook his head as he smiled, but even if we create an equipment from the parts of a legendary monster it will be useless in hands of a scavenger. It's not just about the equipment but the strength of a user too. If the genetic technology of today's world wasn't so advanced I could just build few bombs and easily overthrow the rule of the inner wall. Dean sighed. Imagination was lustful while reality was ruthless. Are you sighing because you waited me for long? A sweet voice echoed. Dean was startled. He looked up and saw Aisha. She was wearing a green tank suit and high heel shoes. There was a blue necklace made out of gems hanging on her neck. There was two bracelets on her wrist made out of strings of crystals. She looked delicate and beautiful. Dean was startled to see her dress like that. Why like this? Aisha laughed. We are at a date. Dean's heart jumped as he froze on spot. I was hoking. Aisha smiled. There was a touch of red on her cheek too, but it's first time that I'm meeting with a boy alone. 
excluding that time in childhood. Her eyes blinked. Dean couldn't help but think about two of them going to the orphanage. He looked at her and sincerely said, thanks for that time. Aisha laughed. Which one? Childhood. Aisha laughed. I thought you were talking about last time. Dean smiled. Thanks for that too. It's one and same. Aisha looked at him. We have rare time alone. Let's walk around. Dean saw her casual appearance and was stunned. It was as if she was walking in a garden. Actually, he was aware of her strength so this region could be considered as a garden for her as there was no threat to her in here. All right. But it won't be convenient for you to fight against the monsters if we meet any. Aisha gentle said, you have to protect me. Let's go. Dean's heart was already calm but there were traces of waves. He couldn't help but glance at her once more. Aisha grabbed her skirt as she jumped around the rugged grass and rocks. She was about 10 meters away when she turned, come on. Dean quickly kept up with her. He was wearing an armor so he wasn't afraid of anything for now. Aren't you afraid of radiation so that you are wearing thin clothes? Dean asked when he caught up with her. It's a meteorite stone which can disperse the radiation around the body. So I'm not worried about that. Moreover, this area has only shallow radiation. It's not like outside. Aisha replied. Dean looked at the meteorite stones in her wrist. They were similar to crystals but were different from diamonds. After a careful look he saw white filaments flowing around the stones. Do they sell it in the inner wall? Dean asked because of curiosity, by the way, what is shallow radiation zone? From his perspective, even the radiation zone where the barbarians lived would have certain impact on him. He couldn't live and survive there for long time. Because of the radiation his body would deform. But Aisha said that they were still in shallow radiation zone. Tay meteorite stone is not for sale. Aisha continued. Only powers such as our dragon clan can obtain it. You can't buy it for money in the market. As for the shallow radiation zone, it's far from here. You gotta run into wasteland to get out of this zone. You will need almost half a day without counting the time delayed by the monsters on the way. Dean was more curious. Do you mean that the monsters in the wasteland are stronger? Of course. Aisha said without hesitation, it's not just stronger but much, much stronger. I wouldn't want to be there alone as it's just too dangerous. Dean's eye lit up. Aisha's strength was inconceivable for him at this point so there were places which even she didn't want to go. What are you thinking about? Aisha saw the solemn expression on Dean's face. Dean pondered for a moment and slowly said, I was thinking about the strength of these monsters. I would be difficult to kill all of them and clean the world. Aisha laughed. That's impossible. Do you want to kill all the monsters? I wouldn't even dare to think about that. Do you know what kind of terrifying monsters there are? I would be their food if I met a legendary monster. Even our giant wall can't resist such monsters. Dean looked back the towering giant wall and whispered, it would be worth destroying this giant wall. What? Aisha asked. Dean shook his head. Nothing. A strange look flashed through Aisha's eyes, but the next moment she turned back to her previous sweet express. Don't say that. We are here to stroll around. I heard that these ruins were places where the humans lived 300 years ago. I have heard that humans were very strong and ruled all over the world. It wasn't like the humans were stuck within the giant wall. What do you think the cities were like 300 years ago? The Dark King Chapter 486 300 years ago? There was a complex expression on Dean's face when he heard her words. He slowly said, in fact, there is not much of a difference from 300 years ago. No difference. Aisha was surprised because she noticed that Dean's tone didn't belong to someone who speculated but made a statement. It was as if he had seen it. She felt a bit funny. How do you know? Dean looked at the ruins which were covered in grass. He was vaguely able to see asphalt road and debris of high-rises. He was silent as he didn't answer Aisha's question. He didn't want to lie. Aisha was considerate as she didn't continue to ask when she saw him not answer her. She had met a lot of suitors since small ago and experienced lots of strange ways used by her pursuers. Some pretended to have profoundness like Dean as to life her interest. She didn't discuss those people but felt prideful. Dean was using this method to get her interest. It meant that the dress she wore wasn't in vain. Are you willing to join the dragon clan? She changed the subject and asked a straightforward question. She was too lazy to continue to go through useless topics since she felt that Dean was interested in her. Moreover, her time was very valuable. She turned to look at Dean with soft eyes. No man could resist her look. Dean was startled as he didn't expect her to make the invitation. His mind was swaying towards the easy life, but suddenly the tragic appearance of Jura couple emerged. 
His feelings cooled down as he whispered, Sorry, but I don't want to join other forces for time being. Aisha was perplexed as she didn't expect Dean to refuse her invitation. She thought that Dean was intentionally using the escape trick. She decided that Dean was too cunning so she didn't continue to force the choice upon him as not to lose face. She clapped, let's go. Dean nodded. Aisha jumped towards a block of boulders in a lively manner. Dean was startled as he noticed that Aisha couldn't detect the presence of monsters even though her physique was top-notch. Did it mean that her perception was poor? However, he didn't utter a word as it would expose his own abilities. He was vigilant despite the kindness he had seen from her. Dean walked after her when a figure jumped out from the grasses. It was Wolf Lizard which was a level 32 monster. Its body was covered with hard cuticle. It opened its mouth to swallow Aisha. Dean said in hurry, be careful. Aisha rapidly responded. She leaped high up and the wolf lizard couldn't bite her. Instead her legs touched the wolf lizard's head. Bang! Aisha's body fell on monster's head and its head was trampled down. The stones underneath were crushed. The wolf lizard's jaw was knocked open as it was killed on spot. Dean's pupils shrank as he looked at the sight. The monster was a level 32 monster. Moreover, it was a natural predator of this terrain. Two senior hunters who had reached the top of their class wouldn't be its opponent in a combat. But Aisha easily killed it. Aisha leaped up once more and dropped down on the monster's back. She lifted her foot to check her shoes. She was relieved to see that the high heels hadn't broken. Scared me. Aisha patted her chest. Although she was 16 years old but her peaks had matured long ago. They flapped which were very attractive. Dean rushed towards her. Are you all right? I'm all right. It's good that I didn't have to put much of an effort. Aisha smiled. Dean's mouth slightly twitched. Did she call it effortless? Let's go. The other monsters will come over because of the smell of blood. I don't want our date to be interrupted by those things. Aisha grinned. Dean saw her mention the word date once more. However, he didn't say anything and followed after her. It didn't take long for six monsters to come towards the corpse of the wolf lizard. Dean and Aisha had left the place and were standing in front of a crumbling high-rise that was covered by moss. Aisha was like a green butterfly that floated towards the top of the high-rise. Dean stepped on the wall and climbed quickly. Let's take a break. Aisha grabbed a large leaf and patted it at the edge of the high-rise to sit down. Her slender legs swayed back and forth. Dean sat down next to her but didn't pay much attention. The structure of houses today are totally different from the 300 years ago. Aisha grinned. Dean was silent. Aisha turned to look at him. Did your parents abandon you? Dean thought of the frozen storage capsule. He remembered his father, mother, and sister. There was faint pain in his heart. Yes. Aisha looked at him. Do you hate them? They are so bad to leave you. Dean slightly shook his head. Why? Aisha was puzzled. Dean slowly said, If giving me chance to live is by abandoning me, how can I hate them? Aisha curiously asked, How do you know that they gave you the chance? Dean shook his head as he was reluctant to give answer. Aisha turned to look at the distance. In fact, you are like me. Dean was surprised for a moment. Are you an orphan? Aisha shook her head. I'm the second princess of the Dragon Clan. My mother has died, but my father is alive. A trace of gloominess flashed by her eyes, but she quickly converged. Dean's heart moved. However, intuition told him that there was a hidden secret that Aisha didn't tell him but he knew that he should ask for more. You are not an orphan since your father is alive. It's not like no one wants you. You don't understand. Aisha shook her head. I'm the second princess. I have an elder sister who is the princess of the dragon is my father's successor. She awakened the blood power since birth and became the genius of the dragon clan. She enjoyed the love and respect of the clan since birth while I was obscure and foiled by standing next to her. Dean was curious about blood power Aisha talked about. However, seeing the sad look on her face, she didn't intend to ask about that. Your sister bears a lot of responsibility. There is a saying that with power comes greater responsibility. There are two explanations to this. The first is that the people with greater power and capacity should bear more responsibility. The second is that people with great responsibilities get bigger capacity and power. Although the meaning seems the same, the order is totally different. So looking from this perspective, your sister who had awakened the blood power was forced to get the identity she has. It could be inferred that this identity and status didn't just bring her love but hardships too. Aisha bit her lips. Are you siding with her? I'm not helping or siding with her. I just want to say that there is no point in envy. Aisha pouted. If that was only the case, 
but you don't know. My sister was a troublemaker since childhood. No one could control her and she is also very jealous of others. She likes to forcefully grab the favorite things of others. Dean was startled and pondered for a moment. That's not a good attitude. She should have everything what she wants. Why would she be jealous of others? Aisha said, that's why I said she is hateful and greedy. Dean nodded, there is no stop to human wants. Aisha pouted, since childhood she felt that she should get all the love of the father. That's why she would say bad thing about me in front of father. Isn't she bad? Dean nodded, very bad. Aisha was more energetic as she got his approval. All the best resources of the dragon clan were used in her body because she is the goddess of the dragon. However, she would smear the name of our clan in front of others. Dean frowned, that's very bad. This is not the end. Aisha continued, she relied on father's favor to deduct my resources and to suppress my constitution. She wanted me to be only a limitless and stationed within the giant wall. Fortunately, I met some good people who helped me. Otherwise, my future would be uncertain. Dean was surprised, why would she harm you? It's not right as you are sisters from the same parents. She used to hurt me many times. Aisha sighed, she relied on her strength to hit me many times in the childhood. That's why once I secretly slipped out from the inner wall and met you. Dean understood the reason of their meeting, no wonder you secretly came out. At the same time he was surprised. She was able to sneak from the inner wall at that age. How strong her sister was to oppress her. Aisha looked at Dean, but I'm thankful for that. Fortunately she forced me out and I was able to meet you. Dean thought that her words could be considered as a confession. He pretended not to understand her. After all, he was grateful to her because virtually she saved his life. But gratitude didn't mean love. They had been in contact for too short and didn't completely understand each other. But there was a question in his mind. He thought that they were unfamiliar with each other, but she thought that they are considered very close? Is it that she is too lonely? It is because of her father's coldness and her sister's suppression she trusted him? However, he still couldn't remain indifferent. Aisha looked at Dean. She saw that Dean turned his head. Her lips curled up into a smile. Although Dean wasn't looking at her, but he was seeing the expression on her face. He didn't understand why she smiled, but he felt relieved. Dean turned his head and changed the topic. What's the name of your sister? She is called Haley. Aisha whispered. Dean noted down the name. He thought that he would make sure that this person feels the bitter taste after he overthrows the inner wall. This way he can return Aisha's kindness. Are you willing to go to inner wall with me? Aisha looked at Dean. Dean looked at her lonely and lovely eyes. It was difficult to refuse her. He clenched his fists. Sorry, but temporarily I can't go to inner wall. Why? There was a trace of anger on her eyes. Isn't it the dream of people from the outer wall to enter the inner wall? Dean smiled. I don't want for the time being, but I'll come in the future. Aisha bit her lips. I grew up without friends because of my sister. She destroyed everything that I loved. She got rid of them including my favorite pet that was killed by her. You can rest assured that now I have the power and strength to protect my friends. So don't be worried about that. Dean's feelings were tangled as he looked at her. He wouldn't have a safe environment in the inner wall unless he came up with the new product. According to Aisha the situation within the dragon clan was complex and he didn't want to get involved for now. At least until his new item was produced. He wanted to go into the inner wall when he felt that he had the strength to protect himself. I'm very sorry but I don't want to go. Give me a year. Oh no. Give me six months of time. I promise to personally come over to meet you inside the inner wall in six months. Dean refused. Aisha looked at him. Why half a year? Dean smiled. I have my own reasons. Aisha didn't force him. All right. I'll wait for you. Dean was relieved because of her answer but he felt embarrassed. After all, she had saved him and invited few times but he refused all the offers. But he had experienced many things and wasn't the ignorant teenager. He clearly knew that he needed unmatched strength to get indestructible feelings. The Dark King Chapter 487 I don't want to talk about unhappy things. Aisha looked at Dean, if you need my help in the outer wall then tell me. Although I don't have much of a network but it is very easy to intervene in the politics of outer wall. Dean was ashamed once more. She was ready to help him any time but he couldn't even accept her invitation which was very rude. He hesitated. There is a thing that I want to know. Oh, what's the matter? Aisha was delighted. As long as I can help you then no problem. Dean asked, How strong is your dragon clan in comparison with the monastery? This? Aisha laughed. Our clan is very strong. 
Actually, we are the strongest out of the three devil families. The monastery won't have a chance against us in a head-on fight. I alone can sweep a branch of the monastery. My sister can kill all of the masters of the monastery single-handedly. Dean was curious, is she that strong? Of course. She replied, although my sister is a bad girl with bad temper, but her strength is first class. In the entire giant wall, you can count people with fingers of one hand who can match her. In top five, Dean was surprised. He didn't think that Aisha's sister would be in top ranks of the giant wall. He couldn't help but ask, is she a top level limitless? Which level monsters she can handle? He stared at Aisha. It was a very crucial and critical information for him. The answer to this question meant that he will understand the people on top of the inner wall. He could plan his future actions accordingly and win in a swift war. Limitless. Aisha smiled as she thought about Dean's identity. You are from the outer wall, so it's very hard for you to know about it. But my sister and I are pioneers. We are above Limitless. The hunters are divided into three level or stages. The Limitless have two stages which are primary and advanced. An advanced Limitless with a rare magic mark can hunt monsters level 50 or so. If they learn some advanced combat technique, then they can cope up with monsters which are up to level 60. The Pioneer are above the Limitless. Aisha softly said, The origin of the word Pioneer lies in the existence of the Wasteland. Only the people who have reached the power of Pioneer can fight in the Wasteland. Otherwise, there is no result but death. Even Pioneers don't dare to go deep into the Wasteland. There are some terrifying monsters that you would never want to encounter. In general, the Limitless are stationed within the Giant Wall. They are blocking the monsters that try to invade the Giant Wall. That's why another name of the Limitless is Boundary. Pioneers are the ones who pioneered in conquering the Wasteland. We kill the powerful monsters outside the Giant Wall and clear the area for the further development. We use the powder to paint the lines so the more powerful monster don't close in. As for the small monsters in these pioneering areas, they are left for hunters to clean up as we are too lazy to deal with these little guys. Dean didn't expect that there was such a distribution. There were monsters that even the pioneers were afraid of. What kind of creatures were they? Up to which level can you hunt? Dean asked. Aisha pondered for a moment. I can hunt monsters up level 70 while my sister can kill monsters up to level 100. Dean was stunned. He understood that pioneers were people above everyone else but hunting level 70 or 100 monsters. He had met the splitter who was only a level 68 monster. It was very scary existence. In other words, the soft and delicate girl in front of him could fight and beat such a monster in a fight. He couldn't help but look up and down at Aisha. How could such a weak-looking body could hold such terrifying strength? According to his knowledge, the strength of human body relied on size of bones and muscle fibers. That's how the muscle exploded with strength. However, as he thought about his own transformation and changes, if he analyzed himself according to human standard, then he should be regarded as a monster. Actually, all the senior hunters were monsters. The change in physique and magic marks were inseparable part of the evolution. The more magic marks evolved, the more body had animal characteristics. He had a pair of wings which was non-human at all. Perhaps the simple muscle and bone structure within the body had undergone through many changes too. It wouldn't be normal human bones and muscle anymore. There were creatures called mollusks which had no muscles but could explode with terrifying strength. Accordingly, they couldn't be considered as humans even though they maintained the human appearance, brain, and emotions. The more they continued to evolve the extreme the changes would be. Dean pondered as he deeply thought about the issue, at extreme the hand changes to claws. The body itself will no longer be a human body but of a monster's. Would we be even humans at the extreme evolution? Will the brain change if the body is of animals? If the brain change then will the human emotion disappear? He was a bit absent-minded. All we do is focus on making our magic marks become stronger. But it seems that when we focus our attention on getting strong we forget about the things we lose. Are you alright? Aisha thought that she told too much for Dean to grasp. Dean shook his head as his mood got a bit sullen, nothing. It's just I was surprised that we as humans can get so strong. Aisha felt a bit weird. She thought that the words of Dean had a sense of self-deprecating. What is that powder? Dean continued to ask. As for the evolution he put it at the bottom of his heart and didn't want to think about it. He knew that it was futile because in this world he would die without the strength that the magic marks had brought. It seemed that there was no room for choice. Aisha smiled, that powder is taken from the insect god. The first time I heard it I thought that it's made by grinding. Then I learned that it wasn't. Guess what it was made of? Dean thought for a moment, 
excrement of the insect? How did you know? Aisha looked at him in amazement. Dean was dumbfounded. The name is a bit confusing. Aisha giggled. Yes. What is the insect? Dean continued. Aisha laughed. It's king of a worm. Its manure makes the other monsters get disgusted, dislike, and avoid. So, Dean continued, such insects are held by the most powerful forces of the inner wall. You changed the topic. You said that your sister can kill all the masters of the monastery by herself. Does it mean that the monastery is afraid of your dragon clan? Aisha shook her head. It's the contrary. We are no willing to provoke the monastery. They are not strong, but their heritage is deep. Moreover, they are independent while we are under the command of His Majesty. There is a non-aggression pact between us. We won't mess with them unless they take the initiative. Dean couldn't help but ask, if they are not that strong, then why aren't they controlled by His Majesty? Aisha shook her head. It's a long story. We will talk about it some other time. Moreover, some of that information isn't told to the outsiders. I can't talk about that. I hope you will forgive me. After all, I learned some of those information even after I was promoted to be a pioneer. Dean replied, nothing, I asked too much. It seems the monastery was much deeper than he had imagined. You are not angry. Aisha was relieved to see that. How could I be angry with you? You have your own difficulties. Dean asked, you said that there are three devil families. In addition to Dragon Clan, which are the other two families? There is Feather and Rock Clan. Aisha smiled. Three families are under the command of His Majesty. The Dragon Clan is in charge of law and order of the land. Feather Clan protects the skies. The Rock family is responsible for the potential risks from underground. They kill the monsters that would drill into the giant wall. Okay. Dean understood why the monsters couldn't sneak into the giant wall. It seems most of them were killed by the Rock Clan. What was that blood power about? Dean continued. Aisha seemed a bit troubled. This. I can only say that this power is unique to our dragon clan. Each person from three families have that blood power. But some can awaken it while it's dormant for others. However, only few people out of thousands can awaken it. Are chances so low? Dean was surprised. Aisha continued, but once you awaken the blood power. Her face turned sad. Dean changed the topic. Are there stronger people than pioneers? Aisha pondered for a moment. Maybe. I have never seen such people. Perhaps they exist only in legends. Aisha continued, The strongest person I have seen is my sister and she is only a pioneer. Dean thought that his new product will be able to deal with the inner wall. Aisha asked, Are you still a hunter? Dean nodded, You will certainly need God's marrow. Aisha's eye lit up, If you want to pass the limit of hunter then you must use God's marrow or else you will be stuck at the same level. Dean was puzzled, Do you want to? I will give you. Aisha said, I will help you with God's marrow. Your constitution is weak or else I would have given you the nucleus to become an advanced limitless. Give me. Dean was shocked. Aisha blinked. Don't you want it? Of course. Dean was planning to take the initiate to mention the matter to her. It was good that she was the first to propose it. Aisha smiled. I knew you will reply so. She pondered for a moment. I didn't bring any with me today so I'll give them to you the next time. Dean felt both grateful and ashamed how much it will cost. Aisha laughed. Do you want to give me money? You shouldn't think about that. The Dark King. Chapter 488. Dean said, thanks for everything. Aisha looked at him. Let's meet the next week. Next week. Dean pondered for a moment and nodded. All right. Aisha smiled as she looked at distance. Her legs gently shook as the breeze passed by. Are we friends? Dean was silent for a moment before whispering. We can be friends if you wish. Of course I want to be friends. Aisha grinned. Dean was silent. Dean realized that it was pretty awkward because of the silence. He wanted to find a topic to talk to Yiza but found out that he couldn't talk to her about anything. He had a lot to say but it was for the world. Aisha slowly stood up after a few minutes of silence. It's getting late. Let's go back. I'll bring you God's marrow the next time we meet. Dean also got up. I'll send you off. All right. She replied. Dean nodded. Both of them jumped from the tall building. The difference was that Aisha directly floated down while Dean stepped onto the concrete and ran down. He made few somersaults to unload force. Although because of his constitution he wouldn't be injured if he directly jumped down. The ground had become muddy and wouldn't hurt his legs. But this would expose his abnormal physique. Aisha would easily understand that his magic marks were extraordinary. 
although he has positive feelings towards Aisha but it was the first time he was meeting with her, so he didn't dare to relax. Aisha said in a firm tone, we should slowly walk back. All right. Dean nodded. They walked side by side in silence. There was a bus stop sign and car covered in moss by the roadside. There were bones of dead monsters. There was even a human skeleton. Insects and poisonous snakes had bitten down the skeleton. There was one snake in the skeleton looking at the passing creatures from the eyes of the skeleton. Once upon a time a bustling city had turned into a ghost town. Arg. A roar echoed from the ruins of a building. Dean had noted the existence of the undead long ago. It looked like an ordinary undead. It was stuck under a stone. Half of its face seemed to be chewed off by something. It tried to use its claws but couldn't move the boulder. Whoosh! Aisha gently kicked a stone which flied accurately. It hit the head of the undead as if it was a bullet. Its head was cracked and died on spot. Dean saw the scene. He looked at Aisha. Do you know what cold crystals are used for? I'm not clear about the details but Monster Institute has been collecting it since forever. It is said that cold crystals are somehow related to the disaster that happened 300 years ago. She replied, Cold crystal is related to the disaster? Dean narrowed his eyes. I was told that the world wasn't like this 300 years ago. These undeads were human beings but they lost their minds in consciousness after the disaster. I heard that Monster Institute had secretly collected different types of undeads for research in an attempt to let these undeads restore their human memories and find the root cause of the disaster that happened 300 years ago. But there seems to be no progress. Dean's eye lit up. He could speculate about the roots of the disaster but couldn't give out exact information. The thing was that his knowledge had no details about this weird virus. He was in frozen storage capsule when the disaster occurred. It's possible that the viruses were biochemical weapons that were manufactured too. Arg. A mantis-like monster jumped out when they were passing by a corner. Its body was green and its color was the same with the grasses. It lurked in bushes and it was difficult to detect its presence. Aisha stride out the moment it appeared. She somersaulted few times and hit the monster's head with her high heel. The monster was trampled down to the ground. Aisha lifted her foot and threw the blood stain out of the high hell as if nothing had happened. Dean noticed that her boots were not simple shoes but made out of metal. Dean and Aisha returned back to the corner of the giant wall after killing few monster. Do you want me to send you back? Aisha asked. There are various monsters close by that could be a problem to you. Dean shook his head. Don't worry I have few tricks under my sleeve. Aisha sighed. All right, see you next week. Um? Dean nodded. Aisha waved to Dean and turned to leave. She disappeared behind the ruins. Dean watched her leave before turned around to the other side of the giant wall. He walked within the bushes for a long time. There were no monster neither he could detect the presence of Aisha who had departed. He unfolded his wings and flew up. Dean returned back to the headquarters of the 9th region in the commercial district. Dean called Hawkeye as soon as he arrived at the headquarters. I need some parasitic soul worms. Rare ones would be the best. Hawkeye was stunned at his words. Some rare level parasitic soul worms? Can you get them? Dean asked. Hawkeye recovered. We can but it's impossible to breed parasitic soul worms. So we have to buy them at market. Try to collect as much as you can. Dean said. Hawkeye was a bit hesitant. Elder, because of 8th region's attack and we had to spend a lot of money to snatch back the 13th subdivision. We don't have much to spend in addition to keeping up the normal operations. Dean picked his eyebrows. Barter with materials. Ask the few five-star alchemists and great potion masters to create some stuff or to directly exchange with soul worms. Hawkeye carefully said, Elder, it'd take long time for them to make things. It would be much difficult if they don't intend to help out. Dean frowned but suddenly thought of one person. Leave it to Amy. Tell her that if she can manufacture good enough potions then we will deduct time from her imprisonment. Yes. Hawkeye left. Dean went into the alchemy room. Another two days passed. Dean once again left the ninth region and passed the Golden Wall. He came to the location where he had agreed to meet with Yvette. At the moment the sky was dark and there were no stars. He noticed four heat figures. One of them was Yvette while the other three were in quite a distance. However, they didn't emit any smell. Dean understood that Yvette was worried about her welfare so she had come with bodyguards. Whoosh! He quietly appeared behind Yvette. Yvette was relieved to see Dean when she turned over. However, she was tense. It's been a long time. Dean asked, what's your answer? Yvette answered, I agree. Dean nodded, you will be dormant from now on and wait for the opportunity. 
I will inform you if some circumstances rise. But you will relay a message to your father today. The military will attack the Red Maple Mountains in five days. Yvette was surprised. Do they really want to attack in five days? Dean whispered, you will sure lose this time so you have to retire. They will use the steam rifles that I have produced so if you want to stick to your position then the casualties will be big. Yvette had an ugly look on her face. Dean guessed what she was thinking. I understand that you barbarians have finally conquered a fort. All of you don't want to leave. Neither your father nor your brother and sisters don't want to go back. So it's a chance for you. You have to tell your father that you have to retreat. Yvette blankly looked at him. Dean saw that she was a bit slow, so he carefully said, Your brother and sister will be against your recommendation. So this time you have to carefully put the exact words for your advantage. Barbarian tribes will fight but at the end they will pay a heavy price. But your status will improve after the end of this campaign. You will get your father's attention. It will be the first step. Yvette looked at the teenager in front of her. She had heard that the people formed the wall were cunning and clever. Now it seemed to her that those words have been underemphasized. Dean continued, you have to persuade before the start of battle. However, don't expose the reasons for the failure. I have written exact words that you have to use. It's all from the military perspective. Now it's time for you to act. He passed the paper to her. Yvette checked the paper with the beautiful handwriting. Remember, don't go too far. Dean stared at her. Expelling the barbarians is the first step of the military action. This time the military is really angered by your invasion so they may not only want to expel you from the Red Maple Mountains but want to finish you all for good. Yvette subconsciously asked, what should we do? I have written few escape routes and methods. Dean continued, you can lead your father and your people out of military encirclement if you follow my recommendations. However, there will be losses. Yvette stared at him in silence. The lives of your people depend on your performance. Dean looked at her. I'll go back if you don't have questions. Yvette looked at Dean. Can I really believe you? Dean whispered, if you want to live. Yvette was stunned. My goal is to take you guys into the outer wall. Afterwards, you will be helping me to declare war to the inner wall. So don't worry, I will make sure that many of your people stays alive. Dean said, it's getting late so you should go back. Dean looked at her. In addition, don't bring people with you the next time. I won't harm you. Moreover, if I wanted to harm you, no one would be able to keep you safe. He leaped up and disappeared in the darkness of the night. There was a trace of horror in Yvette's eyes. She brought three of her most powerful confidants with her. They had strong hiding abilities, but Dean was able to see through them. Princess! Princess! Three people appeared by Yvette's side after Dean left. The speed of that man is too fast. Is he the one who knows our language? A youth wearing a wolf's head looked at the direction Dean left. Yvette put away the note, let S go back. Dean returned back to the ninth region and continued to work in the alchemy room. After a few days, he finally received a message about the completion of the weapon made with scythes. Elder, the weapon is modified according to the style that you have drawn. Noyce handed the black cloth to Dean. Dean's eyes lit up after he tore the black cloth. The Dark King Chapter 489 It was a giant weapon which looked like a shield. It was about four meters long. Its body was dark and it was heavy. The veins on Noyce's arms had pop her up. He saw Dean show a satisfactory expression. He was a bit puzzled. Elder, several weapons could be cast out of the material. Why did you chose a shield? It is not a shield. Dean smiled as he correct Noyce's words. He grabbed the weapon with his one hand from the handle. He whispered, let's start. News was shocked to see Dean grab and lift the giant black shield with single hand. He went backwards. A bit more. Dean added. Noyce was startled as he stepped back more. His spine touched the wall. Dean's eye fell on the giant weapon. He tightly clenched it and stabbed forward. Jang! 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 Sounds of metal echoed as a huge shadow passed and set off a hurricane. The vases full of flowers decorating the office dropped down. A cold object was by Noyce's nose. It was a sharp tip of the weapon. Noyce's pupils shrank. He saw that the giant black shield had turned into a 10-meter-long black razor. It was covering almost half of the office. There were three joints. The middle and the third joint had barbs and hooks. The joints had steel pipes embedded in them. It made this sword-like weapon be able to fold. It was like three sticks that could be folded in and out. Dean was very satisfied as he looked at the weapon. Hawkeye has done a great job. Noyce recovered as he swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Elder, isn't it a bit too long? 
He couldn't imagine fighting with the weapon which was almost a dozen meters long. It's just right, Dean indifferently said. This weapon could be used in two ways. The first is the combat on land. He could shrink the weapon to look like a shield. It could be used in close combat. Although the weapon looked like a giant shield but the sharp edges were excellent to kill and wound the enemy. Moreover, it was just a four-meter-long giant heavy sword. He could fold it out in case he was combating a group of people. Moreover, he could easily wield this weapon while he flied in the air. What's the point of flying if your weapon is too short? Inevitable he had to get close to the enemy in that case and the enemy will easily be able to counterattack. In that case, having the air advantage would be lost. But a sword which is longer than 10 meters was different. He could attack the other side while the enemy couldn't hurt him. Noyce asked after a while, Elder, you provided two materials so why is there just one weapon? There are two pieces. Dean smiled. His other hand turned a round hole on the handle. It looked like a decorative hall but as he rolled the hole the 10 meters long sword split into two. Noyce was stunned at sight. The weapon looked like a scissor. It could be combined into one and split back again. He felt that the weight of the weapon was appropriate. He held down the handle and swung back the dark valve. The other sword retracted back and the weapon restored to its previous shield look. The edges of the shield were very sharp. Order them to build strong chains for me. Dean looked at Noyce. Noyce was stupefied. Aren't we going to build a sheath? Dean slightly shook his head. The weapon that is for murder does not need a sheath. Time passed. Dean was immersed in the alchemy room every day. He would go out to eat breakfast and read the morning newspapers to get to know the recent developments within the giant wall. Because of the warmth of the wine, his demand for high-calorie food was much lessened. That's why he didn't need to collect those valuable ingredients. After all, as a master, everybody knew that he was into pricey foods. It won't be easy to find who needs that much of expensive food if he wanted to collect the ingredients. News is all about the war. No one remembers me. Dean indifferently checked the reports on the newspapers. Although he didn't care about being a celebrity, but it seems that the news were much more controlled than he thought. The military had received the steam rifle without paying a cent, but they didn't intend to thank him at the time when he needed their support the most. Perhaps, from the military's perspective, it was a good thing for them if a master of the temple went down. Knock. Dean knew that it was Hawkeye. Come in. Hawkeye pushed the door and looked at Dean. Elder, there is an invitation for you. You have to attend the meeting of elders and discuss the situation about the military, war, and barbarians. Elders meeting? Dean wrinkled his eyebrows. I don't have time so I won't attend. Hawkeye said in haste. Elder, you have to attend. All the elders will attend. Even the Night King and the Underworld King won't be absent. Dean looked at him. What if I am absent? Hawkeye was stunned. Are all of the elders going to attack the Ninth Region together? Dean indifferently said. Hawkeye hesitated. I don't know about that. But Elder Carey never missed a meeting. You have an attended meeting of elders so the other would want to know about you. It's good to make relationships too. If you are absent then I'm afraid, they will think that you are too arrogant. Hawkeye was a bit nervous before saying the end of the sentence. His family lived in the Ninth Region and he had been the secretary of Elder Carey for a long time. He didn't want the Ninth Region to be destroyed in the hands of Dean. Dean chuckled as if he hadn't heard Hawkeye's words. Elder Carey always attended because he didn't dare not to miss a meeting. He didn't dare doesn't mean that I want. Whoever wants to attend should attend. Tell them that I can't participate because of my health. The Dark King Chapter 490 Elder, this is... Isn't it wrong? Hawkeye said with a difficulty. Nope. Dean didn't want to talk more. Participation in the meeting of elders was delay of time for him. Instead of watching the infighting between the elders, he might as well do something productive in the alchemy room. Hawkeye hesitantly looked at him but finally decided to held back. He left the office. Dean took a stack of papers and ink and joined his alchemy room. The next day, Dean called Noyce to bring the military newspaper. The news regarding the battle with the barbarians was published. Although the barbarians occupied the geographical advantage, but because of steam rifles and artillery, the army made sure that barbarians were left with heavy casualties. Because of the last war, there were countless casualties from the military side. However, they had enough time to nurture the reserve troops and make sure that they know how to properly use steam rifles. Each soldier's with a steam rifle was comparable to combat effectiveness of an intermediate hunter. Only the senior hunters would be able to escape the bullets of the steam rifles. Of course, it didn't mean that senior hunters could exceed the speed of the bullets that were driven by steam shots. 
The point was that senior hunters could react much before an average soldier would make a shoot. Although it was easy to operate the steam rifle, but it still took time to buckle the valve to make the shoot. That gap of seconds was enough for a senior hunter to react. Barbarians have no intention to react. Yvette, your star is going to rise. Dean's eyes lit up. He returned back to the alchemy room after the breakfast. He called Hawkeye when he faced lack of materials. Ninth Region wasn't the powerhouse of the Dark Church, but it had a very wide and deep network. Hawkeye could easily get even some very rare materials. The believers of the Dark Church were represented in all walks of life. Another day passed and it was time to meet with Aisha. Dean once again left the commercial district. But he wasn't carrying the weapon made out of splitter sides. He ran along the giant wall. He came to the west side of the giant wall by the sunrise. Dean went down to outside and found a den of monsters. He began to exercise his combat abilities. The level of monsters in the vicinity of the western corner of the giant wall were about 30. Most of them were ordinary monsters which meant that they were weaker than the rare or legendary monsters. Dean felt that his combat abilities were very weak so he had to rely on superior strength and speed to kill them. Dean fought continuously against seven or eight monsters. Gradually he saw that some highly toxic monsters were coming up. He didn't have the magic marks of the Jaranzi so he left the place. Even Limitless would avoid touching them because body strength was one thing but toxins were another. Dean returned back to the western corner by 9 o'clock. He quietly waited as he restored his physical strength and thought about his future plans. Dean saw Aisha's figure appear after about an hour of wait. But he avoided looking up at her direction. He didn't want to expose his perceptive abilities. He pretended to look down. Hello. A sweet voice chode. Dean looked up and smiled. You are here. Aisha was grinning as she held her hands behind her back. She was still wearing a green clothing, but the style was different. Did you wait for long? I have just arrived. Dean smiled. Aisha laughed as she swiftly brought up her hands. Da 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 da. Look. Dean had noticed the thin in her hand early on. It was a delicate small purse. It looked like a miniature girl with rabbit ears. What's that? God's marrow. Aisha gentle opened the purse and took out a small bottle which was as big as a finger. It was full with dark red liquid. This is all I could bring this time. It should be enough for half a month. Dean replied in a grateful tone. Thank you. It's all right. Aisha handed the purse to Dean. Take it. Dean nodded as he took the small purse. He pulled out weeds from the ground and sewed them into a straw pad. He put the bottle inside the bat and gave back the purse to Aisha. This is yours. Aisha was surprised. Can you weave things? Dean laughed. My adoptive father is a tailor so I have learned a trick or two. That's it. Aisha exclaimed, really nice. Dean smiled, it's just basics. No, I feel you are very powerful. Aisha shook her head. For example, I only know how to fight monsters but nothing else. Dean smiled but didn't reply. Indeed, the time and energy of any person was limited. Moreover, Aisha was almost the same age as him. She had to focus on combat skills so inevitable she had to ignore other things. An ordinary person would have to pay extraordinary energy and time in order to be proficient in number of areas. Do you want to try now? Aisha pointed to bottle in the straw mate. Dean curiously asked, do I directly drink it? Aisha tapped her head. I have forgotten to bring a syringe. These are injected into the blood vessels like God's blessings. You can't drink it. Dean smiled. I'll use it when I go back. That's the only way. Aisha pouted and puffed. Dean put the god's marrow into his pocket. He said, should we go? Where? Aisha's eyes lit up. Dean looked around. Everywhere were covered in grasses, moss and ruins, vicinity. Aisha nodded, all right. They began to wander around. Occasionally a monster would appear and Aisha would take the initiate to kill it. Both of them chatted while they walked. Time passed. By noon Aisha checked the sun, it's late, gotta go back. All right. Dean didn't want to stay back. He had to rush to check the god's marrow and work on his new invention. They returned back to the western corner of the giant wall. Aisha waved at Dean and disappeared by the corner. Dean watched her figure go away. Aisha felt him watch her so she looked back with a smile. You go back too. Um? Dean smiled and nodded. Aisha waved again as her figure disappeared from Dean's sight. He could only see a red dot with the thermal vision. He recovered his eyes and turned to the other side of the giant wall. He was ready to take off his coat and fly onto the giant wall after 10 minutes. However, he suddenly felt a danger. Aisha, who had previously departed, had appeared above his head on top of the giant wall. 
Although he couldn't see her figure, but because of the thermal vision, he could see a fuzzy red figure at the edge of the giant wall. The Dark King. Chapter 491. Is she tracking me? An idea popped up in his mind. Although he was surprised, but he didn't pause as he maintained the previous speed. Deem's head was down as he moved forward. He was convinced that the red spot was Aisha who had previously departed. Moreover, it would be only her with the ability to climb the giant wall and appear in here in short period of time. Why would she follow him? Many ideas passed through his mind as he secretly contemplated. Is she worried that the road is unsafe and wants to protect me? He felt strange. The answer doesn't seem to be that as she didn't follow him the last time. If she isn't worried about my safety then does she have another purpose? Dean's eyes lit up. He was excited and grateful towards her because he thought that the little girl which had helped him back in the childhood was like a pure dream. He didn't want to dirty that dream with dirty thoughts. At the moment he was much sober as he recovered from the dream. He understood that childhood was childhood. Eight years had passed and the environment could change anyone. The character of a person is made up by the ideas that they take from the environment. It's like physical materialization of the environment. He didn't see much in the inner wall. But that one-day trip in the city of Eden was clearly printed in his mind. Inner wall had a dirty and distorted atmosphere which he disgusted. Aisha lived in the inner wall for a long time. Would the environment change her in these years? I always do try to look from the good side to the things and people that I encounter. But this is just my own wishful thinking. Dean remembered many stories that he had heard in the prison. Some were born evil while some were framed. There were people who were betrayed by their brothers and relatives. Goodwill is the shield that make love so beautiful. Dean remembered the word of a prisoner he had heard long time ago. An alarm was sounded in his mind. So what if she holds some other purpose? What will be her purpose in contacting me? Get something from me? Use me? Frame me? If the purpose of her tracking him wasn't protecting Dean then he could only think of three options. However Aisha was simply way too powerful in comparison to him. So framing him wasn't an option. It was a means used by the weak and poor. She could kill him any time she wanted. But at face value he didn't have anything that she could use. I seem to have nothing that would interest her. Does she know my identity? Does she want to use Dark Church to deal with something? Does she want to use me against the monastery? Dean thought of many things. The next moment his eyes lit up. I won't be able to know whether she wants to protect me or have any other ulterior motive if I don't try out. He still maintained the previous speed. He looked around and found bushes. He stopped by the bush and squatted to grab the grass. These grasses weren't common grass but tough weeds. The edges had saw-like outlines. Dean pulled out them. He used one of them to cut a little wound underneath his fingernail. The next moment he still continued to pull grasses. He wove two straw mats and rope. He put the previous bottle inside them. He continued to move forward. It's just he increased his speed. After seven or eight minutes he stopped to breathe and walked at a faster pace. At the same time he saw red dots all around and felt the smell of feces of monsters in the air. Come on, Dean cried in his heart. He clenched his finger as he continued to move so that blood would drop. He walked while the smell of blood drifted away. He slowed down as if he was tired. Dean noted that there was an oval-shaped red figure four or five meters in diameter. He didn't know what kind of monster it was but it shouldn't be any low-level one because of the heat that it emitted. The oval-shaped monster was slowly moving towards Dean. Come on. Dean thought. Suddenly a figure jumped out of the bushes. It opened its mouth as it tried to bite Dean. Dean was horrified. He was really scared. He had noted the oval monster but hadn't noticed this one which was very close to him. This monster's body didn't emit any heat. The body was colored in dark green and it could camouflage with the surrounding grass seamlessly. Dean was caught off guard. Fortunately he was able to react on time. He went back on instinct. Bang! The giant snake-like monster hit Dean's shoulder. Dean hurried to dodge as he saw the monster was going to jump at him once more. At the same time he checked the figure that was on top of the giant wall. It was a golden opportunity. He checked the dark green serpent and instantly recognized it. It was called Golden Python which was a level 33 monster. Its bite contained venom which could paralyze a body in short period of time. Dean made up his mind in the nick of time. Although there was panic on his face but he raised his hand as he punched towards the serpent's jaw. The head that was open to bite him closed. He quickly clung to its head as to make sure that it doesn't bit him. Even if he was physically more stronger than the monster but the venom it had was very dangerous. Bang! Bang! 
The golden python couldn't open its mouth so it began to violently twist its body. Its tail smashed onto the ground. Its body began to coil and tightly wrap Dean. It was constantly shrinking. I would like to thank Brian C., who pledged $6 at our Patreon page. The Dark King Chapter 492 Dean's heart sank. The golden python was in pain as it shook its head around. But it couldn't get rid of Dean. So it tried to squeeze into a pit. Dean took the opportunity and jumped back. He turned and ran. Although he was planning to use this small crisis to test Aisha's intention but he couldn't let Golden Python to wrap around himself. It could easily make a senior hunter faint and bleed. Sergei who had powerful defensive ability from the dragon steel's magic marks was afraid of it too. Dean wasn't afraid to be wrapped and strangled by the Golden Python because of his constitution. However once wrapped around in the situation would turn into a stalemate. This way he would be like a lamb to be slaughtered any moment to an outside force. Also he was planning to test Aisha but he wasn't going risk his own life. He was worried about his safety. Therefore he had to control the crisis so that it didn't turn into life-death situation. Moreover he was trying to give the image of a senior hunter. Although some senior level hunters could kill it but the outcome was different each and every time. He wasn't aware of Aisha's intent. Was she going to get involved or just stay dormant and observe the situation? If she was worried about his safety then she would attack when the situation wasn't critical too. Whoosh! Dean ran while he kept checking Aisha who was on top of the giant wall. The next moment she saw her crawling down the giant wall while her hands were attached to the surface of the giant wall like a gecko. Is this her ability? Dean's pupils narrowed. He thought that no one could climb up the steep and smooth giant wall. The material used to make the giant wall wasn't simple rocks but mix of different materials. As a result its surface had a complex structure. Aisha descended very fast. A warmth burst out in Dean's heart as he felt ashamed and guilty about his previous thoughts. Whoosh! He ran while the golden python followed after him. The body of the monster twisted rapidly to catch up with him. Aisha arrived at a surprising fast pace. Puff! Dean noticed Aisha threw something cold from her fingertips when she was around 200 meters or so away from them. The thing accurately hit the golden python's head. It reflected the accuracy and prediction of Aisha's shot. The degree of shot in the root and twisting of python had to be calculated into small details for such a successful shot. The golden python's head hit the ground. There was blood spraying out while its enormous body twisted crazily in pain. Dean paused to look back. He saw that the thing that Aisha had thrown flew back. The golden python stopped twisting while she stretched out her hand to grab its tail. She used force to swing up the golden python's body. Bang! The magic python's head fiercely hit the boulder after a few laps of throwing around by Aisha. IT's head was crooked open as blood splashed around. It was dead. Despite everything its body was still twitching. Aisha loosened her grips and ignored the monster. She leaped up to land in front of Dean. There was concern in her facial expressions, are you alright? Dean shook his head. I'm good. Aisha sighed as she gently patted his chest. Fortunately, I caught up on time. This is a golden python. Dean smiled. Yeah, or else I would go through little trouble. Aisha couldn't help but smile when she heard the phrase little trouble. She thought of Dean's previous look. However, she was a smart girl and wasn't going to reveal the lie of the boy in front of her. She grinned. What were you thinking about when you walked straight with your head down? Were you thinking about me? Dean looked at her crystal eyes. He nodded and said, Were you following me? Aisha casually answered, Yes. I was gone half the way when I remembered that this road was too dangerous. You wouldn't be able to cope with a relatively strong monster so I secretly tracked you to be sure that you are all right. Dean's eyes lit up. I saw you climb and crawl from the top of the giant wall. Is that your ability? It's one of them. Aisha grinned. Dean stared at her then whispered, You saved me once again. How can you say so? Aisha waved her hand, you should be able to get rid of it by running even if I didn't appear. This then won't leave its territory very easily so it would be fine as long as you ran out. Normally it wouldn't chase you but it seems that it was angered by your attack. Moreover you wouldn't face such a situation if you didn't come over to meet me. Dean smiled anyway thanks. All right. She continued, don't be in haste. I won't follow you but you have to be careful so that you don't meet any more danger. We have to meet next time. Dean nodded. Aisha turned and jumped up. After a few jumps which were 20 or 30 meters high she fell on giant wall. Her palms stuck to the surface of the giant wall. She quickly climbed to the top of the giant wall. 
She looked at Dean, waved and turned to leave. Dean also smiled as he waited for her departure. His eyes turned gloomy as she clenched his fists. The Dark King Chapter 493 Aisha turned her head to look beneath the giant wall after a few hundred meters. She saw Dean running forward. It seemed that he wanted to leave the land where the smell of blood was spread. Aisha sighed as she slightly shook her head and left. Whoosh! Dean didn't scratch the wound on his finger to it soon healed. Along the way he maintained the speed of a senior hunter while he made sure that he opened the distance with Aisha. His face had turned gloomy as he felt sad and lonely. He stopped when he was close to the passage of the giant wall. He looked back to check and be convinced that Aisha wasn't following him. He took of his upper armor and flew to the top of the giant wall. A few hours later he was in the commercial district. Dean put the god's marrow in the drawer as soon as he reached his office in the ninth region. He asked Noyce to call Hawkeye. He looked at Hawkeye, have you even seen God's marrow? Hawkeye was startled as he quickly replied, Elder, I had the chance once. Check it. Dean interrupted his words as he put the bottle on the table. Check this bottle and see if it's God's marrow. Hawkeye's pupils shrank as he made few steps forward. He stretched out his hand to grab but realized something. He looked at Dean, Elder, can I pick it up? Yes. Hawkeye nodded as he grabbed the bottle. He tilted it right and left. He nodded. Elder, it looks like God's marrow. It looks like. Dean looked up at him. Hawkeye was a bit nervous, but he still nodded. It looks like. If you want to further confirm it, then we can check it by smell or by injection. Dean nodded. Smell it first. Then find someone and inject it. Hawkeye thought for a moment. He unscrewed the cap of the bottle. A moment later, his eyes lit up. Elder, this should be God's marrow. Where did you get it? It's the original. Dean glanced at him but didn't reply. Hawkeye was surprised to see the indifferent look at Dean's face. The next moment he understood that he was wrong by trying to inquire about the source of the god's marrow. Why would Dean easily tell him the secret behind such a high-level thing? Damn it! Hawkeye quickly closed the cap of the bottle. Dean indifferently said, Now find a trusted person to inject it. We have to check whether it's the original or fake. Hawkeye was a bit embarrassed. Elder, we can test it on livestock to verify it. I have heard that it's possible to inject God's blessings and God's marrows on livestock. They change very fast. Dean indifferently said, How can the structure of animal's body be compared with a human? Hawkeye hesitated but couldn't raise the courage to speak to Dean. He turned and left. He understood that Dean suspected that there was a problem with the marrow. If there was a poison, then someone had to be found to inject the marrow. However, it was taboo in the Dark Church to experiment on believers of the Dark Church. A very heavy punishment was for the people who were found of doing so. Apparently the elders who were standing at top could easily ignore this rule. Hawkeye led a handsome youth into the office after moments. He looked at Dean. Elder, this is the person. The youth bowed. Subordinate's name is Talbert Randy. My codename is Feather. Greetings, Elder. Dean listened to the youth's introduction and looked at Hawkeye. He said, start. Hawkeye replied, yes. He approached and took the syringe and marrow bottle. Hawkeye took a deep breath. Feather it's called God's marrow. Elder has chosen to give this chance to you. There was a trace of excitement in you's eyes. He bowed once more. Thanks, Elder. Feather swears lifetime allegiance to the Elder. Hawkeye looked at the marrow liquid that was sucked into the syringe. He lifted Feather's sleeve and injected it into his blood vein. There was a bit of pain on Feather's face as the marrow was injected. Cold sweat poured down from his forehead. His body turned red and hot. He clenched his teeth to endure the pain as he didn't want to show his embarrassed face in front of the elder and leave a bad impression. Dean stared at Feather. Because of his thermal vision he could clearly saw everything. The marrow was different in color as it was injected to Feather's body. It was like insects that moved through the blood vessels. After moments the marrow reached Feather's heart. The blood in his body flowed back and spread again. This time the marrow was integrated with his blood as it flowed around his whole body. The heat emitted from his body increased at an alarming rate as the marrow spread through Feather's body. It got more and more intense. There was a trace of shock in Dean's eyes. The effect was too amazing. Hawkeye looked at Feather with a smile but there was a trace of faint worry in his eyes. Ten minutes passed. The red skin color gradually faded down. The pain on his face faded down. Feather opened his eyes and saw Dean and Hawkeye stare at him. He was a bit tense, elder. Dean looked deeply at him. His pupils returned to normal size. How do you feel? There was excitement in his eyes. Elder, I feel surge of strength from my body. It seems to have endless strength. 
Hawkeye was aware of Dean's intention, spar with me. Feather looked at Dean. Dean nodded. Feather was relieved as he punched at Hawkeye. Hawkeye pinched Feather's fist to redirect the power. There was a trace of fear in his eyes. He nodded. Very good. There is a lot of enhancement. Dean was aware what Hawkeye wanted to say. Leave for now. Feather was excited. Yes, Elder. Hawkeye looked at Dean after Feather left. Elder, it is not fake. Dean looked at the two-third of the marrow which remained. He nodded. Give it to me. Yes. Hawkeye nodded. Dean took the syringe. He pondered for a while. If Aisha wanted to hurt him then she wouldn't use such a method. But he didn't know if there was any chronic toxin mixed with the marrow. He was aware of cannabis and other drugs that were chronic and that's where his concern lay for now. Aisha wouldn't need to hurt him if there was a toxin within the marrow. In that case he would be bound to be pawn of Aisha or someone else. Moreover he still couldn't guess why Aisha needed someone like him in the outer wall area. He was silent for a moment. Dean shook his head as he gave up on injecting the god's marrow. He didn't want any uncertain factors interfere with his plans. Additionally, after today's meeting with Aisha he knew that he could rely only on his own strength. He needed new product to be up and ready to take the step. The Dark King Chapter 494 Soon the day for the second meeting between Dean and Aisha would come. The commercial district was in good mood as all the inhabitants had moved back to their ancestral land outside the Golden Wall. The real estate prices had soared up and consortium were getting large incomes from the property business. The war to drive out the barbarians that lasted more than a month had finally ended. The military was victorious. Barbarians could hold the Red Maple Mountains for one week after the bombardment by artillery and steam rifles. They couldn't afford the losses so they had turned to the radiation zone outside the fort. The military didn't finish the war at this point as they were still in pursuit of victory as they went after the barbarians. The heated news had made the people forget about the genius master. So you were able to stick there for seven days, Dean drank milk and read the newspapers. Nine members of the barbarian royalty were killed while eleven of them have been captured. Yvette, I have to see your abilities if you can stand out from the rest of your siblings. Dean closed the newspaper as he pondered for a while. He called Hawkeye. Check the details about the information regarding the military's pursuit of barbarians. Yes. Hawkeye responded in haste but he couldn't help but feel weird. The last time Dean had asked him to check information about the attack of the military and now he wanted information about the pursuit. Did the elder was in contact with the barbarians? His heart turned cold as he left the office. It will be very snowy, Dean patted his fingers on the table. The temperature was very low because of the black snow season. He wasn't aware how good the Nicholas was taking care of the poisonous plants. The Sang leaf wasn't the only addictive toxin Nicholas had to grow. The shortest cycle was two months while the longer was six months for Sang Leaf. There were other poisonous plants which could take two or three years for growth. He couldn't wait for two or three years because the pattern of power balance could change after that much time. Dean slowly got up and returned back to his alchemy room to continue on working on the invention. The time to meet with Aisha had come over in the blink of an eye. Dean put on his armor and daggers in the leggings as he quietly went out of the commercial district. He came to the agreed location outside the giant wall. He didn't hunt the monsters in the vicinity to avoid physical exhaustion. Aisha came over not long after. Her tang suit was still green-colored. The high heels she was wearing still had metal texture. She seemed like a lady who was about to participate in the banquet. However, the rotten stench floated in the air which made the atmosphere not suitable. However, there was alert in his heart because of the last time. He had attracted the monster's attack to test Aisha's intention. Although Aisha caught up on time and his heart was warm but afterwards he had suddenly realized something. The smell. He had observed her with the thermal vision but not with the smell. The smell of Aisha's body had completely disappeared when she came to help him. She deliberately hid the smell of her body while tracking him. This point brought up doubts in his heart. Why would she hide the smell if she was worried about Dean's safety? Did she want him not be aware of her existence? Dean was sensitive to many things after his short but various life experiences. After producing the next invention he could apologize to her if he was wrong. However if his intuition was right then Aisha was more complicated than he thought. Dean didn't dare to relax as he had no one to rely on. You are quite early. Aisha's body floated down. She smiled as she looked at Dean. Her body exuded a different perfume which gave the fragrance of a nature green grass. Dean sensed the fragrance which smelled very good. He thought about the habits of some noble ladies. They liked to prepare several perfumes for different occasions. 
Some were much more picky as they would use different perfumes for different banquets. It was obvious that Aisha had such a hobby. However, he still was on alert because of Aisha covering up her smell the last time. It's all right. I got nothing but time. You're so lucky. Aisha smiled. Dean responded, you are the first person to say that. Aisha grinned, do you usually have a bad temper? Nope. Dean looked at the bag in her hand, did you bring God's marrow? Aisha handed out the bag, how was the effect of the marrow that you absorbed the last time? Dean thought a feather and smiled, the effect was very good. I saw the fruit of injection on spot. Of course. Aisha continued, the God's marrow is several times more effective to the senior hunters than God's blessings. You should reach the limits of senior hunter level so you need to prepare rare parasitic soul worms to go through the third evolution. Ordinary parasitic soul worms won't have much of an effect so you must prepare rare parasitic soul worms. Dean was aware of this condition because of his past experience. The effect of rare parasitic soul worms was much more effective than ordinary parasitic soul worms after the injection. He took the opportunity to ask as if he was surprised, why is there so much difference? Aisha replied, although all of them are parasitic soul worms but they are different on their own. The difference isn't based on magic marks but their own system. For example, we humans have distinction between the nobles and slaves. The temperament and appearance of a noble is totally different in comparison to a slave. The same system applies to soul worms. An ordinary parasitic soul worm would be scared to move if it face a rare parasitic soul worm. Is there such a thing? Dean was surprised. It was the first time he heard that parasitic soul worms had their own social system. Actually, their social system was very similar to the pyramid system of human society. Aisha saw the surprise on Dean's face, of course. Take monsters. When an ordinary monster meets the lord of the region, then they surrender to them. We humans are the same too. The people make allegiance to the nobles. The same thing applies to the parasitic soul worms. The ordinary parasitic soul worms fear rare ones. Rare ones fear top grade ones and top grade ones are in awe of legendary soul worms. Dean thought that all the living beings in the universe seems to have some kind of hierarchical pyramid system. There was no equality and peace. This time I got something else. Aisha took out another real like object and gave it Dean. This is the combat skills of the Dragon Clan for hunters. My great grandfather, grandfather, and all the ancestors have added their knowledge into this. It could be regarded as one of the most perfect combat skill set for the hunters and warriors. The Dark King. Chapter 495. Dragon Clan's Combat Skills? Dean looked at the black scroll in her hands. Dean didn't expect her to present such a precious thing to him. The value of this scroll was God knows how many times expensive than the God's marrow. Actually, he wouldn't be able to get it even with money. For Dragon Clan, the military or other consortia, the nurturing of hunters was very easy. They had rich backgrounds so they could pile up God's blessings and enhance the strength of the hunters. However, the combat skills and techniques was another matter. It had to be exercised and learned on daily basis. It wasn't something that could be improved by external help. The key to strength lied in the skills of combat. Some veteran hunters could come up with combat skills when they have life and death battles with monsters. They are like treasures. Dean's heart pounded hard. Dragon Clan as a devil family had much numerous set of combat skills because of their extensive experience. Moreover, this set of skills should be continuously improved through time. Their price was simply immeasurable. Are you giving it to me? Dean looked up at Aisha's crystal clear eyes. They were like a deep lake which could reflect the depths of his soul. Yes. Aisha smiled. Dean whispered, Why do you want to give me such a precious thing? I can't give back to you anything and I have nothing to give you in return. Your presence is the biggest gift. Aisha bowed her head a bit. Dean was silent for a moment. Thank you. Aisha grinned, You have to practice hard. If there is anything that you don't understand then you can ask me anytime. You could easily kill the snake that you met last time if you learned few skills from this scroll. Dean felt that she was helping him out because of his last encounter with the golden python. He took a deep breath and opened his mouth to talk. However, he didn't know what to say so he just uttered another thank you. He thought of Aisha tracking him last time and the ideas that passed through his mind. He wanted to directly ask her so that he solved out the blind accusations that he had in his mind. He was about to ask when Aisha handed out the scroll, go back and check. Begin from the easy ones. If you see something that you can't grasp, then don't waste time studying it as I will teach you the details the next time we meet. Dean nodded as he looked at the black scroll in her hands. He couldn't refuse such a gift. 
He could maybe somehow get the God's marrow from the Monster Institute by relying on different people. However, getting such a top combat skills was almost impossible for him as nobody would share it. Take the God's marrow. Aisha gave him the other bag. Dean sighed as he said, I owe you a lot. Aisha blinked, repay me well in the future. Dean softly said, I must. Aisha smiled as she didn't put his answer to her heart. These days I have been going out a lot. I have to go back early so as not to cause suspicion. I'll see you next time. Dean nodded, all right, till the next time. Pay attention to your safety when you go back. I will you too. Aisha smiled. Aisha looked at him, when should we meet? Dean pondered for a moment. Let's meet after a month. Half a month is too often and could cause the doubts of others. I'm busy these days too. He didn't want to intensively meet with her until he finished with the project. Aisha froze for a moment. All right, see you the next month. Un? Dean nodded. Aisha waved as she turned around to walk. She turned her head while she walked. I look a bit ugly when I climb the wall. You can't watch. Dean smiled, I won't. Aisha walked to the corner of the wall and began to climb. Although Dean wasn't looking at her but because of his broad vision he could see her figure rapidly climb up the giant wall. Dean took the reel and the baggage as he walked along the giant wall. He observed the place after 10 minutes of walk. Aisha wasn't around so he took out his wings and flew up. He couldn't help but think along the way. Did he really misunderstood her? He shook his head and didn't think about it as he couldn't come up with a proper answer. After he finished the project then he could personally ask her as there would be no one who could threaten him. But he has to enhance his own strength too. If he couldn't keep up with the reaction of the enemy then everything was useless. Ninth Region of the Dark Church Dean looked at Hawkeye, asked Feather to come. Hawkeye respectfully replied, yes. He left and came back with the Feather moments later. Both Feather and Hawkeye belonged to Randy family. Since the injection of the god's marrow Feather's status in the family had rapidly risen, he was a deacon in the Ninth Region and captain of a Dark Knights team. Greetings, Elder, Feather said. Dean indifferently asked, how's your physical condition in the recent days? Feather replied, thanks for the god's marrow, Elder. I feel very good. There is an extensive change in my strength and I've reached the upper limit of my constitution. I've applied to the family for magic marks. Dean nodded. How's your appetite? Appetite. Feather was puzzled. It has been always very good. I eat almost everything. Dean indifferently said. You had an intermediate level constitution the last time we injected the marrow. The god's marrow is meant for the people within the inner wall so tell me about any discomforts that you have in case of a hidden danger. Feather was a bit frightened. Elder, I don't feel any discomfort. It's just I can sleep properly at nights. It feels like my body is burning with strength. It's normal to have insomnia in case of rapid change in the physique. Dean waved, you may leave. Yes. Feather left. Dean pondered as Feather left the room. It seems there were no problems with the god's marrow that Aisha had given him. Feather's body somehow would have responded if there were chronic toxins mixed in the liquid. Elder. Hawkeye looked at Dean as if waiting for an order. You can leave too. Yes. Dean pulled out the drawer and took the syringe. He gave it to Noyce. There should be no problems with this marrow. You have recently broken into the senior hunter level. Use this to reach the bottleneck and ask Hawkeye for the parasitic soul worms that he has collected. Yes. Noyce agreed but there were doubts in his heart. He saw that Dean wasn't going to use it on himself so he was using Noyce as a lab rat. Dean injected half of the syringe into Noyce's arm. Take this bottle too. Tell me if you feel any discomfort. Moreover, if you feel anything strange then don't resist but tell me. Noyce felt stiffened. Yes. He felt feverish. Dean took out the black scroll and slowly spread it after Noyce's departure. He saw finely drawn figures on the scroll. There were various postures and next to them there was description written in a neat handwriting. Combat skills. Dean's eyes lit up. He didn't hurry to practice the skills. Instead, he began to read from first to last. The Dark King Chapter 496 The Dark King Dragon Clan's Combat Skills One-on-One -on -one, Group Assassination Dean was shocked as he read from top to bottom. The set of dragon combat skills was like set of arts for hunting and fights. It included all aspects of battle. Generations of members of the clan had modified, reproduced, added and removed the skills making them simply perfect. It would take two or three decades to perfectly learn all of these skills. Dean's blood surged and heartbeat increased as he checked the skills. 
the systematical way in which they had described the skills was in no way inferior to the scientific system of the old era. Normally, an ordinary person would spend 11 to 12 years for the compulsory education and barely pass the threshold. Afterwards, they had to focus on a field of expertise for years in university to barely understand the field but couldn't completely comprehend it. An ordinary stroke, fistfights, and other types were divided and explained into the extreme. The main weapon used by the Dragon Clan seems to be spears from the skill book, but knives, swords, blades, sticks, and other weapons could be applied to the skill sets. The most important point was that the techniques differed for various types of monsters. There were techniques to fight against pythons, tigers, and other monsters that like to ambush and attack. It's way too complicated, Dean was shocked. He assumed that the efficiency in which he can learn the skills would be fast. However, it would never be unless he integrated all these skill sets into one type. However, that was impossible as he had to remove excessive in details moves and carefully craft a new fighting style. The Dragon Clan had put the wisdom of 300 years into art system. This skill set was similar to an empire which had foundation of 300 years. The geniuses, fighters, warriors, and all other members of the Dragon Clan had put their insights into the skill sets. Dean stared at the scrolls. He thought that Dragon Clan was created by a genius fighter and the later generations have expanded and systematized the man's skills keeping the essence. The future generations could learn from this very easily in comparison to other skill sets and techniques. The fatal moves weren't much. However, to make those fatal hits, there had to be battle process that lead to that specific condition to make the deadly punch, kick, or stab. A systematic combat art which is rich enough to comprehend all areas of the battle, Dean's eyes lit up. It was undeniable that all of the techniques had great roles in different environments. But he would need a long time to learn all of them. Twenty years wouldn't be enough if he wanted to be proficient in all of them. I have to find the most needed technique or skill set to learn in the shortest possible time. Dean wasn't from the Dragon Clan so he didn't need to learn all the techniques and skill sets. He needed to think about possible dangers that he would face in the future and choose the appropriate combat art. In the future, he wasn't going to meet monsters but humans. The monsters were outside the giant wall but humans were not. If he wanted to stand on top then he would fight with people. Afterwards he could drive others to fight the monsters outside the giant wall. What was efficiency? Efficiency meant that he had to choose the best route to reach the peak. I can manage the monsters by using my mind. Dean's eyes lit up. He wanted to be at the peak within the giant wall so he was bound to fight against countless people. It was not an easy feat and it would be much more difficult than fighting against the monsters. The information about the monsters were recorded in the atlas so he could use that information, knowledge, and his brain to make traps to kill them. However, humans were different. Each person had different and hidden magic mark abilities. That's why each enemy would be different than other which was precisely why the humans were difficult to deal with. Dean frowned as he looked once more at the scroll. He didn't study it but pondered. The most suitable weapon for the Dragon Clan's combat style is the spear. But using another weapon means a bit of change. I don't want to delay my time with small things. One-on-one, -on -one, group, assassination. I will have to challenge the major forces of the inner wall in the future. I will inevitably face enemies in different situation. I may learn fighting against a group, one-on-one. -on -one. Assassination is suitable for physical attacks where the strength of the enemy is greater than mine. He frowned as he focused on these three skill sets. He felt that all three of them were indispensable. However, it would take him two or three years to master all three of them. Efficiency, Dean bowed his head as he pondered. His eyes lit up. I can delay the assassination skill set for future. I can use the new item to make up for the assassination skill set. One-on-one -on -one could be delayed too. I have to focus on one against a group. I would be inferior in case I fight against a single enemy, but with the help of the new invention, I can kill them. His eyes lit up as he found the short-term solution. He rolled the scroll to the section where Dragon Clan's one against a group skill set was displayed. He carefully looked at the postures and the explanations. Time passed as Dean was completely immersed in the skill set. The skill set wasn't just limited to one or two posture. Theoretical summary and explanation of the skill set was extremely detailed. For example, in case you were against a pair of enemies, then you had to choose the most efficient posture against the enemy while taking into account their style too. That's why the more the enemies the possibilities and ways to counterattack increased. One against two, one against three, one against four, Dean slowly went through the details. He didn't rush to practice but read it back and forth to deeply understand and memorize the battle postures. After repeated reader he faintly caught some insight into the battle art. That's the thing. 
Dean smiled as he gradually realized the problem that he couldn't understand. No matter how many people you were against, the postures and styles changed but the core of the skill set was always the same. The core was the essence of the battle against the group. In short, there is not much of a difference between fighting against a group or a single enemy. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, you fight against a person while theoretically in a battle against the group you can fight against. The heavens. The wind, air and other variables have to be taken into the account and fight against all the enemies. Excluding yourself, everything has to be exterminated. Dean was kind of enlightened. The art style was similar to a scientific research. It was like looking at a solution of problem through several chemical formulas. He felt that combat and science were no different in some ways. You had to find the core essence and the common ground. Afterwards, all the formulas, postures, and everything else was just an eye-catching moves. It was true that the extra moves were very practical as they were refined for the last 300 years. But it didn't mean that you must use them in the battle. But as a result of culmination of the knowledge after hundreds of years, the extra moves seemed to have practical value. That's why they thought that all these extra moves were part of the core essence and couldn't give up on them. That's why the art had become too complex and needed a lot of time to be grasped and learned. The Dark King Chapter 497 Dean rolled up the scroll and came to the alchemy room. He put the scroll aside as he picked up materials and threw them into the stove to smelt. He picked his own weapon and began to practice the moves of the dragon clan. Dragon stabs the bright moon. Dean turned his weapon in a slow manner to practice the first move. Aisha would be surprised if she saw Dean's practice. The problem was that Dean's practice order was in accordance with the one against a group skill set of Dragon Clan neither it was in reverse order. The fire was reflected in Dean's cheek while the material slowly smelted in the stove. The speed of his practice was still slow. Moreover, the moves that he displayed became increasingly chaotic. Time passed. The barbarians were forced to return to Radiation Zone, to their original place of residence, after the continuous campaign of the military. The forces of the military pursued them but they failed to finish them for good. Even though the military had steam rifle and the artillery but they were in an unfamiliar terrain. In addition cruel weather and erosive properties of the radiation made sure the military to lose large number of soldiers. The soldiers were slightly stronger than ordinary people. The military didn't have enough resources to provide God's blessing to each soldier. However the soldiers who were given blessings came out with outstanding meritorious services. Dean read on the newspapers that the fish were forced back to the sea. However, the military's intention to kill the barbarians for good was a bit greedy from their side. Moreover, Dean had seen the barbarian king's tent and observed the strong heat exuded from the king's body. It was an utter nonsense to try to destroy the barbarians with just the army unless they invited strong people from the inner wall. Dean had more information at hand because of being an elder of the Ninth Region. Barbarians seemed to be the hidden danger in the radiation zone. The problem was that if the inner wall intervened then this hidden danger could go extinct for once and all. However, they didn't because of many reasons. The most important reason out of all was the control of population. The giant wall would be overcrowded sooner or later because of reproduction. But a war would naturally and effectively delay the trend. The speed of human reproduction wasn't low in the Earth's biological ecosystem. Even if the natural deaths were included, the giant wall would be stuffed with humans. Dean was making a speculation and he didn't have the slightest evidence regarding the theory. However, he didn't doubt his own intuition. There were many cases in the history which would back up his theory. Even if diseases, plagues, and other things were included, the inner wall couldn't be so empty after 300 years. The main reason why inner wall didn't intervene was because the barbarians were the trump card in balancing the population. All the walls of this world will be broken one day. Dean whispered. A month passed in the blink of an eye. Dean quietly went out of the commercial district and reached the western corner of the giant wall. He was ahead of Aisha once again. However, he didn't care much about it as he sat down on a boulder and waited for her. He visualized the skill set while he waited for her. In addition, there were some things that he couldn't comprehend. I'll ask her after Aisha comes. Dean muttered. Aisha was a pioneer and she should have learned the Dragon Clan's combat skills. Moreover, sometimes it was much better to learn from someone rather than reading from the scrolls. After all the size of the scroll was limited and many things weren't described in it, Dean slightly opened his eyes as he looked at the green grass that swayed because of the breeze. It was like waves of the green sea accompanied by the wind. He felt a chill from behind. Danger? His pupils shrank as he felt a hint of bad feeling from behind. His eyes widened as the pupils contracted into a small circle. He noticed many red dots. 
They were coming from all sides. There were some approaching from behind the giant wall while some from the wilderness. All of those red heats were in humanoid shape. Someone was coming over. Dean realized that the situation was against him. His intuition was very accurate so he turned and ran. Buzz? A sound which was similar to buzzing of bees echoed. It seemed like something was about to cut, slice through, the world. Dean looked up in haste as he saw the incredible scene. A sharp spear came down from the sky. It seemed to carry infinite power. A blonde youth was holding onto it. His eyes were golden. The youth had jumped down from the giant wall. He wasn't afraid of death. The idea popped up in his mind. However, the next moment he put it aside. If the youth jumped from such a height, then it meant that he wasn't worried about death. He quickly turned to Ran as he was at a loss. The heat exuded from the blonde youth's body was as strong as the sun, although it wasn't on Aisha's level but was several times stronger than Francis. He couldn't face such an enemy. Moreover, the another seven heat figures follower the blonde youth. All of them were at the same level with Francis. It meant that they were limitless. Who are they? Why they want to chase me? Is it that my meetings with Aisha have been exposed? Dean felt the murderous intent form the spear. He turned to look at the blonde youth, the badge on his shoulder, the patterns on it. He had seen the same pattern on the carriage the first time he had met Aisha. They were from the Dragon Clan. Dean rushed out. His blood was boiling while coldness burst in his heart. No, no, absolutely not. Dean's eyes were red. Haha, a gentle laughter echoed from the sky. A giant spear smashed to the ground in front of Dean. He looked at the slender jade-like legs standing on top of the spear. He concentrated on the person who was laughing. Dean was frozen on spot as earthquake burst in his heart. The Dark King Chapter 498 AI, Shah Dean felt like he was struck by lightning as he stared at the figure that fell from the sky. Whoosh! The blonde youth's foot kicked the giant wall as his body was reaching the ground. He took the leverage from the kick and rolled few times on the air before landing. There are two small pits where he landed down. However, the youth didn't stop there but used his spear as he rushed towards Dean. Alive! Aisha narrowed her eyes as she talked. The spear stopped few centimeters away from Dean's spine. The blonde youth's wrist flicked and the tip of the spear lifted to Dean's neck. He could take Dean's life with a small move. Dean didn't dodge as it seemed that he wasn't aware of danger from behind. He deeply looked at Aisha and lowered his head. The doubt that was in his heart was confirmed. Aisha was surprised that Dean was calm. She was expecting him to be angry and throw a tantrum by asking questions. She whispered, search him. He has sneaked into our region so he must have something on him. Yes. The youth recovered his spear. He knew that Aisha was responsible for guarding this part of the giant wall. He looked at Dean, kiddo, take off your clothes. Dean was silent for a moment. Afterwards he slowly raised his head and looked at Aisha, can you tell me the reason? Aisha wrinkled her eyebrows. What are you talking about? Dean looked at her eyes. What is your purpose? Shut up. The blonde youth exclaimed, Stop talking nonsense. How dare you? It's nothing. Aisha interrupted the blonde youth and indifferently said, Search the boy and take him back for interrogation. The blonde youth pushed around Dean as he checked his clothing. His eyes fell on parcel in Dean's hands. He snatched it. Dean didn't do anything as he let the blonde youth take it away. He was just staring at Aisha. Aisha smiled and blinked. He once again saw the playful appearance of Aisha. Whoosh! Whoosh! Seven figures approached them in haste. Greetings, second princess. The blonde youth unlocked the parcel that he had taken from Dean. He looked at the thing inside it as he was stupefied. What is this? Aisha looked at the thing that was taken out from the parcel. She was stunned as the scrolls weren't there but a wreath woven out of rare green flowers. The smile on her face faded away as she stared at Dean. Dean also stared back at her. His eyes lit up when he saw the change of expression on her face. He slightly clenched the sides of his sleeves. Aisha's eyes were full of anger. She pondered about something, search vicinity. The thing has to be hidden somewhere around. Dean was still staring at her. The blonde youth gestured at other seven people and they dispersed to look around. Boy, be honest with us. Where have you hidden the scrolls? The blonde youth grabbed Dean by the collar of his shirt. Dean looked at him with indifference at his eyes as if he was looking at a worthless commodity. I don't understand what you are talking about. Stop acting. The youth pushed him out of anger. Do you mean that you were just taking a stroll outside the giant wall? Dean took back few steps. He held back his emotions as he coldly said, 
There is freedom outside the giant wall. I will go wherever I want to go. Do I need to report you where should I go and what should I do? You. The blonde youth grabbed the green wreath. What is this? He threw the wreath onto ground and mercilessly smashed it with his foot. Dean silently looked at the wreath that was kicked by the blonde youth. Aisha's eyebrows wrinkled as she looked at the wreath. The green flowers that were used to weave wreath. She remembered that she had mentioned to that those flowers were her favorite when she had met Dean the first time. Found it. A shout echoed. Aisha and blonde youth reacted as they looked towards the source of the voice. Dean's heart sank. He didn't need to look back as his vision enabled him to see one of the seven people bringing back the scroll. It was the scroll from the dragon clan that he had hidden under a stone. The man quickly arrived and handed the scroll to the blonde youth. The blonde youth shook and opened the scroll. His face slightly changed as he read the content. Second princess, it is the secret arts of our dragon clan. Aisha coldly said, take him back for investigation. Yes. The blonde youth grabbed Dean's arm. Kiddo, you better be honest. Dean was silent as he let the youth grab himself by arm. He knew that he didn't have room for a leeway. He wouldn't be able to escape from Aisha and blonde youth, let alone the other seven limitless. Let's go. Aisha jumped off from the giant spear. She used her hand to pull it out from the soil. The blonde youth and the other seven didn't climb the wall but escorted Dean along a passage under the giant wall. Aisha was walking on the edge of the giant wall but were paying attention to Dean and others. She knew that they had about 10 seconds before catching up with Dean. But the boy had used that time frame to hit the scroll. It meant that he had doubts about her. But when she remembered the wreath she understood that it was not about doubting her. Dean had tried to hit the scroll so that he didn't harm her. There were many number of ideas that passed through her mind. However, she didn't ever think that the teenager would be so sensitive towards a crisis. The Dark King Chapter 499 Whoosh! Whoosh! Aisha walked on top of the giant wall with a giant spear on her hand. The size of the spear was completely inconsistent with her body. A road passing between the jungle and occasionally from the boulder or fell on tea. She had ran half the way when she turned around and looked at front. A figure flashed past. Her eyes narrowed as her lips curled up. Dean quietly followed the blonde youth and seven others. The chaos in his heart gradually calmed down. He understood that his days with Aisha were all about lies and traps. The purpose of gifts such as God's marrow and the combat arts of the dragon clan were to pave the foundation for this moment. It means that she doesn't want to kill me, Dean murmured. Actually taking into account Aisha's strength, there was no need to go through such a trouble to kill him. There were likely two reasons behind the trap. First one should be that she had investigated his identity and knew that he was a deacon of the monastery. She may use him to deal with the monastery. A deacon of monastery stealing the combat arts of the dragon clan. It is a good excuse for an attack. The second reason was to imprison him for their own use. They may force him to produce inventions for the dragon clan. This is good too, Dean smiled. Everything is paid off now. The blonde youth turned towards Dean. Stop muttering nonsense and hurry up. You sped up. Dean ignored the youth as he kept his pace a bit higher than the speed of a senior hunter. He could escape if he went through some tricks but the others were primary level limitless. There was no point even if he could escape they would find his nest. Two hours passed in the blink of an eye. Their speed slowed down after they came to a wide open place. Dean noted that there was a place similar to the passages of the giant wall. Whoosh! The blonde youth took the lead as he went into the entrance. The remaining seven rushed in as they surrounded Dean. The structure of the place was similar to the passages of the giant wall from the outer wall area. There were murals of the goddesses on both sides of the wall. They passed through the passage and went out from the other side of the wall. Dean looked up to see eggy mounts with saddles. They seemed like a mix of cow and lizard. There were steel armor on their heads and knees. His eyes lit up. He had seen these monsters in the atlas. They were called rock dragon. It was said that there were similarities between the appearance of rock dragons and the legendary dragon. According to the legends, the rock dragon had one one thousandth of blood trait from the original dragon. In any case, few would confuse the rock dragon with the legendary dragon. After all, the rock dragon was only a monster which was classified as a rare monster in the atlas. Let's go! The blonde youth shouted at Dean. Dean followed him as they sat on top of the rock dragon. The moment his left hand touched the back of the rock dragon's head the monster began to hoof disorderly and make a commotion. Dean quickly raised his left hand. The blonde youth turned to look at Dean who was sitting behind him. He raised his hand and the rock dragon quieted down. 
Second princess, we will go back now. The blonde youth said as he looked at the giant wall. Aisha who was on the edge of the giant wall nodded but didn't say anything. Her eyes paused on Dean's body for a moment then she turned her head. The blonde youth pulled the ropes and the rock dragon began to sprint. Dean silently sat on the back of the rock dragon. It was useless to escape. He had to wait to see how things will turn out. There was a glimmer of hope for him even if the dragon clan made him produce inventions for them. Whoosh! Eight rock dragons sped away. The ground was rumbling as they moved. They were approaching the fort protecting the central zone. The soldiers stationed on the fort saw approaching rock dragons from afar. They opened the gates of the fort in advance so that not to slow down their passage. They reached mountains full of greenery and lush after half an hour. The rock dragons climbed through the steep peaks. It didn't take long for them to reach the top of the mountain. There was a huge square in front of them. At the end of the square there was a tall building which reminded Dean of cathedrals. There were sharp cones on top of the building. It was meant to transmit the lightning. It seemed that the inner wall has used the principle behind the lightning rods for long. Some of the castles of the nobles in the outer wall had spiral tops which reminded Dean of the medieval architecture of the old era. However now he knew that they were just trying to imitate the buildings from the inner wall. I'll go in to report. Look after him. The blonde youth said in a cold tone. Seven people surrounded Dean. The blonde youth walked along the steps and reached the front of the building. He entered through the door. The blonde youth returned after moments. Come with me. Dean followed after him. They entered the building. The hall was covered with soft carpet and it was very spacious. There were rows of chairs on both sides of the hall. There were three figures. All of them seemed to be over 50 years old. There was white hair mixed in their heads. They were wearing gowns which looked similar to the ancient Eastern dresses. However, they had mixed elements from the modern he means the current one world too. Scrolls. The old woman in the middle of the trio looked down at Dean. The blonde youth who stood by Dean's side came forward in haste. He bent over and handed the scroll. Elder, this is the scroll that was lost. The old woman took the scroll with one of her hands while the other was leaning on a pestle stick. She looked at Dean with coldness in her eyes. How did you get this? All right, let me clear up the confusion. We will have releases twice a week. An awesome arc is coming up. TDK is my flagship novel so I won't drop it winky face. The Dark King Chapter 500 Dean had already noticed the scroll in old woman's hand when he had entered the hall. He wanted to say out Aisha's name when he heard the question. However, he changed his mind. He knew that Aisha had carefully thought over and calculated everything. She should have expected this interrogation too. Why didn't she prevent him from confession? The answer seemed obvious. Aisha may not have expected such a sight. But the problem was that his confession may not be as effective as he thought as Aisha should have arranged something. Maybe the confession was part of her plan too. He decided that Aisha should be prepared even could use him once more in this trial. HMPF. The old woman snorted as she saw Dean was late. She coldly stared at Dean. I know that it was Aisha, wasn't it? Dean was stunned. The old woman knew? The old woman and two old men on her right and left understood that their guesses weren't wrong as they saw Dean's reaction. Imprison him right now. The old woman said in a cold tone, this matter can't fall into ears of outsiders. The blonde youth said in a respectful tone, yes. He looked at Dean, move. Dean didn't resist but his heart was full of doubts. All three of the interrogators knew that he had collided with Aisha. What was Aisha's purpose? Is it that he had overestimated her planning? Was Scroll a flaw in her plan that was going to expose her? Dean and the blonde youth disappeared from the hall. The old woman slowly clenched the roll in her hand. Aisha has done something outrageous. This time she has passed the secret combat arts of the Dragon Clan to the outsiders. It is a taboo and we can't tolerate it. Yes. The old man in her right side said, we are already used to her ridiculousness. However, this time she has gone overboard and must be severely published. If it was done by someone else, then that person would have been imprisoned and fed to dragon worms. How can we uphold the dignity of the clan if we don't punish her? The other blonde old man frowned, although Aisha had made occasional mistakes over so many years but she has general knowledge of the family rules and secret combat arts. There should be another cause and reason for this matter to happen. In any case, the problem has to be thoroughly investigated. Firstly, we have to learn how this little devil from the outer wall has caught Aisha's attention and confused her. Old woman nodded. Yes, we have to clear out things before judging. I'll immediately send someone to get information about the kid's background. 
I saw that the energy in his body was stronger than a primary limitless level. It's impossible to get such power in the outer wall by using God's blessings. Aisha should have given him God's marrows, maybe even more. Yes, I'll send someone for background check, the other old man said. The blonde old man looked at the old woman. Do you want to call and question her? Of course. Old woman continued, not just her but Haley too. Yes, the old man replied. There was a steep peak standing alone as it was surrounded by the numerous mountains. There were no trace of attendants and servants on the mountain peak. There was a building at the top of the hill. A slender figure wearing a purple tang suit stood there. She had a sword in her hand which was wider than the distance between her shoulders. The blade of the sword was covered by white cloth. The girl was holding onto the handle of the sword. She waved it forward. The air word as a result of the wave. She was practicing her sword skills. It was a routine movement that she did 20,000 times every day. The black sword wasn't made out of ordinary material. It was cast by mixing osmium and lead. The edge of the sword wasn't sharp but a bit blunt. This sword wasn't meant for battle but for her to practice. Whoosh! Whoosh! Each move was a step closer to perfection. She was practicing to hit the target with the most straightforward and quickest way. The girl's eyes slightly moved as she glanced towards left. Another girl landed on the edge of the square. There was a four or five meter long arm thick black spear in her hand. Her toes was about to land when they twisted and she moved towards the girl wearing purple tang suit. She stopped about five meters away from her. Elder sister, are you practicing sword skills? Aisha smiled as she looked at the girl wearing the purple tang suit. Her eyes were full of concern, but there was feeling that there was an invisible confrontation between them. The girl wearing the purple tang suit stopped waving the sword and looked at Aisha. Something wrong. Aisha shook her head. Sister, you didn't believe me but I found. You see I didn't lie to you. I found someone who had stolen the secret combat arts of the dragon clan. Good congratulations. The girl wearing the purple tang suit replied in an indifferent manner. Aisha smiled as she turned to look at the building in front of the square. There was no smell of life within the perimeter. This place is so big but you are living alone in here. Don't you feel lonely? Do you want me to send few servants? Aisha's tone was full of concern and sincerity. The girl wearing the purple tang suit replied indifferently, Are you here to provoke me? Aren't you clear why I don't have servants? Aisha's eyes turned wide, Sister, please don't say so. How could I provoke the saint of our dragon clan? Besides, how should I know why you don't have servants in here? The girl wearing the purple tang suit looked at Aisha. Life in solidarity is a good and quiet life. It's not something you will ever experience. The Dark King Chapter 501 Aisha kept nodding her head in a well-behaved and obedient manner. No servants. You have to wash your own clothes, cook your own food. It would be very difficult for me to understand this style of life. But sister, please talk to me any time if you feel bitter. I as your younger sister will help you any way I can. After all, we are sisters. No need for a sweet talk. The girl wearing the purple tang suit said, Be straightforward and tell me what you want to say. Aisha smiled. I just came to tell you that someone had given the secret combat arts of the dragon clan to an outsider. Now this person was caught by me and I brought back the scroll. The elder sister replied, I've already congratulated you. Aisha shook her head. Sister, would you like to know who was the person caught by me? Would you like to know her identity? The elder sister looked at Aisha. What do you mean? Aisha grinned. Nothing. I just wanted to say that the person caught by me is someone you really ought to know. Nine years ago when you ran out of inner wall and went to outer wall you had met him. I don't know whether you still remember him but you had sent him to orphanage and gave your own handkerchief to him. The girl wearing the purple tang suit tried to remember the occasion. She remembered the rainy night that happened nine years ago. She couldn't withstand the pressure of the family so she wanted to get out. She had went to outer wall to aimlessly wander around. She met a boy with pale skin who wore strange clothes. The boy was aimlessly walking in the dark street. She took the initiative to talk to the kid back then. She knew that the ordinary people would be hurt by the rain so she had taken him to the orphanage to get a roof over his head. She had tried to talk to the boy but he was speaking strange words that were alien to her. The boy had left deep impression on her because of that. However, why do you know about that? The elder sister coldly stared at Aisha. He told me. Aisha continued, it was a coincidence but this time God saw the injustice that was happening to me and had decided to help me. I met this man by chance and saw your handkerchief. The person remembered your favor and kept the handkerchief on him through all those years. 
he was dreaming of meeting you once more. Silly kid. Elder sister was perplexed. Aisha grinned as she saw her elder sister. I think that boy should be interrogated by now. I don't have any idea how the elders will deal with him. Dragon worms should be reasonable choice. Poor boy. He has been keeping the handkerchief for so many years and looking forward to meet you. But at the end he will be tortured alive to death. Aisha shook her head and sighed. The girl wearing the purple tang suit slowly said, Do you think that I will come forward to plead for his life from elders because he said so? Aisha's eyebrows wrinkled because of elder sister's reply. I have already fallen to that trick of yours twice. The girl wearing the purple tang suit continued, Get loose if you have nothing to say. Otherwise, she didn't continue to talk but the killing and tin exploded from her body. It was as if thousands of swords had enveloped the square. Aisha's face turned gloomy as she bit her lips. She clenched her fists. You are a cold-blooded monster. Get lost. The giant sword began to tremble as it seemed that the cloth which was wrapping it would fall away any moment. Aisha clenched the giant spear as she stared at her elder sister's back. She stamped on ground and flew away. The sword stopped trembling after Aisha left. The clothing that was wrapping it was a bit loose but it once again tightly wrapped the sword. Whoosh! Aisha's figure was like a blur as she moved along the mountain road and reached the foot of the mountain. A man whose complexion was very white was standing at the foot of the mountain. His eyebrows were white too which seemed very weird. The only thing that showed that he was from noble descent was his golden pupils. He faintly smiled as he looked at Aisha. Is she angry? Aisha looked at him in anger. The man didn't care as he continued to ask. Did you make sure that no flaws were left? Aisha smiled as if she wasn't angry a moment ago, of course. This time she will have to pay the price for everything that she has taken away from me. I will get back all of it. Good. The man replied. There was a little flaw but the wreath that the boy had woven was ruined. It's good that it won't fall into eyes of the elders. Aisha replied. Everyone knew that she loved green color while her elder sister liked purple. Although it was a slight flaw but she didn't want to leave tales and leads that would come back to her. This occurrence will benefit only her so she had to calculate everything perfectly. Very good, no flaws, the man laughed. Aisha snorted, I don't have the status which she has. If there is a little flaw then I will be beyond redemption. The man smiled, don't belittle yourself, you aren't worse than her. You could have done better if the resources for saint were given to you. There is no need to mention that. Aisha proudly ordered, let's go. It's time to finish this. The man smiled and nodded. Get in. The blonde youth was standing behind Dean. Dean was pushed into a dark cell. He looked around as he felt the bloody odor floating in the air and the taste of human excrement. A bit of light squeezed into the room from the door. Be honest, kid. The blonde looked at Dean. Tell me who was the one that gave you the secret combat arts of the Dragon Clan. Dean closed his eyes as he ignored the youth. The blonde youth was holding his nose as he left the cell. He ordered the guards to look after the room. Dean slowly opened his eyes after they left. His face was gloomy. It seems that he had to wait for the trial to be held by the Dragon Clan. The problem was that he had to find a way to get the Dragon Clan's pity in case he was sentenced to death. He had to make sure that he would be useful to them in terms of value. Legendary Magic Marks Abbey Techniques Dean's eyes lit up. He didn't have anything but it didn't mean that he couldn't fabricate out something. As long as he caught Dragon Clan's attention then they will try to verify the information. It would get him time and time was all that he needed. He would seize any chance to get out even if he had to expose his ability to fly. The Dark King Chapter 502 Dragon Clan's Conference Hall There was a round table in the middle of the dark hall. There were chairs behind the table. The bottomless darkness was dormant behind the table as if it was a monster's nest. At the top there was a huge throne. It didn't look like a chair but more like a bed. The edges of the throne had black barbs which gave the impression of large eyes with eyelashes. In this spacious throne lay a graceful figure. The body of the young woman was covered in a scarlet red robe. The robe was engraved with black flowers and the gown was extremely long. It went down through the throne into the darkness. The woman looked like in her early twenties as her skin was delicate and white. However, she had the charm of a mature woman. Her eyes were half-closed. She calmly looked at the place. It seemed as if nothing could interfere the truth from her sight. She seemed to have the capability to see through all things, right or wrong. An old woman stood by the dragon throne. Different people sat on the chairs by the table. Their bodies were hidden in the darkness but the contours of their figures could be seen. Some of the seemed young like six or seven-year-old kids. 
Some of them were tall and burly. Some of them had thin bodies and were like pool of mud which laid on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, a stalwart figure sitting on the right side of the dragon throne spoke out. The man's elbows were pressing onto the table while his fingers were crossed. His golden eyes swept over everyone. The secret combat arts of the dragon clan were stolen. The investigation has been finished and the saint, Aisha, is deemed to be the one who had presented the arts to her friend from the outer wall. We have recovered the secret combat arts. Now we have to come to a decision on how to punish Aisha. We will follow the old rules and come to a decision by vote. Aha! A girl who is less than a half a meter tall laughed. Patriarch, Saint Aisha is your daughter. She has committed such a grave sin. How do you think we should act? I have already said that she was no longer my daughter since Aisha became the saint of the clan. She carries hope and responsibilities of the dragon clan. You guys have the right to correct me if I am wrong. The girl continued, blood is always thicker than water. Although you say so but listening to you it seems that you want to sway from punishing her. Fortunately the combat arts didn't fall into hands of the other two families. It would be like lighting up the torch and burning the hard work and effort of our ancestors. Patriarch indifferently said as he coldly looked at the young girl, My proposal is to imprison her and make sure that she stays and reflects on her actions for three years. Patriarch, isn't that punishment unreasonable? A young figure shook his head as he smiled. The saint is responsible for the task. We will guard the giant wall from the threats if she is imprisoned. The little girl grinned. Patriarch is going easy on his own baby daughter. It's not a punishment but let's say much like a protection. The dragon worms won't get close to her in prison. It's not that we are imprisoning her but giving her three years to enjoy and bless. Patriarch indifferently continued, I have called you for discussion. If you have any ideas then let us hear it. If not then we will go with mine. We will vote and the idea that gets the most votes will be realized. Do I have to repeat the rules? Patriarch why are we in hurry to come up with ideas for punishment? A figure yawned as he spoke from darkness. Shouldn't we speak about so-called evidences before talking about the punishment? Everyone knows that what has been done is a taboo and saints should know of such thing. Personally, I find it funny and stupid and dumb believe that she has done something like that. The little girl looked at the figure. What do you want to say? Are you questioning the investigation abilities of Dragon Clan? Do you want to say that someone has tried to frame our saint? Who would have such a big courage? The one who will gain, the figure slowly said. The little girl turned to look at Patriarch. Please tell us about the evidences or it will take an eternity to come to a decision. The Patriarch was silent for a moment before turning towards the old woman by the dragon throne. Lorena explained. Yes. The old woman nodded and looked at the woman sitting on the dragon throne. She stepped forward and whispered, We found Miss Aisha's smell on the scrolls. In addition the reaction of the kid confirmed that it was Miss Aisha. She paused for a moment. We have sent people from the Dragon Guard to investigate the identity of the youth. He is a man sent by the monastery to the outer wall as a pawn. The guards had searched his residence and found a handkerchief. She took out a handkerchief and put it on table. It was a handkerchief for a small child. There were purple flowers engraved on them. Aha! The little girl couldn't help but laugh as she looked at the handkerchief. All the others looked at the handkerchief. They knew that it was not forged. Miss Haley had taken people to arrest the youth when Miss Aisha appeared on top of the giant wall. We checked for her smell and confirmed it. It seems Miss Aisha was going to meet the youth but Miss Haley had taken the first step and arrested the man. Old woman slowly said. The guards stationed in the building said that Miss Aisha appeared when the combat arts were stolen. The old woman whispered, Miss Aisha is the most suspected one and she can't shirk away. Have you questioned Sane about this matter? A tall old man looked at her. The little girl asked, would she admit if they did ask? Old woman whispered, we have asked. She said she didn't steal the combat arts. She said she was on the giant wall because Miss Haley had told her. She had gone to the building because she was told that the secret combat arts were stolen. As for the handkerchief, she said that she left it there nine years ago when she secretly sneaked into outer wall. It's clear that, the little girl continued, no one would admit such accusations. The tall old man didn't seem to care about little girl's words. He looked at the old woman. Did she provide evidence? The old woman shook her head. No. Saint has always lived alone and in my opinion it would be very hard for her to provide evidence under these circumstances. The previous figure continued. However, Saint has said that Miss Haley had asked for to go there. At the end if the saint was punished the one to profit the most would be Miss Haley. It's without a doubt that Miss Haley has planned this play from the beginning. 
The morale of the story your siblings can always act as if they were you. Good job, Haley, pretending to be Aisha. The Dark King. Chapter 503. I cannot agree with this. The man who was lying on the table slowly sat up and spoke in a hoarse tone. Have we steeped so low to the level of conspiracy theories? If it is so, then let me add possibilities. I suspect that Sky Clan or the Rock Clan had sent people to infiltrate us and planned the whole thing for us to punish the saint. Maybe it was Princess Haley. What about evidence? Oh, the little girl grinned. There is evidence and it's without a doubt. The thin old man looked at her. The issue is related to the Saint of Dragon Clan. How come your attitude is so light and lax? Why are you so eager to deal with her highness? Whimsical nonsense. The little girl looked at him. We can sit here and argue for long time which doesn't make any sense. We can investigate once more too. Everyone should note that down. The thin old man replied. There is no need. Patriarch slowly said. Evidence is conclusive. There is no need to question it. You were called to discuss the way to deal with Aisha. We are not here to explore or discuss whether the evidence is credible. Patriarch. The thin old man couldn't help but shout out. Patriarch waved his hand to interrupt him. He glanced at everyone. I'm listening to you all. The little girl said in a deep tone, in my opinion we have to follow the clan rules. There is no prestige to them if they are broken for the sake of exclusive few. HMPF. The muddy man said and laid back on the table. Outside the conference room of the dragon clan. Two slender figures almost of the same height stood side by side. One of them had a giant sword while the other had a giant spear. It was Aisha and the girl wearing the purple tang suit. Father and elders are discussing the issue at hand. Aisha smiled as she looked at the other girl. My lovely sister, can you guess how elders will dispose of you? You know this issue is the theft of the core skills of the dragon clan. I think they will just cut off your limbs and throw you into the prison for a hundred years in accordance with the clan rules. The girl wearing the purple tang suit looked at the door and ignored Aisha. Oh, I almost forgot. Aisha smiled. Sister is the saint. How could elders imprison you and make sure that we are safe from the creatures in Wasteland? A light breeze blew and the tang suit girl's hair slightly floated. But she didn't respond. Aisha narrowed her eyes, but if saint's identity is taken from the sister. I wonder what would happen. Aisha's eyes lit up. The girl wearing the purple tang suit whispered. Do you want to get the identity of saint so badly? Aisha saw that she finally responded, It is what I deserve. You were lucky to win father's love. Otherwise. Love? Are you talking about that heartless man? The girl wearing the tang suit slowly turned her head and looked at Aisha who had somewhat similar face. I was born awakened. It's not luck. Aisha's face turned gloomy the moment she heard the girl talk. You were born with that state. Isn't that called luck? Did you even work hard or put effort into it? You didn't. Aisha snorted as she continued. I'm much different than you. I may not have your luck, but I put up lots of effort. I awakened through hard work while you didn't do anything. You are just lucky. The girl wearing the purple tang suit smiled. There is a word we use a lot, genius. Mortals and plebs like you can never understand it. You. Aisha's face turned red in anger and she clenched her fists. But after a moment the fury on her face faded as she whispered, That may be right my dear elder sister. But I'm going to catch up with you. Aisha turned to look up at Sky. By the way, 80% of the elders will support me. They will propose an option for you and that is. We need a new saint. A tall and burly middle-aged man who had barb-looking things raised from his shoulders said, Miss Aisha is a saint and we can't directly dispose her. However, she has done a taboo. I suggest that Miss Aisha resigns from her duty and Miss Haley takes over. Fine. The little girl nodded. She as a saint had to set an example, but she had repeatedly committed offense. She shall be dismissed. I second it. Seven or eight people raised their hands. The rest of people looked at Patriarch to see his reaction. The Patriarch's face turned ugly. No chance. Right now Sky and Rock Clans are checking our move. Moreover, we have to give a reasonable explanation for the change of saint. Yes, the thin old man added, besides, Saint must have awakened his, her blood power. Miss Haley is still young and I'm afraid with that power she wouldn't be able to protect the perimeter of Wasteland. The burly middle-aged man looked at him. Miss Haley seems to have awakened her blood power as far as I know. She is a pioneer too. Although she isn't as powerful as Miss Aisha but she has enough strength to be the guard of the Wasteland. When did Princess Haley awaken her blood power? How can it be? How come we aren't aware of it? The thin old man and the rest were shocked as they heard the news. 
The identity of the saint have always belonged to the one with strength. The little girl laughed. It's true that Miss Haley's qualifications aren't up to par, but she didn't get the resources or support of the clan but have achieved today's status. It is a fact that she has done it through hard work. In comparison, Miss Aisha had natural awakening. In my opinion, we should let them fight. But Miss Aisha can't use the secret arts of the Dragon Clan. They should have a contest where they will use only ordinary combat arts. If Princess Haley can withstand 10 rounds, then she wins. What do you think? The Dark King. Chapter 504. 10 rounds? Isn't that a bit difficult? The figure beneath Patriarch said. Princess Haley is also a pioneer. If she has awakened her blood power, then she is already at par with the saint. It would be very hard for saint to beat her under 10 rounds. True, the thin old man spoke out. Saint has practiced the combat arts of the Dragon King and it has been pressed deep into her bone. It would be very awkward for her to fight if you limit the skill set. 30 rounds seem reasonable to me. Yes. A person whose body was hidden in the darkness said, 10 rounds isn't fair. 30 rounds seem reasonable. The little girl laughed. Miss Aisha has been saint and fought in the wasteland for many years. Her skills are already different than ordinary pioneers. Why should she serve as a saint if she can't been Princess Haley in 10 rounds? Someone else said, 10 rounds is more than enough for a life and death match. 30 rounds sounds more like a contest for endurance. Endurance is one of the keys to victory. If Miss Haley's endurance is weak, then she can't serve as a saint. Ridiculous. We aren't here for dragging the battle for endurance, but for quick duel. As long as you agree. You. People sitting by the round table argued with each other. Shut up. Patriarch who was silent shouted and his voice overshadowed the hall. Everyone stopped to look at Patriarch. Ten rounds is ten rounds. Patriarch said in an indifferent tone, if Aisha can't beat Haley in ten rounds then she will lose her status as saint. Patriarch, this, the thin old man and others looked at Patriarch. Patriarch slowly shook his head. Aisha will continue to serve as saint if Haley loses. If Haley wins then we will think about the replacement problem. Agreed, the little girl smiled. Everyone agreed after Patriarch intervened. Dragon Mother, what do you think? Patriarch turned his head to look at the lady lying on the dragon throne. Everyone turned to look at the dragon throne where the elegant and graceful figure was lying. The woman was lazily leaning against the soft side of the throne. There was no trace of change on her expression as she heard Patriarch's inquire. Her eyes moved as her sight passed by all. Subconsciously all of the attendees lowered their eyes as no one dared to directly look at her. You are Patriarch. You should decide. The woman slowly retracted her eyes, since most of the elders agree with this then implement it. Both sisters should be impatient by now because of waiting. Call them in. The little girl and other were relieved when they saw that dragon mother didn't intervene. There was a trace of disappointment on thin old man's eyes. Let them come in. The patriarch looked at the darkness. A breeze passed from the darkness. After a moment the door to the conference hall was opened and two girls walked in step by step. Their appearance were somewhat similar. One of them was Aisha who Dean knew and the other one was the girl wearing the purple tan suit. Both of them had similar height and wore similar clothes. However, one was colored purple while the other was green. The expression on face of the girl wearing the purple tang suit was cold. It seemed that she was somewhat similar with the conference hall. Aisha, standing by her, had a smile on her face. Haley greets Dragon Mother, Patriarch, and Elders. The girl wearing the green tang suit known to Dean as Aisha said. Dean would be stunned if he was in the conference hall. Aisha greets Dragon Mother and Patriarch. The girl wearing the purple tang suit nodded towards the Dragon Mother and Patriarch. She didn't look at elders as her identity as saint was third to only Dragon Mother and Patriarch in the clan. Actually, these elders had to take initiative to greet her if they met Aisha. It was part of her identity as saint and it was also part of the rules. Dragon Mother slightly nodded as her lips curved into a smile. You are here. Patriarch looked at his daughters. There was a complex look in his eyes as he calmly said, Aisha, the evidence shows that you were involved in the loss of secret combat arts. Do you plead guilty? Aisha calmly replied, I don't recognize the evidence. Patriarch was perplexed. Do not recognize, the burly middle-aged man said. The evidence is conclusive and you don't recognize it? Aisha indifferently said, No matter what kind of evidence you have if I haven't done something then I will never recognize it. However it doesn't matter whether I do recognize or not. You have asked us to come over so you should have already made the judgment. Pronounce it. The little girl gently smiled, Your Highness, your words make us look like villains. 
The evidence is evidence. You should pay the price when you do something wrong. Aisha's, the girl wearing the purple tang suit, eyes narrowed as she looked at the little girl and slowly said, What price you want me to pay? The little girl felt as if she wouldn't be able to hide the secrets in her heart. Her face turned unnatural as she said, Your Highness, the verdict was decided after everyone discussed the issue. It's too late if you want to. No need. Aisha directly interrupted her. Thin old man and others shook their heads as they sighed. Patriarch whispered, Twelve elders and I have unanimously decided for you and Haley to fight. You are prohibited from using the skills of Dragon King. If you can beat Haley in ten rounds, then you will keep your post as a saint. If you will lose, then you will lose your status and identity and Haley will replace you as a temporary saint. You will have time to reflect. Do you have any objections? Everyone's eyes were directed at Aisha. Aisha's expression didn't change, but she was silent. Aisha, if you have an objection, then you can speak out. The patriarch spoke as he saw that Aisha was silent for a long time. Aisha slowly said, I have no objections. There was a trace of joy in Haley's eyes who was wearing the green tang suit. She clenched the giant spear with her fingers. But Aisha spoke out. The Dark King Chapter 505 Everyone's eyes concentrated on her after she used the word, but the dragon mother quietly watched her. But what? Haley couldn't help but ask. Aisha indifferently said, I give up. Silence was dormant in the conference hall. Everyone was stunned as they looked at Aisha. It was her only chance and she gave up? Many speculations run wild in their minds. Was the condition too harsh? Did she think that she couldn't beat Haley in ten rounds so she gave up? It seemed that there was only one reasonable explanation. Dragon Mother take a deep look at Aisha then recovered her eyes. A smile curled up on her face. Since you want this title so much then I'll give it to you. The girl wearing the purple tang suit, Aisha, looked at her sister Haley. Haley was startled. She had prepared for this battle for long. She had actually simulated the fight in her mind many times over. She had prepared lots of shady moves, but... Aisha gave up. She knows that she can't beat me in ten rounds so she gave up. She didn't want to lose face in front of everyone. Haley speculated. I have a request. Aisha looked at Patriarch then at Dragon Mother who was lying on the dragon throne. Patriarch deeply looked at her. What is the request? Aisha looked at him. The boy that was arrested was just implicated in the issue and is innocent. I want to keep his life. She said in a serious tone. The little girl and others knew that it was a false alarm so they didn't care much about her request. They didn't care about the life of the boy as he was nobody from nowhere, outer wall. They didn't care whether the boy was dead or alive. However, it seems that Aisha was set on making sure that he stays alive. No one dared to go against Aisha who showed such a tough attitude. No one was willing to anger her. I'll go out if there is nothing else. Aisha said. Patriarch said in a calm tone. From today on Haley is temporary saint as you have given up on fight. From now on you will be moving from the saint peak and you will surrender your identity as saint. You will no longer be allowed to enter the Dragon King's Hall. Aisha nodded and opened her palm. There was a platinum token in it. There was a picture of a black dragon engraved on its back. She put it on table. Dragon mother, patriarch, I'll go now. She didn't look at other as she turned to leave. Her slender figure faded away in the darkness. Everyone looked at each other in the conference hall. No one had expected to Aisha to give up the identity of saint so easily. It was a very lofty status with big rights. Princess Haley, you are the saint of our clan from now on. I hope you can replace Miss Aisha and keep guard of the wasteland. Little girl took the initiative to break the silence. Haley looked at the token on table. It was the thing that she had dreamed of for so many years. Now she would be able to get it. She had paid too much for this. She had made countless fantasies about the status of saint. However, she felt strange as everything was in front of her. It seemed that she wasn't excited because her sister had given up. Her eyes lit up as she slowly reached out and picked the token. The strange thoughts and feeling faded away as the excitement took over her heart. She didn't care if she had one. At the end, she got the thing that belonged to her. On top of the St. Peak, Aisha packed her things and left the high-rise building. Actually, she didn't have many items and she didn't care about valuables at all. Dear sister, as Aisha was going out from the door, a pretty figure walked into the square. Haley was smiling as she looked at the bag in Aisha's hand. She laughed, my dear sister. You better get everything away right now or I'll just break them and throw them away. You wouldn't be able to get anything later on. 
Aisha indifferently said, You have already broken what had to be broken. There is nothing left. Sister, are you still thinking about that pet of yours? Haley grinned, Blame it not me. It was barking at me and I had to teach it manners. Your tastes and beasts will improve as a saint. Good luck with that. Aisha lightly said. She is referring to the monsters in Wasteland. Haley smiled, You should just go back if you think I'm not good enough. Well, I always thought that my sister is more intelligent than she looks to be. You knew that I have awakened my blood power and was worried that you wouldn't be able to win in ten rounds. So you just simply gave up and didn't lose face. Moreover, you said beautiful words such as giving it to me. You are indeed my sister. Aisha looked at her. One round is enough to win you. All right, now the unpleasant judgment arc is done. Expect the unexpected.